Excellent connection. Yay! I bet you rarely see that, Fringy, being in Australia. I, I see it all the time, oh, honestly. Oh, okay, okay. I do. Liars go to hell, Fringy. I'm not sure. <laughs> what are you so mean to me? Does hell come to liars, though? No, hell just chills out and it's... Well, it doesn't really chill out. It, 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 well, it's, yeah. it's in fact the opposite of It melts out. out. Anything. It burns it, out. It burns out, yeah. As opposed to fading away! That's like lyrics in a song, right? I was quoting Highlander, but it's probably lyrics in a song, too. Oh, actually, yeah, it could be. I, I, Highlander's probably the one that made it more famous, right? But it's just like the cool thing of... You want to burn out, you don't want to fade away. That's, that's right. Highlander? That's that's right, Mauler. You don't want to fade away. No. Yeah, fade I, away is the I, big A. <laughs> um... We got three people in chat, which means this probably went out in some way, shape, or form. That's good. This is a very, very private stream. Yes, yes. This is no, just the people who stumbled upon the URL. Super cool club. <laughs> there are people out there who are just typing random URLs and hoping. They're like, come on, come on, come on, come on. You're going to do an exclusive yeah. eight-hour stream for the for three people, the first three who click the link? Oh, we're doing, we're doing a quick one today, eight hours. Well, that's like, that's almost three hours of viewer. We can just devote a third of our show to each viewer and we can ask them what they want. We can do nothing but answer their questions. See what they think about life itself. Um, Alright, I think, I think everything's working. How wonderful is that? And when I gather, we're all here, we're all ready to go. So, I guess, what can I, what can I say? Welcome to EFAP 152. We're already on the second episode of the of the year. Rags free, we're gonna have to stay up for twenty four hours soon enough again. And it's not gonna be oh, that long. Yeah. Just around the corner. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not ready for that. Look, I'll give you forty eight episodes worth of sleep time to catch up on before I make you do it, okay? Sean. Okay, that seems fair enough. Oh, what have we got planned for today? We're gonna we're gonna uh, you know, you know, with all of these, uh, with all of these spam phone calls going on, uh, I can. Uh, that's that's the legend of the Ten Rings right there. Ah. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, that's right. I've seen that movie. Yes, I have not. Rags, you have not. What movie? The one with the, the rings. The ten, ten rings. Sonic. Lord of the Ten Rings. Sonic. Yeah, Sonic and the Legend of the Ten. Sonic. Rings. Sonic. Lord of the Ten Rings. <laughs> Meme, have you seen Pretty it? Sure. I don't remember. Uh, my my city's in lockdown at the moment, so I am incapable of seeing this film right, at the right. moment. Oh, in that I case, we're all going to have to rely it. on Fringy. Okay, so... What, you just want the spark notes, right? Oh, I don't know if we Come should do that you. second, because... Because uh, right. I, don't, I don't know how long we have Mr. Mr. Sanders here. Well, what's your um, What's your plan for the day, sir? Um, I pretty much have... All of today free, um, unless something comes up. Oh, which, you'll regret saying that. Honest, it, <laughs> it, it <laughs> um, well, I figure it doesn't make more sense to do Shang Chi second. Do you reckon? Okay, yeah, yeah, um, sure. I'm, I mean, I'm not passionate about Shang Chi. <laughs> yes, you are. You couldn't you stop talking to me day, and about it. Yeah, in private, in a call yesterday that we had, you wouldn't shut up about it. You kept talking about how amazing it was, and how it was... I said no such thing. You said it was and an absolute was... triumph. You did. You I, said it was a triumph, I... and it was the best MCU movie in years. I mean, it is the best MCU movie in years, yeah, but like... That's <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> that's, that's... But best MCU movie, like, that's just a different type of sludge. It's It's like a... It's like it has less of an aftertaste, it more just has no taste. It's more like just completely it's tasteless there. sludge. Man, the barometer for the MCU right now. <laughs> like... Yeah, the barometer for the MCU is, hey, 4 out of 10, good job, guys. <laughs> hey guys, like, flavorless so sludge, much. not bad. I'm not, even, I'm not even sure that it would be a 4, by the way. I've been thinking about it more and I'm like, I don't like understand that first act at all, like what was happening in terms of why the bad guy made the decisions that he did. So, might actually be a 3, but... 
yeah i, I don't know that's we'll, why you're we'll not see. a bad guy you can't understand i'm i'm sure all the, all the i'm sure all the bad guys in chat would understand it i suppose It'd it's just like, strange yeah, to send your guys after him and say like get the pendants but then at the end of the first act you're like ah See, they couldn't kill you if they tried, even though they tried very hard to kill him, and very easily could have. And also, I want to take you guys with me too, not just the pendants. It's like, man, probably should have just, like, gone to them and just told them that first. Like, instead of having a bunch of you guys get killed trying to catch them. Actually, yeah, I'm not sure if it's a four. It might be, might be a three. We, we could talk about that. Oh, yes. Sounds beautiful. Um, but yes, welcome, of course, and, and welcome our special guest, Colin Sanders. I really don't know much at all about you, Thank but you. welcome, of course, and, and what, uh, what's, what, what, what happened here? Is it, is it the, we, we covered your video and you were like, hey, I wouldn't mind having a chat with these fucking, these crazy people about, about Snyderverse and stuff. Yeah, so basically, um, I made that video, I put it on my channel, and I didn't really expect, you know, too much, too many people to see it, maybe a hundred or so. And in like three weeks, um, it had quite a, quite a bit of attention, um, which was both good and bad. Um, cause I very quickly realized that there was a lot that I, you know, if I knew it was going to get that many views, I would have said differently or I'd go back and change some stuff basically mm -hmm. um, and you know then i started getting some comments that were uh strange and <laughs> would reference uh, this thing called every frame of pause and i had no idea what that was and I, I looked up your channel and i saw you guys cover my video and um you know it was it was like you know yeah i kind of deserve some of that um, uh, oh. but you know, once I got past the initial, you know, well, what was me, uh, I actually started watching a lot more of your guys' uh, podcasts episodes and became kind of a, a fan of the series. So. Oh my God. Oh, oh boy. Oh, wow. I don't know if that's ever happened before. <laughs> uh -oh. Except with Jay, of course. I'll, I'll totally take that as, a, as an example of it happening only three years ago. Um, okay, interesting. Well, of course, we were, we, we are, what you could say, not the hugest fans of the DCU, let alone uh, Snyder's contributions. And so people were like, you should watch some videos talking about why it's really good. Now, I don't know if you're aware, but we had um, Twin Perfect on at one point, and he's another person who is yes. very famous yeah. for defending Snyder's work. That didn't go very I, well. I did watch your interaction with Twin Perfect, and I, if, if nothing else today, I hope to be the complete opposite of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you That's, that. good. That's good to hear. He was, he was not, he didn't do a good job. He wasn't, he wasn't good. Didn't do great. Um, well, yeah, I mean, so, like, this is the thing. That we, we could go any and all directions with this, and we could also check out, because you've got... The thing that caught my interest, especially when I was uh, setting all this up, is that you have a new video called You Don't Understand Snyder, which... Oh, my God. My goodness. <laughs> and, right, okay, here's the thing. So, I'm not super passionate about making video essays. I think they're fun to do, and I kind of challenged myself a few times to try and hash them out but you know and by no means do I consider myself good at it <laughs> so you're not going to offend me you didn't offend me too much um and you're not going to offend me by you know ripping apart any any other essays I do um, I'm mostly focused on uh making films and doing some some more hands-on projects like that so are you working on like short films at the moment and stuff I am yeah that's great. What's uh out of curiosity? What's what's it about? Like you don't you don't need to talk about it too much if you don't want to. Curious. No, sure. Yeah, I have a I have film that I made in the spring. Um, it's going through some festivals right now, but basically it's it's about this young woman who um, has this really tragic life, and the movie takes place in this space between death and the afterlife, and it's kind of her her experience of accepting that life and um embracing death is kind of a, a new beginning back. to 
Um, I find it very interesting that you said that because I am currently working on a short story that is has a very similar premise. <laughs> Not exactly God. the same, but similar. <laughs> That's just a crazy coincidence. <laughs> It's awesome. Yeah, that no, so, sounds cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's stuff that I really like to do. So, in video essays and stuff, I'm less honestly, of an in, yeah, like it's it's just a yeah. fun sort of side activity, right? I get you. Um, yeah, I mean, do you wanna do you wanna give a, a brief history of like why uh, you got interested in doing YouTube videos, and then maybe uh, what, what what you're planning on doing going forward now with um, a bit of the result you've had with with the Snyder videos, or well, any of the videos you made really. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I think, so I, I've been making YouTube videos since I was like 12th grade or whoops, when I was, sorry, when I was, uh, about 12 years old and, uh, they were bad. They've always been really, really bad. Uh, <laughs> they're all gone right now and they ought to be to give you some frame of reference. Um, the, <laughs> the thing I was inspired most by was, uh, was like early Smosh comedy sketches. Oh yes, classics. I don't. I don't even know Smosh. Oh, did Rex. you never watch Smosh? Gosh, I don't Sm think Smosh I was number one at one Smosh. point. Did you watch uh, oh, like Nigga yeah. Oh Nigga God, and stuff like that. Oh my God, <laughs> it's you okay. Know that's one G, one G, one G. It's fine. Isn't it Nigga Higa yeah, yeah. or whatever? You got to be careful. Everyone's got to be careful yeah. about that word. Not <laughs> it's not our fault that he was the most popular YouTuber. <laughs> Look, um, he had a singular G, he was fine. But again, did you watch he was him a or... G. Did you watch him or like... Um, no. I had I friends that watched him. Higa, higa. Yeah. And um... <laughs> it is an unfortunate but username, basically, isn't it? <laughs> like, like, when you think about it... It was a different time. He's like, I'll just call myself Nigga Higa. It'll be fine. There won't be any issues whatsoever. <laughs> there won't be any, yeah. I'm assuming he's still around, I don't know. He is still around, yeah. That's uh, a lot of those guys are still around. Like, like Philip DeFranco, I remember he was like one of the super popular ones at the time too. Mm -hmm. And um, there was Fred, but he's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> Just totally gone, and the world is better off for it. Yeah. So Smosh got you into YouTube, I guess. Then it did, um, and you know, I, I uh, in like high school, I went through this phase I think a lot of people go through or they um they watch a ton of video essays and I was always so immersed in them they were always so so much fun to watch um and, uh I actually watched a lot of your video essays and I didn't I didn't even realize until like um you or, or until shortly after I discovered your podcast um you know your unbridled rage and those video essays yeah, I I've, I've spent a lot of time uh, watching those, and I, um, like high school, my senior year of high school, I wanted to try like my own video essay and try to make one, and that was the the first Snyder video that I did, and so I did. That was the first one I did, and you know the rest is history. And uh, what has it made you want to do? I guess in future. So I decided to, I decided on majoring in um, digital cinema when I was a senior in high school, but the, uh, as far as doing more video essays, I did have a few that I wanted to do. Um, and then college started back up again and I, I fell off that schedule, but I did have one that I wanted to talk about that wasn't Snyder. I was going to talk about um, Arrow, the show the TV show. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to do a few, I think I, I wanted to talk about some of the Spider-Man movies. Um, but as far as what I want to do with video essays and, and YouTube, I'm not terribly, terribly concerned with, um, you know, producing that, that kind of stuff right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... So, like, in terms of biggest inspirations for film, then, is Snyder up there for you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Interesting. And I guess, uh, would you would you sort of posit, do you believe that we have misunderstood Snyder? Do you think there's, there's gaps in our understanding for, for his work? 
Um, I think I think there might be, I don't know, misunderstanding might not be the right word. Um, Is there something about what he does that I guess you appreciate that that we just may not have a preference for? Do you think? Yeah, I think that's that's probably the better way to say it. Right. You know, it's it's we can like disagree on whether or not Snyder is um or whether or not we we appreciate or even like anything that Snyder does. Um I didn't really like Watchmen and oh, okay. I still love Snyder. Um but that doesn't mean that I think that everything about Watchmen is horrible. I just think it's it's reached the point where it's like you know, there's enough of it that I'm not particularly that I don't particularly find appealing. Um, but right. not enough to where it's gonna make me, you know, hate everybody involved. I guess uh I guess uh, the question would be what are the specific things that you get out of Snyder movies that you think would be valuable to you in in like your pursuits? So yeah, I think so. Obviously, um, visually, right. he's, the 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 stuff he produces is really visually pleasing. Um, but I think beyond that, especially with um, Batman v Superman, and this was my experience with Batman v Superman, um, of course, the Ultimate Edition. I really, really like the way that he handles. Um, these kind of theological and philosophical issues. So, you know, the problem with pain and, uh, you know, if God is all good, can he be all powerful and vice versa and things like that. And, Hmm. you know, it's not handled perfectly, but I think the more of it, the better. Or I think the, the more of it that we, that we can create or that we can watch. I think that'll be, that's that's the kind of stuff that I'm really interested in. So it seems like more interest in the thematic elements of the stories by the sounds of it, or what yeah. I would assume are the thematic yeah. elements of the story, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and if I gather that right, you're actually, um, you're more interested in the fact that it's being discussed rather than saying that he's particularly great at it. Uh, uh, discussing. Yeah, it. yeah, um, yeah. So that would probably be the the main stuff that you think is in his work was pretty good because you you may have known from our coverage that we're very focused on like writing, uh, as in like just the the fundamental storytelling, let's say, and like we've been we have been thoroughly unimpressed uh, with with a lot of his work to the point where. If you go back and look at our coverage of, like, when we first started this DC arc, we were... I was telling everyone here that, like, Man of Steel and Wonder Woman, they're probably the best ones, if not actually the the, the ones that we'll be calling good. But we ended up um, in a position of basically concluding that, like, we're not fans of basically anything in the DCU except the Suicide Squad. <laughs> like, the Suicide... <laughs> so, you know, um, it, it's been an interesting journey. And uh, I, I guess... Yeah. Um, what do you? Uh, I'm assuming you've seen a lot of our criticisms of the the films. What do you think about our our approach with his writing in terms of the the stories being told and how consistent they are in terms of uh, all the characterization and just like how the plot runs and stuff. I think a lot of your criticism uh, criticisms are fair, um, particularly with and this is also something that really really bugged me: um, the expository dialogue in uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Because um, even when I was watching it, I I became irritated with how poorly some of that exposition was given. Um, that's right. another thing. I think. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, what? Okay, I think that's another thing. I think um, Zack Snyder's Justice League is probably my my least favorite Zack Snyder movie. Uh, really? Okay. So far. Interesting. Other than yeah. Watchmen, I think. Um, Other than Watchmen, I think that would probably be my least favorite. Uh, why is that? Because like I've, I've just from a lot of the people who are fans of Snyder, from what I hear, Snyder Cut has been very, uh, you know, pleasing sort of thing. 
It definitely was. I mean, it was pleasing. It was fun to watch. Um, but I did not find myself having the same experience. Um, and a lot of that could be because, you know, he was working with a different director of photography. Um, he was working with, you know, three or four characters that he had to establish. It was a long movie. Um, I felt like a lot of the characterizations that he worked on in uh, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman were kind of skewered. And which is weird because it was such a long movie. You'd think you'd have, you'd have even more time to work on characters and develop characters, um, kind of devote more time to that. But yeah, um, yeah, I just, I didn't have the same experience. I like, as we were watching it, um, we definitely noticed the extended like cyborg stuff, but it felt like, um, most of the time was filled in by a lot of scenes just being padded out very long cuts that could have ended four or five seconds earlier than they did and obviously like, consistently throughout stacking the them all up you get an extra like half an hour um walking upstairs well there's just scenes that were longer for no reason at all that i could <laughs> it see felt yeah. Like to me. yeah it was it's bloated it's super bloat um well because you said you'd seen some of my uh, my videos have you seen my video on snyder cut I did start watching it. Um, <laughs> I, I forget. I, I promise I didn't stop watching it because I was offended. I was. <laughs> no, it's fine. Sure Don't worry. You can stop watching on. it for any reason you want. Um, <laughs> is I actually, fun enough, you know, I worked with a uh, meme repository here on that video and um, bringing it a lot of uh, influence in terms of trying to figure out like a lot of the things that happened with that movie production wise and just things you can notice with them. Um, some of the padding oh, and stuff. Well, yeah, so like, the, mm -hmm. there are just big tells of like, the footage that initially existed and what they originally intended to do and, and things like that and trying to piece together, you know, basically what the original... Because as far as I'm concerned, that like, the, the Snyder Cut is not the original cut of the film. There was going to be an original theatrical cut and they would have removed a lot of the stuff that he put back in. Like, them walking up the stairs right. for a really long time and... <laughs> And there's there's like a that. really fun things to notice like that, yeah. And most of yeah. what's new yeah. is CGI, like uh, because he yes. wasn't able to shoot much outside of the nightmare it. sequence. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, we'll use and was it just me, well. or did the CGI not? Was it just me, or did the CGI not really like live up to? No, it was yeah, bad. for seventy Past million films. bucks. For seventy Ooh. million bucks, it's like I don't know. And a lot of the the visual effects were already done. Like a lot of them were from the. Because I think that was, like, the big takeaway from the Snyder Cut is that it's, like, a longer version of the theatrical. It's not really a, su a substantially different film. Um, and, in fact, uh -huh. some of the ways that it is different uh, kind of make things worse. Like, as unbelievable as that <laughs> seems. Um, yeah, like, like everything to do with Darkseid and that's... Steppenwolf, just... Yeah, and I think... Yeah. I, think yeah. I was going to say, like, less about the fidelity of, like, the graphical quality or whatever, but mostly just I was so distracted by, like, some of the design choices, like Steppenwolf's armor. Mm -hmm. Um, like, what, you guys remember when he's upset and it'll go spiky? He's like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I sure do. <laughs> I sure do. Um, yeah, uh, we, we Yeah, the costumes also, I don't know if they were lit incorrectly or something, but they all looked just really, really cheap and not as authentic as they as I did. I think uh, Superman's suit in particular has just kind of been, uh, it, it, was, it wasn't, it didn't look as bad as it did in the original the theatrical cut of Justice League, but I don't know, something about it, it just doesn't look real well, anymore. Well, I think, you definitely get that impression with a lot of stuff in that movie that's just like, very little of this feels real. <laughs> it is a very, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a very fake feeling movie. Oh, and Aquaman had the same issue. It's just like, none of this is real. I suppose I would give Aquaman <laughs> a little bit more, like, reason to feel that way when it's, like, it's much harder to do what they're doing. Yeah, um, yeah with the underwater stuff. stuff, yeah. But was, with the Snyder Cut, it was like, you guys are in a room, and I just don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> you're lying to me. I mean, I, f I feel like Endgame had a lot of that quality, too. A lot of the scenes in Endgame um, are just, like, green screens everywhere sort of thing. I I yeah, that's that... what I was saying about mm -hmm. Black Widow, is how yeah. they'd be just standing in a forest, real. or, like, in front of a forest, and 
like it was clearly not actually there. They were in a green screen. It's and it's like you can go out like... to the fucking to the, to the woods. They don't have woods well, where y'all are from. It's so funny <laughs> that you say that because I remember reading an article that's like, oh, see, with the turn was they let her actually shoot on location like she wanted, and it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I know, right? Oh, wow, totally <laughs> brave. <laughs> let her actually go out to places and shoot in the location it's meant to be. Um, we don't want to we do did, that anymore. Everything we didn't shot in shoot Atlanta. this movie in a laboratory. Well, well yeah, because <laughs> nowadays it's like everything is shot in either London, Atlanta, Toronto, or Vancouver. Like that's where everything is made. What's well, interesting because we've we've talked about it a couple of times, but like one of the ones I saw on Twitter recently was you know when Yelena and uh, Natasha talk um, and they have drinks. It's it's like the midway point of Black Widow before they decide to go after Drakov. That whole mm -hmm. scene is done on a green screen. Um, Why? It's like, a, it's like a whole green stage, and uh, there was those of uh, photos and footage of it, and a lot of people were just like, "What the fuck?" And then I saw someone saying like, "This isn't unusual. It's but uh, it's to do with like, can, it's kind of the justification that me and Fringy were talking about with the uh, when monitors are green screened and like everything they record instead of the actual screen, so they can put whatever they want. You know, they have full control yeah. over it. But like that reasoning for being on a green screen stage when you're just recording two people on a bench having a chat like to me i'm just like how far are we going with this like yeah to, like, how yeah. did they ever make movies uh -huh. before green screens you know? <laughs> make sure. exactly how is it how, how is it ever possible because yeah like when i know they want to film a scene in a restaurant like, all right you're, you're playing sarah connor and you work at a restaurant i know it looks like it's a big green room but you're really in a restaurant <laughs> and you're working in a restaurant <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's just excessive at this point. It's like, come on, come on now. You can, you can, you can shoot on the bench. Maybe do both if you're that scared of a, a, something going wrong in the background that you have to green not screen. Not very out. empowering. And it's not for not for anybody, Rags. Not for anybody. That's, that's, nobody wants this. I'm assuming you're not a fan of that, uh, Colin. I don't know. Are you? Not, but Colin, Colin, my uh, the overuse of the overuse just of green, screen. green screens. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm actually. <laughs> It's funny that we're talking about this right now because the the short film I'm I'm shooting right now is um, kind of a challenge to teach myself VFX. So I yesterday I literally spent um, three to four hours in in front of a green screen. Wow! In a in a studio. Um, yeah, I don't which know. you know I think there's a there's there's a place for it. Like there's there's a yeah, time absolutely. to use it, but. For two people, you know, sitting in a restaurant, or sitting on a bench, why? <laughs> <laughs> um, it just looks bad. So, from what I'm gathering, then, like BVS is the one that you like the most, is it, or is it Man of Steel? Uh, BVS, I think, is mm -hmm. is probably my. Uh, have you seen our coverage on BVS? Obviously, like, uh, I think we covered Twin Perfect's video on it as well. Um, uh, just because I, I just I'm trying to get a grip on like sort of what you know about our our position on it and stuff. A while ago, I watched a few of your coverages, but it has it has been a little bit of time. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I'm trying to just jog my own memory. It's like uh, we have um what you could call an extensive position at this point. We're very much. Uh, I guess you could say unhappy with BVS. Um, sure. Not. Uh, I'm trying to think of what what to say about it. like very nonsensical, very uh, like a struggle to watch. Obviously, like I I don't know if I is any is no point in bringing it up really, but I I mean, how do you feel about like the um, adaptation arguments in terms of what Snyder's has chosen to do by converting them from comics to to screen? I think, um, are we just talking about uh, Batman and Superman? Uh, and sure, like, yes. They, really applies to yeah, the idea but, of yeah, are they faithfully adapted from the comics? And how seriously do you take that, that argument? Matter? It doesn't yeah. matter, yeah. I think you can, I don't know, because at, at this point, is it is it really so much about like how they're adapted from the comics or is it more about how they're adapted from just simply the mainstream understanding of the characters because That's... you could say that oh. yes the, the <laughs> i think Snyder's... there was a slight delay so i accidentally cut you off don't worry about that just keep going sorry um 
the uh, the interpretation of Batman in in Snyder's verse um, would be more akin to that of the the Dark Knight Returns version of Batman, and that's kind of what I talk about in my in the second uh, video essay I made was I was more talking about the the characters and um, yeah, some of it was I think that I think that Batman in particularly is is faithfully derived from his from particularly the Dark Knight Returns version of Batman mostly. Uh, the thing I say in my video is that I think, and again, I think this is just depending on how you read the Dark Knight Returns. Um, I say that Snyder's version of Batman is actually a lot more, or a lot less uh, pessimistic. I think the the way that Batman is in uh, Dawn of Justice is is worlds more optimistic than he's portrayed in the dark knight returns um that might be the case i've not read dark knight returns i don't know if anybody here has meme i assume you i might. haven't read it yet. i have not i've not read any of the comics. i have it but i haven't read it yet what about you meme? um it, it's been a long time but as far as i remember um bbs like it takes quotes and moments from the dark knight returns but in terms of the, pulls the costume yeah um so like there's a lot of superficial details it like pulls from it but at the same uh -huh. time a lot of the substantive details are pretty radically different so like that version of batman is very um anti-killing for example like he's very um he's very you know even when he's at his final battle with the joker he still doesn't um like he gets as close to killing the joker as he ever has and he still doesn't go through with it and later on he goes on about how guns are the weapons of cowards and um stuff like that um some people cite that there's a moment where it looks like he shoots someone to death but that's just uh but if you look at the surrounding details um it's most likely an artistic error because frank miller also drew it um so it's just very unclear as to what happened in that moment but none of the supporting writing supports the idea that he actually killed that guy so it's more just a fuck up and uh yeah it's um it, it's it, funny you should mention that because th that's that's one of the moments i talk about in the in the second video i say i made um was that hmm. what were those two particular moments when he when he's fighting against the joker and when he and all the moments where he condemns you know killing and condemns violence and or can sorry condemns gun violence in particular um contrasted with his his confrontation with the Joker in that short little moment um, in that little warehouse. And I think you were right. You said it was vague as to what actually happens. Um, I, I guess when I read it, I thought that it was intentionally vague. Uh, I didn't consider it being a, an artistic error. Yeah, I feel like in that you... warehouse fight in BVS, he, he kills people. Yes, he does. Oh yeah, he, no doubt. He's, he's, he's <laughs> oh well, this, well, is, like, this I Batman. Have, I don't have a problem with myself. I mean, if if this Batman is if he's hardcore and he's just like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'm fine with it myself. I don't, I'm not. I'm not into the. Uh, I don't really care too much about comic adaptations, but I know a lot of people. You know, that's a big serious thing for them, and they take it. You know, they take it very seriously, and it could be understandably so. I'm all about it. Okay, so <laughs> what what I think we was getting at was whether or not um, the Dark Knight Returns was adapted to the point of uh, Batman being, would you say, more more or less uh, pessimistic? Which I was interested to sort of say, like, I guess that's not really a, a problem either way, right? If he was pushed one direction or the other, if it were what you could call well supported, um, what what the problems come in for me when it's like. Uh, just how this story manages to meld around what uh, Snyder's trying to pull off. And this is the thing, I haven't seen BVS now in, in what feels like ages, because we, we watch so many films. Um, but I'm just, my memory's coming back, and it's stuff like, you know, uh, nobody cares about the guy dressed as a bat branding people in Gotham when he's been a hero for two decades. 
talk about the football clock. <laughs> it's just like what? It, it well, was, Batman like... hasn't. Oh, Superman hasn't heard of Batman, despite him operating for two years, uh, two decades. Sorry, out of uh, out of Gotham. Um, even though that's across the bay, and you would imagine quite close to Smallville, and you imagine that would just be a very famous thing. That's just like yeah, there's like a bat vigilante in, in Gotham City, but apparently Clark has not heard of this until he talks to that woman. Although I can say, as somebody who grew up in Kansas, we don't hear much about what happens outside of Kansas. Though well, he was traveling the world in Man of Steel, so you would imagine he would have heard it somewhere. And, but I, I stand by the fact that I think the whole world would have heard about the guy dressed as a bat, branding people and delivering them to the police <laughs> and stuff. That's pretty incredible. I, I think there is like a isn't there like a real life vigilante superhero person right now doing some weird things at some point in, on on Earth? I can't remember. There's actually quite a few real life quote unquote superheroes uh, like What's around this the globe. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't think there's any furry superheroes yet, though. I would think to, um, Batman. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Well, well you know, in, I'm talking about like the quote unquote uh, self-described superheroes that have um, that are dotted around the globe and uh, currently, I'm not sure if any of them are uh, oh, like suction, animal suction scene. cup man. Oh, <laughs> suction cup man. <laughs> I hope I hope <laughs> Slipknot. I hope Slipknot's a real hero. Well, slip, well so. yeah. Have you have you heard of Suction Cup Man? He's the man who can climb anything, including Trump Tower. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> have you never heard of Suction Cup Man? Uh, no, I've not. Man. Yeah, it was um because there was a bunch of Pymation that made some cartoons that, that, about it that were pretty funny. But it was a guy who uh he just decided to climb Trump Tower, and he just was climbing it with some suction cups. <laughs> and um people what a legend. Were the police the best part was the police kept trying to stop him but he would just navigate around the windows they were you, opening. you can't stop suction cup man you can't stop suction cup yeah. man, well right. they they eventually got him no. <laughs> they eventually catch him <laughs> what do we do how do we catch him I could training didn't prepare us for this look at me go so like should do. we stop him is the real question yeah Godzilla attacks, they're like, does anybody have suction cup man on, on his phone number? Look at me go! Mm. Um, well, maybe, yeah, maybe the... I don't know if it would be a better idea at this point, then, is it to um, maybe watch the video with you, uh, rather than just to see... Because this is the thing, I'm interested in, in understanding more about Snyder, and if I remember the, the first video from you, I felt like a lot of it... Um, was we, we were complimenting his work because he was referencing things from other forms of literature or well artworks and stuff yeah that's um yeah I, I think i did a poor job in explaining myself there and that's not something i really elaborate in my second video but i i, I would like to talk about that more yeah, well, um, well whatever you want um would you like to talk about that or or because i was going to say we can we can Sort of play your video and then use it as a uh, springboard for any kinds of discussions that maybe are brought up by you. I think you even referenced the closer look in your video, who's uh, who's popped on this channel before. So it'll be interesting to see what you say because I haven't actually seen your video. Oh, yes. I've only seen bits of it. Okay, yeah, sure, sounds good. Oh my god! All right then. Looks like Let's we're converting from debate fap into regular fap. Into watch fap. Yes. It's exhibition fap. <laughs> All right, there's your watch together link, everybody. Fapping, we shall go. Uh, where's the link? Oh, I see it. Never mind. This was a debate. I was joking. We were having a discussion. Gosh, chat is so critical today. <laughs> I don't know where they got that attitude from. Nah, I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> do, do. All right, we got three in here, apparently. Four, five, and that's the five of us. That that works out great. All okay, right. so this video is called You Don't Understand Snyder, a Batman vs. Superman character study. Um, let's, let's have a look-see. One sec. All right. A while back, I made my first video essay, talking about Batman v Superman, and why I believed that the film was, and I quote, a true work of art. 
Now, before I go on, I just want to say that before I made this video, I had around 100 or so subscribers. Most of them, of course, being friends and family. I really did not believe that I was going to get more than a few hundred views on it. But to my surprise, it really blew up. I just want to start off by saying that I am truly appreciative of those of you who took time to watch the video and hear me out. I do, however, understand that I could have communicated what I believed a little better. This whole video essay thing is still pretty new to me, so thank you for being patient enough to give me that grace. <laughs> I really could not have asked for a better response from you guys, so thank you so, so also, much. Also, I'm not sure what it is, but especially with my first video essay, and sometimes with this one as well, whenever I put my face in front of a microphone, my my voice gets really, really monotone and sounds just the worst. So, oh yeah, I, well, just I don't know don't why. Do that. But I, I, <laughs> you, you sound just fine, and don't worry. Uh, getting over that is is tough for a lot of a lot of YouTubers. I've even tried to uh, train people uh, here and there who are just starting out, and it's literally like they they're the chillest, normalest person when talking to you, and then they hit record, and then they go like this, and they don't know how else to do anything else, and you're like, oh no. You were so yeah. lively. Come on. <laughs> it's kind of just the, uh, I think it's just the, the almost when the reading the script voice. Yeah. Like, it, you know, that sort of thing where it's just like, uh -huh. there's a difference between speaking normally versus trying to seem like you're speaking normally when you're actually reading something. Yeah. You All just right. don't record like you're not recording in a sense. Which sometimes it's best yeah. to just be yourself. And it, it can be hard to do it. Um, I feel like I was pretty shit when I started out, but now I'm glorious. Something, uh, something that helps me is that I try not to have a. I try not to focus on the fact that I'm reading a script. I try to uh, like almost pretend like this is just a scripted conversation. So I'm talking to someone, and so I try to get that conversational quality in there. Um, mm. And and I find that helps with delivery a lot because you're going from I am reading a script to oh yeah I'm just uh, I'm talking to you and I'm just kind of sharing these ideas. It's just you have no ability to reply back to me. Um, so that's kind of how I try to approach it. There's also the angle that a lot of people tend to hate listening to themselves at all at first because uh, they they're just like oh no and they'll just automatically be critical of it and then realize that, oh no that's how I sound. It's just yeah lots of stuff to initially get over and as as someone's just mentioned in chat you're not using the Goodell voice so you're all good really that's that's the that's the, the video essay voice <laughs> that's the You'll worst the video essay voice is the worst <laughs> <laughs> what was Snyder's reasoning for erasing Batman's integrity well Snyder's thought process when he made this decision, like this it looks a lot like this. Well, that's actually funny. Uh, he actually makes it up the voice for the video. <laughs> Close the look. Um, though I, th <laughs> I don't know if he's getting better or worse because like, he's put himself on camera more now. And I think he's going to be doing less of the sort of um, epic celestial that, that, that voice he does. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, interesting. So he said, he said Snyder's created a Batman with no integrity. All right. I'm just gonna make sure we're good for copyright there. Cause, I mean, uh, you know what? I like the soundtrack in the Snyder movies. I do like the well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's generally pretty good. Hans Zimmer, pretty, yeah, good pretty old, good at making those the, tracks. Good old Zimmer, Zim man. Before I spend the next half hour talking about fictional characters in a superhero movie. I want to address the title of this video. I hope that, after reading it, some of you felt a little attacked, because it is absolutely natural to be insulted after being told that you don't understand something. You, the average DC fan who has seen all the movies, read the comics, and have passively engaged in the Batman and Superman media that is presented to you, you believe that I'd you harbor some under- I'd even go further with I, than, than saying, like, as DC fans. I bet most of the people who watch this are- I don't even know what I if I'd call them DC fans instead of more like incidental. It's like, yeah, I guess I like Batman or yeah, I guess I like superheroes. You know, to at what point does that make you a, like a DC fan when you maybe just like some characters? Uh -huh. or I imagine there's a whole spectrum. It's probably more likely that DC fans are watching this video um, out of everybody. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, I think because there's there's a lot of passive Batman fans who are like, I like Batman, and then they would have watched Snyder's and been like, whoa. 
He's fucking <laughs> killing people, man. <laughs> What's going on? Hardcore. Understanding of the characters. So you believe that your position on Snyder's iteration of them must therefore be the right one. Thus you are aggravated when someone tells you that you don't, in fact, understand it. Good. Now imagine growing up loving comics, loving Batman and Superman movies and TV shows, adoring the characters and relating to them in a way that you feel is personal. Then imagine being told to write and direct a film about them. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into adapting these characters who you've known all your life into a film that you've put your heart, soul, mind, and body into. You speak to THE Christopher Nolan, the genius behind The Dark Knight, about your ideas of what to do with the characters and the film, who ultimately approves it and encourages you to do it the way you want to. Then imagine releasing it and being told how stupid and idiotic you are for failing to understand basic fundamentals of those characters. Zack Snyder does not understand Batman or Superman has become arguably the most common response from critics to Snyder's iteration of these characters. In my last video, I did not spend as much time talking about the characters as I probably should have. My goal in this video is to convince at least some of you that these are well-written characters, and that Snyder, while he may not be the best filmmaker of all time, is actually a pretty good one. So the funny thing is, you're dealing with people probably with a rare position on the internet of, of that it's not really about whether or not he understands them, it's that they're poorly written characters. <laughs> That's probably what our position is. Yeah. Um, so Yeah, we don't really same. care, like, it's, especially when we talk to you about the comic book stuff and how that just isn't an issue that you'll have to deal with with us at all. Yeah, like, I'm interested in the conversation, um, but, like, I like the idea of trying to get an alternate universe Batman who is, like, jaded and disenfranchised and will re willingly kill people um, if the you know, if he deems it necessary or whatever. Like, a more so, a p a closer to Punisher-type Batman, and all you, you need to do is tweak his history to, to get him on a, on a pathway like that. But what you'll find, obviously, is people saying, well, that's not Batman. And I'd be like, okay, I guess. And then you get into all the the... Semantics of exactly what qualifies what Batman what is. Batman, Batman. Yeah. yeah. How um, much can you take away uh -huh. from Batman right. until he's not Batman anymore? He's the ship of Bat Theseus. Something I don't know. Uh, so Bat Theus. The uh, so my contention with these films is more so in in them as films in general. Um, but you know it'll be interesting to see what uh, what arguments we got here. We'll have a look see. Hmm. My hope for you is not that you grow to love this movie or these characters the same way I do, because at the end of the day, we're all going to have differing personal preferences. Instead, I hope that I can communicate an idea in a way that will make you at least see it from a different light, and hopefully appreciate it for what it is. Mm. This topic regarding Snyder's characters is far from outdated. This video by The Closer Look just came out two days ago as I began to write this, which is actually what made me want to do this essay before I did anything about Zack Snyder's Justice League. In the video, they talk about how Batman's integrity seems compromised in BVS, and they propose that, well, here, I'll just let you watch it. What was Snyder's reasoning for erasing Batman's integrity? Well, Snyder- What is he wearing? <laughs> I'm not sure, actually. It looks what is, like... What is... What is this? What is this? It looks so custom. <laughs> it looks like he... Like... He looks like a... It looks like a blanket. It is odd. I don't... Formatted into a... Because there's no... It's a, zipper or button? I think it's a middle, zipper. I think it's, it's a zipper. This is something I'd imagine, like, Cruella de Vil would wear. Yes. Right? When she's just at her house. Or in her evil castle, wherever she lives in the pits of hell. And the sleeves are rolled. Or the new up. Cruella, or like the the old Cruella. But the sleeves don't look like they roll down all the way. Like they're made to be <laughs> rolled up, or they're built with the the. Well, they come that way. Yeah. Rolled. Yeah, yeah. And then he wore jeans with it. Looks like it tries to be a turtleneck, but it just gave up halfway kind of through. Kind tries to be a turtleneck. Yeah. <laughs> it looks. Yeah, it looks like an extremely fat person wore a turtleneck for a long time and then gave it to a smaller person, <laughs> and it's just always stretched out now. It is a str I don't even know what to call it. it. Is a, what an odd garment. Hey, maybe that's the <laughs> idea. Is to, can, it, it attracts it's, you it's to the so, video. Because you're so it's fascinated so by it. bright and prominent. I just thought when he made this decision, it looked a lot like this. You know, I like movies with a dark, grim tone. 
I should make my superhero movies with a dark grim tone, that's it, yeah. And what could be more grim than killing people? Therefore, all of my superheroes need to be killers. Oh my god, that's it. Yeah, see, that's fine though. I imagine that if superheroes were real, it would be bizarre to see one that just did not kill people. Um, I think that would just be part of the. I think that'd be part of the job in a lot of circumstances, especially when you're dealing with like terrorist forces and stuff like that. I think it'd be tough to not ever kill people. Maybe if you're like really low level stuff, you know, like petty crimes and stuff like that. But when we get into like murderers and terrorist groups, like, uh, I mean, if we had a load of superheroes, yeah, a lot of them are gonna have killed people. Some of them might even have a preference for killing people. Um, I said, don't go down that road, Rags. Rags making Snyder's argument here. Well, it's not a bad argument. What's yeah, I was wrong? gonna say What's we wrong? we might have to remind the EFAP audience we don't actually think like the boys to me is far more realistic than the MCU. Um, oh, absolutely, it is. Uh, but um, yeah, the idea that you go into making um, I don't know, a superhero movie and you're like, I'm gonna make it dark and these these characters will kill that doesn't disqualify you from having made well characterized strong movie, you know. Yeah, and that doesn't mean they'll kill in every scenario, right. and it doesn't mean that they're bloodthirsty, it just means that they will kill. Well, I mean, all we have to do is reference Punisher. People approve of Punisher, so it's just like, right, so what if we had more mm -hmm. Punishers, more variations of people like Punisher? The Boys is cringe, like angst of... bro, agitprop. I mean, The Boys is kind of, can be really cringy, but I mean, it's the it best, very one of the best we've got in terms of trying to be more realistic. Um, yeah, the first season's worth a look. Second season shit, but yes. first season is worth a watch. Um, and like the the way that they get involved in like uh, advertising and stuff is like that would totally happen. It's kind of amazing in the MCU how they've managed to completely ignore the aspect that they would all be doing promotional tours of different things. Um, not just for like helping people, you know, like charity drives, and then it would be promoted through like TV shows, making deals with companies to help people, and then they would just get dragged further and further. And then there'd be some superheroes that only do that, and they barely ever do superhero work because it's just way better to make money and stuff, getting disenfranchised. That's what I like about the boys. Um, nice and neat, and neat ideas in that way. Um, but yeah, uh, this wouldn't disqualify Snyder from being able to make some really great stuff. Um, I do think he's a bit of an edgy boy, I, I will say. I, I, he's I, edgy. He's, yeah. he's an edgy boy. He is. He is very... He has a... You know, he, he likes a certain tone. But like you said, I don't think... I don't think that's what the, the problem is. I don't think people interpret that as being the, the problem. This was the I boy. think it's more about... Um, Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. It's just that some of the boys is literally a parody. It's like... And it's the most accurate superhero content we're probably going to get. In terms yeah, of what it, it would is. be like to have in real life. Uh, it is right now, whether it's parody or not. I mean, it... It is. Yeah, like it a lot of this... what it is. Uh, abs like, sometimes we're absurdly hopeful. And, you know, there's probably stuff I haven't seen that's, that's uh, accurate as well. But, like, MCU, for example. Someone just referenced... Do you remember the, the, the videos that Captain America does for, like, uh, in Homecoming? Where he's like, so... Yeah, yeah. You're in detention. It's like, yeah, that's probably the mm -hmm. only reference when there would be so much more than that. You're forgetting Watchmen? That's that's a good point, yeah. Watchmen's not too bad either for that aspect, I would imagine. He also did the tours um, during World War Two. Yes. You're, you're correct. I'm a genius. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, Colin, you were saying something? Hello. Are are you You're there? there, Mr. Sanders? Oh, oh no, 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 half an hour out of a mess. Not too bad. Oh, oh there he is. Oh, <laughs> there he is. Oh, he's back. Hello. Uh, hello. He seems to. Oh, is he having internet problems? Maybe. Possibly. He might. He might. Or maybe his microphone. Like, um, well, these people shut up already. Maybe he oh can hear us but can't speak right now because he did. I just saw him mute and unmute, so I don't know. Hmm, yeah, maybe, yeah, he maybe he's having microphone issues. Okay, um, back. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, oh, there oh you my are. god, there he is. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Things, All right, things are happening. I can hear you now. It's probably just the browser. Um, uh, you were saying something. I don't know if you remember what it was. I do not remember what it was. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's okay, though. 
Also worth mentioning for Chancellor Mansion, the, the Ben and Jerry's ice creams. Those those were promotional superhero things, which probably had to be licensed as well, so there you go. There's bits of that in the MCU. Oh my god, that's it, I'm a genius. That's it. Why would you bother to make these parody and insanely idiotic and insulting arguments about the filmmakers themselves? Have your own opinions. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But he, he, maybe that's his opinion. You know, maybe his opinion is that about Zack Snyder. He gave him some credit. Like, I think he believes it, you know? Right or wrong as it may be. What do you mean? So the, the have your own opinion thing. I think that's his opinion. Yeah. I'm assuming, so you're, you're trying to categorize it as have the opinion on the movie, but leave the person who made it alone, is what you're saying? I mean, have your opinion on whether, or what you think about the characters of the movie, but if you're going to let your opinion um, kind of be the, the ultimate standard against what the actual filmmaker, his thought process was, I think that's obviously wrong. Mm. Uh, but quite, what if he told you it was his opinion, follow. though? Like, just it, what do you the, mean? that you Wait, shouldn't take like he wouldn't want you to take it any more than just his perspective on what he believes Zach was doing. I don't think I understand. Um, so because it sounded like you were saying that he's making it sound as though that is the truth, rather than simply he believes this is how Zach approached writing these characters. Right, so he's saying that the entire thought process that Zack Snyder went through was because he wanted an edgy movie and he wanted his heroes to be killers to be an edgy movie. And that was it. Yeah, and I, like it. I don't think that's true. Um, I would even agree. So that, that was an example of him. Uh, I was going to say, I, I would agree with you that I think that Zack was doing more than that. Um, but that uh, at the same time, if Close Look were here right now, I wouldn't really in any way be annoyed by that. I would just be like, yeah, that's what he believes Zach was doing. So I, I got plenty of perspectives about it. Like, um, you know, Ryan Johnson with TLJ. It's like, I believe that he was trying to deconstruct and reinvent Star Wars. And that sounds like almost a compliment. And to, But like, I just think that it's it dr drove him into making like a mess of a movie. And the Russo, sorry, not Russo, the D&D &D who made Game of Thrones, I'm almost like 100% convinced that they were so apathetic about the ownership of that franchise and that the fact that they just wanted to end it, that that's one of the biggest reasons we got such a pile of shit for season 8. And if someone was like, hey, like stop like, telling me what like they were doing and what you, like blah blah blah, it's like, it's just, like leave them alone, I'd be like, oh well that is my perspective on um, what I think happened and why we ended up with what we ended up. I, I'm just curious why uh, you took such an issue with him saying that. Oh, so you're saying that the that his opinion, his perspective is that that was all of Zack Snyder's process, and that's not necessarily what I have a problem with. If um, if that's truly what he believes Zack Snyder's process is, um, then then I would ask him why, and if so, why is he attacking it? Because here he presents it as a very sarcastic thing. So I think I just, I assumed that it was purely sarcasm. Oh, that would be and less impactful, was... right? Like, if it was sarcastic, you could probably ignore it. Right, but that's the narrative he's pushing. Okay. I just, um, I don't know, we have different reactions to this, because I wouldn't, even if he said this about my, like, my favorite director, I would just be waiting for the arguments, I wouldn't care about him saying, like, he's just edgy, I'd be like, alright, what's your, what's your argument? Coming up with these horribly constructed straw man arguments for no other purpose than to humiliate and belittle the person who you think is wrong is ridiculous and infantile. Also, I guess we're just going to ignore the fact that in The Dark Knight Returns, which is the Batman that Snyder's Batman is based on, the Frank Miller comic book that I, that I reference, you know, he kills all the time, right? The Dark Knight Returns, the, the book where Batman takes the gun, breaks it over his leg and says, these are the weapons of cowards. And is also the movie that this guy puts behind him while he says all this. Batman shoots a man dead, plain as day. Okay, so this is the moment we were talking about. So that's um, right. Yeah. Uh, so that's so. There's no. So 
um, if we actually look at the position of the bullet um, hole there, because uh, here's the issue, we don't actually see an entry wound, um, I think. Okay, we, there might be an entry wound in his gut, actually, but um, we also have to remember that this is a mutant who's much higher durability than a normal human. Um, so uh, this is what I mean. Like, this art is so... It's hard to uh, tell, isn't it? Yeah, because it looks like that should be a shoulder wound, yet there might be a bullet wound on his uh, stomach, but... Um, I mean, there's too much of the body here in the middle. Like, it, it looks like there's a blood... Yeah, I was going to say, is that a blood splatter behind through. him? Yeah. Yeah, and that's, it's, 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 and the thing is, like, afterwards, like, there's a lot of references to the crimes that Batman committed to, like, um, breaking in and entering, la, 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 like, um, um, assault, but there's no reference to murder, which mm. you would think that would be pretty high on the list of stuff that he did if that was the intention, like, that would be number one, like, oh, he, sh like, they would have verbally referenced the fact that he shot someone dead, and that would, um, and that would be, like, pretty huge, especially considering the police are trying to find every excuse to put him away. But that's never brought up again, and he basically continues throughout the rest of the story as as if he hadn't just murdered a man. So that's either A, a huge contradiction in the storytelling, or B, that's just an artistic fuck up there. Um, yeah, because you'd assume this would be addressed if it were, if Batman's so against using guns and killing people, and then he does it, you'd be like, oh man, this this will probably weigh on him a bit, but I'm guessing it doesn't get addressed that way. No, and this is pretty early in the story too. And after this, he's basically he never addresses this moment. So that kind of supports the idea that this was not the intention. And in fact, when they did animate the Dark Knight Returns into that movie, they basically um, made it clearer by having him just shoot the gun out of the person's hand to make it clearer that it was not uh, uh, that it was not the intention for that person to die. Um, so it's 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 um it's it's a it's an interesting moment um to to look at but yeah I I don't think I I don't think there's enough supporting references in the book itself to say that this person was murdered. So I would I would make the argument that I don't think it really matters if he died. I think the the uh, what am I trying to say? There's a theme in this book, or maybe it's not a theme, it's just a, a, a recurring element um, that suggests that Batman is an unreliable narrator because it's his perspective that we're seeing all these things. And this point in the story is no different. And this is one of the examples where I believe that the story is reinforcing Batman as an you know, old, crazy senile crazy guy um, because yes it's possible that the mutant didn't die it's possible he did die though we're not really given anything else to believe one or the other um uh, uh, well my my reason for believing he didn't is that the police do not reference it at all um like it's not just batman who doesn't reference it it's the police um and the police do go out of their way to reference the other illegal things that he does in the book and murder never comes up, um, at least not this moment. I think that they, uh, I'm still, I'm trying to remember, it's been so long, but I think that they think he kills the Joker, but um, um, as far as this moment goes, it, it's never really brought up against him. So that's what indicates to me that this was not really the intention. Right, okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah. But Batman still condemns the use of firearms. So if you're going to trust Batman's perspective and then be completely okay with him using a firearm despite condemning the weapon, then I so, guess so we gotta, I, I would we find him... At, look, we, so sorry, we got to look at the reason he uses a firearm in this scene because this isn't... Uh, so in this case, um, he broke through a wall and he grabbed the gun out of the mutant's hand. So he happened to be holding the weapon. It was a circumstance, it was a circumstance where someone is being held hostage and... It was basically used as a utility to prevent the hostage from uh, being killed, yeah. but it wasn't like a, a premeditated. If I can it. just bolster that real quick, I imagine Batman's reasonable enough to know that if he knew that shooting a button with a gun would save a whole bunch of people, he wouldn't not shoot that button with a gun because he hates guns or whatever. I'm assuming he hates guns in the context of killing people. Yeah, and he wouldn't. He doesn't like to use gun. He doesn't like to carry guns. Well, that's not um, what he says. It, uh, uh, sorry, what? 
that's not what he he specifically condemns the use of any guns of all guns in any context yeah, for violence yeah like, well he just says that they're, they're, they're the weapons of cowards and ours are more elegant but this is like a so so like he doesn't carry guns because he doesn't like using them but if he's holding the gun because he burst through the wall and he you know he, he basically disarmed the guy um and the only time and all he has time to do in that moment is pull the trigger um that's probably what he was gonna like and this version of batman you are right he is more brutal than normal so um he is w more willing to do it circumstantially but that's all i can really see within the text of the dark knight returns as far as i remember um is that his use of, he's okay more... so then why wouldn't sorry go ahead oh, oh, oh I, I think I'm, i was done there so what, what were you gonna say so then why wouldn't he um specifically say you know whenever he says that line about you know guns are bad we don't use these as the weapons of the enemy then why wouldn't he specify you know guns are good sometimes or you have to well, know he doesn't the right think the guns are good sometimes it was just he was put in a moment where he had no choice but to use it to save a life like he was in it was either pull the trigger save the life and not necessarily kill the person just uh you know uh just wound them enough so that the hostage will be fine or b i take the time to reach into my to drop the gun reach into my utility belt or take the time to tackle him and that might result in something um so that was just uh that, again that was circumstance and this and in the moment where he's talking about guns being the weapons of cowards he's trying to get these people on his side and he's trying to explain his philosophy and um it's one of those moments where stopping to explain, like, if you're in a situation where you happen to be holding a gun because you disarmed a person and there's a hostage, like, that would, I, I don't, that's not really, like, that would be something that would come up during their training, but now, but this is him trying to rally them to his side and say, you do not need these, these are the weapons, these are the weapons of cowards, um, you know, our weapons are precise and quiet, and uh, but we, and I will teach you to use them over time, and I think during that teaching process, he, you know, this version of Batman might go, um, I will not condemn you if you're in a circumstance where you are forced to, to use a gun, like in a utilitarian sense, but I will not encourage you to carry them or stuff like that. But that's, you know, that would be a different um, scene that that's not the, that's not what he was trying to do during that scene, as far as I remember. And what's ironic about this is that and that's all the dceu had to use a gun in order to save itself yes i get it J oh james gunn oh yeah i get it that was fucking uh, gold that was fucking that, gold that was <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing fine fucking carry on it's all good no 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 please 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 <laughs> I mean, I assume uh, uh, with everything being oh, Colin, said. Oh, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Is it my turn? Oh, yes, I mean, yeah, you could buy it whenever <laughs> we're, we're we're super cash. No, I um, I that's all well and fine is to assume that Batman meant something differently. But what I'm saying is that we aren't explicitly told that. So, like, we can we can assume that he meant something differently. But at the end of the day. We don't know what he meant. All we know is what he said. And he said that guns are bad, objectively, and universally. Because that's that's what he said. Whether or not that's what he meant, we can infer about that. But I what he says are guns are bad. To infer that there, are, there, there might be scenarios where the use of a gun is acceptable, given the, the broad range of applications... In situ like I don't know, like if Batman said, yeah, if you're if you're a small scrawny woman and you used a gun to defend yourself against big burly dudes who want to kidnap you or kill you or rob you or rape you or something like that, I'm like, I I could see how Batman could be okay with that, you know? Yeah, I don't know why we would I, infer a literal interpretation rather than what most people like. If most people try and say like, even people who are into gun control like to the fullest extent. If they find out, like, someone used a gun to save a whole bunch of people, I doubt they'll be like, you used a gun, you piece of shit. So, I, okay. I'm, I'm saying, like, it, I, I think it's... I'm actually almost interested by the fact that he used a gun here to um, save a, a hostage when he's so anti-gun, because this is the kind of stuff I'd be interested in seeing Batman deal with. 
Um, and I do I believe... I just think it's interesting that uh -huh. um, this is such a, a stark contrast to put in the story. This is why I think that this panel in particular was made uh, vague. It was I thought it was actually intentionally vague was because, you know, all we see is him using a gun, shooting a man. That's, you know, any anybody who would say they know Batman, or at least the mainstream version of Batman, they would say, well, that, you know, that couldn't be Well, this be. isn't the mainstream Batman version of Batman as well, uh, just so we're clear, The Dark Knight Returns is, an, is like a possible right. future alternate timeline kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think it actually has an established placement in the DC multiverse. I would have to check what that um, would be. Yeah, I think it was all. Uh, I think it was All Star Batman is like what it is part of, or the, or like that All Star Batman was a sequel sort of series in a yeah, different multi in a different universe. Yeah. Yeah, but Frank Miller uh, insists that All Star Batman and Robin is like a prequel, is like within that universe. Though yeah. at the same time, it's so contradictory to the Dark Knight Returns Batman that oh, is like, <laughs> yeah. it's just like okay, you can say that, <laughs> but um. <laughs> um the, the you know that there's um there's some contradictions there plus um as as bar is terrible so um uh, it has um uh, <laughs> oh, there's some there's some killer quotes in as bar like um batman literally says to robin to dick grayson after he kidnaps him um and i do mean kidnaps him um he goes what are you dense are you retarded or something i'm the goddamn batman and that and there's <laughs> many, many such killer lines like that from batman in that book <laughs> so it's like, oh, the goddamn <laughs> batman <laughs> what i need you're, you're gonna be robin now he gets robin to eat rats um and starves him and all kinds of shit in that book it's pretty fucked wow, up what a what a what a <laughs> what? <laughs> you will become Rat Man. You are what you eat. Um, and he defeats Green Lantern by painting himself yellow. I think I showed. I you remember that. you showed me that. What? Yeah, because yeah, it. He defeats, he, excuse me. Doesn't he color his whole house yellow as well? Oh, he colors. No, he colors a room yellow. He colors himself yellow. He colors Robin yellow. And all Green Lantern would need to do is just like take a car from outside and throw it in. And it's just like, oh, look, the room's no longer yellow and you're no longer yellow. I've covered you in dust. Okay, you're coming with me now, Batman. Wait, why <laughs> yellow? Oh, to like camouflage himself? <laughs> oh, no, it's just um, green. Uh, so, Green Lantern, so this is a bit, uh, you'll find, probably find this a little Because I'm bad. so lost on why this is like, like even a. a like, it's like an alien is explaining to me interstellar battle tactics and I just don't oh. even understand. So they eventually, they so Jeff Johns eventually explained why this was, but for the longest time, Green Lantern's weakness is that his ring couldn't affect yellow. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of those things like, oh yeah, don't you know, every every superhero should have limits so that they can, you know, have danger and stakes. What's Green Lantern's weakness? And someone's like, I don't know, he can't move things that are yellow. <laughs> like, yep. Brilliant, Jameson. Why didn't we think of that? Oh, Wait. but the thing is, if that is his weakness, all all Hal would have needed to do in that situation is take a car from outside and just just basically dirty the room. Suddenly, the room's no longer yellow. He just throws some dirt on Batman. She's like, "Oh, you're brown now. You're coming with me." <laughs> but instead, oh. he just sits there bitching at him until Robin hits him in the trachea, and she's like, "Robin, what are you doing? You're gonna fucking kill him. I've got to put a straw in his throat uh, so he can breathe again." No. Oh. That's amazing. That is, His yeah. This is yellow. Uh, what about something like? Is there a line where it's like it's it's green, but it's going a bit yellower and yellower, and then it finally just the ring has no power over it. I, it gets I weaker, I assume, right? I shouldn't ask the specifics of it. It's very interesting, yeah. An interesting idea. Um, yeah, like if a car, like if it's a yellow car, can you lift the tires? You know, or yeah. does yeah, the yeah. yellowness of the car just proje project like an aura you around could affect non yellow parts of that car? Okay. Um, what if someone's just really cowardly and they're ye like yellow bellied? Um, I don't you know, think that, that would, would protect. Well, them. actually, um, they they later establish that um, you know the the light spectrum uh, because uh, uh, Green Lanterns um, draw their power from willpower, and it turns out um, that uh, the light spectrum um, correlates to something called the emotional spectrum. So each color 
kind of correlates to a, a color, and yellow is in fact the color of cowardice. It is the color of fear. Um, wow, so calling uh, Sinestro a coward. Well, he. Um, uh, <laughs> I think the thing that bothers me about Green Lantern mythos is that um, they're how the Yellow Lanterns work is because it's a little bit vague because all the other Lanterns they're drawing on their internal emotions while the Yellow Lanterns are like they are drawing on their capacity to instill fear, which I don't think lines up. So uh, mm. uh, it's weird. It's mm. so it's a little bit weird. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Not not the strongest part of 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 that, but. Uh, so if you're um, colorblind as a green lantern and you could not see yellow, would your ring still work? Oh, um, I think the ring, it's like, hmm. It, the ring has eyes. Uh, it sees. Yeah, the, the ring does have an AI on board, so I think that would, um, it would be like, what would, it would be going off what is um, yellow according to what we see, what we perceive as visible light. Um Oh, fair enough. Uh, right. We're on the adaptation um, sort of the road right now, so I'm still, I'm, I'm essentially arguing from that position. So, what it seemed to be is we're bringing this up as an example of how how can we say Snyder has done a poor adaptation of Batman being against guns when we've got this in in the comic. He's uh, everyone understands he's adapting, but wouldn't you agree that it's not binary? And that um, the Batman in BVS is rampantly killing people, while this one seems to have uh, potentially killed someone in a situation that was very specific. Yeah, yeah, no, I would, I'd agree with that. Um, so, like, I would conclude that the obviously, like, I would still say, if we're going from faithfulness, I would be like, so yeah, this Batman's approach with guns seems to be very different than Batman's approach with the. Uh, Let's call it weaponry, or at least this is kind of what I was going with with the whole like, oh, uh, he would use a gun for its utility. I do, I do think it's reasonable to assume any Batman who's one hundred percent against guns would still use them in situations where he's using it as a form of force that can cause better things to happen. And um, meanwhile, BVS Batman is like, you'll attach a grappling hook to a car and and bounce it around until it like explodes. It's like you can call that. It's like okay, so he's not. He's not really looking to not kill people. He's definitely killing people, and that seems to be the logic behind Batman's anti-gun approach um, in the other adaptations or iterations, rather. Um, yeah. So yeah, like he'll use a, well, like a stun. Well, I guess a stun gun's not like a gun gun, but like what? What about a gun with rubber bullets? Will he use one of those? Mm. In D Dark Knight Returns, he does actually use. Uh, so, like, he has the bat tank that uses rubber bullets, and um, he only uses them against the mutants who are much more mm -hmm. durable. But he does use rubber bullets. Um, okay. And he makes oh, sure to specify to Robin, "Don't worry." That's what he says. Bullets. Oh, are you saying that it, what he says is not congruent with what we're shown? Uh, oh, um, I believe oh, oh, that oh, I'm just Batman in bullets. The Dark Knight Returns is an unreliable narrator. And I honestly, I don't think, I don't know whether or not, like 100%, whether or not when he uses the bat tank, when he mows down the mutants, I don't know whether or not they were rubber bullets. Um, he but says he they're does. rubber bullets, so okay. they very well might be. But yeah. I'm coming from the position that he's not the most reliable person to be giving me information. So I'm, you know, I'm, I could be swayed either way. Okay. Um, let us, let us soldier on. Let hey, us do it. In this little scene that was also in BVS, Batman shoots with a gun, a criminal who took a hostage. Even Snyder's Batman didn't do that. It is also he does heavy. something much worse. He does um, something much worse, yeah. I was going to say, if he'd um, shot that guy in the head, it would have made so much more sense to me. Yeah, I'm actually curious what your point is. So, because in sight, yeah, because he, he kills the guy with a gun, essentially. Mm -hmm. In fact, he endangers the hostage in that situation because yeah. that explosion probably should have fried her. Yeah, that was a, in fact, it was shockingly stupid what he did. That's what I'm saying. Um, Shoot it, the guy it, in the head. It actually kind of, yeah, yeah it sort of boggles the mind that that was his approach there with the flamethrower man. Because, uh, uh, you know, uh, honestly, well, keep in mind, that, right? The... Well, just, just real quick, so the, I'm totally with rags on this, right? The reason why you might think, oof, should I shoot him in the head, is that he's, he's on the trigger. If he pulls that, even for a second, Martha's burned. 
It's like, hmm, okay, so how do we do this then? And I would say, like, take the risk, shoot him in the head, hopefully it's fast enough that she won't die. If you shoot him in the tank, even the sound of you shooting might be enough for him to pull that trigger. And you saw, like, it takes a couple seconds for him to explode. If he had just fired as a result of Batman firing, Martha's dead. Um, and she could be dead anyway from the inciting explosion. I think what he did in that situation was so much stupider than what he could have done. And um, I think that both shooting the tank to blow the man up versus shooting him in the head is an equal breach, if you see it as a breach, um, of Batman's no-kill rule. Plus, those things well, are the... made to, to vent a certain way when you shoot one of those. When, when you shoot a flamethrower gas tank, it is... Because uh, one of them is for the, the pressure and the other is the actual fuel. So it's supposed to vent upwards. They have specific vent things on them that do that. But that aside, yeah, it, he, he did. He killed him with, with a gun, essentially. If, uh, if I, I guess well, I guess you can carry on um, with what you're going to say. Well, I was going to say, wasn't the only wasn't the thing that ignited the, the tank was that he fired the flamethrower. Or did I so completely him misunderstand to... that? I, I assumed it was possible. just a matter of time that it was going to explode or something. I didn't realize that him pulling the trigger is what... You, you suggesting Does Batman, already... like, set up the situation so that the flamethrower man would have to kill himself. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought was happening. But could I then argue that if Batman knows that the guy is going to pull the trigger and so sets it up so that he would kill himself to do so... And we know this by him jumping onto Martha, assuming this is going to be the, the result. He's still, like, forcing the situation that he would kill him. Which, by the way, I'm not even 100% sure if that's what they want us to think happened. I thought it was just a matter of time. He shoots the tank, we get a couple of seconds before it explodes. Yeah, let me see here. Um, da, da, da. Who took a hostage. Even Snyder's Batman didn't do that. Okay, so he, he shoots a the tank... Mm -hmm. The tank the gas comes out, and then the gas ignites from his flame. Yeah, because his flame. Well, his flame has the light on it. There's, there's yeah, going to so be a light on the happen. end. That yeah. was absolutely going to happen, no matter what he did. So he's dead. He killed him. I would. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. pull this. Yeah, uh, because that's definitely how flamethrowers work. Uh, well, I was going to say. Yeah, this guy do a bomb essentially yeah the the talent. If you can look, his his canister's already being it's, it's partially exploding. It's on fire, yeah. It's got flames coming out of it. It is yeah. also hell. Oh, yeah. he's, he's already yeah. diving before. Like he's going like, oh fuck, what's happening? What's happening? And then he explodes. Like he he, he doesn't actually he's not aiming that flamethrower when he explodes. Okay. He kill he he kills him. Yeah, he like, blows like, up I think flamethrower pack with yeah. a gun. It yeah. seems to me we're supposed to believe that Batman shoots the tank in the hopes that the gas coming out of it will ignite and then the whole thing explodes. Which is what happened, it looks like. Yeah. And by the way, I'm, I'm not criticizing, like, the, the, I think it's a stupid this move to shoot him. video game logic for things is like, yeah. Yeah, um, and, but, but like, I, do you, do you actually think that that scene is more so Batman making the, the bad guy kill themselves through their own, like, hubris or whatever? That's how I interpreted it. Um, but, you know, moments before that, he was throwing people down shafts and stabbing them with knives so yeah they're they're dead this guy's just oh, added well, to the list of people that batman's killed it's i still think the, the best yeah. reference is probably the car sequence where he's trying to get the kryptonite from the truck he he does some huge like even the person he stabbed in like the shoulder or whatever there's arguments to be made that hey, maybe he didn't kill that guy you know but uh, the, what yeah, he does he to people stabbing, yeah yeah what, what he does to the people in the car chase there ain't no way they survive in it um they look, did so Yes, we, we know that this guy is willing to kill. Um, it's just that it was interesting that you compared what he did here as, like, less significant compared to the, the comic version, when, from what I understand, from what I've heard you guys saying about the comic one, is that we don't even know that the guy he shot is dead. Right? And the story makes more sense if he's not dead, as far as I remember. Yeah, there's... So I still think... Full disclosure, I still think he'd kill him in the comic. Um, okay. I did not think that he killed him in the in the warehouse scene. I thought that 
what killed him was the ignition of his own flamethrower. And my only point there was to create a contrast between this, you know, this guy who's willing to shoot somebody in the head in the comic and this guy in the movie who's, you know, even refrains with a gun in his hand from doing that in the same situation. But this would be ignoring, like, when he bashed that car and then pulled it along and then shot through that other car and then drove right through it and then drove through that truck and, like, crushed that dude's head and killed a whole bunch of people by throwing crates at them so hard that when they hit the wall, blood was shooting out of their head. It's, like, the same as in Zack Snyder's Justice League when, like, Wonder Woman's kicking these dudes so hard that their skulls are breaking on the walls. It's, like, they're killing people. And they're like killing people in a pretty, uh, pretty gruesome cold way. way. In yeah, a pretty, yeah, like especially that one with the grappling yeah. hook dragging the car. They're, some of those guys might have still been alive. It's like, man, what a horrifying like final minute to be alive in. They just kill him. He's killing people. My life of crime like, did not pay off. Oh no. I th- I think uh I I mean, I I suppose I need to read The Dark Knight Returns because now I'm sort of curious but like it really does seem like batman and batman v superman is much more ruthless than uh, than pretty much any incarnation in any comic yeah at least unless at least one as far as one that's trying yeah. to be traditional yeah exactly yeah right so i'm not i'm not arguing at this point for batman's integrity at, at either point in the story i just wanted okay. to put both batman in the in the same position, mm-hmm. virtually the exact same position, and mm-hmm. but kind of point out how that, interesting it was that they they did. It. Well, I, I guess the question Sorry, would be: Do you think that the comparison works if we have other scenes in the film where he's just killing people, like yeah, totally, like, just ruthlessly? In isolation, these two characters might make the same choice in the same scenario, but uh, surrounding context, they make completely different ones. I think that's got to be important, right, when considering the characters. Yeah, no, you're right. We implied that Batman kills the Joker in this graphic novel no, as well. No, no, the no, no, he doesn't kill the Joker. Um, he comes very, like, he... I don't um, know, I don't know. Okay, so, okay, I, I suppose, you, are you going for the unreliable narrator bit? Um, yeah, that, yeah. Um, okay, I will... Uh, well, that's kind of the impasse we're at because I would need more references for him being unreliable um, to, to really. Okay, have you that. have you heard the argument um, regarding the? I'm sure you have. You talked to to Imperfect. I think he might have been the guy who who talked about it. Um, but I don't know your your position on this. The the idea that you know the speech the the color of the speech bubble bubbles uh, designate who's talking. Um, and the fact that the at this point in time, the only time where um, or gray speech bubbles are designated to Batman's thoughts or Bruce's thoughts, and this is the only point in time where um, the Joker speaks, where the Joker and Batman speaks, where they or both of their speech bubbles are are gray. So normally, Jokers are green, I believe, when he's thinking, and Batman's are gray and so at this um, point dialogue between both of them is uh written in gray uh, I suggesting re- that i need to reread it to kind of confirm it but um as far as i saw this like because i was even rereading it as you had it on screen and he was saying stuff like it doesn't matter they'll know you you didn't have the nerve la 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 and basically uh, you know, he basically, you know, Batman has, you know, broken his neck to a point where he's not dead, but he is paralyzed. And the Joker just basically finishes the job by twisting it the rest of the way. Um, but he, but Batman himself was basically just trying to end the fight um, um, without killing him. And he was not willing to go all the way, even, even when using such a brutal tactic. Um, that's how I interpreted the scene. Um, and I, I would need to reread it to see if this unreliable narrator um, perspective holds water, because um, you know that's that would be something I would need to like look at like the, the entirety of the book to really um, comment on. Um, it's just been a while since I've looked at it. It still seems like such a difference in it's scale a... to me, though. Like this, this we're talking about all the details as to whether or not Batman actually ended a life in the comic, 
Meanwhile, in the film, nobody has any question. He does it many times. Yeah, he renders uh -huh. people unrecognizable, potentially, to forensics, like with how he shreds people in those cars, like just crashing through them while riddling them with bullets. Like they'd be burned and they'd be torn to shreds. Like that is an horrendous way to go. <laughs> And I mentioned before that I think, I still believe that Zack Snyder's uh, iteration of Batman is more optimistic than the Dark Knight Returns version. And I think that, you know, that doesn't look good in the light of what we're talking about right now. But I believe that specifically in regards to their outcomes or how they end up. So as far as their, you know, how they both go about their earlier uh business whether they kill people or kill one person or you know because obviously batman in the film is like you said mowing down people left and right whereas in the comic it's left pretty vague as to whether he kills anybody um and i just wanted to clarify that when i say that i think i think snyder's is more optimistic i'm referring more to his where he ends up and how the story ends for him yeah, I, I can't say much because I just obviously haven't read it. Um, it's possible, I'm assuming. Because you're probably talking about how at the end of BVS, Batman is um, looking to start the Justice League and defend the world as a team instead of alone sort of thing. Well, he does that, uh -huh. but that's the kind of the same in, in The Dark Knight Returns, only he's starting like a bat army with the mutants that he's turned to his side. Um, and um, Yeah. Um, and also, he never tried to kill Superman in that story. Like, he was just trying to defeat him. Uh, yeah, as for who's op more optimistic, yeah, I, I, I just can't say to it, really. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I, yeah, I guess we can... Um, we can move on, on, I think. Um, I, I, I sure, don't have maybe it'll pop up again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The optimism stuff, we shall see. It is also yeah. heavily implied yeah, that Batman yeah, kills the... No, sorry, I was just going to say, I'll talk about more about it in the essay anyway, so it's, okay. I'll probably sound no, like I'm right, repeating sure. myself. Joker in this graphic novel as well. The biggest problem with this video is that it sets up a ridiculously easy argument to knock down. They establish a few things. One, Zack Snyder made Batman kill strictly for tone. Two, there is absolutely no iteration of Batman with compromised integrity. And three, those who defend it attempt to justify Batman's killing. Okay. So, go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to say these statements. Like, so these are the. I'll take you away further. This is uh, closer looks, sort of premises in a way, right? Yeah. The one Zack Snyder made Batman kill strictly for tone. Um, I'm trying to see if I agree with these statements, and I would probably disagree uh... with that. I I think. As much as I think Zack Snyder's edgy, I think he has an idea behind a lot of the stuff that he's doing. I just don't think he executes it very well. I think it is more I than think that, this level. I'd say it's more like he's okay with having a certain tone. Maybe that's more uh, more apt. That he he's not mm -hmm. going to shy away from certain things because of what the the tonality of it would be. And he's fine if it has a darker tone doesn't necessarily have to be I mean, going for tone first. There's those clips where might, he, he but... just he fully believes that uh, a lot of these heroes would be killing people. Um, and there's the thing, there, there is <laughs> as much to EFAP chat's chagrin, I, I agree with portions of what Zach was saying in that interview uh, in terms of really, really fundamental ideas. And what I'm referring to is just that there will be, if we had superheroes like Batman and Superman, there are going to be people who die as a result of their actions. Um, yeah. But that's not, that doesn't make them bad people and doesn't make them have zero integrity. Like, the, it's much more complicated than that. But at the same time, you know, I think his, his, that interview, his approach was, like, pretty cringeworthy. Like, I think, because he just, he's, like, getting really angry at the idea that it's an impossibility or whatever when... From what I've learned in my time in EFAP is that you got to try and bridge the gap because a lot of people uh, do not appreciate even the implication that Batman could end a life. So, um, uh, point being, I think Zack was going for more than just, I want to make Batman kill um, because tonally it would be dark. I, so I, I'll disagree with statement one anyway, if that was from Closer Look. 
Uh, two, there is no other iteration of Batman with compromised integrity. I mean, I wouldn't know. Compromised integrity. Um, so if, if compromised integrity, I assume you're just meaning that he will kill people? Is that what you're referring to for compromised integrity? Yes. Because that's really what he, he focuses on in the video. Well... Let me see if we're not going in regards to his integrity. Well, don't the um, the so you're saying that he's saying that there's no iteration of Batman where he kills people apart from DCEU Batman? Yes, there's the um, well, I mean, what, what's the other one? With Nolan the... Batman kills a couple people, um. It's, I guess, so you got Raj al Ghul, he kills in Batman Begins by leaving him when he could have saved him. Then you've got, he tackles uh, Harvey Dent, and Harvey Dent falls and dies. And then you've got, um, does he kill anybody in Dark Knight Rises? Not on purpose, but there's probably people that die, like, by a collateral, I would assume. Oh yeah, and to clarify, right. killing, not murder. Though... Um... I wonder would when Talia, it, would, when he blows out the thing and she crashes down, that kills her. Would oh, um yes. would what he does to Ra's al Ghul count as murder in a court free? Um, well, because murder means like an intent. Uh, that one, that one's like that but, one's um, complicated. That would be. I think that would be, you, that would be more like it's, it's probably for, uh, it's, well. It, it's is it though? Because it was Commissioner Gordon that knocked out the. the the, the complication what, is, what was your totally. intention with the action that you did, and what were, you know, what were like your responsibilities potentially? Do, do, that one's tough. Um, I think that you could make the argument that he killed him, but I don't know that you could necessarily make the argument that he murdered him because murder is like its intent, and also what was the action specifically? Right? Did you cause someone's yeah, that one's, that it's, it's, it's the complicated one because of the fact that he could save him, and he, he acknowledges him, that, but he, but he says, I won't. Yeah. Because they did uh, hatch the plan to take down the train. Together, him and Gordon. They planned that. Um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, you could sorry. argue it goes down because of Batman as much as Gordon. Yeah. And Batman was there. Were they accounting for the fact that Raz would be on the, uh, Raz would be on the uh, train um, while they were hatching the plan? That's an important factor as well. And would you right. would it be reasonable yeah. to assume that by destroying the train that it would have killed him? And if the answer is yes, then it's like, well, at that point, like, yeah, now we're starting to get into some really uh, murky territory. So, um, that I I think I think because someone in the chat said, do you just imply he manslaughtered him? It's like that's probably what that would that would probably be where I'd arrive at. Yeah, uh, I, I imagine that's the baseline, and it could be pushed up to murder depending on definitions and specifics. Um, because I'm um, not sure exactly yeah, but, how but it works. It, but, but if it was murder, it would be one of the. It wouldn't be like first degree. It, it would be like right. lower down. Uh -huh. If if it was that, it wouldn't be something like that. Um, someone said negligible homicide. I don't know if that's the correct term either. Well, I mean it. Problem is, it depends on like what jurisdiction we're talking about, and also depends on whether we're talking about you know like what like criminal charges, or if you're talking about like negligence that results in in death, and and like yeah, it it's it's uh there's a, there's a lot of factors in this one. Uh, so yeah, the idea that if what close some look means by this statement is there is no other iteration of Batman who kills, then yeah, he would be wrong. I'm not sure if that is exactly what he means. Um. And then, point three, the film attempts to justify Batman's killings. Hmm. What do you guys think about that? It's, um, well, I don't think they so... talk about him killing in the in BBS. Like, they don't really discuss that specific mor um, element of the morality. They're more against the branding than the killing. Yeah, the that. branding gets a definite con condemnation from the, the plot line. But him ending lives during, like battle scenes. I don't know that there's much condemnation on that front. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I can't... Yeah. Well, wouldn't I, it be I, reasonable I think... to assume that um, 
the co condemnation of the branding is would uh, would coincide with any other killing that he would do. No, so no. I think on paper that sounds very agreeable, but I think what my impression of the film was was the branding is cruel, but the killing was necessary. Now, don't people get killed in prison because of the brand? Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, that's yeah. Yes, and if that you was knew the, that, but again, if you know that and you do it. It's like yeah. I was, I was gonna say, again though the difference in necessity. I don't. I think the film does condemn that uh, the branding and thus yeah. killing. I don't know that it works to condemn him. Uh, and this is the thing, it's an interesting conversation. How much of what he does in the action scenes is necessary when he could be, you know, disarming and dismantling rather than ending life. Um, I, I find it all very interesting to talk about in relation to all superhero content, but... Um, the I, So, this is the thing. I am trying to figure out whether or not the film condemns his killing. I don't... I, the idea that the film justifies Batman's killings? I, I think that's going a bit far. I don't think the BVS really does that. I don't know what you guys think about that. Um... In the later portions, like the idea that, like in the warehouse fight and the flamethrower man, the idea that you're trying to, you know, save someone and these goons have all this, this big plan that they've got, and and that's in, you know that's that's different from the you know branding thing. And I, yeah. I don't, I guess I don't have a problem with the film, just sort of almost accepting the idea that yeah, he kills these dudes, they're bad, and he's trying to save and Martha. Yeah, I, on with it. I wouldn't yeah. even. I don't know that he, I would even describe it as justifying. It's more of a just—it's a grim reality that he's trying to save her, and this is what it's going to take, sort of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't have an issue with that in in BVS. Um, and, and I think it, something that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and I think it's worth like looking at this from like none. If we don't, if nobody in this call um, knew who Batman was, but we did watch Batman v Superman, would we be able to suss out? any kind of morality on killing just by watching Batman v Superman? Like, do we have to reference um, our existing knowledge of the character in order to even have a conversation about his killing in this film? Because I do not think that the Batman, as presented in this film, ever even... I don't think they come close to talking about the morality of killing, nor is it really inferred that there is any kind of morality, um, immoral issue behind his killing especially because after he goes through his redemption arc quote unquote when he refuses to kill batman he's still more than willing to kill the all the people in the warehouse so to me that kind of tells me that the killing was never if if it was Zack snyder's intention to talk about uh batman killing he is relying he has forgotten that he is creating a new batman that needs to stand on its own and um, as a result, he's very poorly communicated this idea that um, th that um, this is supposed to be a story about him killing or that it's supposed to be like a tragedy uh, about the tragedy of him uh, crossing that line because we don't really get any references for that just if, if you're judging the film on its own. A quick clarification. Someone said, uh, wasn't it Lex that was killing people in the prison to make Batman's branding look even worse? Um, and I think what we concluded after that being added in was that Batman should stop branding people if he knows that branded people get killed. Yeah, yeah. if it's happening anyway, it doesn't, like, even if right. it's being paid for by somebody, you can stop that by not branding people. Yeah. yeah, we already knew that someone was killing them. Exactly, it doesn't, it's not relevant. Um, I'm, we can continue, I don't know if, is there anything you wanted to say about all that, uh, Colin? Uh, no, we can continue. I mean, because yeah, he's gonna. Uh, if these are he three, me is gonna say more about it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if these are three fundamentals he's put forward, that yeah, I'm, I'm already in a. I haven't actually. I think I watched some of this video when it came out. I didn't watch a lot of it though, so I can't. I just can't speak on it really. As does the film itself. Now, as far as the first and last point, I'll be covering that stuff later in the video, so just keep that in mind. But I want to fixate on the second point for now. So let's ask the obvious question. Is there an iteration of Batman whose integrity is compromised? Now I could dig deep into all the obscure iterations of Batman that kill to prove my point, but instead I'm going to talk about the most relevant version, Batman from The Dark Knight Returns. Many people appeal to this graphic novel as a reason why Snyder missed the mark with his interpretation, but I'm convinced that these guys either only watched the cartoon adaptation- Is it adaptation interpretation or inspiration? In the sense of he could be inspired by something, but also change the, you know, like change it up in a sense. 
in that yeah, one. Yeah, no, I would say that would be a good, uh, probably a better word to use. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the thing about this is in trying to, trying to bridge the gap between a lot of people who would uh, have an aversion to Batman killing, it's like, I think from what I understand from them, if you can cite Batman who have killed, that is not the, the that that doesn't um pre like to them that's not an example of how they've been wrong this whole time. It's more so a misstep in whatever iteration that is as well. Uh, if it was definitive, that seems uh -huh. to be what I'm gathering. I'm still learning about all this adaptation argument stuff because I I just it's really hard to collect it all in a co coherent way. But from what I gather. It's not even about the initial, the first version of whatever the character is. It's about the one that's commonly accepted and known to be true, and the attributes that we know to sort of... You, you look to the sky and you see this vague collection of attributes, like, that is Batman. And one of those things is he does not kill. Um, and so, if you find an iteration, even the first comic that Batman's in and he kills someone in it, I imagine that they would be like, yeah, that, you know, that's a... That's like proto Batman that's not Batman and then if you find one that's later they'll be like that's an offshoot of Batman or if you find like the Dark Knight uh, Returns I imagine they'll be saying it's a mistake to interpret what he's doing as killing and um, so that's why this gets really complicated and that's why I, I actually prefer just talking about the story in and of itself like with Snyder's work rather than did it match people's understanding of what Batman should be doing Yes, often arbitrarily chosen version of a character for which there are practically infinite versions and interpretations. Yeah, because our hot take is already that I would, I, I, the second you tell me that Batman is a hero who would never kill, I'm like, oh man, can we give him some stories that really stress that, that rule? The well, point where it's because when you think about Batman, it's like, Batman is super interesting because there are a lot of things you can do with exploring I mean, he shares a lot in common with Daredevil in that regard of, like, this is a guy who's sort of teetering on the edge. Um, and, I mean, exploring what it looks like when he goes over that edge and, like, starts crossing that line and just decides to commit to that. You have a lot of great stories about what that does to a person, whether or not it's a calculus that needs to be done for, like, greater good or things like that, the nature of principles. And I, th I don't like the idea that we are, we are, we are cutting off those stories from being told because of some arbitrary decision that we've made that like Batman can only be this type of way especially when you're talking about comics and there are so many different like versions and interpretations of the character yeah and and I want to clarify because some people in chat say there are stories that stress it so what I'm saying is like we, we've talked about this before but you know the hard punch he gives to a criminal to knock them out it's like unfortunately this one time it kills them and mm -hmm. That's something yeah. that, like, I've I've heard people say in response, like, well, that's your responsibility as a writer. You don't have him kill any of those people. And I'm trying to suggest, I'm like, not... the important part of Batman, from what I understand, is he doesn't intend to kill. He doesn't want to end life. But... Yeah, murder in the first degree. Which keeps his character well, intact a... in a yeah. lot of ways. I think so, That was yeah. a recent Daredevil arc was where... I, I can't remember how it resolved, but I remember that it was, it was like the idea that he accidentally killed somebody. He hit them in the wrong way, and then it killed them. And then just dealing with the consequences of that. Yeah. A lot of potential in mm -hmm, these types absolutely. of stories. The book, which sacrifices a lot of the themes, dialogue, subtext, and story beats for simplicity and marketability. Or they looked up random panels on Google Images and thought that that would be enough to support their argument. But it really doesn't sound like they read the book. At all. I promise I'm not trying to sound snobby. I promise that I am not trying to gatekeep The Dark Knight Returns. I just can't believe that somebody could read this book and walk away from it with the interpretation they have. It would be the equivalent of engaging in a conversation with someone about Jurassic Park and listening to them tell you how much they love how the film portrays scientific discovery in a positive light, and how the film pushes the idea that we as a society should continually push the bounds of scientific discovery because of how beneficial it can be for life. You of course respond by asking what the heck they're talking about, and they show you this scene. Okay, I'm gonna be careful copyright here, but... I mean, I get your point. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely understand the point. I yeah, I. That's a good example too. The um, Jurassic Park one. Yeah, the only thing I suppose is that if you're transposing this to how could you watch the Dark Knight Returns and conclude that Batman should never use guns or should never kill? Is that what you're saying? 
uh, and walk away from it with the interpreta interpretation that Batman is 100% a morally upright, virtuous character in the book. Okay. Just going to pause for safety once again. You know how YouTube be. Yeah. They like to get all flizzy. When one watches the rest of the movie... That was all misunderstandings. I fucking... <laughs> that, that, bit's from, that bit's from The Lost World, right? The, the second movie you got there. Uh, this this yeah, one. That one, yeah. I was, um... Yeah. I, you know what? I'm just gonna take a small tangent here. I was, I was watching um, oh the Grand Tour. I decided to, sh to I wanted because As said he hadn't seen it, the one where they have to build a car in the desert and drive out of it. The Grand Tour episode is a really good one. The yeah, Mongolian cool. Special, I think it's called. Um, oh my god, yeah, yeah. There's a part where their constructed car is doing better than the camera crew's car, and they have to help the camera crew get out of a situation. <laughs> and, like, Jeremy Clark is just smug <laughs> throughout the whole thing. It's great, because he's just like, our car's fine. Um, and when they pull it out by attaching the, the pulley cable, and they do it all, um, I was like, oh, that was great. And then I had, like, a brain flash, and I was watching, I was like, oh my god, this reminds me of fucking Lost World. And it's, it's the peak of subjectivity, right, in terms of what is something that pisses me off about this film, and, and it's, um... Someone I've brought up before. I have lots of other issues with the Lost World. What pisses you off with the Lost World? This, this. So, um, what happens in the Lost World is they're all in a caravan-y type thing, like the main cast, and they've got a baby dinosaur with them, and the T-Rex is getting pissed. They want the baby back, and so the T-Rexes start attacking the um, the caravan thing until it gets pushed off the edge of a cliff, and this guy who's been like helping them out with supplies and and looking out for them and giving them bits and bobs he he comes across it and he's like oh shit and so he attaches the pulley cable of his car to the caravan and uh he, he's like it's all raining he's constantly slipping over he's desperately trying to get everything right for them i think he attaches the other side to a tree and like uh it keeps undoing and pulling off because the ropes aren't working properly people in chat will know exactly what i'm talking about if you remember this um and he's desperately trying to pull them away from the cliff. And as he starts doing it, the T-Rexes, like, notice him. And start going toward him. And he just commits. And, uh, he just gets them up enough so that they won't die. And then he gets pulled out of the car by the T-Rexes and pulled into pieces. And I remember being like, Oh! You did not just give the best character in terms of, like, all the action they just took the most horrendous death in, like, the history of Jurassic Park. What the fuck? It really Bizarre. upset me. I agree with this chat in, in 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 the description of that scene. The desecration of Eddie. Yeah, it's um it's funny because people reference the one from Jurassic World, right, where the girl is given a horrific death when she's just a babysitter that lost the the children because they deliberately fucking subverted her. And it's like, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. But this one was way worse. This guy was like a full on hero, and he gets torn to shreds for it. I was just like, oh. It's so narratively unsatisfying to watch this. We will do it one day. We'll do it a Jurassic Park arc. A Jurassic Park. Justice for Eddie. A Jurassic Park with Ed C. Yes. Uh, Eddie deserved better. Deserved so much better. Justice for Eddie. Is Eddie the new Don? Yes. Eddie Don. I always felt bad for him. Never... And as a kid, I was just like, no justice was done here. This was cruel. Which is the rest of the movie. <laughs> everything changes. In the same way, yes, this one panel of The Dark Knight Returns seems to suggest that Batman is entirely against the use of firearms, entirely against killing. But when you read the rest of the book, everything, once again, changes. One of the most interesting and essential aspects about The Dark Knight Returns is the challenge that Frank Miller poses to the legend of the Batman. He doesn't write Bruce Wayne's character as a moral and virtuous hero who does only good, in fact, I would say that The Dark Knight Returns takes a far more pessimistic approach to Batman than Batman v Superman does. Miller writes Bruce Wayne's character as an old, senile, hard-headed, delusional mess who is so obsessed with his own legend that he does things like shoot a man with a gun, then hypocritically condemn the weapon a few pages later as if he didn't just use one. Miller right. <laughs> so, 
I'm gonna basically rely on meme repository for any kind of response here, because I'm just so unfamiliar with the comic. Yeah, well, I've basically already... Um, that was basically exactly what yeah. we talked about earlier. Yeah, so I'm, the only reason I'm not talking here is just because I feel like we've already gone over, like, how I don't really agree with that interpretation of the scene. I don't think there's any references to support that Batman killed in that scene, and that the use of the gun in that scene was a purely spur-of-the-moment sort of deal, as opposed to an endorsement of gun use in general. What about the, um, mm -hmm. the assessment of his of Bruce Wayne as a character in the comic? Um, I, I need to reread it to see if he's that delusional, because he's like, he, he's definitely, th there's definitely questionable aspects to him, um, like him referring to the Robins as soldiers and the stuff when um, uh, Batman is usually trying to, um, when, when the uh, Batman's relationship with the Robins is a little bit more complicated than, um, oh, I'm just training um, soldiers in an army, um, but I don't know if I agree with this idea that he's delusional, but it's been so it's been so long since I've 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 uh, properly read the book that I'm uh, kind of just going off memory at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will I'll, I'll I'll leave that I'll leave that on the ground at the moment, um, just to avoid like leading anyone astray in case I'm mistaken here. Um, but I, I and this is really I, just I my it. interpretation as well. I could totally be wrong here. I'm I'm totally fine with being wrong. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm... Um, I think that's fair, but Sorry, you, you did just say, like, to come away with a, the alternative perspective would be, like, as insane to say Jurassic Park is saying science is always great or whatever. Um, well, all I'm suggesting is, like... Yeah, I, I believe that. Yeah. Um, I, would say your, I would argue that you come across as though your perspective is a little bit stronger than simply what you think happened. You would probably argue that is what happened in this. It's not what what should be, like, uh, may maybe you're different on this, but if someone said that Jurassic Park was exclusively pro-science, I would tell them they're wrong, not that that's their perspective. Okay. Uh, I, I, do you agree with that or no? Agree with what? The, the idea of telling someone they're wrong if respond? they uh, assert that Jurassic Park is trying to tell us that we should always and thoroughly pursue science. If they're saying that that was the the intention for the film, then yeah, I would I would say they're wrong. Hmm. If they the original intention, not necessarily, they could get that out of it. You can look at art in, I, I think, two different ways. Sure. You could say, um, this is what I got out of it. Um, of course, uh, sorry, I probably wouldn't want to lock them off until I hear the argument, and if they said something like, like you, like you suggested, they show that scene, they're like, see, they're trying to say in this film that the wonders we get out of science um, are well worth what the dangers are, and that in this film it's just a matter of the human human error, and that that can be corrected. I would just be like, I would probably just cite the scene with Malcolm and be like, I really don't think that that's close to what this film's saying. Um, the irony is, of course, that that universe, it just goes on for fucking ever with the humans making the same mistake over and over again and the films repeating the message because there's nothing else they know how to do in terms of telling Jurassic Park stories. Um, this applies to uh, Terminator as well, they're just telling the same story because they don't know what else to do. Miller creates an unreliable narrator in the character of Bruce Wayne, which is what makes this novel so good. Not because it fixates on the easy and comfortable aspects to our hero, but instead focuses on the compromising and uncomfortable nature of the character. This is an important place to start, because Snyder, like Miller, did not want to fixate on the mainstream, mass-appealing superhero that we all love, but instead wanted to work with a challenging and broken version of that character. The only difference is that Snyder actually writes his version of Batman as someone who actually redeems themselves, pulling themselves out of the abyss and back into the light. Um. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's... I guess I'm just trying to just kind of process all that. So, this the establishment that both of these characters have done bad things, and one of them turns good again or realizes their mistake and the other one doesn't. So in the sense of BVS, Batman is convinced not to kill Superman at the last moment when 
um, by happenstance, uh, Superman inexplicably says saved Martha, you know, and all that sort of thing. And that coincidentally starts a chain reaction of uh, uh, of him. I get, I get not essentially not killing Superman. So I'm trying to see if the process of that happening is impactful to the the character, or if, I guess it's fortunate. But Batman did ultimately decide not to kill him, so that's something. Um, I mean, we've so, we've taken issue with that for a long time. That revelation, because uh, from what we yeah. can understand from the story, he already knew that Clark had parents. Um, the idea that it's the name itself that clicks him into being like, "Oh man, he's not that much different than me," or something like that, uh, was bizarre to me when he was committing to this because of the danger Superman represented uh, to the world. Like, um, yeah, I was I was trying to mull over in my head if there was if if how he learned about it and why he why he actually stopped impact it you know would impact this point. And I, don't, I don't think it does. Uh, so, um, it's more execution of the concept. It, it's strange though. Um, but I guess it he does ultimately decide what he decides. Um, and I I can't speak as to the the comic or the or the you know the other stuff, but. Hmm. Um. Well, because what a lot of people I've seen say is the remember he says something like Martha won't die tonight, and it's supposed to be like a uh, a form of when he saves Superman's mum, he's he is saving his own mother in his in yeah. his mind symbolically. So clever. Well, I'm I'm trying to be <laughs> nice to Snyder for a moment here, but like, yeah, I don't. I, I thought it was all insane. That like the whole Martha sequence, I will forever think is insane. Uh, there's so many better ways to have done that, especially with Lois arriving at right the right moment to go. It's his mum's name. He has mum. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Um, but well, I uh, if we could get more from uh, from you, Colin, about so like, how do you feel that uh, he's his like, what do you think his arc is in BVS exactly? I guess. So I think you're right in saying that um, his his revelation that you know oh I shouldn't kill Superman is you know doesn't really impact his point that you know he still represents a very real and uh, danger to the world. Like that doesn't really change. Um, I think the the point of it was that it was more of a less of an intellectual problem with Bruce and more of a an emotional breakthrough for him. Um, just kind of more realizing uh, kind of why he does what he does in the first place. It's not utilitarian in its um, essence. It's it really is more about protecting the individual and protecting the the defenseless in that moment superman was defenseless but it wasn't his so defenselessness I, I, that got him to stop he knew he was the whole point was to make him defenseless so he could kill him right that's what i'm saying it was it wasn't really a intellectual problem i think it was an emotional thing for for him at the moment it was a very in the moment thing if um, that makes sense in the moment it was a very in the moment to kill superman to spare him, I'm no, to him. choose not to. Uh, to spare him, uh, yeah, I'd say it's an incredible coincidence that he didn't. Uh, that led to those events, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, because I'm trying to wrestle with this a bit. <laughs> like, is because uh, it annoys me that the structure of that sequence begin. It all happens because Superman is unwilling to just tell Batman in no uncertain terms. It's really hard not to compare to um, Civil War. Because, uh, especially with how closely they, these came out, but you have, uh, I think all Superman says is, like, Lex is, is doing something, like, there's something going on. If he was, like, hyper-specific at any point in that fight, in terms of uh, Lex is manipulating you, and that he's, uh, he's killing people, just to get through to some information to Batman, instead they just, he commits to the fight, pretty much. He drives him through uh, a building and stuff. Meanwhile... I think Cap appeals to Iron Man several times that Bucky was um, mind controlled or brainwashed or whatever, only for us to realize that Iron Man does not give a fuck. Um, if only we had that sort of back and forth, because like this, this whole payoff doesn't happen if Superman just was like 
desperate to tell Bruce exactly what the fuck's going on. Instead, he, like, he's very aggressive when his mum's life is at stake. And then, of course, I don't believe that Superman would have allowed Batman to be the one to go and save Martha. I, uh, and I know it works for the idea of, like, he's gonna save his mum symbolically, but, like, from what I understand of Clark, ain't no way that he's gonna have Batman do it rather than himself, especially with super speed. Yeah, with his, with the amount of power he has at his disposal, it's, uh, I wouldn't risk it giving this guy in a bad outfit, uh, I honestly, to walk and fly. My thing is like, oh, go and see what's, what Lex is doing with Doomsday. It's like, Batman, no offense, like, I know you're fast with your, with your bat wing, um, but I think Superman can get to Martha, save her, get her to safety, and get back to Lex before Batman could get to any of them. Yes, he definitely could, given how fast Superman can fly. I mean, we saw in Justice League, he's so fast he can keep up with Flash. Yeah. Yeah, that is super oof. fast. And that's he's the canon one. That was, that's right, that's Snyder's vision, so... <laughs> what do you think? Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I definitely agree with you. Um, I think that sequence could have been done better. Um, I think, I don't know. I, I find it hard to believe that if Superman, um, arrived and quickly started telling Batman all the, all these details about Lex Luthor and his, and his mother, and he's got my mother held hostage. And I have a hard time believing that Batman would care or listen to him at that point um uh, i'm sure don't you think that we should have seen that though superman literally arriving and being like Bruce, yes you don't I understand do. luke's uh, I do. lex has my mother and he's trying to make us kill each other because if it, yeah, and if we I got that superman... scene and batman didn't care like oof batman i was gonna say Christ. it doesn't look great for batman like, at that point either yeah like that that don't look good right I, I agree. I think Superman definitely should have... It would have made more sense for Superman as a character to focus less on, you know, punching and kicking and, and more on telling you, um, him exactly what was going on. What did you think about what Snyder said in relation to uh, he didn't want them talking because it's embarrassing to have them in these costumes talking to each other? This is the first time I'm hearing that. Yeah, he what said did he say? Um, if anyone can get the exact quote, so I'm not. Uh... <laughs> it's essentially oh. that the, because of how characters, the superhero, the the appearance of them in their costumes and how costumes can kind of look, it would be less than ideal, we shall say, if uh, they were just sitting around talking to each other. I guess he thought it looked see. too um, silly or looked too ridiculous. Let me see if I can find the quote. Damn it. Yeah, I had to really do some digging to find the um, the, the clip because I had been buried a tiny bit because um, I had to find like a mirror for it because for some re cause it was part of an Empire Magazine interview, but Empire Magazine no longer had it. So I had to dig through fucking uh, mirror after mirror after mirror. They, to lost, get the their, thing. they lost their Zack Snyder interview. Someone said that's, there's a reason why the masks go off in the MCU films. So to be fair, fucking Star-Lord, Iron Man, a lot of the others, they look badass as fuck with those masks on. Um, yeah, yeah, I prefer the masks on. Masks, masks are often worn in order to, to enhance one's um, intimidation. You could say, or yeah, like their presence to make them more intimidating. And secondly, yeah. um, they don't come off for that reason in the MCU. They come in off because they want to show the actors' faces as much they as possible. They want to show the actors' faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thing. Um, but we can actually, I can find the time code on the if that movies probably. Uh, oh yeah, if you can do that, obviously, because I don't want to misquote him, I'd feel bad. Yes, so let's see, la 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 la, just, okay, um, ba, 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 ba. ah, here we go, so, 148.39 in the EFAP movies, uh, so I'll just get the link here, and just go, just go to 130, uh, 148.39, one. 40, I'll, I'll type that into the chat actually. So 148.39. There we go. So this Let's is go number four. Mm -hmm. Okay.
I was pretty bad. <laughs> really. There was a couple of bits yeah. I liked, but most of it was shit. Um, and it's all based on the fact that neither of them talk to each other. I, I kind of came to the conclusion also that they couldn't really talk in their suits with any credibility. You know what I mean? Okay. They More than four or five lines, and you start to notice, like, wait, these are two guys dressed up one guy's dressed up like a bat and the other one has a big red s on his chest and they're being super serious about how mad they are at each other now. and it just you, you can you know it's just a, it's a dangerous thing you know just and so then back, there we go right uh, yeah. stuff. Just, all right so everyone's heard it he said he's you know well wait if all of you guys have heard it as well then we can start talking about it i guess yeah yeah without yeah. any credibility that you know there's no credibility and in fact he said that he said that the reason he made Lex Luthor the way he did is because that would be a more credible way of doing Lex <laughs> Luthor. <laughs> right. Come on, man. Like Jolly Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Right. Yeah. So, uh, the like the reason why me put that there is because I'm I'm complaining in the movies at that point. It's like why aren't they talking to each other more? And Zach like actively didn't want them talking to each other very much because of the fact that they're in costumes and it loses credibility, which is a bizarre way to uh, rationalize that. Approach superhero media? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I would yeah, say. Yeah, and uh, I don't think I would agree with that either. I think, I think that is a bit bizarre. Um, out of curiosity, I know, I know we're only like a third of the way through your video, so there's still a lot more to come. How much of the, uh, like the BVS, uh, like in in terms of the defense of it or your your enjoyment of it, how much of I guess, yeah, I guess defense is the the way because you you are de defending it. Um, how much of it is related to Batman in terms of all the things in it? Is it primarily Batman is why that's so good, or do you think it's? Um, would you say he carries what do you the? Mean? Would you say that? Batman in these movies is the primary reason why you feel it's uh, so so good. Is it the best thing about it or the most substantial thing about it is Batman as a character? For Batman v Superman in particular, I would say yes. Okay. That's one of the strongest points. All right. All righty. This and back into the light. By establishing these three counterpoints, this video ignores the opportunity to actually critique Snyder's Batman, opting instead to critique a woefully misunderstood version of it, one that is exceptionally easier to critique. By leveraging this misunderstanding to your audience, you're creating an easy argument to knock over. An argument that is not being made by the other party, a straw man. So before you guys go and try to make fun of the filmmakers for not doing their research, maybe try a little harder to understand not only the film in question, but the source material that you're basing your entire argument off of. Also, Hi Top, love your stuff. I'm sorry that this was most likely your first impression of me. I probably spent way- Don't worry, we're, we're huge fans of Hi Top oh, here. <laughs> oh yeah, we, we love no, Hi Top. I... <laughs> Hi Top is great, we love him. I was, at the time I was unsure of like, if I was going to get like the same amount of response. So I just, I didn't want to, I, I never want to make it look like I'm really like insulting people or attacking people. Um, I think I might've, I, I think I try to over overcompensate with that a bit. Um, but that was just what I was doing here. What did you think of his Wonder Woman video? The nice also, one. <laughs> uh, I, it's, it's, no, I'm not. I, it's okay. I don't like that one. I um, <laughs> no, okay. no, okay. I will say that. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's an emotional appeal. Um, I just think it ignores like a lot, and yeah, kind of a, a lot a lot of stuff that would be detrimental to his point. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. But, obviously, you're in. Yeah what I would call good company right now in terms of like we we are more than happy to speak to these people on any terms that they wish uh, post having criticized them we don't want it to go over super personally but like I'm pretty sure High Top is very much aware of us and is not a fan of our coverage of his work I find him to be a fascinating content creator sometimes like he, his argument that um the only way you see rape in Wonder Woman 84 is if you're like interpreting it with bad faith like that, that was his, you know, 
full on argument for that, and uh, and that Patty Jenkins is wonderful to portray Wonder Woman as a character that would never punch someone to solve a problem because there are more ways to solve a problem than that. When like he appreciates Snyder's work, which portrays Where a Wonder Woman <laughs> who splatters brains on the walls, people. like yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's, it's he's a He's a bizarre creator, um, but he often has a unique take that is wonderful to sort of uh, discuss. It's exciting. Never know quite what you're going to get with with Mr. Hightop. Mm -hmm. You never do. You can never tell if he's going to really like a movie or really hate it. It's very, it's very yeah. like you don't you get you don't get the understanding there's any kind of system or rhyme or reason or pattern or anything like that. Because he did not like the Suicide Squad. Um, he loved Wonder Woman 84, and from what Wrong. I understand... Oh, really? He didn't like the Suicide Squad? No, he put out a video uh, trying to praise... He, I think he said it felt alive. The film was alive, but he didn't really <laughs> connect with it. That's that's so high top, the film It is alive. totally high top, yeah. yeah uh, it's very high top. <laughs> and then, of course, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, he adored, and then I think he didn't feel anything for Black Widow, which I can understand. I... I can't remember if he, I think he said he's actually anti Shang Chi. So, yeah, again, oh, like Rag really? said, you have no idea what's gonna happen. It's a roulette wheel. It spins and it's gonna <laughs> land on something. It'd be where it do. Because he's got he's it's got a praise. Toes, it's okay. He's got a Batman Forever praise right there. Not to say that is unusual, but Batman Forever is quite quite a goofy film. Tommy Lee Jones and Jim I don't Carrey. think I've seen I Batman Forever. Yeah, well, I don't that'll think I've be. Seen Batman I liked his coverage on Batman Forever. I think it was a bit like, I think he went too far. You know, at times he kind of takes this base argument and elevates it to dramatic extremes. Um, I think he was, yeah, yeah. He, he, the emotional appeals he does are uh, extensive. He's very much like he's gunning to get you into a particular emotional state when watching the video. I think he would even say that's his goal. Um, with someone like Batman Forever, we'll totally do a new fat movies for that, Rags. I look forward to you seeing it. It is it oh is Batman and Robin, but dialed a little bit down. So obviously it's insane. Okay, still. Yeah. yeah. That's that le that gives us a lot of wiggle room for crazy. Maybe we should do that this year to it'll because it'll be a year since we released the Batman and Robin one. Oh yeah. For the record, I enjoy the Joel Schumacher Batman's chat. Come at me. I'll fight you. They're fun. They are fun. <laughs> Way too much time watching all of your video essays and your original shorts. Please don't sue me. I see what you did there. Those who believe that, since Batman kills in this movie, the filmmakers must therefore believe... Uh, really quick, more... could I... Um... I think I might have to leave in about 30 minutes. Is that okay? Uh, are you able to come back? If or I is... dip out. Is it for the, for the rest of the day? How long will the... Uh... Well, we'll be here for another like seven hours probably. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be here all day. When you said you were free all day, we were like, yes, because all day is how long we do this shit. Oh, yeah, maybe I wasn't clear on that. When you said all day... We assumed you bet all day, not two hours, but that's totally fine. It's however long you can make it. Are you? Uh, you need to head out, and do you know when you'd be back, or if you'd be back? Yeah, if I head out at um, in thirty minutes, then I could I could be back in about an hour. Oh, if that that's like a works. blink of an eye to us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Great. Cool. Totally acceptable. I meant to yeah. kill. Period. Make the argument that the filmmakers do not understand the character of Batman. But maybe the viewer doesn't understand the film. Let me elaborate, because that sounds awfully pretentious. It's hard to compare the Batman in this film to his other on-screen iterations, as he plays a completely different role here than he does in, say, The Dark Knight. We should first look at the role that each one plays in their respective films to see if they work the way the filmmakers intended. And while they don't have to be consistent with their comic book counterparts, it is generally accepted that if they aren't, that makes them bad characters. So I'll play ball and I'll go along with that line of reasoning as well. The way that Batman is... It should probably be established that um, we at EFAP don't believe that faithfulness <laughs> equals quality of writing. Um, just so... As I said, it, yeah, not at all. we fight for it yeah, continuously and we will never stop fighting for it that just because it's an 
unfaithful adaptation does not mean it's poorly written. Yes. Okay, that's that's good. I'm glad to hear that. And oh, we're glad to hear that you're glad to hear it. Yeah, but it's nice to meet some people who agree with that. <laughs> they are few and far between, unfortunately. Oh, and I'll go along with that line of reasoning as well. The way that Batman is written in the Dark Knight franchise works well for the story of those films. It tells the origins, rise, and eventual death of a beloved hero who possesses great virtue. Therefore, Batman, the main character, acts in a way that is consistent with those themes, while simultaneously being consistent with his, at least mainstream, comic book counterpart. For the most part. To get a better understanding... I'm surprised you didn't cite the Harvey Dent one, right? I guess because this one's more um, aggressive, would you say? The explosion? Yeah. Well, yeah, because he's doing it because he refuses to kill. Like this is kind of like this is the <laughs> point where they really cement the no kill rule, and then suddenly yeah. he sets the entire temple on fire. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, and even even Razal Ghul says, "You left me to die in my uh, thing. I'm going to do the same for you." And it's just like, I mean, he's got a point, Batman. <laughs> he's got, he's got a point, Batman. You shouldn't be killing people, Batman. I really shouldn't. It's not good for you. Although I think that's kind of funny because Ra's al Ghul was like the one person he saved and like brought yeah. to a village. Yeah, that's obviously the the interesting subversion in that is that was that he's the true Ra's al Ghul. The the one who died was um uh the same guy who played Katsumoto, right? In uh Last Samurai? Or am I thinking? He plays of a lot else? of guys and yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, he was in Godzilla movies. He was in Inception. Yes. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah. I'm annoyed that yeah. I don't remember his name. It's, oh, is it Ken K. Watanabe? Ken Watanabe, that's it. Yeah. I actually really like Ken Watanabe. He's, yeah, he's great. I like him. He's uh. He's, I like yeah. him. I'm not gonna say I actually like him. I think it's normal to like him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's, that's a good point. I actually. <laughs> like, it's like weird. Him. It's like. If you, it, it, it abuses me when people do that. I act like I actually, and then something that's totally reasonable. <laughs> you know, actually, I like to eat food. I actually poo with the door closed. Hmm. No, nah, that's normal. Oh. That that's not just normal. That's the only acceptable thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People who poop with the door open. So, Colin, listen, why? If there's anything, if you, there's only, if there's something that you take away from this any fap in general it's that you need to poop with the door closed they, with the door open is they can fine. have the window open right though rex that's a, yeah you can open the window yeah because that's yeah because that's the portal to the outside it's mm -hmm. uh that's that's probably just fine standing of how these things are structured here's a way i like to visualize it the themes are ultimately what the film is about and are therefore at the top the story is oh. a conduit through which the oh, themes no. are communicated, and the characters okay. are the vehicles which drive the story. We don't... I, I, I don't want to speak for everybody here, but my sort of structural is characters are right at the bottom. They're the foundation for everything. You need to get them right to make everything drive properly. And the themes come as a result of the patterns created from all the actions that the characters take. And thus, yeah. you could write the characters from your ideas on themes to begin with, but until you get the characters sorted, the themes are going to be fucked. Like, so they come after, as far as I'm concerned, eventually. The story is just the umbrella term I use for characters, themes, world, and plot, all under that as pillars. I would say that probably themes is the least important of them all, especially I because disagree. sometimes... I would disagree with that. Yeah? I think that, so, so what is, uh... I think is that theme is often, like, the actual meaning that we're looking to extract from stories... Um, and so a lot of the time, theme, it, I would say that character is probably king, uh, but theme would be, would be second in terms of what I value. Cause like, world building oh, is really cool. What you value, that, of, I can understand. Yeah, yeah I, I think, understand I think, cause usually, I think from the perspective of somebody who wants to tell stories, theme is usually the idea that kicks off the whole, I, like, narrative and you're trying to build it around that. And for like watching and reading and like partaking in stories, what you're looking to get out of it a lot of the time is some kind of point, some message or something that you can use in life. And that's like the theme. Um, but that, that mainly that characters are kind of like the most important conduit between that. Cause it's like characters of what it, it, it's like, if there's text characters are the link to the subtext and they're like the link to the, to I guess the value that you're trying to pull from a story. 
So yeah, I think it's like characters, themes, uh, plot, and then world is probably in that order. Yeah, plot and world to me is like it's. I I go ahead. World last. Yeah, I I still think, I think I might just because of the idea that a theme a well maybe this depends on the theme itself, whether it can come before plot, because if you have a theme that isn't supported by the plot, then it's it's gonna oh, be a how. Like I guess how can sort of thing. I, I would so maybe... I would be inc I'd be inclined to agree with that. It's the idea that theme you can come into a story with the intent to have a theme, but my only means of being able to understand what that theme is is through the plot and the characters, because that's the text. Um, because I so I think so... that's why I would probably put in terms of importance those things first, but a lot of that would depend on if the thematics even require like. In, in a sense, like a lot of the times well, they don't require world building at all. And they might even not even really require plot so much as what the characters are doing. And I understand it's kind of the plot, but I think more so the reason the why I think the reason why I'd put theme above plot is because when it comes to tying a lot of things together, like narrative satisfaction, I think is often derived from the plot and the theme and like the characters working well together. And in a lot of ways, the the plot is often guided by the theme. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, I guess it's tough, right? It's a little I, bit difficult to. I would if, argue that a lot I'm... of this stuff is downstream from character. If you get character right, plot should follow, and and when it I doesn't, would yeah. agree, yeah. we get. Um, I think we're all in the same boat that characters. Yeah, are I think most you're. Important. I think characters. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's just reverse engineering the process too. I think it works together as well. Yeah, the, I, mean, I wouldn't, ideally I wouldn't they want to work together. If characters, but, yeah, I wouldn't want to. But in the, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I, <was> gonna, <laughs> I, gonna, I wouldn't. Uh, I didn't want to. Uh, like, I w This is strictly how I view it. I wouldn't want anyone to think like, wait, I can't start with wheel building. I'd be like, no, no, no. You can if you want to. Like, fucking build your stories however you want. Um, it's it's just that uh, to me, I feel like you know, like the Suicide Squad's a really great example. I think characters and theme are working great in that uh, when the plot is suffering miserably. And it's like, wait, uh, but if plot's downstream, it's like, well, the thing is, the, the plot line in terms of every character's wants, needs, and goals, and, and decisions, that's all great. But it's more so, as we talked about, like, the armor and the and the uh, coincidences. There's a lot more work that needs to be done in the plot, but a lot of writers don't care that much. When they've got their characters in place, they'll be like, yeah, someone shoots at them and all the bullets miss. It's fuck like, who the fuck cares? And, and so, the same with world building. They'd be like, shouldn't Superman be here? And they're like, he's not, whatever. Like, because they're focusing on the characters, or whatever. So, um, it's you can still damage your story and stuff. I, I, did, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't. I didn't want to imply that as long as you get characters right, everything's fine. I would say that in terms of how plots progress and how characters behave, if there there should always be a textual reason, I feel for any of these things happening, because um, if because a a character and a world and a plot, that those things don't know that th themes exist. Uh, a lot of the times, sometimes if a theme can exist in a world, especially if it's messages that specific characters are specifically saying and things of that nature, but sometimes themes can be more more meta in a sense, and characters might not be aware of them. So in those cases, a theme can't drive those plots or characters because they don't even know to be aware of those things and they don't exist in the in a kind of sense that they're a uh, they're they're a they're a force, an actual driving force. But a lot of this just comes back to it depends on what the theme is. Because some things interact with the story far more intensely than other themes, which can be far more removed and more, I guess, ethereal in a sense. So, Batman. So, Batman. Yeah. Um, Why is everyone coming in chat, by the way? I'm just looking at chat and everyone's going. I mean, isn't it obvious? Hunting. We're talking about the fundamentals of storytelling. Of course they're coming. Like, yeah, I mean, are too. I mean, I... I can hear that shit hitting the floor from here. I mean, this is this is good stuff. Mm. Yep. Teams but they're telling us not to come. That's interesting. I don't do know where come. that came from. Or could yeah. you not write a... characters to a theme? I would say that you have to, yeah, I, I suppose you, um, yeah, like with what I said last is if you want to, so if you want to have a theme that is uh, something that, like a, a message that the characters are aware of, that they've been told, then having them act in accordance with that theme totally works because that's stuff that's actually influencing those characters in the world and what they do. 
But if your theme is something that they couldn't possibly know about, or if it's like a meta sort of theme, and the characters act on it, well, they they don't. Why well, that doesn't make any sense that they would be that they would be acting on something that essentially isn't even in their reality. Um, like sometimes we forget that because we as the audience are aware of both the the the, you, the text stuff and the meta stuff. Have you got an example for that? Um. Let we see. I I might be able to uh, to make one. I, I don't I don't think I have an example off the top of my head. But if let me see if okay. So maybe if a a story was kind of an allegory uh, thematically to something that was happening politically uh, when the when the when the work was contemporarily written or it was in reference to a character or an event that happened in our world but not in the fictional world. Um, that might be an example of a more meta-based theme. And you're saying that they would be acting and reacting to knowledge that they shouldn't be privy to? It, potentially. Hmm. Like, um, if, if the reason for a character doing something is because this character is supposed to represent a character that doesn't exist in their world, that wouldn't make sense. They would have to be acting in accordance with either some established character of their own some attributes of their own or some uh something that's happening in their universe which you can make that in and of itself isn't a, isn't really an issue so well because so animal would be an example of i would say doing it well because all of the cannibal uh, all of the cannibals all of the animals <laughs> in animal farm are they are acting in a world where there's there are similar things occurring so you will get a you, you will get thematically supported um, actions and plots and uh, characters within Animal Farm. But if you were to say, "Oh, well, I just want this. I, I want this character to re character to represent uh, Jim Bob the Third, King of uh, uh, Florimstein," then therefore he needs to be doing all of these things. Which is like, oh, okay. I think I get what you mean now. So like, you're analyzing the story and you're praising it for how it matches something in real life, but there's just like no reason for it to be doing that in the narrative. Yeah, something. like I really like this character because they are, uh, you know, because thematically they're supposed to be representative of a thing in our world, but that character in the fictional world is doing things that don't seem to make sense, just so that they match a meta allegory to something. Yeah, because what I thought at first that you were sort of referencing was something like uh, TLJ, where like the theme is overtly stated, but not to every character, but every character seems to follow a line with it. I was going to ask if like you think, you know, because ignoring all of the specifics, right? Like Poe makes a mistake and he learns from it. Ray makes a mistake and learns from it. Uh, Luke makes all of his mistakes and he learns from it. It's like, oh, you know what? Failure is one of the greatest teachers and you shouldn't take it as like a thing that means you've completely fucked up everything. You can always, you know, come back and stuff. But obviously the only person that's told that explicitly is Luke. And so I, th I thought for a moment you were trying to say, like, like, could that be considered a problem? And I'd just be like, oh, well, it's just a, you know, it's just something it, that we're all going through. That would be specific. That would, yeah, that would that would be specific to the the story and the situation because there might be some characters who, um, especially with how a world would probably operate, even a fictional one, a lot of themes and messages that we have would apply to them. Yeah, and seeing how they execute those messages is often part of the the interesting aspect. How do these strange characters from a world that doesn't really exist? How do they interact with themes and messages that we apply to our own lives in a world that we know to be true? Um, but I, I would say that the, va the, the majority, I'd say the, in fact, the example that you asked me about, I would say those are a minority of stories. I think most of them relate with thematics and messages that characters are aware of in their own ways, are told in their own ways, and can understand in their own ways. Yeah, world. like I said before, I, I don't take any issue with TLJ's, like, ideas. It's just the execution's horrific to the point where, like, they're telling us that Poe is making decisions that are terrible and he learns not to do them when we get the exact opposite when looking at what he does uh, in the actual film um relating back to this uh I, I think it's clear that ryan started with theme probably and he just crushed everything to follow it um and that's kind of my worry when people uh prioritize theme where i would say like had he prioritized character you would have to, like, everyone has to behave as they've been created by other writers that he's continuing the story for. And then, if he wants to try and make them stories that they go through apply to a theme, 
like the he you know it puts them on a particular pathway and he's going to have to work at it instead of literally snipping them out of where they were and dropping them into where he wants them to be to tell his own story um that's why i just feel like it's it's a it is going to give you better results to start with character but i i wouldn't say that it's like the only way to do it or anything yeah i'd say start with character um so unless you want to like begin like first thing framework of the universe um that might help a whole lot uh, because the universe that, char that characters exist in, because because you know the worlds exist before the characters do, so if you have a general idea of the world, you could be okay. I'm gonna plop these characters in it, and then work on the characters from there. Um, kind of like how when you're making a multiplayer game, right? You you make your map and you don't even texture it, and it's very it it looks really shitty, uh, but it's it's a framework to then have all the players be inside of it and it still functions. That might be a good analogy to use. Yeah, uh, you characters are you know, you've you built use. it all with its spawn points and the buildings and and everything to match what you think would be balanced and interesting sort of set pieces for people to shoot at. But it's all gray, and uh, yeah, it's just like it's yeah. like to make your first your first step is to make the world probably, but then like step two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are you know the characters based off that first step and then like okay now let's try it and, and they kind of go in tandem why would i this character i'm trying to create why would they do all these things well because in this world da 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 da, da so that will influence why they will do these things and so they wow. absolutely work hand in hand and that's probably the uh, maybe the key way to talk about this is you know you kind of have to multitask when you're building stuff um because just like in the real world where it's so influenced by our surroundings and our and the world that we're in that it's it's pretty much impossible to probably just in a vacuum create characters and that are, that are totally removed from the world in every way unless that's the point of the story but even then it'll change them and uh someone said like well, ryan thought he was being true to the characters and he's like yeah that's true uh there's nothing we can do at that he point he didn't have a <laughs> yeah uh didn't uh, do good I didn't have someone to tell him no. That's, uh, someone so. should tell him. That's well, the thing. It would be fun like to be able to. That's Justice League. Someone should just said Zach no. Oh, oh. While it's on my mind, sorry, a little tangent. Um, Colin, what, what do you think about Army of the Dead? Oh yeah, I was gonna ask that myself. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. <laughs> I uh, I completely forgot about that movie. Wow. Why? Oh my god. <laughs> I. Ah uh, man, okay. I was disappointed. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I I really thought that I was going into it and it was going to be like a like a a meta zombie movie, like not just a zombie movie, but like doing something more with it or doing something different with it. And um, I I've watched it twice, and on the second viewing, I realized what well, I realized a lot of the stuff on the first viewing, but more so on the second viewing, there were a lot of things. That were set up in the first half that just like they forgot about or they just never <laughs> talk about it again or they never reference um mm -hmm. i didn't understand the ending like both the times i've watched <laughs> I, I didn't understand the ending so yeah. I, um, I i will let you substantiate that but i just like the idea that in my head of like i wonder if he's talking about the disappearing character or if he's talking about other things because that girl was in the helicopter that she's just gone for the rest of the film if you yeah, remember yeah <laughs> exactly like yeah, that was the I, whole reason they they went in there in the first place that's the whole reason why that the, his daughter got everybody killed died yeah yeah um just to be clear i fucking despise that movie uh, yeah. i think it's actually one of the worst movies ever made and it's definitely one of my most hated movies we, ever we i'm probably it, yeah. gonna make a review about it um because i hate it so much it was i think it was I, I understand why you have disappointment for it because that movie and that premise could have been super awesome and I just feel like nothing was done with it. It was super squandered. To be and plus, I couldn't see anything for most yeah. of the movie. To be completely candid, when I found out he got himself a Netflix deal to build a film that was a group of mercenaries going to Vegas that's invested with zombies, I was almost jealous because I was like, "Man, that's probably going to be good," because it's hard to fuck that up. Um, Oh, boy. <laughs> and 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 the 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 apathy for me is just like he keeps getting all these awesome things to be able to do. It'd be really cool to be able to do that. You know, it would be cool to see a Tarantino one of that, Edgar Wright one of that, James Gunn one of that. But it's like, yeah, Snyder gets it. And you know, it's fine. Netflix can give their money to whoever they want. 
I, uh, and, and you know what? It's not like Snyder can't entertain me. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. We watched it. I was fucking impressed with that, with that film. Colin, I gotta ask you, what did you think of when they opened the expedition with sacrificing one of the team members to a zombie? Uh, I, uh, man. I, you kind of get a, a sense for like, it's it's hard because you know, you're know you assembling a team of people who you don't really know. You have like one interaction with, and then you throw them all into this sandbox and they all screw each other over. And it's like, that could be, that could be cool, but it was done yeah. in kind of a really boring way. And it was just kind of, it felt mean spirited. Like the whole movie felt yeah. really, really mean spirited. That's a way. That, yeah. That, now that you kind of put it like that. Word. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to describe Snyder's. Um, like there didn't feel like a, a redemption for, a lot of the characters or for any of the characters i feel like i just i don't you want think to there be, would be like in some... a Zack snyder movie like <laughs> in universe as a character you know who knows what will happen to like you. i yeah i'm just like what horrible things will happen to me wait is someone in the chat saying that army of the dead is the same as the suicide squad i did see that you someone know. said it's just as bad i'm so sorry Oh I, no! I, so I, oh I, no! Oh, yeah, um, <laughs> you might actually be an idiot. I'm really sorry that you hear that to to hear that from you. But yeah, Army of the Dead is awful. Uh, it basically nothing works about it. At least at least the Suicide Squad is in focus. <laughs> da, 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 da. They, they, <laughs> wipe one, they wipe the lens in Suicide Squad. Well, like, the Suicide Squad is filled with all kinds of death. The people who are criminals been sent under the threat of death to kill more people and blah blah. blah. And it's like, and it's one of the most wholesome movies of like that came out that year. <laughs> like in terms of all of the happier parts of it, I just like the idea that Army of the Dead though miserable, fucking misery throughout. And they're getting more. Or of unless it. they meant the 2016 Suicide Squad, two of which you really need to put the the. And capitalize the the to make. I sure think they said uh, TSS, so I don't think they made that oh, mistake. Oh no! Now oh. then, you knew for sure what you were saying, and you said it anyway. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. There's no excuse. <laughs> also, Slipknot is better than anything in Army of the Dead, so I would actually I agree. Would, would Slipknot's agree, amazing. Yeah. He can climb anything. He's yes, he can. Legend, yeah. Yes, he can. And he was. He was climbing anything, and then they killed him. Um, it's pretty cruel. That's like that's like killing a bird for flying. It ain't right. It ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't right. It's so, so it's Rags, which is worse, Tomorrow War or Army of the Dead? Oh God! Oh <laughs> Jesus! Oh fuck me! How Good dare luck, you fellas. ask these questions? <laughs> um. I know I got more. Ooh. Oh fuck! Actually, yeah, I think I got more enjoyment out of Tomorrow War. Like I think I I got more enjoy. So here's the thing: the the whole blurry thing is like a big deal. In terms of my ability to enjoy it, it was distracting as fuck throughout the whole thing. I think um, maybe I feel like my reasons may be meta. Like I hate the meta for Tomorrow War in terms of like, oh, see, it's non-political, so it's good. Like that shit makes me want to kill myself. But at the same time, like, oh, see, the brilliance of of Snyder in in this film, it's like, oh, <laughs> I can't see what's happening in this film. <laughs> like, I really I can't hate see the it. brilliance. <laughs> I can't. I can't see the brilliance. That's true. Being able and to just, see a film is pretty important, I think, personally. And I guess, yeah, that there's that, but also like the Tomorrow War didn't, at the first instance, make me want all these characters to lose. You know what I mean? Like when you watch mm -hmm. Army of the Dead, it's like, oh, you guys just sacrificed that dude just for no reason at all, like. Dude, that us, like, man, I'm looking forward to seeing people. the EFAP movies coverage of us reacting to that shit because, like, it's uh, looking back, I'm just like, what the fuck? They all just watch this guy yeah. get pulled away to be eaten by zombies. It's like, don't worry, this is this is fine. <laughs> like, he's he's sitting there oh, begging no, for his life, so, and they're someone just like, yeah, is, <laughs> someone in chat's corrected me. The Tomorrow War was political. It was an allegory for Vietnam. Don't forget. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that made many veterans very happy. Hey. I'm so glad that my story was represented on screen, not in Apocalypse Now or Platoon or like, no, the Tomorrow War. <laughs> oh man.
memories. I think I, I think I would, and this is, I yeah, I think I prefer the Tomorrow War, even though the Tomorrow Tomorrow War is worse though. Like it has to be just for all of the time travel and all that, right? Like at least, at least Army of the Dead isn't breaking reality. For tomorrow's probably worse. Um, yeah. In I, that uh, sense, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but I'd rather I would, watch it. Yeah, I don't want to. I never want to see. Uh, like you, if, the, if I ever watch Army of the Dead again, it will be to mock it. I was about to say, you will have to if you review it. You gotta watch that yeah, shit again. Yeah, I will and, have to. And I, I will genuinely, I like, I will be like, I don't know if I wish to do that again, Rags. I don't know if I wish Army to help you Army of the Dead is Jenny. one of those movies where it kind of feels like, you know, scripts go through a lot of different adaptations and breakdowns and changes. Army of the Dead feels like it didn't, like, it, that That was the original script. It that It just non-edited, non-corrected. Like mm. Yeah. Um, by the way, I think you said uh, close to half an hour ago that you had half an hour left. I don't know if um, if you need. <laughs> <laughs> he can he can leave us, man. We're that good. Well, oh, I, yeah. I was just gonna say, it, like, you're welcome to uh, sort of interrupt if you need to leave at any point. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I can uh, I can head out. I can dip out for a a, full, a little bit. The only reason I need to leave is because um, the Dining hours is stupid, and I have to catch dinner. At a That's fine. Yeah, no, it's, wow. it's, it's, you don't have to, it, it. That's have to eat good. food. You know, loser. actually, I like to eat. Yeah, we are pro <laughs> eat. Yeah, I'm a big fan of eating. Oh, people big are desperate for food. Uh, Colin Sanders, just don't think about it too much, okay? You'll be fine. Just, just answer one or the other. Which is better, Christmas or Halloween? Are we still doing this? Oh yes, we never asked me that question. All right, I was curious if we were going to move on to unlike another one, come up with a different sort of question. This one is eternal, Rags. Well, what's your what's your pick? Christmas or Halloween? <laughs> oh, Christmas uh, is Christmas, the correct definitely. answer, by the way. Just yes, yes. Hmm. yeah, that's another one for the Christmas camp. <laughs> Christmas lasts like two months. Halloween is like a week. <laughs> Halloween is like the whole month, true. and why is it that lasting longer is better? Hey, well, hey, there's, um, there's, there's a little. Christmas well, I, I asked. Uh, it's been decided. Text that question. Um, <laughs> I I I uh, appeal to the courts. I'm going to be suing everyone. I have several no, lawyers. Denied. No objection. Overruled. Wow. <laughs> Sit down. Denied. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> More with a long man bad. Yep, I'm long man batting you all. You 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 bad if you're long. Um. All right. Well, yeah. Again, just I don't know if you're heading out now or or soon. Just let us know. It's all good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna dip out now, and I'll I'll be back. Yeah, jump all back right. in whenever you want. See you later. We'll be here. Cool. All right. He pressed. He said "see" at the same time. He well, see, hang up, yeah. he probably said "see you" and then hung up. But the problem is the but the browser version. Browser. Yeah. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Oh right. yes, and chat. I did say Christmas is superior. So just so we're clear. I'm lonely today. Very lonely. <laughs> so well, literature devil's in chat and he's pro Halloween. So hey, buddy, <laughs> Satan's on my team. <laughs> I think I, I think Aiden is a Halloweener as well. I'm not sure. <laughs> Halloweener. Oh, the someone's going to go fuck myself. What a shame. Mm. That's mean. That is mean. Ultimately what the film is about, and are therefore at the top. The story is a conduit through which the themes are communicated, and the characters are the vehicles which drive the story. All these elements, if done correctly, should work in perfect harmony with each other. Let's apply I would probably this to say that a little bit differently. Describing one thing as a vehicle and another thing as a conduit, it seems a little redundant almost in a way. Yeah, um... um... I might say that like characters are the uh, I usually themes are delivered through characters, but the world informs those characters' behavior. Um, maybe something along those lines. I don't know. I'd probably I'd give it some. I'd ha I'd have to give it some thought. Yeah, because I'm not. I think he certain. could easily have said the plot is the vehicle, the characters are the drivers, and the world is the landscape. You know, like or you could switch it all yeah. around. You're like, oh, the world is the vehicle for the characters, which are the the car. Without being more specific on those words, I think you could just mix and match it. 
Knight. The theme of the Dark Knight is incorruptible virtue in the face of evil, or belief in the good of man. The story must therefore be about a virtuous hero who is put in a situation in which that virtue could be compromised. I, that almost seems that... backwards. The theme is this, therefore, the characters must da 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 da. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it's, it, is, that theme. it is one way to write stories. Like I'm pretty sure this is how Joss Whedon writes stories. Well, he goes theme. As long as it's supported well, textually, I'm I... fine. I think it makes a lot of sense if the, if you are specifically aiming to tell a story that executes on this theme, it makes sense to start with the theme first and tweak the story. Like, what am I working which... towards? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so like, instead you... of letting the yeah, story okay, guide I'm, the yeah, theme, you know what I'll, I mean? I'll, I'll sign off on that as long as it's all, as long as there's a reason for it happening, not just it needs to happen thematically. Yeah. What I would say is the big thing is that we aren't working this way when it comes to assessing the story. Like, I don't want to sit here and find ways to justify it in favor of the theme if it doesn't execute on that theme well. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, and I wouldn't, I just want to call it all, it's, they're all options, right? Like, the, the, a lot of times stories can happen because someone's like, oh man, I'd love a payoff where like a Superman like character is evil like homelander but he's been evil for like so long and he's been in so much power that he starts actually seeing that like he you know some events happen and through circumstance maybe aliens attack he defends earth and he actually starts getting a spark for like he actually enjoys heroism and that's a huge payoff i want to have and you're just like how do i build everything around to get to that payoff like that can be the way that you build your story and it could be amazing um even though it's like not necessarily advised by a lot of writers to start that way. I honestly, what he's putting on screen right now, I think is a very commonly advised one to like start with what the message of the story is going to be. But I am, mm -hmm. um, I'm more than happy for I you. I almost feel uh, like... Keeping it in mind is a that, really good idea. Yeah. It's just that like the last thing you want to do is chisel everything to match it w without paying attention to how you've been characterizing the, the people, at the, you know, to begin with or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you do put across an interesting concept for a story because there are so many people that just want their edgy Superman like character without really, and you know, they're just staying on that path the whole time. While I don't know, I, I'd always be interested in like an, you know, you start off really like because the trope, oh, like it's no longer really a subversion to do that kind of character. So it would always yeah, be, yeah, it's like I get it, Superman, but a dick. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and so... Homelander is a fall from grace. Uh, the one in Snyder's was going to be a fall from grace. The, like, and they're, they're two of the more mainstream ones. And it's just like, yeah, what if the story began where Earth has basically concluded that this creature cannot be killed by everything, anything we have. He has no weaknesses. He runs around and does whatever he wants. He literally just kills people, destroys buildings here and there if he's bored. And it's this horrible universe we have to put up with him. Like I said, yeah. then if an alien invasion happens and they want to take over the whole planet for themselves, and Superman's like, nah, this is my planet, fuck off, and then he's like defending it, and then, you know, he has to work with the government, and there are people he starts getting invested in as a result, and then some of them die. You know, like, you could build, and he's just coming back down from being a egotistical, like, crazy person. Yeah, okay. I think yeah. it could be an interesting arc where he almost turns. It's like uh, it's like the the deconstructionist Superman type turning into the more altruistic Superman type. And how do you get from A to B? I think that could be really interesting. Someone said basically Hancock wasn't was that Hancock? I can't remember Hancock's story anymore. Well, well Hancock wasn't evil, him. was he? Like that's kind of he, he was, was more like this negative. Yeah, he's disenfranchised. Yeah. Some people are saying it's literally invincible. I have not seen Invincible, but um, well, I haven't <laughs> read the Invincible comics. I've only watched the first season, so thus far, that's not that. But there's hints that it could go that way with one of the characters, but mm. um, I don't know at this point. Is it Marcus, the one? I think Mark, Mark, whatever his name is. Uh, no, no, he's all he's already very virtuous um i ah, he's, think he's the good and it's it's jk simmons is the bad and right yeah people saying is, yeah, it, is that omni man like, uh, superhero uh, name? yeah 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 so he's like pretty evil but he has like shades of gray to him like he has redeemable he has the seeds of redeemable qualities within him um as we see um at certain points like he does genuinely care for his family for example um, and he is, he has been changed by his time on Earth. Um, so there's, uh, you could go into some interesting directions with that. So maybe that's what ends up happening. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to guess because I haven't read the comics, but, uh, 
you know, that, that could be interesting. Um, some people said it's Brightburn. From I've seen Brightburn. I do not recommend Brightburn, by the way. It, but as far as I remember, that's just the end as the kid goes nuts as evil Superman starts killing everybody. I can't remember how like what else there was to that story. I think people are just referencing evil Superman versions. Yeah, Probably. like the idea that if we start with an evil Superman that finds redemption and finds that optimistic altruism, and you know, how do you get from A to B? Like that's, uh, I think that's an interesting story idea. Yeah. Um, and and of course, to come back to what we're talking about, that that you can build a story with all kinds of things. Someone could literally go with plot and world building first. We we said this, but um, yeah, there's just dangers with all of it, I guess. Um, and I feel like if you nail the characters first, it's it's going to give you your best foot first. But uh, everyone's going to have different ideas on that. That belief is tested, so the characters must include an incorruptible, virtuous hero, that being Batman. And of course, the Joker, the driving force that poses a- And see, I think to, to Rags' initial reaction to this, it would be like, surely Batman is where you, you started, he's already in stone, and uh, if you want to argue that he's an incorruptible, virtuous character, then you'd be like, what can our story be about? And you could be like, virtuous hero whose beliefs are tested, and it's like, and how could we do that in the sense of, like, what's the through line going to be? And then you can generate the theme, like you could have gone the other direction. And I think uh, while Colin was here, he said, yeah, that's, that's definitely a way you can do it. I think, the threat. especially when you're looking at it in the terms of if you want to build a a story that is passive, like a, like a, um, how to say, like a, like a movie, right? Uh, where you're just watching and absorbing everything. But if you were designing one of these, you know, a framework for a story that takes place that's in a, like a tabletop role playing game where you you might not be concerned at all about thematics in any way you, you wouldn't, wouldn't even need them they could just they could just be emergent properties of everything that you create um where it, it in that sense you could rank what is important differently uh based on the delivery mechanism for your story like maybe a game in a movie in an RPG they just would they would get different treatments and different focuses. Yeah. Because uh, this approach, um, I think, is... like It would just be my theory on what killed The Last Jedi, because he intended for characters to learn from their failures, and so Luke had to have failures. And he yeah. was like, what can I make these failures? It's like, well, he failed Han and Leia's son. He failed to uh, prevent the rise of a new empire, and we're just sitting here. Everyone was fucking sitting there, like, "Huh? Like, why? What?" And it's just like, "Well, I showed you a flashback. Isn't that enough?" And it's like, "No, no, it isn't. It isn't at all. I don't know. My brain's now when you're watching a movie mode." And that was the movie that you know, to to be to a degree, started this podcast off. And one of the most common yeah. things that was said about that movie is like, thematically, it's on point, though. Just the themes don't make sense, and it's executed horrifically. Yeah, and it's killed the characters as a result. So, like, that's the, the damage themes can do. Because um, this is the thing, it's always a meme that we hate themes. We don't hate themes, we just, uh, I, goddamn, they can be catastrophic if you focus on them uh, without considering okay. anything else. Threat to the protagonist's values. The Dark Knight tells a beautiful story about a symbol of justice, a morally and incorruptible a idea. Who, despite losing everything, will never well, oh, abandon his Knight, convictions. The, story? the characters ah. drive the story. The story communicates the themes. Now let's talk about the story of Batman v Superman and how Batman functions in that movie, which is very different. Ah. Oh, I think that that punch where it just he goes too big, he's like thumped down into the ground. It's such a badass punch. It's like, <laughs> but that guy's probably dead. Screen. I thought Sam was cool. A hard pill to swallow when going into this film is that Batman, while being the protagonist, is not the hero of the story. In fact, I would go so far as to call him the villain. The film opens. He put the wood on screen, so now we're in. Uh, he did, yeah. Very serious. It is time. interesting to call him the villain, and it, well, I guess he could because he is the main character. Also, he misspelled. Of this film. Also, he misspelled villain. Oh, did did he? oh shit! Did he? Did he put? Did he put? The I and A were mixed uh, up. I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, he came, and, he, and, he, and he put it on screen just a little oh. bit too late. Just a little bit too late. 
Uh, that spells villain. 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 Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sorry, I thought theater, but no one's going to be able to beat your <laughs> <laughs> intellectual. Fucking perfect. <laughs> Intellectual. I think, I think v villain, that's like, I can easily understand yeah, absolutely. that absolutely. That's, that's probably why none of you guys noticed. Yeah, yeah well. Intellectual is like, I, I think intellectual is just the great part is just, dude, misspelling. <laughs> intellectual. <laughs> misspelling the word intellectual, intellectual as describing yourself you're as intellectual. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Whoops. Villian uh, sounds like a villain name, though. Or a villian, villain, yeah, like villian, Aldrich the villain. Killian. Aldrich it's a version. Killian, Villian's yeah. the hero. She's great. Villian Murphy. Murphy. Villian Murphy. <laughs> no, that sounds like a two people, Villy and Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> like they share. It's it's the wacky adventures of a them. Villian they have Murphy. to like share an apartment and hold down a job, and you know, Villian Murphy, Cosby and Hitler. I still want to see Cosby and Hitler. It'd be great. Cosby and Hitler is gonna be great. Uh, but yeah, the, the the whole like, isn't there a thing where if you have the same the correct letters at the beginning and end, but you mix up all the middle ones, that our brain is actually pretty good at being able to tell what word you're using almost instantly. I think yeah, right. Apparently, our yeah. brain is so good that you can just flat out like remove a lot of letters and stuff from a uh, from from the words in a sentence, and we'll still figure it out. I mean, it's the reason why you know you have to get editing through like many people's eyes and even then you're probably still gonna miss something yeah uh i remember being told that reading out loud what you've read read just uh reading out loud what you've read reading out loud what your uh what you've written helps uh draw your attention to these issues i've said it before but the final draft of any script you're reading out will be when you're reading it out because you're like wait this doesn't yeah. sound right mm -hmm. right i'm still catching stuff on the script yeah. yeah, mine was perfect um, the first time. I don't know what y'all are talking mm, about. Mm, mm, mm. Sure. Also I, all like... my villains were in a row. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's also like, um, if you have like the, if you write the twice, but the second the is on the second line, your brain is actually really shit at catching that because it'll just kind of autocorrect for it um, when you're reading for it. So it takes a while for you to spot it. Yeah. Um... So anyway, as this whole Batman uh, being the villain of BVS, I think an argument could indeed be made, because he's... Uh, I guess you'd have to argue that Clark is the hero of the film and that Batman's standing in his way. But of course, a more common understanding, I guess, is that Batman is the protagonist. Uh, and... He is the POV character for yeah. the most part, yeah. He's the main character. Which is a bizarre choice, considering the last film, our protagonist was... Clark, and we barely got to know him in that film, but now we're well, switching gears completely to this I remember, new character. Uh, yeah. I just, it, you just reminded me of something. I remember there was an article that was written around when that film came out that Superman only had 42 lines in the film. Yes, like, man, hell. that is not, that's not a lot of lines to have in a, in a whole film when Batman <laughs> would have had, like, many, many, many more lines. Lines Alpha including... Probably had more lines. Lines including, uh, wait, sorry, did you say the line, that was the lines in BVS or Man of Steel? In BVS, BVS he only oh, had 42 right. lines of dialogue in the, uh, theatrical cut. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, me, man. He shares half the title, but he's, like, such a non-entity outside of when he just, is just spawned into the story very yeah. briefly. It's, the characters, they need so much more work in Snyder stuff. Billion Defoe. The film opens with his fall from grace, deliberately setting up a character who no longer values those perfect things or those diamond absolutes. In the dream, they took me to the light. A beautiful lie. Batman is the beautiful lie. This paragon of justice, temperance, fortitude, and prudence serves only as a reminder so, to him. So I almost of feel his... like, yeah, these words were in the thing. And you know what? Batman is also that thing. Uh, yeah, look, because that is the yeah. it's very obviously the point BVS is making that that opening. He's like, uh, I became Batman, but it was bullshit. <laughs> it's like, okay, because yeah. he's disenfranchised. And obviously, looking at Robin having been killed over there, he's obviously gone through some things. Uh, like, that's not, I guess, well, it, I guess it'll have to be where he's going to take us from here uh, in terms of his assessment. 
Yeah, and I and I also do still have that question of if there's no if you don't have any meta knowledge of Batman, how 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 well does this um I, I guess does this hold up? Because uh, we have stuff in here like you know Rob this Robin shot is supposed to be very significant, but if you don't know who Robin is, um, it's it's going to fall quite flat. You might even confuse that for another bat suit. Um, and just think, oh fuck! Someone came in and graffiti Batman. Someone drew in Batman his really is against vandalism. Yeah, that's the one law he will never break. His failures, all of those close to him that died, those he couldn't save. He isn't calm and controlled and cunning anymore. He's angry. He still fights crime, but he's not fighting for the same reasons anymore. So, so no again, like, what do we have any references that he was calm, controlled, and, and yeah, because like, all of these attributes before in this universe? You are right. He's basing a lot of this on meta knowledge of Batman meta rather knowledge. than the story. Yeah, and that's kind of my issue with a lot of analyses of BVS is that you basically need to have at least seen the Nolan films um, to um, have these analyses, while I would argue that when you're starting with a new iteration, you need to establish that from basically, you know, you don't need to go through the origin again, but you've got to establish everything you establish. You've got to treat as this is quite possible. This, this is some, going to be someone's first exposure to Batman. So you've got to not rely on the fact that people have seen past iterations in order to um, establish this, this, this new version. Yeah, like, uh, f for example, if so, you know, in the Batman that's coming out, I'm really curious mm -hmm. if they're going to give us a flashback to his parents getting shot in an alleyway. It's like, are they going to do it? Are they going to give us that again? Or is it going to be referenced and explained in a different manner? Because, yeah. um, as we much as... We have to see as... Uncle Ben get shot. We have to see the Waynes get shot. Well, what I'm saying is, um, it is information that we are bored of having repeated to us, but... If you want to tell us what his motivation is, well, we still need to know what his motivation is, and so it's up to you as a creator to maybe tell that in a different way. And um, it just reminds me of the scene with uh, Peter and Iron Man in Civil War compared to every other iteration of Spider-Man you usually see. Like, we've got to, got to do the Uncle Ben thing. And um, they, they were just aware of how many times we've watched Uncle Ben die. And I say that as if it's ridiculous. It's two, but the thing is that they're so close together... And the prior one was what, 2014? When did Amazing Spider Man come out? It was 12, was it? 2012? 2012. So, yeah, and then Civil War 2016. Yep. Which means it had been four years since we'd done the, the Uncle Ben Dies arc. So, um, yeah, I'd be curious if the Batman is going to try and tell us uh, how, like, the events of what happened and how they've molded him in a different way rather than showing it again. Um, yeah, if, if if it was up to me, I'd probably just um, I wouldn't show the Waynes getting shot again, at least not initially. I would more lean into um, uh, like I don't know. There's like a you see like an old newspaper um, clipping of saying, "Oh, the Waynes shot," and then you like cut to Alfred and Batman, and you know he re um, Alfred goes, "Oh, how many years has it been now, um, Master Wayne?" And he makes a ref and he alludes to the fact that that's what set him on the path to where he is right now. The fact that his parents were gunned down. You can get all that information across pretty efficiently without having to once again do the whole Wayne's get shot thing. And at the same time, I probably wouldn't want to condemn it for doing that. It's, it's a little bit unfair to be like, your movie sucks now because other movies exist and have done it yeah. already. It's, it's a complicated criticism. Um, yeah. It's more and like, uh, um, yeah. Thunder just mentioned, didn't Alfred say something about having the rules having changed? And it's like, true. I don't think, if you only saw this movie though, you'd know exactly what he's saying other than, I guess he didn't brand people before, but now he is branding people. Yeah, he's more talking about cruelty in that scene rather than killing or anything like uh, like all, all we really know is that the, we see using the uh, the language of filmmaking we see, you know, a shot of the branding and then Alfred picks up the newspaper and he goes, "Oh, new rules uh Master Wayne." And that's all we get. So we it's like, "Oh, the branding must be new." And that's the kind of information we have. And yeah, by, and I think upon, the, yeah. Yeah, so I think the most you could extend it to is, "Oh, he's using crueler tactics now um because he said you know the turns good men cruel um so that's i think that's about as much as you can get from the text without having to invoke um meta knowledge so is efab stepping away from show don't tell then so the interesting th misconception um... about show don't tell is that dialogue is automatically tell and therefore bad 
when dialogue, uh, the show vision of dialogue is subtext. So the way that I speak will tell you a lot about everything about me rather than explicitly and literally looking at the words I use. Um, and there's plenty of visual references we can use that don't involve the flashback. There are the ways that Bruce can talk about different things and, and, and uh, as was mentioned, like family portraits can be used. Uh, different characters from his past can be talked to. Gordon would probably be a really good POV person um, for Batman to interact with in terms of that event because he was involved with it. Uh, I think there's just so many different ways we can do it. And um, it's funny because it is show don't tell when you show the flashback, but everyone's getting to the point where they're fucking face palming seeing it. So it's like we should probably find somebody else to do now. Pills. You could do it through audio even, just seeing Bruce's expressions as he thinks back to that day. And you could hear the audio of it happening, but you don't need to show it. And you could keep it quite concise. Oh, there you go. Someone just said exposition is like the dialogue vision of show. It's like, yeah, when you've got like at least heavy exposition, it's like, oh god, this is so like you're not trying at all. Um, and yeah, and I, I feel like even with visuals, you can do the you can breach the whole spirit of show don't tell. Um, and I think this happens whenever we have there's a revelation and the the movie or whatever doesn't trust the person, and so it repeats clips. Do you guys remember? Um. Oh, the I think it was in Cruella. There was like she steals the um the whistle from main bad guy or girl. Um, yeah. And then like literally a, less than a minute later, they walk outside and she she's blowing the whistle, and then main villain looks at her arm and then they show the clip again. And it's like yeah, yeah, yeah I was there. <laughs> we, I I remember. I recall. Yep. I do remember. I remember every agonizing moment I spent with this film, yes. No longer values the way he once did. He is no longer fighting to protect others. In this film, Batman is not a paragon of virtue. He is a shadow of his former self. The film itself doesn't treat him like a hero. Alfred constantly fighting with him about his methods, Luther taking advantage of his rage, and the first scene with Batman is shot like it's straight out of a horror movie. This film... Uh. I mean, I'll concede it was that was the intention. But watching him crawl across the ceiling was a little bit funny. Yeah, that was pretty. <laughs> that was a little, that was kind of funny, actually. Yeah. Seeing him splayed out, all like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so conspicuous. <laughs> it's like I hope he doesn't see me. Um, I hope he doesn't see me, the Batman. Turns around, and says like, "Oh, this this is awkward. Could you just um, I just need a second. Um, usually I'm 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 away by now. Just uh." Just give me What's that time. over there? Oh, bat distraction. <laughs> <laughs> he throws a rock, a pebble, and he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, I, I really do agree that the film is not uh, saying he's a good man and that the things he's doing are good man things. Like, I don't think that was an issue we took with BVS. Uh, mm. Though this, as as Meme has already said, there was I don't remember there being a discussion on his no kill rule being broken. Is and if we're appealing to meta now, like I don't think that was addressed in this film. If you if you want to talk about how like this film is is sort of taking a different vision of Batman or breaking one that we know to be true because he's lost to a lot of his virtues or his principles or he's being stretched, whatever. It's just like I don't remember there being any conversations about his decision to now kill people in battles. No, I don't remember that. It either. wasn't. I think the film is just, I think it was just accepted that it was okay in certain circumstances for him to just go hardcore. Yeah, um, and this is the thing, if all of us here were wiped of knowledge of anyone called Batman from anything, and then we watched BVS, I would just be like, man, this Batman guy, he's fucking, he's hardcore, he's just, he just rips into people. And if someone said, like, don't you take issue with that, I'd be like, um, I don't know, a lot of these circumstances, mm. they're tough, and, and I think that a lot of the stuff he's doing is reasonable because he's dealing with people who are trying to kill him, uh, I don't know. There's probably examples of him being excessive, I just can't remember. But with all the uh, knowledge uh, of Batman, it can be surprising to watch, because this is not the one I'm familiar with, but that's fine. The film isn't yeah. telling the story of the journey of a virtuous hero. It's telling the story of a fall. Actually, just a thought, like, it's kind of interesting, right, that, that both Batman and Superman in this universe, they have these 
well, you know, there's a lot of defenses of their uh, choices to kill, and there's always this appeal to like this is all this is the story of when they cross that line or what happens when they cross that line. So people reference that with Zod as well. But it is always appealing to meta knowledge in both scenarios because again, in Man of Steel, there was no real talk about his policy on killing or morality um, in relation to taking lives. Yet it, that moment is treated as a huge payoff when really, if you're just paying attention to the film itself there is this is this is this conversation never happened ever like when he talked to jonathan kent he was almost pro uh well at least the neglect of life to an extent <laughs> um so uh, i i just find it fascinating how we're there's a lot of at meta attribution to these scenes when if you you take these films in a vacuum they completely fall to they, they fall to pieces when it comes to this, these moments because they just come either out of nowhere or they do not have the same or in the case of batman they just do not have the meaning that people are attributing to them within the text and it's it, it is just interesting to think about that like we should be judging this story with meta knowledge um that's another thing we'll have to talk to con about if he is able to get back at some point but i don't know if he's doing that in reaction to the fact that people are judging it based on meta knowledge as well um, yeah yeah, it's honestly kind of a, a miss for the film, actually, to not have more discussion on that. You could easily have one with him and Alfred, where he just, as a result of one of the action scenes, being like, man, you, you took a guy's head off, apparently. <laughs> and then he's just like, mm-hmm. Like, yeah, okay. Um, also, someone said, like, can you really call him a villain? I'm not too concerned about categorizing C Bruce's yeah. role in this, in this film. I'm also just the specifics of what he does and what the film says about him with the best we can reference wise certainly an antagonist to to clock but the thing is he's pov so it's like it's complicated fallen one yeah a man who has abandoned that virtue in place of cruelty his 20 years of tragedy have hardened him to the point where he's completely lost himself and guess what that's just the setup the film takes a broken batman and asks the question just how far down can he fall how close to the point of no return can yeah, he get? Yeah, I guess this is all just like, yeah, I know. I just don't think they did a very good job of Snyder. I mean, I mean, I get it, but um, because yeah, the like the the decision, like I've got to kill Superman. I'm like, okay, calm the fuck down, all right? You know, like yeah, we just we leaped to we did we leaped quite a leap. You like, there, was go no to there was no pathway. Yeah, there was no real pathway towards that. It's not like we were building towards this as a um as, as a as an action that he would take based on what he's seen in his experiences. We just sort of ended up with we gotta kill Superman. Yeah, Jeez. if there's even a one percent chance he could turn against us, we have to take it as an absolute certainty, which people were so desperately trying to like get in that it's like that's a real uh, logical through line, by the way. It's something they use in, in philosophies and sciences, whatever. I was just like yeah, 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 but it doesn't it doesn't really work, does it? Because like you can apply it to so many things and i just don't know if batman's gonna go around stealing everyone's nukes because i mean if there's even a one percent chance of them firing those things then we have to take it as an absolute certainty that's the sort of the and superman has only recently saved the world from an invading force that uh i think Br bruce says they did we ever get an answer for that i feel like this is something i probably asked before but the whole like bruce is like he, he brought those sons of bitches here or whatever how did he? How did yeah. he conclude that? We don't know. Because <laughs> like, even if he had all the information we had from watching the films, even I would be like, I mean, Clark, Clark didn't do fuck all. Those guys, like, it's not fair to say that Clark brought them here, and he did it. He did what he could to stop them. Granted, he didn't do it very fast, uh, but that's also knowledge that Batman wouldn't have. That's knowledge we have because we watched the fucking film. Um, yeah. The first scene is really the only strong reason he has, but then he doesn't do anything about Superman for the whole middle of the movie. Um, I don't know that this is the problem. I think that's what I was missing from the film for me. I want someone to push back on Batman and be like, what do you mean, dude? Like, yes, the city was partially destroyed, but I mean, he was fighting an alien and stopping him from trying to destroy the entire world and did stop him. Like, would you prefer if the whole world was destroyed? What are you saying? And, and if he was like, he was, he was incompetent, he was neglectful, he, he's a terrible hero. He's, he's just, you know the stuff that we feel about him, that would be so much more interesting to me. If Batman was criticizing yeah. him because he's a fucking incompetent Superman, I'd be like, yeah, 
okay, yeah, I, I can get on board with this. But instead, he's like, he brought those people here. It's like, hmm. And they kind of had the perfect opportunity when Bruce Wayne met Clark Kent at the party and they started having that conversation. They had the opportunity to, to kind of talk back and forth. And perhaps um, Clark is offering that kind of position. But as far as I remember, he does a really piss poor job of trying to like push back on, on Bruce's ideas. Um, and it's a bit of a missed opportunity there to really like have well the reporter who also happens to be Superman um, uh, kind of really question Bruce's motivations even if it is in a, a, a bit of a roundabout way um, I could have tried way harder in that scene oh, so yeah. much in it's so, it's so Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent. I love bringing people together. It's like, man, this should have no meaning at all. Yep. Like these two people, that's just for us, and that's kind of the issue. I feel like, I mean, it's already been said, but yeah, that. Imagine if this was your first Batman movie. It's like you've never yeah, seen no, Batman before. How no, do you Perry says no it? one wants to see Clark Kent go up against the Bat. It's another one of those lines. It's yeah. like you haven't worked hard enough to make this meaningful. That's what I mean. That's, that sums up all of Snyder's work, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I was just thinking about how, you know, it's really sad that uh, Bruce is on the phone to one of his, like, main dudes in the building and he has to listen to him die because he couldn't get out of there. And it's like, oh, that's really sad. Why couldn't he get out of there? It's like, he just didn't leave. <laughs> like, yeah, oh. he decided, oh, there's an alien ship there. Let's just wait around. Let's, let's see. We're safer up here than we would be down there. Up here in this big building that is... Well, he's the only one who stays, if you remember. The, the rest of them escape. It's like, why? Oh, that's true. Why? Yeah. Yeah. yeah th th there's no... We don't have a baseline for what is normal for this Batman in order for these radical changes to really mean anything because we are introduced to this Batman while... Well, basically after he's gone through this radical change. So as far as we as a, an unsuspecting audience are concerned, you know, assuming we don't have the meta knowledge, like this is just a day in the life. For this batman and there's some illusions that it's the re there's a recent change but the thing is like in an origin movie like it's it's all you know you would have um you know him becoming batman be the recent change so it, it's not really meaningful in that um in, in that sense um like we in order for us to feel that we need to, to know what did the what did the quote-unquote good version of this batman look like before he went down this darker path um and i don't think we get that in this film yeah, because he, he's he's about to praise the fact that it's like, all I've just explained, that's the beginning. We're not even talking about the journey, and we're literally sitting here like, that's the problem, we have no fucking clue who this guy is. Or why it matters that he is who he is now. Yeah. I feel bad for those who didn't like her in this scene. Those who mock it and call it stupid and nonsensical. This is a beautiful moment in which this fallen hero is reminded of his original cause. This is Batman really, fights. Oh, it was bizarre. It was just like it was bizarre. And I do not agree. It's uh, I get it, but it's the <laughs> mechanics. The mechanics don't fucking function. I'm sorry. The whole reason we're here is dumb. The the fact that this all could have been broken had Superman said anything to begin with, and then you want to tell me that him realizing like because what he said to us in the call was that he's realizing that Superman is helpless, and it's just like as Rag said, that was your goal. You were trying to make him helpless to be able to kill him. I'm very confused. You're like, you aggressively hunt people down, crush them, kill them, destroy them. When Superman is like, oh man, you got me. It's like, oh, now I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm really feeling it now. And like, the best appeal you've got, which I just don't think is a good, it's like, well, in fairness, they got the same mum's name. And it's just like, that's so fucking it's crap. It's not, it, it really, it's, I don't know why you, like, it, it really feels like what happened was, Oh my god! I just realized that they have the same name. What could I do with this? And this like, reminds you've me of my. Yeah. Of, it just you've talked yourself out of the much better, simpler idea, which is oh, they both have mums. Like that might be worthwhile to just explore as a thing. Which again falls flat because part of Batman's criticism involves like as he's talking to Superman in this scene. Oh yeah, that he that's has parents. Right. Yeah. So it's like fuck. Yeah. It would, you could have done way better if you'd made it. Yeah, it, it would have been way more focused if Batman actually, like, 
in a bigoted sense, was like, you're a piece of shit alien. You have no idea what it's like to be a human. You have no idea. Which some of his dialogue does have in it. And which, by the way, makes the lines in Justice League Punch way harder from the Joss Bitter Whedon's British. bonuses. Um, yeah. And, and, and so then, when he's at his wit's end and, and Superman just explains, please, like, kill me. Fuck it, yes. But, like, please don't let my mom die. That, that could make him be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Exactly. You had your win, and then you know. Obviously, we need to we need to scrub up everything else. We need to make it so that um, the reason these two are fighting is way more supported. We need to make it so that what they could say to each other in the fight on the surface level isn't going to change anything. Well, I mean, here's a thought. Let's actually work on this over the course of several years instead of just immediately jumping into the <gasps> story. You know. Wow, Free. You mean boring. develop a relationship between these two people that could start off as kind of like a budding thing and then it turns into something strong, but then they have a disagreement and yeah. kind of falls oh, kind, of, no. kind of like that other series that did it back when it was good. Oh my like god. I don't know. No little boy. I surprise myself help. sometimes with these very <laughs> original ideas of mine. <laughs> By and let another murder their mom and dad. That's not a, I'm not convinced that that face was acting well. <laughs> Why did you say that, Dad? Oh, oh God. No. Oh. oh, it makes it so much worse when you're talking about it. Like the fact that he's like, Why did you say that, Dad? How much better it would be oh, if he appeals to saving his mom and then it's just Ben Affleck acting. No words, just acting. What if this was the Joker? <laughs> Batman, Save my Martha, Martha, Batman. <laughs> Please, hey. Batman. Why did you say that name? And as people pointed out in chat, look, Superman's cringing. Look at him. He's like, oh, <laughs> what? Why'd you say that? Just I kill me. Henry Jesus Cavill Christ, get me out of here. <laughs> That's his new weapon, the bat cringe. <laughs> it's as powerful as kryptonite. Tons enemies, yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Martha, why did you say that name? <laughs> Stop it. I can explain. I can explain. This is Bob. <laughs> like, what is this scene? Uh, imagine being <laughs> Lois and that's what you hear them talking about. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Tell so me who much. Martha is. It's like, why are they talking about Martha? Martha what if she didn't know? Doing? What if Lois didn't know who yeah, Martha was? You have to consider. <laughs> Lois's thought process is like, Batman really wants to know who Martha is, if I can just tell him, it'll be okay. <laughs> like, it's so strange. I hope this isn't a secret that, that Superman is keeping from him for some reason. Yeah, you'd think her primary thing, as soon as she gets there, is like, please don't kill him, please, please stop. Not, it's his mommy's name. <laughs> okay. All right. Now that we've got that cleared up, we can proceed with this. <laughs> you carry on. Carry now we on. got that out of the way. Do you enjoy the face? Yeah, that face is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> the, the face of oh no, my career. Oh, no. <laughs> As Superman, anyway, which apparently yeah, is over. And that's really sad. I do. It's uh, sad. Really, yeah. it's sad. Can I play Superman yet? It's been two films. <laughs> Please. <laughs> And Joss was like, all right, just a little bit. Stop! Why did you say that name? It's his name. <laughs> Why did you put it's that on screen? Like, Why? Why did Why you? Did that you... must have, you had to write all that out, make the individual pieces, time it to where it matched the words. But I know what English is. <laughs> I can understand her. I hmm. Yeah. I also, drop listen. shadows of your friend. Yes. yes. It's his mother's name. It's not even like a good font or centered, really. Mm. Well, it's Times New Roman, which, um, you know, like, it's preferable to use a different one that is a serif font. Times New Roman's kind of, it's kind of not the best. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, damn, I can't remember the, the, the better ones. It's, it's, I'm sure you're fine. Oh, I like the one. one. Uh, yes, that is a better one. That's a better one for sure. Times New Roman is just kind of, <sighs> something about it. It's just not quite. Yeah, it's, it's only like, it's just it's very standard, it belongs you know? on it belongs on paper. It does uh, belong on paper, but you know, if you're going for a design it. and it's and in books and stuff it's used, but um Yeah, it's it's for yeah. it's for reading in a physical sense yeah. or, or you've got maybe, better options though, yeah. is what but I would this always is say. Fun for reading, as strange as that sounds to say, you know? Mm-hmm. 
No. Why did you use that font? I'm trying to nitpick here as well, but um, if his mask wasn't damaged, he would be blind as fuck right now. Yeah, yeah I couldn't yeah. see. Oh yeah, look at his eye. Look at how low down it is compared to the uh, the one in the other side. You see that? Yeah, it lined up. Also, was there a misspelling in that in those in that text? Some people were saying there was a misspelling. Was there? Uh, which no, word? I I don't know. They just said another misspelling question mark, and I'm just like, huh. It's his moment. Oh wait, was it it? Was it it's it's, it's um, needs a comma, uh, not a comma, an apostrophe. Can we? Can we yeah. No, wait, hold on. Oh. I think wait, I had it. In the, me, yeah, I think. Yeah, it hmm. did. I think it did. Oh, okay. So we so we're fine then. So we're all good. It's okay. Wow, chat. Okay, Such bad faith. Look at you. <laughs> Good an apologies. Mark. You're as blind as a bat. Exactly. Yeah. Man. <laughs> You're as blind as a bat, man. <laughs> yeah. He throws away his weapon that he once coveted in such disgust. That he and once rage. coveted? coveted. That's oh, did he, did he, did he want to fuck his, his spear? Did he want to. I know he. Did, did, to, it's just His thing that he's... a bit extensive. It's like you don't have to. You don't have to. This is the thing about like describing scenes you're in love with. You could start going real far. Like you, the weapon he once coveted is now thrown away in disgust. It's like okay, the spear pulled you off. No. Oh. Lee jumps at the opportunity to save Clark's mother, not because they're now best buds. That has little to nothing to do with it. He goes to save Martha to save Clark from losing his mother, because that's who Batman is. Again, uh, Superman okay. just he wouldn't have it. Superman would be like, nah, it's great. I, I, I to be fair, Clark. he definitely wouldn't, because he'd be like, mate, like, I, I get it. You did just try to kill me. <laughs> like, I, I feel a bit weird about you right now, I'm going to be honest with you. You're a, you're a bit of a question mark. I don't know what's going on here. Really, but yeah, like, maybe yeah. you know, that'll change over time, of course, as we get to know each other. But, uh, yeah. I'm going right to go save my mom. Yeah. Thank you for the offer. Appreciate it. If you could maybe tell me where she is. Uh, then again, I have a heartbeat sensor or whatever, so I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. It only works also, with Lois, though. Yeah. Is he also appealing to the fact that, um, in a lot of interpretations, Batman's core motivation is that he does not want what happened to him on the night his parents died to happen to any other child? Because if that's the case, the fact that he's straight up murdering people in that warehouse who all could potentially be fathers themselves... Um, yeah. Well, he was also that, that's killing complicated. Superman. And now he's like, you know what, Superman, I wouldn't want you to turn evil. It's like... But... but the, oh, okay. Your whole, your whole Trump issue with him been... was how you think he's responsible for all the horrors that has been inflicted upon this universe in the prior movie. Like I, I this just this doesn't line up to me. I don't follow at all. You're an odd one, Batman. You're an odd is. one. I make you a promise. Martha won't die tonight. No, oh. she'll die tomorrow night. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> See, and I believed this performance from from uh, Henry Cavill. It's like, um, like okay, <laughs> this I appreciate that. I suppose this is the first time we really see Batman in this movie. He still kills people, very clearly so. It's almost like he's fighting his way out of the abyss, as if he was trying to save his uh, own mother. Abyss. Wait, what? All right, chill out. This um, yeah, uh, yeah. When you describe scenes like this, like you can do that with a lot of different scenes. If you talk about it in these basal broad ways, when it comes to thematics and such. And again, like this is the first time we see Batman in this film. Once again, this is an appeal to meta knowledge, um, and we don't we don't have a baseline for this um, universe, like what Batman is. So as far as we're concerned, like it's, this is still business as usual, judging by you know that chase scene with the Batmobile earlier so this really doesn't hold water and is it is the implication here that killing people was never not a part of his repertoire in this universe it's just uh the cruelty aspect is what came in and he needs to undo it because um um i in terms of what he's saying or in terms of what the film is saying i guess what he's saying because he said like he still kills people here and i'm like well 
would I, I that... think he's trying to say that this this scene um is this is he's finding his way out of the abyss and him killing people is like him it's like an internal crawling conflict. his way out yeah so that's the demony part of him but then the old he is still side killing of people though <laughs> yeah, like this, 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 this is broken. <laughs> well, and and, broken, and this yeah. is the thing: if you talk about cruelty, um, some of the things he does in that warehouse, you could call it cruel. Like the the, I would describe it. There's, there's the thing about every decision people make in action scenes, you have to take them seriously. So when he chooses to grab someone, like plow them into a wall and stab them in their shoulder, like they scream, you just sit there like. I guess you could have done that. You could have done a couple of things, but you chose to do that. And it almost came across mm -hmm. as a bit vindictive, right? It's like, you stab me, I fucking stab you. You're like, oh man. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't stab okay. me when I'm trying to kill you. Um, so, yeah, I guess I just, what I'm saying is like, I don't, I don't know, that we're supposed to view this scene as like him sort of coming back to the light or something. I was like, I don't know about that. I, mm. Yeah, it's a good it's example. It's an interesting you... definition of coming to the light. Yeah, like, this is a really good example of how you can really project your own meaning onto a text without it actually being substantive when you accumulate your references, because like, especially when it's these established properties, like, you, it's like almost instinct that you're trying to pull your previously established knowledge and, and trying to see what they're doing differently with this, but then you forget that each iteration needs to be its own animal that doesn't require, um... Uh, that doesn't require that that aforementioned knowledge like uh, well i guess um i can use btas as an example so you can watch btas without having viewed the 89 batman or read the comics even though btas is both like a spiritual successor to batman 89 and of course is drawing off the comics but you don't need any of that knowledge in order to pick up what's going on in that show while with this i feel like in order to get any of these interpretations you really need to hardcore, like, at least know the Nolan Batman, and that, I, I, you know, it's like, it's like we say with adaptations, like, we shouldn't be pulling from these outside sources, like, we shouldn't be using them as our tools to analyze it, at least not as far as the writing is concerned, like, you can talk about perhaps what the intent was from a filmmaking point of view, from, like, what uh, the creator's intentions was, but as far as, like, analyzing it in a vacuum in like a death of the horse to the sense you just cannot pull from these outside sources and still have it still expected to hold water gonna hammer that point in mm -hmm. and when he does and the night is over he goes to luther with the intention of branding him and killing him but he doesn't now he's back in this film batman serves a completely i on uh, so that scene I was not exactly clear on what the fuck happens here, because yeah. he's so intent on doing it, and then Lex Luthor basically says, I'm fucking insane, man. And then Batman's like, fuck's sake, and punches the wall. Like, to me, I almost see it as like, ugh, you, you're you not even... You weren't insane, I'd fuck you so bad. Yeah, like, you're insane, that's why you did stuff. Oh well, fuck it, I'm out of here. Like, there's no point in fucking beating up an insane person. But I'm still going to send you to the horrible hospital instead of the, the really good mental health hospital, you know. Not, yeah, that's I'm not, not cruel. Completely <laughs> <laughs> different purpose, and it works. Let's go what? back and look at the themes, story, and characters of Batman v Superman. All the right. themes of Batman v Superman include a redemption of the corrupted, or the fallen and a re-establishment of the belief in the good of man. So the story must include a fallen hero in a situation in which their fallenness is challenged. I don't know fallenness. Yeah, I know. I, don't, I feel like it's more the way... <laughs> I, I, I'm fine with fallenness. I don't necessarily disagree with this assessment of the film either, but I just think the execution's terrible. Yeah, like, at the... Uh, when you dig deep, deep down into the center of this nugget, like, yeah, I I totally get it. I really do. Because the um, end is it's Batman... Not a it's not confusing. It's not confusing. I, I think that might be the misstep a lot of Snyder defenders have with these movies, is that anything, this assumption yeah. that we don't get it. But the no, thing we is, get we it. do. It's, we it's just very like it. simplistic. Yeah, it's, it's the execution that's yeah. terrible. I think I think that is probably like a huge error of contention that probably needs to be cleared up. It's like it's not that people don't understand it. In fact, the fact that they do understand it is partly why they don't like it. Execution. Uh, that's everything. Yeah, and ex like redemption of the corrupted and fallen because like the end of the film he's like you know I was wrong we gotta start a team because something's coming Clark was a, a good man 
It's like, ah, oh, see, at the beginning of the film, Batman's like, hope is a lie, <laughs> and stuff like that. So he's clearly, <laughs> he's come around. It's like, yeah, that's Not clearly edgy. what the film's going for. So, like, yeah, I get it, it's just not very well done. And they're eventually redeemed. So the characters must include a fallen hero, and then, of course, the driving force, which poses a threat to the protagonist's core values, however corrupted they might be. Does Superman provide that challenge, though? Um, Not really, no. I feel, I feel like he's very contradict. I feel like he's pretty contradictive in of himself. Like we get um, the, you know, the next time you see the bat signal, don't go to it. Like that discussion, but nothing really happens there. Yeah, like he's more trying to just. Like, he doesn't act- that's, that's the fucking problem with not having these two fucking talk to each other, is that you don't get these moral contrasts, these, these discussions that would actually um, support this idea that Superman would be the challenge to, to, to Batman's, like, um, fallen nature, because there's, there's, there's no references to pull from. All we have is him showing up, fucking, you know, T-posing in front of the Batmobile to assert his dominance over the vehicle, and then saying, yeah, fucking don't show up when they shine your light in the sky, I'm threatening you, and that's all we really yeah, have which for is, our conversation. That is not a challenge of values, that is literally just a threat. Yeah, that's the thing. Is he trying to say that this is an issue of maybe, um, like, will he stick to his values in the face of Danger, or but we already knew that. That's not really saying much. I don't know. Maybe it's, he means it's a weird one. Superman as an entity challenges Batman's values, but like I, I, get, I would need an understanding of that too, because I don't really follow. Like, um, Batman believes him to be a bad hero. So, like, is it in in the killing Superman? would be a challenge to our protagonist's values, because, I mean, he's been killing plenty of people. I don't know. I'm not sure. We'd kind of need him for this one. We'll have to wait, maybe. The bat was merely conduit for him to express his rage and violence, and Bruce has lost himself was it? in that darkness. A darkness that I don't can think only that was, be pierced Wait, wait, I don't think that was light. the intention. Is he saying that was the intention of what the, the Batman... Uh, uh, Batman was a conduit is? for him to express his rage. It's like, um... I Maybe. thought it came from a genuine desire to, to dole out justice. Perhaps originally? Maybe saying that at this point in the story it's just his way of do being angry, but even then, he's um, he's targeting people... Comes from a right place. Yeah, like, he's, he's basically going hardcore Punisher mode, which is still not the same as running out and beating people up for no reason. Yeah, that is there, absolutely. Of hope. A super yeah, man. I definitely get it. Yeah. Is this song copyrighted? <laughs> I um, do not know. Just maybe, this, maybe this wouldn't be. Rendition like, might be. Just, I'm not, yeah, the yeah. rendition might be. I don't know. I'm not. So what about shizzle. Superman? This one is going to be a bit more difficult for me because, contrary to many comments I received in my last video. I don't just blindly love everything that Snyder does. Oh, God. You know what? I definitely got that impression when we were talking to him, so that's neat. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think yeah, he, I think he was, kind of why I wanted to him. ask, and you know, that, when I heard that he didn't like the Zack Snyder's Justice League, I was like, oh, really? That was super interesting. I That seems to be more of the same, honestly. I, I'm surprised he didn't like it. I mean, yeah. from what I gather, like, people who are fans of Snyder's work, they had fucking adored that movie. That was like crap yeah. to them. Obviously, we were baffled yeah, because underrated masterpiece, you know. Like, <laughs> we were baffled I, because I, the fact that it's mostly the same as Joss's vision, except re really much longer. <laughs> yeah, but it does show that he does have a brain of his own. Uh, it's, so it's interesting to actually probe it and uh, just see how the conclusions were were made. It's not just a blind devotion, which I think is commendable to to an extent. Yes, I mean, I'm much more interested in a unique perspective than. Snyder Cut was a fucking masterpiece. Okay. Yes. His instance is something that took me a while to come around to. The very first time I watched Man of Steel, I remember wanting so much to love Snyder's Superman, but there was something that kept me from doing it. I couldn't put my yeah, finger on I it exactly. Man of Steel, in my opinion, is a pretty <laughs> exhausting movie to watch.
True. Yep. <laughs> True. I agree. Man, we fucking slaughtered that movie when we went out for it, because that was not the intention. We, 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 I was looking for a pretty simple Superman story that I couldn't remember quite the specifics of, but... Oh, boy. So bad. But exhausting is also a very great way to put it. There's so much destruction. It's really repetitive. Like, even if you ignore the morality, it's just so much. Um, and just so needlessly much for what it's trying to do. And... Yeah, like, I, th I think you edited it in the EFAT movies, just little little compilations of just boom, 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 and it's just like, yep, 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 yep. And I think there's I times condensed version. where we are trying to talk to each other about something, and then in the background, Superman's fucking plowing Zod through several skyscrapers, and we just suddenly are like, oh, no, oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, why'd you have to do that? No, oh, what are you doing? Why, though? Why you gotta be like this? Oh, Come stop on. it. Uh, You're killing me here. You're killing you're so me. Superman, stop it. No, Superman, stop. I'm trying to make my tuna casserole. <laughs> to clean all this mess up. This Gosh, is worse than 9 11. Just, you're not very nice at all, are you? Superman, <laughs> more like super messy man. 9 11 man. Too, electric considerate man. Super evil. That's what you are. Super evil. You're evil, man. You're a lame man. Lame Get out man. of my house, please. My, my, my great granddaughter is coming over, and I don't want her to meet you. <laughs> I don't want to, to breathe all the dust from the rubble. <laughs> it's on the news. He's like fighting someone else. She's like, oh no, is he 9 11 ing again? God damn it. Why can't I think he move that to one Paris is, or something? It. Why don't you live in Mogadishu? Why'd you gotta do this in fucking Metropolis all the time, We're you piece not, of this, shit? This was a nice neighborhood. <laughs> and then you alien showed Superman. up with your the children, ships and your gravity bullshit. The children would play outside, Clark. They would go outside and they would play. Now, look at now they gotta worry control. about you. <laughs> I'll My business park, why? They have signs. You know those signs that say to watch out for, like, dogs and kangaroos? They got one for you. <laughs> They've got <laughs> many for you, Clark. Watch it's out different. for Supermans. That's you. And that Please sign yield there. to Supermans. Please. Superman crossing. Yeah. We live underground now. We just kind of have the buildings to show, because we can't live in them anymore. Not <laughs> after you, Superman. Not after, after what you place. did. Thanks for saving us, Superman. Nice to have a dog. <laughs> we are grandmas against Superman. <laughs> grandmas. We are gas. <laughs> we are gas. <laughs> 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 I wish I could knit a sweater for the whole world. So the Jewish grandmas against Superman, guess. Yes. Uh, yes. I hope they are successful in their campaigns to stop Clark from destroying the world. I hope they get their one. Oh. Grandmas against Superman for the saving of youth. Uh oh. Jesse. Jesse. Yes. There's just so much action and destruction that by the time the film ends, I was just so tired of seeing it. It had yep. its moments for sure. The parts that stood um, out to me were the moments where things slowed down, and Snyder took the time to give the characters some- I just wanted to breathe. Like when his dad tells him you could let the children drown. That was such a fucking conversation to have with so many people. You know, like, the will has flip-flopped on that one, whether or not they think it's valid, because of course the counter is like, no, he's simply saying the negatives of exposing your identity could be worse. It's like, no, stop it, just stop. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Actually, Never tell your child it might be okay for the children to drown. Never, ever, ever be in that position. No. And, uh, you know, it makes sense, considering all the fucking media we've got nowadays where morality has been so thoroughly fucked in the ass. you know, I, I believe that a lot of people have turned around on this scene, because clearly the world <laughs> has turned around on basic morality. If they're pro Phase 4 of the MCU, I don't know why they wouldn't be pro this fucking scene anymore. Yes breathing room. I still wish that the film played out a little differently. But that's not what this is about. This is about Superman as a character. I never no, understood it isn't. what, what it was. Uh, I didn't what did like you about. learn about Superman as a character from Man of Steel? Go. <laughs> I guess it was this is more so about BVS, but I'm assuming he's going to reference Man of Steel because yeah, Man of Steel is a tough one to learn about Clark. Mhm. Mm until I watched Batman v Superman. 
I wanted so badly to know why he let the destruction of Metropolis happen. Probably up that he was coming. Sorry? Hello? When he was landed in front of the Capitol? Mm -hmm. How did all the cameramen know that they needed to point their cameras up and follow him down? Like, did they, they, see they him heard the su supersonic blast before he got there. They heard like they had the oh. grandma who could spot him from really far away. <laughs> I, oh my I god, here he comes! Oh yet. my god! Oh no, the Hobbins, you're a doom. <laughs> Everybody, ride! <laughs> He's here to talk to the government. They're gonna create an alliance of evil. Put him in jail. I wanted so badly to know why he let the destruction in Metropolis happen. Why he didn't do the obvious thing and take Zod to space or an uninhabited yep. area. Why mm -hmm. he let so many people die. You you do get yep. it. He's setting us up to explain this to us, so I, I can't wait. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Tell you what, while you're paused here, I'm going to use the loo real quick, and I'll be right back. Very well. And as, Jay, and as Jay pointed out, those bagpipes are shouting. They are shouting, yes. Screaming, even. Um, so the interesting thing for me is that taking Zod into space... I am less critical of that compared to Doomsday, um, because it's much harder to keep Zod in space because he can fly, um, and, he, and you know, and, and Zod's intention was to stay near Metropolis to start fucking everything up there. At the same time, if you watch the scene specifically, Clark does drive Zod through buildings, so all those little yeah, actions like... are incredibly important. I'll just let him go. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm less critical of the fact that it stayed in Metropolis, and more that it was not clear that Superman was trying to get him out of Metropolis. Like that, I think yeah. that's the key for me. Well, the easy comparison, as far as I'm concerned, is going to be when Tony fought the Hulk. Um, he's clearly fighting him in the city, but most of the actions he takes in that scene are in defense of the people and the buildings around. That he realizes, like, obviously, he has to do concessions. And there are some attacks he does to the Hulk that he should know could lead to more collateral damage, but they're usually done in desperation, like before the Hulk kills him. Um, yeah. It's, it's uh, the scene I would... If you take that scene apart piece by piece, you'll see a lot of evidence of uh, Tony doing what he can to protect the people around him. That's his main concern. Um, yeah. And I think one of the first things he does is he connects the suit to uh, Hulk's arm, and then he says, like, let's get out of here. And But the Hulk pulls the suit apart and pulls him back into the city. And that's what we want to see. We want to see Clark trying to get him out, but he keeps getting pulled back in by Zod's, you know, various actions. Yeah, like, he could at least be trying to push him into, like, the park or something, where, like... It might still technically be in the city, but there's much less room for collateral. Like, if he's trying to keep him in, like, a, a, a less, you know, the, the safest part of the city. Like, well, fucking keep him in the fucking destruction zone where there's no people. Like, there's no indication he's even trying to get him back there. Like, uh, it, or that he feels bad. Or, he doesn't, like, swoop in and try to protect people. Like, that would be an interesting conflict if he's, like, both fighting Zod and just going, oh, fuck, there's people, people, people. I got to swoop in and get them. Oh, but Zod's going over there. But, you know, that would be yeah. interesting. But instead, it's just back and forth. Yeah, and, and, and forth. the result being, Amic. instead of having him upset that he killed Zod, have him be upset that after Zod is dead, he looks on the destruction and he's like, I didn't do a very good job. This is fucking terrible. Yeah, and like he loses better. so much hope for himself as a hero because, like, again, another interesting potential as a storyline that he just didn't do good enough, and he he can't like drop the fact that so many people have died because he wasn't uh a, that good of a Superman on his first big battle, or whatever. And we can we can use it. It um, does feel like when we look at the 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 Snyder DC stuff that it's like we're like in terms of thematic really cool thematic elements we're barely scratching the surface of what you can do with these characters 100 percent. yeah superman to the people in the buildings some of you may die but it's a sacrifice a... i'm willing to make, I'm willing to make. Oh, i was so pissed off with this fucking courtroom scene like even like ignoring the jar of piss the fact that you have <laughs> Superman in the courtroom. <laughs> scene is a and jar of piss. Ignoring yep. the jar of piss. Let us discuss this scene. It's like it's not a joke. All it's right, serious. I'll give you the jar of piss. Yeah, I'll give you the jar. You can have that one. You can have it. Um, just have Superman talk 
about himself, about well, how he feels about Metropolis, maybe how he feels about heroics. So just just have him talk about Love Metropolis. Anything. But no, he just he's just like, I'm just going to stand here looking really solemn. And we're going to have half of the opening address, and then she's going to smell the piss on the jar, which she didn't smell earlier, and then the building's going to blow up. And that is the extent of this scene. I mean, fucking Superman in court. My God, what a concept. I wonder what, what he has to say. He, 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 you're you're absolutely what right. He has to say. This was oh, an opportunity God. for Zach to play the scene out a little longer so we could at least hear what Clark has to say in response to the accusations that they would levy against him. We didn't yeah. get that. He's Skipped a brick! It. He's a, he's a handsome brick. Yeah, he's, he's a handsome brick. Hi. Very handsome brick. He more vocal about his intentions. I never understood why couldn't he just be the hero that I wanted him to be. <laughs> Help me. Until this moment right here. This single moment gave me empathy for this god, this man, this kid from really? Kansas. Really? Because I don't really know what he's thinking. I'm guessing it's like, man, sucks. Oh, he looks yeah, like that's shit. This sucks. They blew up the room with a jar of piss and it splashed on me. Uh, <laughs> Ew. I got smelly. I got vaporized. So yeah, smelly. you ever see what burning piss smells like? Ugh. Yeah. That ain't pretty. Who just wants the right thing? This guy makes mistakes. He fails to recognize uh, a lot we're doing, of mistakes. We're doing the mistakes one. Twin Perfect does this one. Remember the whole, hey, oh. it's okay that he crashed through loads of buildings. This is his first day on the job. Does, does the film know that he's making mistakes, though? I don't think it does. I don't or think that's an acceptable explanation. No. I don't know why not. you learn morality on the job. You know what I mean? No. Like, like the, the more you do the... Because if you were like... Um, he accidentally hurt all the people that he hurt. It's like, where the fuck was the scene for that? And if you're like, well, Batman, right? And it's like, no, Batman... If you wanted it to be that way, you need Batman to be specific. He was criticizing him because the fight happened. That is not the problem. It's his blatant yeah, if, disregard if for human life. If Clark doesn't know what he did was bad, when he's referenced the thing that he did bad, he might not even go like, like, what, what thing? That thing? Which thing? What do you mean? Mm. What you talking about? Recognize the audience. He constantly shifts his focus and hastily jumps at chances to do what he thinks is best. Only to have them literally so blow Hitler. up in his face. Wait, wait, is he implying so, that the so is, is a mistake? In face. That's, what? Uh, someone want to steel man this? Because like, I'm, I'm a bit lost. It, it's, it, it, it's just the idea that that Clark will do what he believes is right. He's characterizing him as someone like, who tried and failed. Because he just said literally blows up in his face, which implies that the courtroom scene is somehow his fault. So even though, like, um, he had... I, th I think he's saying oh, it blew up in his face, in irrelevant of his, his contribution. Okay. Like, the, you know, he's, ugh, oh, this, uh oh, clocky boy, he's trying, but man, man, things just don't quite go his way. And I'm just sitting here like, that is not, that's not my issue with him. Nope. Sound familiar? Despite not having most of the lions in the movie named after him, uh... the way that the film handles his character is really something special. Is He's it? a reflection Familiar? of you, of me, of what? the viewer. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, I don't Superman is man, us. Uh, going no, to have to disagree that's... there. <laughs> yeah, I'm... No. I, I relate to regular you, Superman. Little, right? if, I don't relate to this monster. Seriously, if, if I was faced with knowing what happened to Metropolis was the result of my fight with Zod and I made all the same choices that Zod did, oh boy, it would take me a long time to get over that. Why am I this stupid? I would f like, after, feel intense guilt for that one. Like, after Man of Steel came out, I was thinking of ways they could, like, try and course correct with this film, and I had, like, like a uh, vision in my head of, like, maybe there's a scene that where it's, like, a flashback to Man of Steel, and then he wakes up in a cold sweat, just feeling the intense guilt of everything that he did there, and that can lead to conversations with Lois and his mom about it, and, you know... And at the same time, what happened in Man of Steel is like thematically informing what's happening with Lex and um, Bruce. But no, I, I I expected too much. I think, um, maybe, um, because you know, perhaps in order to have that story, um, 
manifest, you would have to have a level of awareness that would not allow Man of Steel to exist in the first place, at least. Um, if you're going to have the same creative team, they're probably not going to make that choice with the sequel. Like, they're probably just going to double down on what they did in, in Man of Steel. Oh, fuck. It's pretty crazy to be like, oh, you know, he's he's us in a lot of ways. Like, didn't his dad tell him that, like, and his mum that, like, we don't even deserve him, human beings, and it's up to him if he wants to even spare well, us and human, stuff. Human, I I can relate. Human beings, they might not deserve me, but okay. you know, here I am. I'm great. I'm here to save the world. I'm gonna do what I can. Do not fear, all you pathetic, petty humans. Like, can't smash the. You don't owe them anything. Uh, I like the idea that I can find this man relatable in any way, shape, or form. It's like, no, sorry, <laughs> not even no. close. I don't even know who he is. Mm -hmm. Instead of being a perfect superhero with all the right answers and a larger-than-life alien who never makes mistakes, Superman is a flawed individual, uncertain of his actions. He wants to be a symbol of hope and unity, but he polarizes everyone. Does he want to be a symbol of hope and unity? Like, is that his? Personal desire is that what is like um what his parents were putting on him? Well, hey, dude, welcome back. Hello. <laughs> uh, we can't Hello. hear you if you're speaking. How are you? Oh come on! Oh no! Now wait, wait I heard oh, that. Oh, oh, there, there, you there you are. There it is. Am I here? Yes. Hello. Okay. I don't know why. How was food? Food, food is good. Excellent. It's good. It is. It sustains me. We have uh, we have progressed to the point of being six minutes away from completion. We are currently on Superman um, being just like a representation of, of us in his story, that of someone who isn't perfect, making mistakes, and trying to do the best he can. Um, do you feel that at any point in these films that they they specifically talk? You know, like in Civil War, for example, where they they go after the heroes for their negligence. Do you feel that that is actually uh -huh. a, that Clark addresses that specifically, or that the film is mainly just him struggling with the fact that this isn't clean as a job, and it kind of sucks that it's not? You mean in regards to like everything that happened in the climax of Man of Steel? Like, was that him being negligent? Oh well, I think that's categorical that he was negligent. What I'm saying is that I don't believe that he's really. We see Clark address that. I don't. I don't feel I have a scene in my head where. Clock is like, man, I need to fucking, I need to do better, Falcon style. I need to, I need to think about what I'm doing. I need to improve my action. I need to be more, I need to account better for human life. Um, rather, like, you know, this, what he's being addressed with in this court case is the uh, the opening scene, right? Where they think that for some reason he's, he's to blame for what happened there, even though it's like easy to prove he wasn't. Yeah, right. So... I guess what I'm saying is so, like... So, yeah, I think um, it's kind of like... I'm sorry, are you asking if, if Superman, or if it would be, uh, if it would have worked better if uh, Clark himself was to address that? Yeah, I th so what I'm missing from agreeing with the assessment is seeing Clark acknowledge that he fucked up big time with uh, Zod and Zod's cronies and that he did such a poor job of uh, preventing them. To the point where he is dragging Zod through buildings, which is absurd, and it's caused like immense levels of damage. Which um, I saw in in memes editing. It was what, what did you say it was? It was like reported it would have been was it nine eleven times ten or something? The the amount of damage that was oh, done. Oh, some something like uh, obscene. Like it was uh, this is like the um I would actually I would have to look it up specifically, but it was like it would this is like at least ten nine elevens like. The amount of damage done, the amount of lives lost. Yeah, um, but uh, I, of course. Like, this, I don't remember really like having any scenes for Clark to be like, "Yeah, fuck, I, I screwed that up." And Batman's issue with him was like not specific enough in any means. I think like we basically rely on the viewers to fix the the script because the fix the, the script at that point was basically like Batman's annoyed at him because the battle happened and he brought the aliens here. Which, first of all, like, I can't quite remember how, why Batman thinks that that's the case, but, like, w how great it would have been to have that discussion for Clark to be like, I didn't fucking bring them here. I, look, I was sent he <clears throat> here, and then they came to destroy your planet, and I defended it. Like, they wanted your planet for its, you know, juicy core, or whatever the fuck. So, like, the mm. idea that you're pissed at me 
when I saved your planet is fucking absurd. And then Batman could be like, saved our planet? I don't know if you could have done, like, a shittier job saving our planet and, like, switch the criticism to the nature in which he he stopped Zod, which I think would have been way more apt than simply criticizing him for the fight itself. Oh, and I got the uh, statistics up in the chat if you wanted uh, to double-check those. Yeah, it's crazy level. And, like, Superman's main sadness at the end of that battle is the fact that he had to end Zod's life. Not the fact that all of these innocent people have died because of the fight itself. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, we were, I was also kind of annoyed that they have Superman in the courtroom and they have the perfect opportunity to really explore his character, explore the impact he's had on the world, uh, all that, and they just blow up the courtroom before anything's really accomplished. Feels it, like missed potential. Yeah, like in sure. terms of storytelling, they could have had her make an accusation, we could have heard, heard what he has to say, and then we can blow up the courtroom. There's no reason not to. Well, I'd get rid of the piss jar. Yeah, but I would definitely get rid of the piss jar, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna make any changes. Let's please get rid of that. <laughs> Grandma's peach tea, what do you mean? What? I don't know. Is that meant to be clever? Like, I don't Grandma's know. peach tea against Superman. I mean, yeah, it's... It's, it's what she said to him, what? Fringy, so... I don't know, it's pretty clever. Ah, I see. that. So he, he said something, and then they put it on something later on. I see. That's some that's some reincorporation right there. I spoke <laughs> too soon. Kino. Kino, nice. Pinot Noir, yeah. Mm. Pino. Of course Jay said, I want to keep the piss jar. <laughs> <laughs> I love the piss jar. Realizing this is what made me love this iteration of the character. Superman's conflict in this film is choosing whether or not to be Superman. I mean, he is being Superman. He is doing right, and he is helping others, because that's what he grew up believing was the right thing to do. The conflict arises um, when the world right. responds by hating him. Probably worth talking to you about, like, what did you think about the scene where he uh, John Kent tells him that maybe he should let the yes. kids drown. That was, um, I, I really liked that scene. I did. Um, I think it was an interesting take on, uh, on his father to, I don't know. I think a lot of people interpret that as the father kind of, subtly telling him that yes he should have let the kids die because that would have been what what was necessary to keep him hidden from the world but i think something that i don't know i think the point of that was that even his father isn't quite sure about what to do in that scenario i don't well, that's think there's a the problem is that his father isn't sure when this is a clear there's a clear answer to this which is to save all of the innocent children's lives from drowning. Because if we if we go worst case is... scenario, okay? Worst case scenario saves the children, then they all go, Ah, Clark is a super person. Then the government immediately arrive with scientist outfits. They grab Clark, inject him with sleep juice, and they experiment <laughs> on the point of cutting him open and tearing all the bones flesh apart. And Clark, uh, John is forced to watch. It's like, worst absolute case scenario. Be like, okay, but principally... You rescued a bus full of children like um <clears throat> i think like the idea that it's like maybe you shouldn't in case something bad happens to you and your identity is revealed and that that worst case scenario by the way i don't believe for a fucking second that that was going to happen i do understand that with the reveal of your identity comes a lot of danger that's a very big part of a lot of superhero stories but i don't fucking believe anybody who is interested in doing good would allow the children to drown <clears throat> to save their identity from being released. I think we'd all be disappointed as hell to watch any of our heroes doing that. It's a pretty clear cut, like, needs yeah. of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one um, scenario where, yes, you should be careful with your identity, but ultimately... Yeah, when it when push comes to shove, you should be working to preserve lives rather than um, acting in self interest. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. Um, it 
I think that there's just so many ways you can write the scene of Clark be careful, and the way that they did it was like, it's, it can be shocking to a lot of people that he says maybe. Um, which is understandable, right. I think. Because what you what you want is for him to be like he's like, what am I supposed to do? Just let him die, and then you have the dad be like, no, no, of course not. You don't. They don't know. Like you save them. You save them every time. But Clark, like you have to remember how important it is that people don't find out who you are for X Y reason, so that it's it's in stone. You do not let them die. However, you must remember. You know the blah blah blah. Like that is the way you'd expect them to do it. Not. I mean, maybe. Fucking yeah. hell. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that's it, that's it been, bad. Um, yeah, it, it should have been something like, oh, um, you know, obviously save their lives, but um, they saw you, Clark. So if you can avoid it and you were underwater, you had options, um, you've got super lungs or whatever, um, you know, you could probably, you you know, you could, you could have slinked away from that and pretended you were thrown from the bus or whatever. Like, just saying, just be, just uh, do the right thing, but... Try to be clever about it when it comes to your to preserving your identity. Obviously, pr prioritize the life saved, but or have at the back of your head, <clears throat> how am I going to preserve my identity after this or during this? Um. So yeah, because uh, like you referenced that as sort of being part of his foundation, even that scene. I just like that adds more confusion to me like thinking about that principle that his dad gave him in reference to like stuff like happened in man of steel and we can't help but look at him laser the fuck out of the embryo chamber and be like yep he's letting those children die that's what he learned yeah that makes sense that's that's a fair criticism I'll, I'll take right. that and he is helping others because that's what he grew up believing was the right thing to do. The conflict arises when the world responds by hating him, rejecting him, and not wanting the Superman. His conflict is between choosing to 100% commit to being the Superman, or to walk away from it and live in peace. As Martha Kent says, Be their hero. Be anything they need you to be. Or be none of it. You don't know this world. I've always struggled with that line too, because uh, to a degree, it is this world society that would have uh, housed and supported the Clark Kent, Clark Kent's family and his upbringing, not just his parents. And then uh, the amount he would have learned about Earth to have his mum say, you know what, it's in a way you could just choose not to do anything because you don't owe them a thing. It's like, damn. I, I just, I've never liked that line. I've, I, this is the thing, I have problems with lots of the lines in Snyder's work. They're all oftentimes very, um... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I was gonna, I was almost stumbling into nihilism. It was just like, uh, just this, this perspective that is so, like, downtrodden as far as I'm concerned. Grimly overt? You could definitely go with Grim. <laughs> I'm glad Superman didn't turn out worse. Yeah, um, because of course I'm not appealing to any sources right now, but like, again, I've always felt like, man, I, I can't imagine how people feel who love Martha and John Kent, Jonathan Kent from, from seeing the stuff they were saying in this film, all these films. Because uh, they're super, like, what I understand from people about those characters is they're hyper wholesome and they're the whole reason that Superman has the values he has. Yeah, foundational, like, usually it's like, he, he is, Superman is who he is, because he grew up in Kansas learning these really um, wholesome values from his parents, who are, you know, in that sweet spot of being old-fashioned enough that they have these classic values, but not so old-fashioned that it would, like, instill bigotry or whatever, so you got that really ideal parental setup, and he turns into a really um great guy because of it that doesn't mean he doesn't struggle because I, I i think it's actually kind of interesting keeping superman the way he is the further time goes along because you know what does a good man do in uh, an increasingly imperfect world um but yeah who he is at his core is fundamentally good because of the kents um and when you kind of sabotage that it really confuses who he is as a person 
at least if you're still trying to do the heroic Superman, that is like you you could use these cans and have him be a much more um, uh, grim morally... talk Superman. Like Superman is like yeah. I will save people depending on if I feel I will yeah. I will I am that person today. Yeah, that's the thing. But these films are like they want him to be the traditional Superman in many ways, but they also like contradict that with his actions and with his backstory and it's it's like they know that they're making a superman film but they don't understand the implications like they they want they want something resembling a, tra a traditional superman with a twist but they don't understand how their twistiness is not lining up with how they're presenting how the how the world is perceiving like there's a lot of stuff that is just not lining up um with with this version um i just i, I leave a gap just in case you want to say anything <laughs> but we can uh, we can carry on i guess no sorry um i'm a little curious what do you guys think about um the, the scene in Man of Steel where the tornado hits and uh, his father dies. I don't really believe don't with like how it. he's characterized that he would have let his dad die. I think he would have uh, saved him. And then we should have had a scene where he's like, you fucked up, you shouldn't have saved me. And then Clark can be like, I don't, it's not, I, I don't care if people find out who I am. I'm not going to let you die. And that can be foundational for him in terms of uh, Superman's core fundamental is that he's not going to let human life perish even in the face of his own uh downfall or, or, or uh pain and suffering to his own uh i find that scene frustrating <laughs> i find man of steel frustrating that's fair i i the reason i ask is just i have um i have mixed feelings about it and sometimes i feel good about it and other times i i feel that way about it what you described mm -hmm. so yeah and also just from like a more i guess um you know <clears throat> uh, from a more um you know as someone who's like a really big fan of superman um i do feel like we were robbed of a more meaningful death for jonathan if you're going to kill him off because like usually it's a heart attack and it's very specifically a heart attack because that's something that superman cannot um Prevent. fix no matter how hard he tries and it's a lesson that there are just some people you can't save because there are just certain things that are always going to be out of your control no matter how strong you are unless you turn back the earth but yeah that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, yeah that's a, that's a that's a that's a thing that uh you know that's a that's a, a little as much as i like it. the original i have issues with the, the messaging there yeah i think everyone has an issue with that scene <laughs> it's just like the whole like, like Mm, that's okay. It'll it'll be in the the next video I make, which hopefully will be up next week. So we'll see. But it it's actually heavily focused around the original Superman movie, which I mm. quite like for all of its what problems. I? I quite like that seventy eight uh, Superman. Yeah, I rewatched it recently. It was uh, I, I I had a I had a, I had a rip roaring good time. Uh, great character stuff in that. And taught me how to spell. You know, I know what word you know has a p in it. Uh, how many p's are in a specific word, rather? Ah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Someone just pointed what are you out. Talking about p? He I was... thought they wanted less p in Superman movies. <laughs> As, as he just, someone just in chat has pointed out, he seems to be willing to risk his cover to destroy a trucker's livelihood, but not <laughs> to save his dad. And plus there's the oil tanker scene at the beginning where he straight up blows his cover just to save the people in the oil yeah. tanker yet again. The Man, like, thinking about it more, I just like, love that shot of that truck getting skewered on those <laughs> It's insane. Just like, um, just a and this isn't jumping around. This isn't a, an appeal to the source. Pretend the source doesn't exist for a second. If someone said to me, like, "Man, the original draft of Man of Steel was that he saves Jonathan Kent. They have a big blowout over the fact that he shouldn't have blown his identity, and that the lo some of the local people in Smallville, or whatever, are now aware, and that it's it's a rumor, but they've all agreed to keep it under wraps because this guy is a fucking hero and stuff like that. And then you know, fast forward and. Jonathan does die from the heart from a heart attack, and Superman can't do anything to stop it, and it blows him away in terms of trying to understand what the fuck life's all about and stuff. 
I would just be like, that sounds so much more interesting than having to watch him let his dad die because his dad was put his hand up and he was like, no, it's fine, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. It's like, ugh. And that's not to mention, like, I don't think that him saving his dad in that moment would have <clears throat> equated automatically to Alien. I think it might have been questionable to the people around, but he could have moved slightly faster than a normal person. And, you know, it could be considered miraculous that he was able to survive yeah. near the tornado or whatever. But Alien is not the automatic jump to there. It would just be like, huh, that guy's really strong and fast. Huh. Huh. Oh yeah, and someone was highlighting, like, didn't the, the ginger bully kid he knew about yeah, he Clark, did. but he didn't say anything? Good old Pete Ross. I just think that's a- isn't that a way more interesting message that the people were willing to keep it under wraps because of the good that it does for the world sort of thing? Yeah, and it's pretty consistent considering Pete Ross, so- and Smallville seems like a relatively wholesome town, bullies aside. And you got, um, that happens in Spooderman too, remember? When they all yeah. see his face and they plug his mask, so... Yeah. Very uplifting, uh, opportunities to have stuff like that. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. You don't know this world a thing. You never did. This isn't your Uncle Ben with Great Power Comes Great Responsibility speech. This, this is, is Clark's mother print. telling him that the weight <laughs> oh. of the world's troubles do not have to be on his shoulders. He does not have to take responsibility for all of this tragedy. He can simply walk away from it. Ma I don't, I just... I, I, I hate I, that I, message. I, I would like, never tell my son also, that. I guess the thing is, is that I could see where the message is like, you're trying your best. Like, don't, you know, ch like, you know, go, like, don't, don't be so hard on yourself. But that's not what she said. Like, that, that's kind of the issue. Well, I was going to say, that's it's not... Like the summary, right? Like, uh, I, I almost agree with your summary here, but man, do I find it so frustrating to listen to. It's like, yes, the, the, you know, the world could be in turmoil. You don't have to do anything about it. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> well, because, I mean, I think that the more wholesome, valuable message in, like, these stories is meant to be you have the capacity to do good, so do the best that you can. Like, I feel like, yeah, I don't even consider don't that a Spider-Man thing. It's all no, of them. I think that's a common hero trope. It's yeah. just do help people do good things, even if it's really hard. If superhero stories um, are about anything fundamentally, it is the average person being imbued with more power than usual. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like quintessential... I mean, it's funny, right? We're saying it's not, you know, it's not exclusively Spider-Man, but I mean, it's quintessential Spider-Man, and it's kind of, like, basically what Superman is about, too. Batman's a little bit different. Um, yeah, there's all variations, but they're all people who have an opportunity to inflict yeah. more of their agency on the world and they're all going to go by the fact that they feel they need to and it's something course, that needs to happen it is a valuable question if you have the means to if you have the means to do greater good than most people can do you not have a responsibility to do that especially if nobody else can do what you can do and yeah so like this this message is just like ugh, doesn't sit well with me at all but I would assume that it is the message that Snyder wanted to put out into the world. I don't know. I'm I guessing that that not, is the message. It's never questioned in the like the film. I don't recall it ever being well, like challenged or presented as bad. It's just I think it's consistently reinforced throughout the film. I guess the question is, does the ending contradict that? Like, or does it not? Because at the end he dies to try and save the world. Right. Oh well, I've always I think people. Right, so usually... wasn't that his like final decision? Yeah. Well, well I guess that's the to... question, isn't it? Right. His decision was to ignore what they said. Well, and, and if you remember, a lot of people say, "See, Jonathan Kent was right," because he dies, and I I hate it when they say that. It's so sad that like like you should have you should have let Doomsday run rampant because by stopping him, you died. It's like what the fuck are we doing here? Like, what, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Not even getting into the issues of killing Superman this early when he's had so little characterization. Mary Lois. In chat. Continue. Sorry? Sorry, just in chat someone said you don't have a responsibility to do that. And it's like, I mean, I feel like that's... If you have the capacity and the means to do good and you choose not to... Like, yeah, you hmm. scale it down, people, for, for, for like the average human being. Don't worry, we're not talking about well, doing it, but I mean, Superman easy, is enormously one. powerful. 
Well, I mean, here's an easy one. If you find, like, 20 bucks on the floor, and you saw it drop out of the wallet of somebody in front of you, it's like, you know, you could just give them that money back. Wouldn't be that hard. It's within your means to just go up to them and give it back. It's like, you don't have to, but, like, come on. You know, <laughs> like... And, and then just scale it up from there. It's like, well, Superman, you can fly. Nobody else can really stop Doomsday. It's like, you out. don't have to. I have an example. But... You're walking All past right. someone Ooh. on a busy street, and they're getting fucking mugged. You might be like, mm -hmm. stop that mugging, everyone. Look. That would be a responsible <laughs> thing to do. Um, yeah, as opposed to, I'm going to turn my back and slowly walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, so, are you just uncomfortable with... Sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. So are you just uncomfortable with the fact that the that question of whether or not somebody should, or whether or not Superman should act um, because he can uh, is being posed? Or is it specifically because it's being posed by told his parents? Flat up. I don't know that I have a problem with the question being uh, raised. I just don't know that it's meaningfully debated. Yeah, um, it's not. It's not proven meaningful in any way, shape, or form. It is told to him by two people that I consider to be almost morally reprehensible in the face of talking about the world ending and doing nothing. Um, but it wouldn't be so bad if we had characters being like, wow, that's an insane idea for these reasons. And then someone else is like, well, what you haven't considered is this. And it's like this. this and, and maybe characters to fully represent these these pathways. But like I told you, man, like, a, an interpretation I've gotten from a lot of people who are big fans of Snyder's work is that Superman sacrificed so much for this planet by dying to save it, and look what he gets in return, hatred and stuff, and I'm just saying, like, what the fuck is happening? Like, uh, whether or not the world reacts to him in the, in the correct... It's always about the action itself, surely. It shouldn't be about how humans react to it. This is why I love Spider-Man, by the way. <laughs> like he's a, he's a legend. He'll keep doing the right thing, even if all of uh, well, wherever he is, hate him. And uh, J. Jonah Jameson's working his ass off to make people hate him. Like the idea that because because I even find it confusing. I think we talked about this, but like the, there's a contingent of people who hate Superman. I'm like, I want to know more. Why do you hate him? And is it for the same reason I kind of hate him that he's a negligent piece of shit when it comes to defending the planet? Or is it something else? Like, another fascinating way to look at Superman is some people be like, how come you save all the people in this country but no other country when you're possibly able to? Or, how come you save the people you save? And is it based literally on the fact that you see TV, like, news? And then him to deal with that. How does he decide? You know, like, all these questions, I don't think they're, they're addressed, but the, if you're saying, like, that's a point the film is making, I just I just don't know that they explore that in any way that's in, interesting at all. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. I, I would disagree. I think I, I think that it's I do think it's explored um a little bit, especially with the the events that take place uh near the intro of the movie. Um that wasn't in the United States. I would have I do agree with you though. I, I wish that hearing um you know when Lex blew up the Capitol, I, I wish yeah. that played out a little bit more instead of just before any talking actually got done. I think that that would have helped. Um, but I think a lot of those questions are explored um, a little bit through through Lois, definitely. If if you were to characterize the like both of his pathways, um, being Superman and, and not being Superman and just being Clark Kent, I would say that Lois represents everything that he could have if he you know, walks away from being Superman, and I could say he has her, but he you is could Superman, say, but he does kind of have her, right? But she is in danger constantly throughout the film. So good because thing he's, he's Superman to protect her. That just reinforces no, his. I think he's Superman, huh? Because well, he's not there to protect her because he's being Superman. Because he's not. I, he's like... I guess the thing is, is that in the film, he seems to always be pretty available to to help her out. In fact, it was one of the weird parts. It's like he's much more aware of the presence of Lois and where she is than his own mom. Yeah, 
Because, like, he, he immediately comes to her aid when she gets tossed off the roof, but he has no idea that anything's happening with his mom. And it's like, when, of hmm. course, if he knew exactly where his mom was, he'd be able to super speed in before they could kill her and save her. It's only the Alfred says that he finds the location of the mom after the fight's over because he traced the phone of the guy that Bruce met earlier in the uh, film. What we're highlighting here is that, like, if the powers work the way they're supposed to, and if Clark loved his mother as much as the film would have us believe, then he should surely be able to zero in on her location like he can with Lois. Okay, I'm so looking. it's... So it's more about... So by choosing to be Superman, um, he's... Well, see, that's just the way I see it, is by choosing to be Superman, that's what got his mother in danger in the first place. Because that's the okay, only reason Lex right. went after her. Yeah, so on that topic, that's probably what I would want uh, discussed further, right? Because, like, the idea that we present, look, when he becomes Superman, people he loves are in danger. And that's about it? Instead of in think... interrogating that further? Yeah, I was about to say, because it's kind of, it's it's a common fixture of, like, a lot of Spider-Man stories is the part of the reason why he doesn't want a secret identity out is because he knows that, like, his family will be targeted. And I, I, guess I, I guess I would be more willing to appreciate that as a thing in this film if there was more... I, I feel like you have to infer a lot to get to that as, um, kind of the issue here, that Superman's specific issue is that... He doesn't want to endanger people that he loves. I it feels more like he doesn't like the, the responsibility. Like he really doesn't like having to do this, or he doesn't believe in it. That seems to be more what his inner conflict is. Um then again, I, I don't remember that movie super well, so I might be off on that one. No, I think that's fair. I think that you're right. I think that could have definitely been talked about more rather than just kind of leave it evident by right. character's actions because it I is kind of that, inferred so yeah right so i guess i guess that would be the that might be just one of the issues that i have with the film is that i feel like a lot of you can you can see what a lot of the ideas were but it feels like a lot of them are unsupported by what's in the film itself like it, it spends a lot more time it spends a lot of time on the plot <laughs> i've noticed this film like when you think about it there's just a lot of scenes dedicated to explaining what we're and, doing and how we're getting from here to there. And unfortunately, the plot is like frustrating to think yeah. about. Like the um, the letters being sent back with messages. Sorry, the the payments to the um the guy who's lost his legs. They get sent back, but Bruce for some reason isn't alerted about that, despite Lex relying on those messages to further enrage him. And then, of course, all they need to do is phone the guy, and either. He is approving of Lex doing those messages, which we know is not true because he meets Lex for the first time, I think, uh, quite close to when Bruce finds those messages. And then he, they'd find out, oh, so this isn't you doing this. And then it wouldn't enrage Bruce because he'd just be like, oh, someone's fucking with me. Like, it's a really weird point in the plot, but it's treated as very like, oh, shit, this is going to really motivate Bruce now. The people, like, uh, uh, ripping into him. Uh, the ones that he's trying to look out for because of the damage to the building, all that stuff. Um, I, I, without going through more of the plot issues, like the, the, even the fact that he made a kryptonite spear rather than all of his other options, like we, we even I think went over how like a kryptonite dagger would have been better, and uh, kryptonite, uh, you know, knuckle dusters. It was, it's weird, like the whole, there's loads of things in BVS, like this is the, the thing we were talking about under the umbrella plot, like I understand if a lot of people aren't as interested in knowing the faults of it, but like it makes it really hard to follow along when the majority of the film is the connecting pieces to get us to these character payoffs. Wait, could you say that again? Sorry. Uh, the, I get that there's not as much investment in the plot being airtight compared to the character work. I just think that it's it's frustrating because a lot of the film is plotline. It's, it's getting characters into the right places at the right times through different means, and these means aren't very well thought out. Like, uh, if you remember, okay, Superman yeah. stops tailing Bruce because he gets distracted by a news report. Uh-huh. In the Lex's party. 
Uh, they, like, I think Lex watches, like, Batman go, or, or Lex is where, uh, the girl watches Batman go into the hard drive, like, section and do all kinds of things that are really suspicious, but kind of just says, like, please don't, and that's it. And it's like, okay. There's loads of weird stuff. Wonder Woman, like, I, I don't want to get into it too much. I'd, I'd rather, if there's anything of interest you want to say, because we, I, I, we, we can push on and stuff. Yeah, we can move on. Up to yeah, you. those kinds of interactions. Um, I, like I get what you're what you're saying, and that's totally fair. Is like, hey, why why wouldn't she be a little more suspicious that you know this guy's in a, a pretty private and sensitive area of our establishment? Um, I mean, it was really weird to have the room adjacent to the like kitchen. It's like the hard drive server control room is right next to the kitchen, which is a staircase away from the main party. It's like that's. Strange. By the kitchen because there's freezers nearby that keep the hard drives cold. Ah. This makes total sense. <laughs> Gotta keep those. And that's fair. Cool I, I think I think that's kind of an issue with with a lot of movies. They just kinda of have these convenient minor, very minor uh instances and that's probably it's, it's maybe maybe I suspend concern. my disbelief a little too much. Like for us, if we're watching a movie and it's just like a, extreme coincidences or, or some coincidences here and there, not definitely not the worst thing you could have. Um, but it makes you appreciate when all the pieces, I guess, fit together. Yeah. Like it, it shows you're really working hard to get that, you know, the, those thematics going. Yeah, because, uh -huh. you know, like when they built the scene, they were probably like, we need Superman to be distracted. How can we do that? It's like, well, what if there was a TV playing a news report of a recent like tragedy? Okay, but why would the TV be there? It's like, uh, the kitchen staff are watching it. Well, then, are they going to be in the kitchen? It's like, yeah, we can have the kitchen there. And it's like, you just put a kitchen right next to the server room to make that make sense. Like, that's weird, but okay. okay. Anyway. Hopefully walk away from it. Marry Lois. Continue to work as a journalist. Or honestly, get whatever job he wants and live happily ever after as someone loved and cared for. I just don't know if it's possible. Don't know if what's possible. Just gonna pause for copyright. Mm -hmm. you know how it goes. make sure. They're a bit more picky with streams. Yeah. They're like, hey, you're trying to restream uh, a movie right now. You're gonna be streaming the whole movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're clearly streaming the whole film. Unacceptable. For you to love me and be you. Instead, he takes up the spear and sacrifices himself for a world that hates him. Ah, oh, there's a so, lot of people who really. I don't think the world hates him. Batman kind of hated him at one point. Yeah, Batman <laughs> hates him, but Batman's beef the, is me. There are criticisms being levied at Superman. This was part of my problem with BVS. I wanted to know specifically what those criticisms were because I have criticisms of Clark too, but they do not include. Him fighting Zod, him fighting the alien force. Like, no, 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 no. I, I thumbs up on that one. Thank you, by the way, for that, Mister Superman. We needed, <laughs> you, we needed your help on that. It's uh, specifically the way he handled it, and I just don't think that that was ever properly addressed in the film. Like, I was, it was never clear that that's the issue people took. It was more so like, this is no, this we shouldn't be treating him as a god. I'm like, oh, I mean, I, I wasn't even thinking about that. I mean, sure. I thought the general point of contingency for the Superman controversy in the, in the movie was uh, everything that happened in Metropolis, not necessarily things that were directly his responsibility, but just like a, a general overlook of the casualties. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. I want to know what the public feel, and I want to know what Clark feels about the situation, and then I want those perspectives to clash. And as people keep pointing out, the courtroom, man, that was the that was it. You, Oh, that was your scene. It would have been great. You have several people blast him for not only Metropolis, but also that, that opening scene and all this stuff. And he tries to clarify, like, hey, I, I didn't do the stuff in the opening scene. And then he could be like, was it not you in Metropolis? And he'd be like, that, I was, I was defending your world. I was trying to... And then maybe even have bits and back and forth where they're just like, why do you keep calling it our world instead of... Uh, like, like, as if you're not a part of it. You know, and, and back and forth thing like that to really get um, perspectives on how everybody feels about this. But like, I always it felt like we just bizarre for him to say at that point. 
Exactly. I feel. I feel that way about him anyway. Like, I'm pretty sure he, he identifies more with the Kryptonians than he does with his parents. Which is bizarre. Which is weird. That's just strange. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, if I got a knock on my door tomorrow, and hey, I don't know, a Turkish in... guy was like, Hey, hello, I am... I don't know what Turkish people sound like. Is that what hey, Turkish hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah, I, I am your long-lost... Uh, your long-lost... Uh, you are my, my son from another... A uh, marriage of mine. Hello, how are you? Kebab. I wouldn't be like I am Turkish. This is well, who I am. Let's let's make Unless it fair, Rags. You you've connected at least. We're talking. Glegs arrive and tell you. Oh, and you're like what? And it translates like you are our son, our long lost son. Then they son. show you a picture of me as a baby. <laughs> and you're a Gleg. Yeah. <laughs> like they're cone heads or something. Yeah, and, and, and you'd be like, that's great. And then your parents are like, if you wish to live with them, that's okay. You'd be like, fuck off. <laughs> no, you know what? No. No, I like it here with my this with my, my planet family. anymore. No, get out of here. Get out of here, <laughs> shoot you off with a broom. But I know like, you, straight. not these fucking people who happened to give no. birth to me. As soon as Rags leaves, they like his actual parents release a book called, like, The Trouble of Raising a Glig. Like, the honest story of Rags <laughs> the Alien. <laughs> that sounds like that joke at the end of that Rick and Morty episode where the, <laughs> the dude wrote this story about living with Morty growing yeah. up in his house. I was told that, I, you know, the house was surrounded by poisonous gas, so I... <laughs> and outside. And I've seen I people. The air was dangerous to globians. And people have taken issue with our perspective on that. It's like that's an adaptation argument, isn't it? It's like no, I'm I'm no, no, honestly no, 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 no. No, not appealing to the source material. I'm appealing to the fact that this man has grown up and gained everything from his parents, and then he's told like, oh yeah, you're a Kryptonian from a different planet, and he's like, man, those are way more my people. And it's like I think he refers to them as my people in front of his mum. Just like, oh god. So I, I'm just curious, um, y you say he identifies more with Kryptonians than humans. Um, he was that way a lot. Like he's in anguish over the fact what that some... he had to execute Zod, meaning he's the last Kryptonian. And that's how I've seen it dis defended. It's like, it's such an emotional moment for him because he knows he's the last Kryptonian. And it's like, well, he's far from the last human. And he's always saying, my people, my parents, in reference to the, his Kryptonian side, when really, both his people and his birth parents are strangers to him, yet... He knows he, barely you know, anything about them, yeah. Yeah, you know, he has that outburst against Jonathan going, you're not my real dad, you know, this, you know, uh, you know... Uh, I don't know. Wouldn't, wouldn't the division between Kryptonians and humans... Uh, couldn't you make the argument that that division was being created more by the humans in Batman v Superman? Um, I think I was mainly referencing Man of Steel for for this argument because BVS we don't get a lot of Superman at all. Um, but uh, that that would again would be something that I wish we explore. I want to know more about what the people think about Kryptonians and why, and I want to know more about what Clark thinks about it all and. What do you think about what they think? You know, like I, I was dying for more for more understanding of all this stuff, but it's just so briefly gone over. And I really do feel like a lot of people who are very big fans of this fill in the gaps. Um, of which, like, I was just I just got distracted. That guy's wearing a Game of Thrones shit, but there, I bet you he doesn't wear that shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he burnt it, it and danced around it. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. Yes. How does it feel to watch everything go up in flames? Uh, Feels it's, great. Uh, it's a familiar feeling at this yeah. point. Very familiar. Kryptonians also poop with the door open. Damn. Mm. Well, uh, Rags clearly didn't come from Krypton then. Yeah. Oh, not me. I thought we established he's from, he's from Glagonia. He's a Glig. That's right. I'm from, an, I'm, I'm the, from the far off planet of Turkey. The fuck? Strange and alien world. I no longer poop with the door open. I feel like Anatolia is a cooler name for the... than You know what I mean? I guess the problem is Anatolia is the region, so you couldn't... Well, you could name it after the region, I guess. I feel like there are a lot of places that have cool names that you just never hear anymore. Bavaria. Um... 
Oh, awesome. That a blanked Persia. That's a cool name for region. There's, there's a small town in Turkey called Batman. Is there? Yeah. And it was voted as uh, the because uh, there was a condom company that was going to like <laughs> start a service uh, that was like, yeah, we're going to discreetly deliver condoms to your door when you need them and they won't know. We'll like disguise ourselves as police officers and like pizza men. And, and we're going to, and you got to vote for the. For the first city we unrolled this in and of course the internet being what it is they chose batman in turkey and that's a very <laughs> conservative kind of traditional muslim town and they're gonna roll <laughs> out this condom service there <laughs> so needless to say that went up in flames i like that no doubt So why did Snyder decide to do this to these characters? Why make Batman a misguided villain blinded by rage? Why make Superman insecure and unsure of himself and his own existence? Why make these characters so flawed? So, like, I know you're going to give the answer yourself, but, like, I would already pause as, like, wow, that sounds really interesting. Both of these ideas. Um, they sound super interesting. I, don't, I wouldn't need much of a motivation from anybody to want to tell stories like that. I just don't think he did a particularly good job of doing it. Um, but I understand why you're bringing this okay. up, because uh, I know that a lot of people would be like, why the fuck have you done this to my Batman and Superman? I, I get, that's why you're... Which you're... is not, you're, yeah, you're in safe, co good company here, that's not, it's not relevant. So much to the point that most of the people who watch the movie hate them. During a panel, Zack Snyder addressed this, and perhaps got a little carried away. And then you come and say to me something about like, oh, my superhero wouldn't do that. I'm like... Are you serious? And it's a cool point of view. Look, I'm 100% fine with it. There, it's a cool point of view to be like, my heroes are still innocent, you know? My heroes didn't fucking, you know, lie to America. My heroes didn't, you know, embezzle money from their corp. My heroes didn't fucking commit any atrocities. So oh, this is this is what I was referencing earlier. I agree with some of the stuff Zack has said, not this. This is so it's almost like he's saying that all heroes end up this way or something, and you can't have a hero that is absolutely like based on integrity. As if that's uh you know, I said like the boys is more realistic than the MCU. The one thing I didn't like about the boys was how almost all the characters were pieces of shit. And I was like, okay, they would be good people still. That would be a thing. Yeah, because all of the seven are monsters, basically. Yeah, like, and Starlight... Lander is a psychopath, the, the translucent is a pervert, and all that. Yeah, yeah, and I like Starlight, because she, her arc is like the plucky, wholesome, I'm, I'm good because it's good to be good, and she starts getting beaten down by the system, but then she comes through at the end of the season, she's like, no, I do this because it's the right thing to do. And I remember being like, oh, this is great. And then they fucked her up in season two. <laughs> yeah, she killed that guy, it's like, look, he was in my way, alright? Fucking That's hell, I hate that season. <laughs> yeah. Fucked everything up. Um, but I, yeah, Zack said that, like, your heroes have embezzled money, your heroes would lie to America, your heroes have done atrocities. It's like, dude, I don't... I, don't I mean, know. like, can we... What are we doing? <laughs> like, what, what are you saying? This feels... This, I, I see a lot of people in chat saying Edge. It's like, yeah, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. That, that might be partially my fault, considering my song is called Mr. Edge Guy, and a lot of people... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. What? Edge Guy. We've been calling him Edgy since the beginning, all right? I mean, you with us. Been calling him edgy. Yeah, yeah, but we'll I'm be... seeing people call him Edge Guy, you know? which is why I'm going, ooh, okay. Well, I mean... It's a bit edgy. I, you know, yeah. Your song will influence uh, a lot of it. That was a neat song, by the way. I'm going to try and see if we can play it on Meme Fab so that... Uh, we'll have at least EFAP coverage of it, because it's just it's a copyright minefield, is what, what I can imagine. Oh yeah, that'll be cool. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if you wanted to talk about this, or if, if you want to just let the video play for you to talk about it, uh, Colin? Uh, yeah, I can let the video play for a few more seconds and pause and talk about it. I think it you got a point, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just I'm elaborate like, on it. That's cool, but you're living in a fucking dream world, okay? Ah. Mm. So... Man. Oh. That's, the, that's the pushback I would give him. It's like there are people who exist who are really are altruistic. Good, are good people. Yeah. There are good people on Earth. <laughs> I will say it, it's weird that everybody like breaks out like in applause at that line. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Poplar shit. Yeah. Like that's, <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> okay. What food, like that's I, kind I of a really sad statement. Yeah. yeah, I guess it's um I because again it's like if he dialed this back, he might have had a point where it's like you gotta understand that people make mistakes, people lapse in judgment, people can be greedy and selfish and vengeful and spiteful. I'm I'm kind of just saying two of each <laughs> basically the same thing. But like people people are flawed. Like we, it's hard to find people who are just like like Superman is a Clark Kent, you know, the the sort of the the Boy Scout like Clark Kent. That's pretty rare, like to to meet someone yeah. like that. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to explore a version of Superman who is insecure or like has a lot of self doubt and is unsure of what his role is in this world. But I mean, to go to the leap of like, hey, look, my heroes don't commit atrocities, man, that's a fantasy world. It's like, all right, buddy, like, that's, that's, come on. It's um, it's well, I, well, that quote always like it's always amusing to me because one of my favorite Superman quotes is actually in relation to dreams, where he says that dreams save us and dreams lift us up and transform us into something different. And meanwhile, Zack Snyder, who is who had control over Superman, seems to have the antithesis of that view. I just I just find it fascinating. The nightmare I, world or what? I guess my I I am this isn't super relevant because it doesn't really matter. It can have whatever reason. I guess my question would be to what end what what is um, power? Super relevancy? Super relevancy. That's someone's superpower is to always well, be I mean, super if, relevant. If if luck is a superpower, then I feel like relevancy should be a superpower as well. Like you just people pay attention to you more. I don't know if that's a good thing though. <laughs> You know, like you're on the bathroom, people kick down the door. <laughs> What's up, buddy? You're super relevant <laughs> right now. It's not. It's not necessarily super attraction, but maybe it's like a um, like I don't. I don't know. The ability to always be either useful or um. Huh. That's like, an interesting power. Like, like if that. you could always make yourself useful, it could be like, for instance, if specifically they need somebody who is uh flame retardant, but then you know you could be like. And that's that's what it is, right? If you, I, if you I thought I was fire. thinking more. You'll always so like whatever you guys talk about. <laughs> if I turn my power on or use it, I will say something, and it'll be really relevant. Yeah, but I'm pushing it further. I want it to be specifically somebody <laughs> needs help with a dude who's on fire, and you get the ability to not catch fire. I guess I would just make you god at that point. Like any time that anybody needs something, you're exactly what if, that. What are the powers like? You don't really need that. And it's it's almost like uh like it's a it's an ability that will like it can distinguish between like tr oh like like a moment of true need maybe it's mm. one of those things like if you truly need it then it will be able to do it but if you're trying to just use it for um yeah, more expedient purposes it won't yeah it won't hmm. happen which is why I he guess... puts himself into dangerous situations maybe to rescue people or save them because you know lives are on the line and it really is something he needs which makes the power work i guess that would then you then need to think about what exactly does it mean to have something be on the line like is that judged by you or is it judged by something external oh what if it's just based on if you believe you need it Hmm. And then by learning more Whoa. information and you realize, oh, I didn't actually you know need it, then the power that, goes away. That's, you know what, Rags? I really like that idea because you could just have it be that somebody gains an ability that they believe that they need that they don't need. And then it can explore things like perception. What is the nature of your perception of the world? And what if your opinions on things in the world that are good or bad or difficult or easy or that you like or dislike manifest in ways which make things harder for you because you don't have enough confidence in yourself or you over you over um you you think that you're more capable than you are in certain instances you can have a you can have a I feel, that's oh that's an interesting idea maybe maybe the whole thing hmm. is as the, the better you get as a person the more you grow and learn and develop maybe the less, and the less, and less reliant powerful, you feel. yeah, the less yeah. reliant you feel on those powers, and it makes it when they actually yeah. occur even more meaningful. And so, so by growing as a person, you actually lose your abilities, in a sense, yeah. And it's then, like how a kid, a then, kid thinks they need what? all kinds of different things. You know things, what? So. This is really interesting because you might remember at Mola in in BoJack, there was a particular episode that was talking about Diane and this whole idea of like almost staying depressed because that's an aspect of you as a person. 
Mm-hmm. Let's actually like that could be an actual idea here of like, would you want to retain? <laughs> you know, like it's better that I stay this way, like miserable and unsure of myself, because that will give me like these abilities just being an allegory for not wanting to improve your mental health because you think that you'll lose something valuable about yourself by by changing. A- apparently, this is fairly odd parents. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, fairly, fairly odd parents tends to do things better than Zack Snyder. Wow. Oh my god. So, uh, what were you saying? <laughs> what were we talking about? I don't, I don't oh, know. Ed, I, uh... Edgy. Edgy Snyder. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Edgy Snyder. Yeah, Fring, you, you were saying something and it, you said super relevant. And then, so what were you saying? <laughs> um, crap. I don't know. It's God. If this... only super relevant man was here. Yep. <laughs> He could come back and remind us of what's important. I remember what was relevant to this discussion. While he obviously isn't the most eloquent speaker, I believe yeah. that his point still stands. <laughs> it is sort of idealistic to believe that our personal heroes are flawless individuals who never make mistakes, who never deviate from their principles. I don't know. There's difference between so, flawless I, and I guess. Like... I guess what I would say here is that I agree with what you're saying, but I think you're being very charitable to what he said. Yeah. I think you've said something different that's more interesting than what he said. So, what are, what is the difference between what he said and what I said, just so he, I can get that clear? Just to, so, to compare what, them directly, your heroes do commit atrocities versus your heroes aren't perfect. Like okay, so if his is just a, a bit more extreme. Uh, I think that his is so extreme that it loses substance that yours has, I think. it's Because his is almost this idea of, like, come on, guys, if these people existed, like, you'd hate them, they'd be monsters. Whereas the more interesting conversation is, these guys wouldn't be perfect, but what what standard are we holding them up to, and are they trying their best, and, you know, can they fix these things, or... Yeah, it, it feels like there's more to talk about. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I, I can see, yeah. I can see your point. Of- and I, I appreciate the effort. You're trying to repackage what he said on that interview to try and match his goals with this film. It's just that um, you are right. By the way, he is notoriously bad at speaking. Uh, he's he's gotten himself in trouble a couple of times in that yeah. regard. <laughs> um, but yeah, it did sound like what he said was what he meant uh, in that in that interview that like and that's the thing if you take it literally that is something you really want clarification for be like do you believe that everybody who would have the power level of of a batman or a superman that they inevitably would commit atrocities lie to america and embezzle money and if he said absolutely like which is what i can believe him saying i should be like okay okay snyder who failed right but i mean can't we take evidence from the movie that he made, Batman v Superman, Batman does commit atrocities, but he does change at the very end. Well, that's the thing. I don't take issue with the idea that people can. I take issue with the idea that all of them would. Um, more, It was less to do with the movie, more the meta sort of discussion on superheroes that he's having in that interview. I just I think it's a bit nuts. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, superheroes, much like regular people, um, come, would come in a variety of flavors. Some would be altruistic to the end, while others would be far more corruptible. And I think portraying it as all one or the other is uh, ignoring the reality of the situation. Yeah, like I would, I would think, you know, so he, he watches maybe a couple of the the classic Supermans and and some other movies, the Raimi Spider Man, and he's like, oh man, these heroes, they're just so fucking like, like they they can they ever make mistakes? And then. I would be like, that's that's a fair point. They are pretty like the the typically like they're very very um good idols sort of thing. And then he's like, right now to do atrocities. I'd be like, whoa, you okay? Like we, when you talk about flaws, I'm much more interested in the idea of exploring like particular ones, particular people. But like, why is it that we have to go all the way over to um the reality atrocities. is they're all they're all committing atrocities? Like no, Snyder, neither are the reality, right? Like we have to get some kind of middle ground. That's how we create characters. But at the same time. I think both extremes probably would exist. There would be heroes committing atrocities, but there also would be heroes that are altruistic as hell and do everything they can to do the right thing. Like, real people exist that way. There are people out there who are, like, full-on Boy Scouts. The Ned Flanders types. 
So I'm just curious, do you think that in the way that Zack Snyder portrays Superman, would you say that he's not um, as altruistic as he could be? Um, it, it, only, only in regards to his efforts. Maybe not in the things he accomplishes um, or the way that things end up, but... Well, yeah, because things don't end up as well as they could, but I guess... And, and right. I guess that would be more of an issue of, like, maybe that could be chalked up to just bad logistics from a writing standpoint of why didn't Superman fly him out into space? That seems like a decision he would have made, but more so the meaningful character decisions. Huh. I was I would say the answer is just a categorical. Like, he, he struggles sometimes yeah. to think about whether or not he's going to save the world. That, to me, is like, man, you are not close to as altruistic as you could be and fighting the kryptonians he's pretty like i understand like him not being perfect at combat or whatever but like it doesn't uh not only is he failing to even show that he's trying to get like um the kryptonians out of the populated areas but he's actively contributing to the damage that they're doing like almost uh, like i don't want to say intentionally maliciously as far as the writing is concerned but there are some very careless decisions with those fight scenes like him uh picking up um the non uh surrogate so the big ape like kryptonian and then punching him into a bunch of oil tankers without regard for human life i think that's very much on the opposite end of altruistic and yeah the, call it down reckless. that particular reference if you remember uh colin the um the guy uh, zod tosses like the tanker at him and Superman almost jumps over it, like, smugly, like, heh, missed. And it, like, flings into a building and burns up the whole thing. It's just like, oh, <laughs> man, what are you doing? Right, yeah. So, yeah. Um, that makes sense. It's so, so it's conscious. just, he's very negligent in his pursuits, for I would yeah, goodness. So. Yeah. yeah, I would say so. Dick. To believe that our personal heroes are flawless individuals who never make mistakes, who never deviate from their principles, who fail to do the one thing that they're designed to do. However, the most important part about all of this is that they change. They fix themselves. The first thing we see Batman doing is branding a low-life criminal, sentencing him to death. The very last thing we see Batman do is choose not to kill the man who probably deserves Batman's wrath the most. So I was going to ask you about this scene. Um, I didn't really get it. it, it Batman seems hell-bent on particularly, uh, branding Lex, and then Lex gives him, like, a lot of a speech that's kind of nonsensical because he's losing his mind, but he's also foreshadowing, like, what's gonna happen next. And then Batman punches the wall, and, like, the first impression I got was Batman realizing he's lost his mind, so branding him is kind of meaningless. Yeah, so the, the way I... I kind of saw this and I interpreted it is, you know, you have the big Martha moment where, you know, he's, he doesn't kill Superman and he has this emotional breakthrough, but he's still, he's still not, you know, oh, I'm, I need to be better yet. So he goes to the warehouse and he, he kills quite a few people. Um, and everything with Doomsday uh, watching, I think, I think his point of starting to come back to the light happened i think it started with the martha scene but i think even more so it started with superman's death and i think that's really what drove him or what inspired him to to start being better to, to begin to be better and so i think this scene with lex is this kind of internal struggle that he's having because he's very much used to just going somewhere and taking care of taking out the trash so just going to this criminal branding him and being done with him forever so the way i saw this was he was kind of falling falling back on that habit and so he goes there fully intending to brand lax um but he, he he ends up choosing not to and i think there could have been some a little more indication as as to why but i do think you have to infer a little bit based off of the scene that came prior. He's fighting to be better. And especially the scene that, because this is kind of intercut with his his big speech about humanity and how, quote, we, we need to be better. So I think that was the point of that, was that that was his, his like the start of his way back. And that's how I so interpreted I that. Oh, sorry. Um, 
I have a question actually um, in regard to like Batman's journey in this. Um, so something we were talking about before is that um, a lot of this film kind of relies on like the meta knowledge of who Batman is, whether that is from the Nolan films or from the comics or uh, from whatever past interpretation. Um, but do you think that there, without regarding any previous version, just pretending this is the very first time that this is, that we have seen Batman, um, that you've seen Batman, and this is your first version of Batman you're ever experiencing. Um, what, um, what do you, what references do you think there are uh, to establish what the normal was for this Batman before he went down that darker path or just before um, the present day scenes in this film? Um, like, what, what, what do you think those are? Um, yeah, so first of all, there was the the very opening scene, the, the murder of his parents, uh, his mm -hmm. little monologue that he has before. It's pretty vague, but he does he does talk about there being, you know, these absolutes and uh, perfect things, and that that was obviously in in reference to himself, and that's kind of. You learn more about that, especially through his interactions with Alfred. Um, I kind of wish there was more, more, um, you know, like, you know, when Superman was looking at the articles written about Batman now being like this judge, jury, and executioner, and, you know, you know his rules have changed and, and stuff like that. It does imply that, you know, he's becoming more cruel, more ruthless, even when he's talking to the citizens, the citizens in Gotham, they, they talk about him as if like, Oh, now he's scary. Now he's hunting. Now he's, you know, he, he's gotten more ruthless. So I think they're sprinkled throughout, but it's hard to imagine just going into it without knowing any other version of Batman, if that would be enough. Yeah, that's kind of my issue because I feel like, um, especially when you're establishing a shared universe, um, you should be treating, you know, because every every um, version of Batman is someone's first, right? Like it doesn't matter how popular the character is, there is always a new person introduced to it every day. So to um, go in, so for example, that Robin scene is meaningless without uh, you can't you can't even go off the Chris Nolan films for the Robin suit because Robin wasn't in those films outside of an Easter egg, so mm -hmm. you, you can't really get any meaning for that. And you might even confuse that suit for a bat suit. And you don't. And let's not that's not to mention you probably don't know who the Joker is. Um, so I think uh, there, there's a lot of meaning that is taken out of the film that is perhaps sabotaged by the fact that they're jumping right into the deep end with this journey rather than allowing a slower burn with first establishing who this Batman is by default. Is he a killer? Is he not a killer? That kind of thing. And then having this film, a film or a film like this be like, this is now he's going down the dark path. Because to me, I don't really have a feeling for who this Batman was beforehand outside of the fact that he didn't use to brand people and perhaps he was a little bit softer but I don't really have any specifics uh, just judging by this film. I There's never any reference to whether or not he killed people, whether or not killing is at all like a problem for him. And that's a problem with Superman as well. We There's no, like the, the snapping of Zod's neck is treated as this really big deal, like, like oh, he crossed that line, but there's no real build up to that. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot of issues with that. And I feel like these films do rely on kind of a metatextual knowledge of the characters. And while that might work for an audience that does, well, I don't think it, I don't think it really worked even with the meta knowledge, but like you might be able to think you can get away with that, like in the present moment where these characters are really big, but let's just say like 20, 30 years from now, these characters have fallen into relative obscurity for whatever reason. And someone just finds this film suddenly it's going to be very entrenched within the common knowledge of the time rather than being a product that can stand on its own two feet. Like Batman Begins, you can watch that and you really don't need to know anything else about Batman because that film helps you fill in all the relevant blanks. Um, you know, Richard Donner's Superman does that, like a lot of adaptations. These films very much suffer from an assumed knowledge of at least, if not the source material, then some other version. And I think that's really going to hinder it in the long run, I think that hinders a lot of analyses of this film 
because a lot of people are assuming things about these characters that are not actually established within the text because they have that prior knowledge and i think that makes discussions about this um film a little bit of a little bit complicated in, in that respect because you you have to really track where are you getting this knowledge from is it from is it something that can be tracked to the text without that knowledge or um is it something that requires you to have experienced batman in some other prior form so i think that it's just food for thought there I think that's fair. Um, yeah, I, I think something that you have to keep in mind is that these were never meant to be standalone movies. Like whatever happened with Robin and Joker, I'm I'm confident would have been explored. Um, which you can still make the argument that it doesn't. It still doesn't mean anything in this movie because you've not seen it yet. Um, and if the if the point with Robin and Joker was any more relevant to the plot, then I would have. A problem with it but just because it's a very minor passing moment um i don't really mind it that much also i i don't think i mind it that much simply because it's batman and he is so well known as of right now i mean as of right now but Academy. what about 20 years let's just say he fell into obscurity at some point like because the we're always changing right like zorro like uh the shadow these were very relevant figures at their time of uh stardom but it's very possible for characters to fall into obscurity even superman like who is a very iconic figure a lot of details about him have uh, fallen into relative nerdom just because people haven't had as much of a taste of uh for him um in certain previous years um, and i guess the to add on to that the the one another important thing is for somebody somewhere in the world and probably not a small number of people this may well have been their first piece of batman media Mm -hmm. um and if it's that person then all of that meta stuff is just not relevant to them um i guess it's not th like that wouldn't typically be an issue but if a lot of the strengths of this film rely on the 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 juxtaposition of the story versus the meta then a lot of that is lost for those people yeah like to use a relevant example like so do you um... think oh sorry so do you think it does really heavily rely on the the story versus meta? Do you think I, the meta plays that big of a role? I don't know that it does, but I think that your exploration of the film is is based on is more so based on the idea that it's it's uh it does that it's reliant on meta knowledge about Batman and stuff like that. Okay. I mean that might that might just be my mistake though. Yeah, it's one of those interesting things yeah, I don't... where you it, it's interesting to track where we're getting the inter because even someone who doesn't think they're doing it, I think, could fall into that trap just by accident. Um, like mm -hmm. I'm not really trying to throw shade. It's more just an interesting observation I've had about this film in particular, where people have applied this meaning about how uh, this is the story about why it, it's wrong for Batman to kill when we never get any references to his policy on killing at any point during the film. That's fair. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And I think if if the response to the film was less focused on uh, on Batman's killing, then I, I probably wouldn't have stressed so hard on it yeah fair enough but yeah. since that was yeah um, someone's asking spice. colin what are the secret herbs and spices <laughs> <laughs> um peace and love i don't know <laughs> I just want to highlight as well. At Mola, this EFAP is good, but boring. Have some fun, please. He's okay, <laughs> but it's putting me to sleep. Play Gothic phone with him. That's <laughs> <laughs> becoming the go-to for just... We need excitement. Draw the pictures. I just I just like how honest... I'm sorry, I can't is. be... I, I can't be as fun as a lot of the people we've talked to. Oh, don't worry about it. This is... This it, from... it might be good that you're not... You're not as fun as some of the people we've talked to. Yes. Mm. Um, some of them are fun in horrible ways. 
I like this 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 Eve app reminds me of the first one we had with uh, John C J G. It's not going to be one that like everybody gets too passionate about, but I think it's it's been a really good one. Uh, this is EFAP ASMR. You could turn it on and put down the volume and slip on into a nap or I like these sleep. conversations. Yeah, this That's, is a this yeah. is a this is a love making EFAP right here. Mm. Oh yeah. You get your lady <laughs> EFAP after hours. hours. Yeah, after dark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, EFAP after dark. EFAP bad. And yeah, just turn this on and just you know, bring, bring his on the romantic music, light a oh, candle, God. get your nuggies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got some nuggies in the oven. Oh, God. It will be done for another 30 minutes. Batman's wrath the most. Clark, despite being uncertain about who he is and how he's supposed to live his life throughout the entire film, knows 100% that he loves Lois, I do really like his, his connection music, to humanity, though. and thus chooses to sacrifice his life for them. That's a hero. By challenging the fundamental principles of these characters, Snyder emphasizes why they are so damn important. Why Batman not killing is fundamental to his very existence. Why Superman being a beacon of hope is so necessary for the character. See, I, I think that this would be a really cool thing if it if it were what the films did. I'd be like, wow, this is a great summarization, but it's just, I just don't think that the films achieved it. Um, I'm just really distracted by how much I like the Man of Steel theme. It's like, yeah. uh, this is that most <laughs> emotional conflict I've ever had. Yeah, just, they got DC has got a lot of great music yeah. for characters that just it does great. honestly. Yeah. yeah, like a lot of the films have great music, and so important for the rest of the world. Are you getting away with playing this music? I have a feeling that we might get in more trouble. I don't know. Do you know? I'm sorry. I get all scared. No! Tell us the secrets, Jimmy! But funnily Part enough, five. with the Mr. Edge guy thing, they gave me the once I've just had monetization enabled on my channel, and Mr. Edge guy thing, it isn't like disabled monetization. It's, oh yeah, you can get, you can make money off of it. You just gotta like share it with the copyright holder. And I'm just like, oh, that would have been nice to know early. <laughs> Yeah. Damn, is that a thing they let you do now? You actually get to keep making money, but you just have to share some of it? I th well, so uh, they've been problems, doing that for yeah. a while, but the problem is I don't know what the percentages are like. I don't know if they're, like, ridiculous. Still, fuck, that's crazy. Because, whack, you know, back when I you know, was making vids normally, uh, before I came back here, um, that wasn't even a thing. It was all or nothing. Which was yeah, bullshit well, that that existed for however many years that it did. Yeah, well, it's funny. It, it actually detected that it was a cover version and not the original version. So it was just like, oh, yeah, this is a cover version, right? Like, do you just want to share it? Like, and just have it be like a cover? Yeah, we can do that. Sure. It's interesting how that algorithm works. Yes. Maybe I have spent too much time thinking about this. Maybe I've spent way too many hours talking, discussing, and arguing about fictional characters in a fictional world. No such thing. You can't. You can't spend too long. I never feel about bad stuff. about that. <laughs> That's right. I know. I'm really. I'm really preaching to the choir here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And whether or not a superhero movie that came out five years ago is a good one or not. Maybe there's no point to any of it. Maybe. But maybe not. <laughs> oh no. Why do I care so much about this? About voicing my opinion on this? Does it go beyond wanting to defend a director's vision? Oh, they didn't just really my... green screen the supermarket or the gas station there. It they was a real gas it. station, yeah. They went to location. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I guess we can go to a gas station. Okay, sure. that would be funny if somebody, the actor was like really insistent. He's like, listen, what was his name? Ezra Miller? Miller? Yes. He was like, listen, I want to go, you know, I'm, I, I, want, to, I want to do this for real, just like the olden days. I want to actually go to location. <laughs> and then Zach is like, do you know life? where a store is? And he's like, yes. Do, do you do. know what <gasps> the uh, scabbers went down the street? And they're like, oh my god, it's perfect. They sell people food here. Fun fact, the uh, the Smallville uh, scenes that they shot where there was that big fight between the Kryptonians and Superman, that was actually shot in Kansas in a small town at a... Uh, it must have been Wichita, I think. Hmm. I've actually been there a few times. It's pretty cool. Well, they're doing like it. We're, we're entering a new age now. Where Disney are introducing that whole like they have technology to create like a, 
a world around actors in the green screen or whatever. Oh, right? the, that's right. The dumb, Mandalorian the digital dumb thing. Yeah. Which is Super just yeah, like yeah, holy shit. Good. You really do wonder where we'll be at in time to come. You know. Well, we're probably gonna have the uh, that deck from what's it called in in Star Trek the uh, the Hollow Deck. Hollow Deck. Mm. Yeah. Could say well, that. In DS9, called Hollow Sweets. Oh boy, Hollow Sweets. Uh, but it, someone has asked me a few times now. They want us to tell you you spelt you spelt villain wrong. We we we, we, yeah. we that was a part of your video. I'm it's sorry. Uh, now wait, I, I spelt was, villain I was, wrong. You did, yes. but so sorry. don't don't worry because a lot of people <sighs> do that. That's a bummer. I was the only one who noticed. I know. Here, I know here. I no one else noticed. It was uh. Oh, wait, how did I spell it? Subtle. It was I A N instead of A N. Villain. Dad gamut. <laughs> I find that the, the, the best way to do it, because you, you might, like, if I'm ever putting text into Vegas, I put it in Word first <clears> to make sure that it's all correct, because I'm, I'm worried about this something <laughs> when I type it in too quickly and don't reread it. I've just always kind of remembered to tell myself it's villain. Like I like I say I, it sort I, of like that to kind of remind myself the villain villainous I think actions. It's, I, I do think it's honestly an easy mistake that one. Like yeah, that, that's that's a really okay. easy typo. Yeah, it's not make. like you misspelled intellectual or something. Intellectual, intellectual yeah, that, that'd yeah. be not be good. Super awkward if someone did that. A little bit. My own opinions on film. Well, thank you for letting me off the hook with that one. I appreciate that. Okay, <laughs> we're kind not gods. A <laughs> <laughs> as I delve further into filmmaking myself, or wanting to give some love to something that I believe is well made. I spent a lot of time reading negative comments on my last video essay, and I didn't really want to do another- Bloody hell. That middle oh. one is really shitty. Oh, I hate yeah. people. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because of just it. fucking oh, hell. I want to keep making my own films, writing my own screenplays, and hopefully making a small impact on the world in the process. I decided to make this essay partly because I wanted to elaborate a bit for more a, on this film. For a second there, I thought that this was a, a clip from one of your films, and I was like, wait, wait, you got him to act in- Oh, wait. <laughs> you got Henry Cavill to act in How did you put Yeah, he really liked my video, and so he wanted to be in my YouTube video. But also because I want other people to see what I see, to love what I love. Do you see I want that community of people who say, I totally agree. Well done. But I also really enjoy the rare comments that said, Hey, I don't agree with you on this, but it's cool that you think this, and I'd be down to talk about it with you sometime. Hey Colin, it's cool that you think this, and I'd be down to talk about it sometime. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Maybe I'm rambling now. It's cool to connect with people, regardless of whether we agree or not. I'm sure that I will inevitably irritate some people, especially with the way I started off this video. But at the end of the day, I'm not too upset by that. Truth, goodness, and beauty are things that I value at my core, and I strive to always represent those things. You should probably have commas in there. Truth, goodness. Yeah, and beauty. I know. I, truth, yeah. Un unless what you're pr you're you're only uh, at least between the, things, uh, truth, goodness. Truth and goodness. I really, yeah. I really want truth, goodness. Truth, goodness, and beauty. I fall short. I fail every day. Oh, that looks rough. The CGI there around the building. Ooh, yes. That it's, does look um, really rough. That you can almost see uh, the outline. Wait, where are you looking? Around the edges of the building, the outsides in particular. The blur, the kind of blur that happens when you're trying to blend blue, uh, blue screen or green screen stuff uh... with, with real things. Like, it looks like mm. that house has been inserted against the sky. Or something. Like, something's going wrong. They should have just burned down a big mansion. <laughs> and then... They should have done. They gone all the way. Go for it. Well, I mean, I guess this is this is one of those examples, right, of, of the issue is that it used to be that if you wanted this, you needed to construct it. But now that you or have the option to one, do it yeah. later on, now that you've got that option and it's so easy, why would you do that? And I guess it can become easy to make those decisions for a lot of different parts of the film. Yeah. I, I wonder, because the technology has definitely gotten better, but it almost feels like the sheer quantity of visual effects work in, like, every film has made it to where overall it's suffering because mm, there's so much work to be fun. done and so little time to do it. Like that feels more likely to me than a, than a decrease in the technology or the talent. It doesn't seem like that's the case at all. Yeah. Also, um, apparently because this was shot on film rather than digital, it's apparently oh. to blend digital effects with film footage. So that might also- It might be, yeah. yeah. 
Maybe. Um, yeah. I'm not sure how it works in that regard. Probably go back and watch this video a week, month, or year later, and hate the way I said something or chose to communicate an idea. With everything I do, I become. Matt, I don't know what this track is, but how can... would it not be picked up by YouTube at this point? <laughs> <laughs> the background track, I mean. You have to stop someone... pausing what you're saying every three seconds. Uh, someone in chat I'm is sorry. bringing up a good point. I can, I can tell you right now that that I already have like watched it through and regretted the way I've I've phrased some things. It's only natural. So I, I, I do the same with my videos. There's some stuff in there. I'm like, ah, shouldn't have said that that way. Yeah. But you know, you ain't the gonna be able to get on the. The Dash Sex video still annoys me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, someone's saying, ask him how many midgets with knives it would take to bring down a grizzly bear. Ah, valid question. Yeah. All right, Colin, go ahead. Um, How big is the bear? Oh, it's, it's a, a grizzly, grizzly bear. bear, so, like, pretty big. Pretty big, yeah, pretty big. Not, yeah. It's, uh, ten. Midgets are... Pretty aggressive, from my experience. Really? Yeah, I, I mean, and and remember with oh, yeah. your knives as well. <laughs> yeah. Do we do we get yeah. more yeah. information on which what kind of knife they're using? Like kitchen well, knives. Say oh. just a just a sharp just sharp kitchen knives. I, you know, like I a guess big I, big one. A big one though, yeah. right? Like we're not talking little small. I mean, knife. it'll we're... seem doubly big because a midget's holding it. And well, are we, I guess are these courageous midgets? <laughs> we like swords. Are these well that's that would be a modifier if these i i think i said if if you had two midgets on either side and they were brave they might be able to get in some really good hits if they flank it but that's i you never know i think the element of surprise is a necessary element for success if there are only two because also, if they mess it up a midget striking a grizzly bear with a knife they're gonna they yeah. need a lot of power to get that knife in right like it's not gonna uh, be easy yes. that'll be tough and you got to do all this while not being killed instantly by a strike from the bear to the head. Doesn't just punch you across the forest. Yeah, and bears yeah, I mean, are durable could, bastards. Yeah, they are strong. I, I remember I um just put it into perspective how fast they can run. There's a video of this guy just riding his bike in the middle of a forest. And then he looks to the right and a grizzly bear just starts running after him. And he starts pedaling away, and every time he looks over his shoulder, it's still there, an equal distance away from him. Um, he just keeps pedaling, and then he encounters a a a big branch sprawled across the pavement. So he has to run off. Th that video is fake. Oh, lame. That was so this like... does remind. Uh, this does remind me of a real story of um someone who um was. Uh, he was a mail delivery man in tiger country, so this a town in Russia where you just see beware of tigers everywhere. So I don't know why they're still living there, but whatever. Um, the tigers, live... even though there's Russians everywhere, I mean, yeah, you put up with them, I guess. Yeah, you know, um, but um, he'd been delivering mail for twenty years. Tigers never bothered him once, and then one day he decided, you know what? I'm gonna be better to myself. I'm gonna exercise. I'm gonna get a bike. I'm gonna ride a bike. To my mail stops and uh do that and all of a sudden he's riding his bike along and then he turns around and suddenly oh my god a fucking tiger is bolting towards me so he starts speeding up and they'd never bothered him before but the very fact that he was on a bicycle um was the fact that was the thing that offended him and apparently that's pretty common where tigers will leave people alone in tiger country for the most part but then as soon as they start riding a bike they see that as like a four-legged animal, and therefore they start perceiving it as prey. I just find that very, very hmm. fascinating. Stupid. <laughs> you stupid idiot! I'm not prey. <laughs> tigers like don't care. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. It's tigers are the only cats that like really like swimming, so that oh, yeah. just adds another thing to their apexness. You got to watch out for them Siberian tigers. I'm telling you, especially in the bottom of the ocean. There? Go watch out. Yeah, well, imagine if you were going out for a swim and you saw one of those coming towards you. <laughs> Spooky. I'm a little more unsure of myself and insecure. Maybe that's why I care about this film and why I care about its characters. Maybe that's why I love Zack Snyder. Love Zack Snyder, huh? 
I mean, hey. <laughs> I really, really do. Hey. And you know what? As soon as he answers uh, my texts, I'll, I'll send you guys the <laughs> you wedding. You have his number? Oh, my How God. How did you get this number? Why did you say that name? Well, whatever, whatever Google gave me. <laughs> he gave you the number of A, Zack Snyder. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much again for watching this video essay. I plan to do more of these, so subscribe if you want to keep up with them. I also just put out a short film that won an award in a film festival this last month, hey, so please check it out and Arkansas. tell me what you think. You I made it in any... Rags' house? It, it made was it made nice in Arkansas. Eight? Well, neat. You live uh, in Arkansas? You, yeah. you do. Arkansas. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, uh... There you go, you just plugged yourself. P perfect. That, that leads me to be like, Boom. there you go, EFAB chat, <laughs> who's been listening. You can go find more stuff if you're interested in uh, Mr. Sanders' perspective on things. Or you want to check out those, those short films. We can probably talk more about that yeah. in a bit if you want. But um, yeah, that's about that for the video. Um, interesting perspectives on things. I don't know what else there is to really... It feels like we kind of we kind of did it now. I don't know what else, And we're at five and a half hours. Man, did time oh, just wow. run away that with... That did fly. Wow, that really did legitimately seem like it went that by did, in a second. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I just got on. Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh, it's no. been like so yeah. crazy. Legit though, <laughs> it goes fast. Uh, that that actually, God. that actually really did seem like it flew by. Because um, we do that, we're used to this. So, mm -hmm. man, we've had some mefaps that are slogs. We have, we have. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, on the subject of good old Snyderverse and stuff, is there any other subjects we want to go over, including everybody here? I don't know. Is there any, are there any subjects we'd like? Um, well, we did the bear thing. Um, we did the midget bear thing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I suppose. Well, yeah, we already asked him about uh, Army of the Dead, and what do you think of uh, the direction DC is heading in now, like away from the Snyder stuff and into what it's doing at the moment? I think it's probably for the best, um, just because of how confused it's been. Uh, this past few years um i don't know how much how, how confident i am in projects like you know recently there's been like shazam i wasn't a big fan of shazam um birds of prey again just yeah kind of <laughs> meh movies that are just coming out uh, black adam again i'm just not very excited for that um i am excited for the bat the new batman movie that's coming out Think yeah, I'm the Flash. Sort of looking forward to that one. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to feel about the Flash. It feels weird, and I'm confused every time I hear something new about it. So maybe it'll be good. I don't know. Well, I mean, it, that movie is it. all but confirmed to be like multiverse stuff with um Michael Keaton, Batman, and and um other characters yeah, coming in and like Batman time travel. Right. Well, I mean, there's heaps of pictures yeah. like a duplicate version of Flash. That's like that's been on set photos and stuff, so it's like that film seems kind of crazy. We'll have to see on that one. Uh, what do you think of we? What do you think of the Suicide Squad? The the Suicide Squad, James Gunn one. I I really liked it. I think it was pretty solid. Um, the correct. Take. It, it just kind of made me. <laughs> <laughs> It, it bummed me out that, you know, it was so much, like, better than the last one. And I actually went back and watched the last one after uh, watching the new one, and it just felt that much worse. And yeah, it's just like, man, how, like, how do you mess something up like that much? And the thing is, I'm, I'm sure it was shot fine like i'm sure everything was shot well i just think it was edited really really poorly i think you could take what was shot and make a really good movie out of it honestly i do not agree i'm not i'm not sure, sure about that, that. I don't yeah. think I'm, it was written yeah. in six weeks so it's like uh oh, how much man really yeah six weeks well yeah, black, six widow, weeks. black widow was written in 11 days that's true I uh, yeah and it yeah. shows yeah I can believe that. I can believe that. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I wish I wish screenplays were taken more seriously in terms of how much time should be spent on them. I wish writing as a craft was taken more seriously. <laughs> it's just yeah. like whatever, get it done. Uh, any like, uh, any movies you are looking forwards to in particular that's kind of coming up? I normally uh, I don't normally really try to look forwards to things because I'm always disappointed. But uh, anything that's sort of on your radar? Something maybe we should yeah, look I out really for that to... we might be aware of? I've been intending to get out and watch um, The Green Knight. Have you guys seen yeah, anything? Yeah, I've heard of that. that. I need That is something that I would like to watch because I've heard it's nifty. I have not seen it. No, they're buying. Yeah, I read the the book it's it's based off of, and I really liked it when I read I read it. I think my sophomore year of high school, and I really enjoyed it. And I I made a few passing remarks about how you know this could make like an interesting screenplay, and and a few years later I saw the first trailer for it, and I was really stoked because I like um I like a twenty four stuff. I think for the most part they pretty some pretty solid movies and yeah so that's something i really want to get out and watch i haven't had a lot of time though it's just really really busy yeah. well you could go watch shang chi it's a triumph <laughs> it is. i was well, gonna say have you I been mean, keeping up now, so. you've been keeping up with uh phase four of the mcu i have not i keep all my friends are, you know, and, and they keep telling me like, "Oh, we need to watch uh, WandaVision or Falcon and Winter Soldier." And oh, I no. always like, I always make a start to watch them, and I just I lose interest really quickly. That's <laughs> and, a natural reaction. We're not. We're not. Yeah, fans like you're really not missing four. out. No, you're not missing out. Um. Oh, there was something I did want to talk about. Uh, I I made some remarks in my first video essay about. Uh, art and amusement um, and I wanted to clarify what I meant by that because I think one of the biggest problems of that essay was I never even bothered to define what I mean by art and amusement because mm -hmm. I make this big point of saying that you know oh, Batman v Superman is art and you know MC movies are amusement and yeah. I, I guess I never realized until I started reading comments that you know, there's there's nothing wrong with amusement. If you say okay, if you want to define art and amusement as two distinct things, you could say, I don't know, art is. I don't know how how would you how would you define art? Um, this is well, I mean, I, how you define expression it. of an individual in like a creative format or something like that. It's really broad. Very broad. So I think, yeah, that's fair. And I, I talk about amusement in kind of a derogatory way, but there's like, there's amusement in Batman v Superman. If, if you say amusement is, you could say mindless or distraction or fun, you could, you could designate it to that word. Then there's tons of amusement in Batman v Superman. And I never intended to to say that there was only art in Batman v Superman or that there was only amusement in these other films. Mm -hmm. um, but also there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with amusement. I think that's something I also failed to mention is that, you know, art isn't, art and amusement aren't like good and bad. They're just, they're different. It's, it's the way that content is handled. And I think my point in that video was that Batman v Superman was a little more artistic in its approach than people expected it to be. I, th uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to use the word, but it sounds like you're saying it's a little deeper than people expect. Mm, yeah, I guess. I, I, I also don't like using that word. Yeah, nobody likes that word because <laughs> it's too pretentious, but... <laughs> I mean, you know, like that. I would, I, I'd be lying if I said that this wouldn't apply to actual examples we've come across, but also to just the theoretical that surely there's content that can um, cover subjects or discuss subjects in, in such ways that an audience might actually not even realize it's being talked about. 
That's definitely a possibility. I don't feel like I missed much of what people are saying is the great value of, of the Snyder films. I just don't think Snyder did a particularly great job. I appreciate the goals that he had, and I don't even hold it against him that Superman is disenfranchised and Batman is killing people. I just don't think he did a, a, a execution-wise, I just don't think it was particularly good. Yeah, we're totally all right to have yeah, all this stuff fair. explored and... Uh... Yeah, I think the I think the issues that we'll have are not at all the ones that other people will have. Some of their arguments frustrate us, but uh, 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 yeah, we're on a weird island because um, I imagine the most criticism yeah. you'll get is from uh, the source. You know, like Batman and Superman are out of character and stuff. That seemed to obviously be part of what the main thing you were responding to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, well, that's, that sounds good. Sounds great. I was that's gonna say, there was there, there was an idea of having Fringy describe Shang-Chi's plot to us, but I mean, we're at five and a half, five hours, forty minutes already. Um, we should probably get a super chat. Yeah, absolutely, we can do that. And of course, see what people are thinking. Uh, Colin, Meme, you, you guys are welcome to stay, or welcome to leave, completely up to you. I can hang around. Yeah, I can hang around for a bit. Sounds good. Very well. Um, Mola, stop poking Meme's eye out. Oh my goodness, my curse is on screen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how mean. Ow. Me. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I figure I could like explain Shang Chi pretty quickly. Well, why not just That's, save it for another? another um, or we can do it another time. Yeah. I just yeah, figured. we'll have it on Chi app. Because oh, you're playing Double Dash. I am. How did you know? Oh my god. I see it on screen now. What? How could you fucking do this? Alright, I, I mean, know. basically the TLDR is that Sean, no, it's, like... It's, it's, just, I just said, it's, gonna, it's like a whole section. I, I want to go, I want you to just explain a quick brief, I want to ask you a little questions about that film. Oh, sure, but I guess just to give, to give people a teaser for the next time that we end up talking about it, okay. the TLDR is that it's sludge. It's probably the best of phase four though but it's still sludge it's like it's yeah it's it it, it benefits strictly from the characters not being like monsters like that that <laughs> helps it a lot that uh Color that gives it a huge edge up. i was um, gonna say that's a step up yeah yay but it, does, it does have that problem though of like just devolt just turning into sludge right at the end it starts off trying to do something like oh yeah we're like a martial arts movie and then by the end of it it's like oh now we're fighting a giant fucking dragon it's like awesome we're just back to sludge again are the martial arts at least nifty okay so i'm a little bit on the outside of this um i haven't seen any trailers for uh what was it called shang chi and the legend Shang of the ten shang -Chi. yeah so i have no idea what this movie is it's it's like, it's new Marvel character, and it's he's basically martial arts dude. Um, that's that. Except he's not because now he's got these crazy rings that like are incredibly powerful that allow him to defeat a dragon from another dimension. The world Damn. building in the MCU at this point is like, hey, look, there's a mystical forest that has trees that move around, and there's one day like every three years or something where they line up perfectly and we can get straight through and we got the map because we got these little uh like amulets that we wear around our necks that we put them in a dragon's eyes and it shows us this map um i don't know how we figured out yeah this is what i mean the more that i think about the plot i'm like actually you know what like the plot is pretty <laughs> balked when i think about it well at least jay um... will be happy they finally got an <laughs> impenetrable forest in the MCU. Oh. It, is, it, is, it is, though, because Ben Kingsley, Trevor Slattery, he guides them through the forest um, with, a, with a, a, this weird mystical creature that doesn't have a face. And yeah, they go to this bountiful land where there's a whole bunch of people and they have dragon scale weapons and it's like the things from the other dimension, just regular knives don't work, but dragon scales do. <laughs> Dragon yeah, scale sticks, dragon are no scale I was gonna say, you're not arrows. highlighting anything that doesn't make sense so far. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, a lot of exposition, though. Like, it, everybody says exactly what they mean all the time. Really not fun to, to watch, you know, characters mm. just say that. 
Um, I, yeah, like the characters are all just really pretty straightforward. Like Shang Chi is just standard hero man who feels bad about his past and wants to be a good one. He has a sister who managed to train herself because uh, they didn't train her to do martial arts. Like they trained Shang Chi, but they didn't train her, so she taught herself, and she's very good at it. And it just feels weird. It's like, ah, oh, you can teach yourself martial arts. Like, you just teach it yourself they by watching They do a lot of that in it. the MCU. Sylvie yeah, taught herself magic, that. if you remember. Yeah, and then she, like, basically created this underground fighting ring where Wong is fighting Abomination. Um, and, and there's a whole bunch of these fights. And I guess that's just like, been going Hulk, on in the MCU. The Hulk villain? Yeah, Abomination's back. <laughs> yeah, he just shows like, up. Just to be clear, the Hulk villain. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> Hulk villain from The Incredible Hulk. You say um, that like he's not one of your favorite characters that you've always wanted to see return. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's bizarre to hear, having oh, not yeah. seen it. The, I mean, it is, it is an instance of they just don't care anymore about making a cohesive world because we have all this extra history that we've had this immortal, this guy who's been alive for a thousand years traveling across the world with these ten rings that he found that are apparently older than, like, Earth itself that he's been using to win battles and stuff and have this underground criminal organization. And it makes you wonder, it's like, because there is an instance where he just goes out in public and uses them to kill these guys. And just sitting there like, did nobody mention it? Like, hey, this dude just came in with these 10 massive rings on his arms that he used to kill all these people. Like, nobody's ever heard of it before, but it's like, oh, but you see Killian, Aldrich Killian, like he'd heard of, and he put, made up the Mandarin. See, it's based on me. I'm, I'm the real Wait, Mandarin. Is, <laughs> is Killian the hero or the villain? <laughs> that's funny. I think I, hey, that's good. Uh, I think I did that joke earlier. I'm not sure. No, I said Villian Murphy. Murphy, that's right, yeah. That's right, oh, Villian. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, We're not meant to be talking about Villian Shang Chi. <laughs> that's right. We're not meant to be talking yeah, about Yeah, you're supposed Shang to tease him, not fucking blow your load well, for Well, that is your teaser. We can, we can do better. I can do better <laughs> next time. We will. We do better next Shang Chi time. will get its coverage. It's just that we can't really fit it in right now. What I mean, we that's do... not going to be very worthwhile coverage, right? Because I'm the only one who watched it and probably the only one who I... will. Because, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe I'll see wow. it by the time we next get there, but I don't. I do do not well, care about Shang Chi. Yeah, it, it very much because when I went to watch it, 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 yeah, like it, it's. I guess it's probably because it's probably setting up stuff in the future as they all do. And in fact, the ending is like, oh, see, the Legend yeah. of the Ten Rings will be discovered in the other film, not this film. We don't learn anything about the rings themselves really in this film. Oh, because Captain Marvel and, and Bruce, <laughs> who's now a human, they're like. Oh, these rings, they're super crazy. Oh, I got a call, I gotta take this, which I'm assuming is whatever she's gotta do in her movie, and Bruce has gotta do in that She-Hulk show. So that's what we're doing, just setting up the pieces for other things, because that's what the MCU is now. Teases for what's next. Shang-Chi no and the Legend of the Ten Rings will return in Avengers yeah. Endgame. I, I'm pretty sure there was a... Te I, I left after the first post credit, I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I think, but I do think it said that the Ted Rings will return. I'm pretty sure it explicitly says that in the film. <laughs> like, dude, what are we doing? Oh. So yeah, would not recommend, but it's the best of Phase 4. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Such a glowing yeah. endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. So. Do you guys... Go ahead. Yeah. Do you guys think that sometime like in the near future or probably not in the near future but eventually there'll be um some kind of marvel and dc crossover film hmm. maybe um oh. i'm i'm not gonna discount it i wouldn't say it might will happen soon that's definitely in the the very maybe ish kind of category for me i have to imagine that that would come out of desperation for dc like they'd be like we're willing to do like a Sony deal with Spider-Man, that sort of thing. Maybe it's, right. or do you mean like a single movie, like a double ensemble sort of thing? I guess, I don't yeah, know what like they that. believe. I guess the problem is you look at Avengers and how much money that made compared to how much money DC movies have been making. It's like, what, what does Disney stand to gain from this collaboration? Will it necessarily yield? Like, will it bear fruit in the same way the Endgame bore fruit in terms of the money it made? 
Like, will actually we'll... have to cross over at this point because there's no. I mean, like, it's all maybe so they'll just developed. think it's worth the experiment. Uh, I guess the question would be, are we advantaging them by doing this in a way that doesn't give us much utility? And if so, why would we do that? Like, it seems like DC gains more from this collaboration at this point in time than Marvel does. Hmm. Uh-huh. Unless Disney buys Warner Brothers, which Holy I'm assuming fuck. that they're not allowed to... Well, I mean, they're probably not allowed to We're on the verge of apocalypse that, right? at that point. I don't think they're allowed to. <laughs> any, I don't think they'd be allowed to, I was gonna say, to, there's right? gotta be Monopoly uh, laws or something that makes it well, so that, like... I mean, I'm pretty sure it took two years to finalize the uh, the Fox deal because they had to deal with all that stuff. And at this point, they own 50% of the film industry, like the American film industry. Yeah, that's a huge monopoly, concerningly big. And they're not even making good stuff. No. That was the deal, Disney. Cool. We allowed you to buy Star Wars because you're going to make good Star Wars movies. Yeah. You lied to us. Well, you rule the world. You had to remember. Do good. South Park, they had that whole episode where Cartman was trying to sell, like, he didn't want us to give it to Disney because it would be bad. <laughs> he knew years ahead of time how bad well, it was. just funny be. because don't they contact J.J. Abrams and start as South Park as the guy who is great at rebooting things or whatever? Remember that? Um, what? I mean, I remember South Park doing a joke in the Fractured Butthole where they made a joke about J.J. Abrams being... Uh, I guy. thought it was the Fractured Butthole. Yeah, the Fractured Butthole. That's right. You, you, clearly, said, said the fra you clearly said the Fractured Butthole. <laughs> I said the Fractured Butthole, yes. No, you, you I said put, it like I put greater thing. emphasis on the butt. B-U-T, butt. Uh, but anyway, in the Fractured Butthole, um... <laughs> he did it again! A, in the Fractured Butthole, there's a joke where I think... I think when they're planning their superhero franchise, Stan says something like, there's nothing wrong with, like, doing the same thing over again to start a franchise, and Kyle said, okay, J.J. Abrams. But it's like, yeah, basically, it's what J.J. Abrams has a habit of doing. Yeah, I think it was... I, 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 someone in chat's gonna know, but basically this was at, just after he'd... I think done TFA, and they're like they need to reboot something in, in a South Park episode, and they're like we need to get the guy who is like great at rebooting and everything, and then they go to JJ Abrams's house. I think the military go to JJ Abrams's house. I mean, I guess they're not wrong in that the things he reboots make a lot of money. <laughs> that would be true, yeah. Because I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, that that uh, Star Trek movie was successful, quite successful financially. As far as I know, yeah, the first two would have been right. I don't know about this. Was the yeah, third one? I think the third. I think the third one didn't do as well as they wanted it to. Right. Which is interesting because people say that's the best one. I'd say it is. Like it's got issues, but like the characters are much more on point, and right. subjectively, it was more Star Trekky to me because they they were actually consulting like the Star Trek wiki. Oh my movies. god. Ooh, wow, imagine doing that. They consulted and, the wiki. And yeah. um, didn't Simon Pegg have a lot more of a hand in the script for that one than the others? Oh, yeah, he that was might explain a lot more too. And he was, oh boy. Yeah, he's a big fan. I just, he's a big fan of all the nerdy stuff. Well, he, and he had a hand in the scripts for the Cornetto trilogy, so I trust him to yeah, a degree. Yeah, <laughs> he's, yeah he's, uh, well, I mean, we haven't seen Paul. He wrote that with Nick Frost. That, uh, Did oh, they? I haven't alien seen Paul. thing. They they wrote Paul. That that was their that was their screenplay. Yeah. Can you check that? Just because I I know it, I know that it's their screenplay. And I don't it's, need to and check it's no one else's. It's just those two. It was the, they they didn't direct it, but they wrote it. That's very um, disappointing. Do you not like Paul? No. Paul is uh, fine. I, you know what? It's I'll like a bad Cornetto. It's a bad Cornetto movie. To be fair. I'll double check for you. So, Paul. The film was written, yeah, written by Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. It was directed by Greg Matola. But didn't didn't those two? They wrote uh, that Amazon show that what was it called? The one that you watched? That oh you said fuck! That you please don't like? tell me. You, you, you're not oh, talking about oh no, the ghost one. Well, what was it? What was it called? Uh, um, Truth Seekers. Truth Seekers. Oh, that was Truth... fucking shit. Truth Seekers is like yeah. one of the worst shows I've seen. Sorry. Oh, pain, 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 pain. Well. So, so, truth, yes, Truth Seekers was written by Nick Frost, Simon Pegg, James Serafin. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man, uh, that's disappointing. James Serafin, Wicks, and Nat Saunders. See, <laughs> Paul's better than I'm that I'm sorry show. that I've ruined your day. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> because I haven't <laughs> seen Paul and, or Truth Seekers. Um, what I will say about... 
Paul is that I watched that under the misconception that it was a Cornetto movie thing. I remember, I remember where I was when I watched it, and I was really excited, and I finished it, and I was like, that wasn't that good. <laughs> that wasn't like, we watched, that we watched it the first season. Um, of Truth Seekers? Yeah. Yeah. The shit. It was. It hurt. It hurt. Mm -hmm. We survived, naturally. We did survive, which is good. I, I wouldn't want to become a ghost mm. or a, a spooky woman. Hey, Mola, someone's calling the world then bad in chat. Fuck them up. It's not bad. It's great. <laughs> Stop it. I, I did a stream with Drinker, and I listed every problem I could find in the film, and I list why I think people don't like it, and then I also talk about how great it is. I, I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but it's World's End is not a bad movie. I mean, man, the script in that is impressive, along with the other two. Yeah. You just used it. What? Yeah, it's is a pronoun. What is it? Is it Christ? A great back and forth. <laughs> oh. Um, so, all right. Uh, I guess, is, is it time? Should I start reading Super Chats? Yes. Let's, go, 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 let's go. Very well. It's time. well. We'll get there. First one. Show Frog and Regine. Um, is that like bad? No. no I guess... Bad. They mean Fringy and Rags, and I mean they were on screen straight away, you know. So. Unless they mean show you guys something, but I don't know what they're referring to. Maybe they're talking about the tangerine. Be more specific. Oh, tangerine. Hmm. What is this tangerine that I keep seeing everywhere? So, ages ago, back in the, I, I still remember the friends, particular friends' house I was in when I first saw this. Dark Knight comes out, and then there's this meme called the Tangerine Knight. And I'm almost certain I would have showed you guys at some point. If I haven't, I wouldn't mind showing you right now. Um, yes. But it's taking dialogue from The Dark Knight and just twisting it around to make Michael Caine say really funny things. <laughs> ah. um, and I I remembered it while I was on Real BBC. And then I showed as Or one of Az's streams, I think. And then he showed Ned Roddick another stream. And then Ned Roddick showed everybody on Friday Night Tights. And so now everyone's finding out about the Tangerine meme. And I'm like, yeah. Fucking great meme. Um, tangerine. <laughs> oh, I need to get back and watch the other. Oh, oh I've made I a new one, I guess. I... Um, oh, you oh, new. One, oh, one, one sec, I'll, one? I'll link you guys now. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm ready. Everybody, jump back in. A ruby the size of a tangerine. No, 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 no. <laughs> So no spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> this is a good meme. I mean, it's the power of the meme, you know? You want to be undoing the power of the meme. Alright. Everyone in? I'm here? Yeah. Yep. Sweet. A long time ago, I was in Burma. My friends and I were working for the bandit. The size <laughs> of a tangerine. Oh, fuck. Wait. So we went looking for the local government in six months. Someone, this is the fucking wrong one. God damn it. Oh God, no! Yeah. At least no. I think it is. Because the other one is done really much better than that. <laughs> oh man. I, I require, I require your own. A long time ago. Alright, oh, this is the correct one. Feels bad, man. Hopefully it is as funny, I don't know. A long time ago, I was in Burma. My friends and I were working for the local government. They were trying to buy the loyalty of tribal leaders by bribing them with a tangerine. <laughs> but their caravans were being raided in a forest north of Rangoon by a bandit. So we went looking for the tangerine. But in six months, we never met anyone. One day, I saw a child playing with a tangerine. The bandit had been throwing them away. So, well, because he thought it was good sport, because some men aren't looking for anything logical. Some men just want a tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, I was in Burma. My friends and I were working for a bandit the size of a tangerine. So we went looking for the local government in six months. I saw a tangerine the size 
It'd be tangerine. <laughs> Bad if you. It'd be the tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's gonna run out for over. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> that's that music. funny. Tangerine. Tangerine, Tan the size of a tangerine. A tangerine. <laughs> Important <laughs> clarification to make. I think so. Yeah, in in 2008, that was that was top tier memeage. In 2021, it is okay. It is fun. That's yeah. an all right meme. I approve of the tangerine meme. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about dreams earlier, so that goes pretty well. Tangerine dream. Um, Molly, a French now. Hello, Raggleton. Hi there. I didn't agree to the French thing, but I mean, what can I do? What can I do? That's just lie. Um, oh, look at that. You got two mods back to back. Unimpressive meme and beautiful. <laughs> it's a Fight. beautiful, it's unimpressive impressive. meme. Uh, your opinion on China banning femboys? Oh my god. Chinese Communist Party once again makes another horrific decision. How do they. Is that like so if you look like what they call a femboy, then they would put you in jail? Is that how that works? I think they're, they're, if you're not masculine enough, they don't want you on TV. Oh. Oh, jeez. Did they throw you in the concentration camps? The, the, the jails for the femboys. It's a femboy jail. Yeah. Femcentration camp. Uh, hey guys, will y'all be covering Halo Infinite? I always love the game breakdowns you guys do, and I think it would be awesome to see you guys talk about the story of multiplayer when the time comes. I would not be opposed to that. I mean, so, I'm probably going to be doing something for that game. Would you be interested in also doing that for the game? Well, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, well, if, it, if you guys are on board with it, yeah. I was going to say, so that will yeah, be a, would... it'll be released separately. It's not nothing to do with like, the MCC, right? Oh, no, that's, yeah, it's a whole game. It's coming out in December, so right. it's still a while away. Yeah, theoretically, I imagine that's going to be a, a big old thing that everyone wants to talk about, I'm happy to play that game, and I'll be the perspective of the guy who knows fuck all about Halo. I'll just be like, yeah, I played the video game. I did the thing. Mm -hmm. And you yeah, guys... So the perspective of one of the writers? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we doing I, thought, it, I thought it was good, right? I think it deserved something from Fringy, but he didn't get anything, so... Sorry. Fringy, what did you feel about that one? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh. Do you know what I said? What did you say? Tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> Tangerine. Where is Metal and how is his blowhole doing? Um. Oh, it's very clean. Yeah, he's over a friend's house. So it'll be very clean at this point. Do his friends normally clean his, blow, his blowhole when he's over there? I think so, yeah. yeah. Alright. Tradition in Dragon. Mm hmm. Um. At Colin Sanders, I don't know who you are, or who are you? Regardless, welcome to the Toxic Zone, friendo. <laughs> I don't know who you are or who hey. are you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know who you are or who are you. Uh, I'm still you... discovering who I am. Oh. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Um, have you seen Buried? If I remember correctly, it's just Man in Room. I have seen Buried. Ryan Reynolds is in it. Yeah. I don't know that I'd call it good or bad. I can't remember enough to say so, but it was an interesting movie. I liked it when it came out. I, I, I know there are things that don't hold up, like you should run out of oxygen almost immediately, but uh, I'm not sure how the other aspects hold up. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I won't say I could never bring myself to watching that movie. Do you say you couldn't like, bring yourself to watch it? Yeah. Hmm. And that's... Uh, I mean, if anybody suffers that's, from that's claustrophobia, that is not a movie that you're going to enjoy. Thoroughly fascinating experience. Yes. Lord Longbone of Mewbushlington Abbey, have you given any thought to a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong when there's less going on? It'd be a movie fap for the ages. Yes. Hello, Wagsies. Squitches, but a good boy. 
Oh, thank you very much. I would be down for watching that. I think we're all down for it. We'll figure it out at some point. It'll happen. It'll be a long one, too. It's a long boy, that film. Um, Molly, you're straight now. You're welcome. Hi, Rags. Oh, hi there. Oh, I guess I'm straight now. All right. Uh, did you know there's YouTubers that just react to British panel TV shows now? Also, thoughts on the... Oh, well, we'll go with that first. Um, depending on their reaction, it could be really fun. It could also be really shit. As per usual. I was watching... Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Jay streamed reacting to reactors of like content related the, the un, un, not to do with like the the Hassan or the anything else stuff just just people doing reactions to different videos Jay's made yeah it was, it was quite funny oh okay I imagine like, it probably was. It, was it was like one of the people will just be like they'll watch a bit of the video and then they'll pause and they'll talk about the genre of video or what they think and Jay's like this is good this, they, they're doing a lot here they're expressing themselves uh giving commentary and you know it, this, this is good and then the video plays, and it gets to about a minute and a half to two minutes, and Jay's like, Okay, taking the piss. Come on. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> <laughs> Just funny that Jay will become the uh, the reviewer of reactor content. Cease this acquisition of here and, and commentate. Just trying to make it better, you know? Jay is a teacher at heart. Uh, P.S. Oh wait, also thoughts on the passing of Sean Locke, massive loss for the world. Uh, yeah, Sean Locke is funny yeah, as fuck. Yeah, Sean Locke's hilarious. I've seen him a lot on uh, 8 out of 10 Cats, uh, this countdown, and uh, another uh, other couple shows, and he's always been probably my favorite there. He's very, he's hilarious. Uh, yeah. the, the, there are many clips on YouTube that I highly recommend everyone take a look at, but yeah, that sucks. He was, he was hilarious. He was always adds to the chemistry of any group, and you'd always, uh, some of the shit you come out with would be shocking and yet tame. Um, yeah. He managed to find a way of being, like, edgy without saying anything that was, uh, too rough. Like, I was showing, um, I think it was Jay and Az, one of my favorite clips of him. Sort of, the, you know the thing they do on, um, Big, uh, do you, you guys have watched Big Fat Quiz of the Year? Sometimes, yeah, I need to catch up on uh, a fair number of them. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, so he's on one of them, and they do the thing where they have children reenact a, a political, or like a social political event, and they have to guess what the event is. Like it ends, and they're all like, oh, so cute, oh, that he just goes, they're crap. <laughs> they're terrible. They need, they, they, they can't act for shit. They need, uh, they oh, need yeah, to... I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he's like, they I need to, that. they need to be the like, given material they can handle. <laughs> <laughs> they can't handle this. Too too advanced for them. Yeah. Uh, good lad is uh, definitely should. a loss for the panel shows and comedy in general. Random thought after watching Black Widow EFAP. Are we just okay that Tusk Mangler had a Captain America shield in the first place? They never... They're never explicit about what the fuck's going on with that thing. It could just be metal. You know, like... Mm -hmm. It seems particularly strong, but... There's not much else we can say, you know. It's uh, and and it's it's all superficial. It's like you see Captain America shield. You've got the Black Panther claws. You've got um, uh, Black Widow's signature flippy flappy flap move. <laughs> what else is there? What does he have? I've forgotten. <laughs> mm. Or she have? Sorry. Oh. Well, either way, it, it all felt like it was uh, bare bones. It didn't feel like they actually wanted to make a character that, like, like, flesh out what that is and what it... Why do I even bother? I was just, I was about to say, like, what it would mean to a person to have your, like, your identity in terms of combat and actions all dictated by having copied it from other people. I wonder what that would mean to you. It's like, they ain't going that fucking far. They're literally just like, look, panther claws. And you're like, yeah, yeah, alright. That's the thing. Real cool. Uh, meme, the sections of Mr. Edge guy showing the good DC Batman sitting with Ace, etc. made me a bit emotional, not gonna lie. Great work, man. Brilliant editor. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. That was a very fun thing to put together, finding all the clips and everything. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. It was a cool little little send-off, especially with... I think, is it... Does it open with, like, a clip from, like, the beginning of the first DCU movie we watched? And I'm just like, this is gonna be a... Interesting adventure, or <laughs> something like that, yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, when Wonder Woman was going to be the controversial one, that was. That yeah. Was, that was a time. Times were different. Oh yes. Oh, I'm first, baby. And they set a shell after me. Once the rags and molar plushies arrive, I will put them right on top of my Blu-ray shelf. Two plushies to rule them all. Oh, that's good. Mm. That's that's a good place for him. That's a really good reminder too. Why the fuck have I? I always forget about him. It's like it's, it's a cry. It's a it's a criminal. What it is? Um, it's a criminal. It's a criminal. There are two days and twenty three hours left on both myself and Rags's plushie. Um, for those who don't know, they're cuddly little little creatures that uh, we managed to organize with Makeship to create and uh, get out to you folks if you want them. Um, obviously, they they sh so that like once this is completed, they go into a big old factory like request, and then they ship out to you folks in uh, early December. Um, Thunder, thank you so much once again for sharing the links as you've been doing in the uh, in the stream. Yeah, I do appreciate that. I've been noticing those. Um, they are indeed definitely funded. Me and Rags were kind of blown away by the fact that they're over 1,000% funded. That's insane. Kind of crazy. Um, obviously, thank you everybody for for supporting these things because they don't um, they don't go through unless a certain amount comes through. But this was well over the the required amount. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is the last EFAP you'll see now with us letting you know that these things are. I'll probably put a tweet out when there's like one day left just to try and let anybody know that it was missed it. But, um, well, yes. Might have to give me one of those. Oh my god. Well, you know what? If you can only get one, it might be worth getting the rags one. I'm gonna say oh it's, my it's pretty damn cuddly. It would, Cute. It's pretty great, honestly. <laughs> but you get a discount for getting them both, so. Yes. And if they're together, their power doubles. Oh my gosh. That's true. Well, it I, they're over doubles. It's like a cumulative effect. Yes. They're even stronger than they are when they're individual. They could take down any movie together. You know, it's just impossible to stand <laughs> but um yeah they were a really fun experiment really happy with how they turned out and everybody if you didn't know about them already you're running out of time that's all um not to say it would be an impossibility that would uh, they would ever be on sale again because i'm not exactly sure how makeshift works or what our plans are for the future but we're probably gonna try some different designs if we were to do them again um yes there would so be something different there would be something different about them uh, enough to warrant a new one yeah um, so this will be the last chance to pick these ones up. And, uh, yeah, just letting you folks know, uh, again, the, the, by the time it's the next EFAP, they will be gone. I'll probably mention it on, I think I'll be on Real BBC by the time these things hit their zero mark, so there's that too. Um, yeah, that's about that. Just letting you folks know. Beautiful plushies. Days away. Um, and if you want to find them, just either the links in chat or makeship and then rags and mauler into Google will get you them. Time is running out, out, out. Doo -doo. Oh, this one just says warg. Oh, um, I don't... A warg? Uh, is that a Game of Thrones thing? Well, it's a Lord, Lord of the Rings thing, thing as well, I guess. I Wargs know. are, they're like beasties, so they could be in all kinds of different mm. stuff. I don't know. That's the thing. I, I, I just don't know. And if you take out the R, it can be a slur. Aww. Uh, now Rag. that... Yeah, I think... it's Isn't warg spelled R-A-W-A-R-G? Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. I think you thought they were spelled W-O-R-G. Yeah, I was, I was seeing it in my mind, not necessarily. Is that a slur? In your mind's eye. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, is it... I can't remember who it applies to specifically, I'd have to Google it. Yeah, some, some, some group. That's the thing, Rags, lots of made up you site type words, words that sound unusual, they, it, all of them, they're probably slurs, you gotta be careful. Like Wombus, like that, you know, careful. Oh, because I've never heard of this ever in my life. Hmm. Um... Morley is super straight. Bringy, thoughts on Suicide Squad? It just says thoughts on SS. I'm going to assume... <laughs> I'm going to assume that's the Suicide uh, Yeah, the, the original the Suicide Squad. Suicide that's probably what they mean, yeah. The Schultz I think the original Suicide Squad is shit. Wow. 
I mean, I guess the other SS is shit too, right? Like, yeah, that's the original. That's the original SS. They were formed in 1925, so they've been they've been around for quite a while. That's the OG SS. I'm pretty sure they're annoyed with this 2016 iteration. You know, they were like, "What the fuck is this?" If if they're still hanging around, they're probably a little bit upset. Very, very, very angry about how how unfortunate that. Who's the girl with a baseball bat? What is this girl with a baseball bat? What's she doing on Zephyr Clients? Now that you've seen John Cena's second best film, can you please watch his best performance in the Fred film, Peak Cinema? Oh yeah, he was in that. I mean, yeah, you know, maybe maybe we'll do a, an arc of watching YouTuber movies. Uh, and we can watch the Fred we film. That. We can watch... Uh, no, the angry, the the angry video game. We then we can watch the Red Letter Media one. It'll be great. Hey guys, have you proofread your scripts? Love, Loveless, unlike High Top? Oh, um... I mean, to proofread would be a form of just redrafting it, right? Um, kind of, yeah. Um, in script form, anyway. Like, when it's in video form, I call it proofing when I mean I'm hoping it goes out as is, but if if, if you find something, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of how I would differentiate redraft and proofing. Yeah. And so I don't think I have a proof a script, I just redraft them, but maybe they mean, do you ever read them out to a person to test it? I don't know. I don't typically do that, though. No, I don't normally do that either. I don't... It's all me, baby. I don't know that it's, it wouldn't, it, like, it's probably useful, though, if you want to. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, hi Rags. I'm pooping Hello. with the door open and thinking of you the whole time. So that's it's an awful thing to do. <laughs> really, it's really an awful thing to do. Well, there you go. Batman vs Superman doesn't deal with the problem of evil at all because it can't. Soups isn't all powerful and never claims to be. Um, I mean, I, I don't disagree, so I don't know if anyone does. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I don't think it tackles that with any level of uh, any any decent amount of thought, honestly. It just it just seems like someone threw it into appeal uh, to appear more insightful than they really were. I just don't buy it at all, not for a second. I feel the same way. Um. It says H S E N Lex is just a Reddit atheist who thinks some of his oldest, most well-traveled objections to theism are profound. I mean, I just—I don't think anybody really likes well, his BVS Lex. I mean, his argument either. works. Uh, yeah, I mean, his argument works far better for an actual omnipotent being than Superman. But yeah, I mean, Superman doesn't really apply, as that person said themselves. Have you considered a praise for free guy? Non-political. Women allowed to be flawed and feminine. Two guys allowed to be friends and not gay. Eight out of ten. That's some cringe commentary, but... The weird like, way to... Yeah. You say non-political, kind of, like... Well, I mean, but what does that, what does that even matter? Like, I assume they mean non-preachy. Or what they're going for. Okay, uh, but like, isn't it that it's... Free guy seems like hyper cringe. Look, how do you do, my fellow kids? We know video games too. That's the impression I get from that film. And like, I was told the same I thing about it, but... uh, Tomorrow War. It's like it's non-political. And, like, uh, and in fact, I wonder if Free Guy could even have stakes. What with the fact that it's in a video game? I mean, I'm not like, like what, they... what? Oh, and Pokemon is in it. Oh, I, I guess. Like, what do we do? I'm pretty sure there are a bunch of YouTubers and Twitch streamers who cameo in it, yeah. Um, I guess what I mean is, like, what what do we do with the stakes in terms of how can how can the good guys win? If, you, if like, if the bad guys are outside of the Let's game, presumably, then wouldn't you just turn off the game and that would stop it? I'm gonna be honest, I feel like you'd have to see it before we could say anything about that, right? I have no idea what the context is. Well, I, from what I understand, Taika Waititi plays the bad guy and he's like some game developer, so I'm assuming that that's... And in the trailer, you see like the world collapsing, so I'm assuming that that's like the... F that's like, oh no, they're gonna turn off the game. 
They, we gotta stop him. But I don't know what that looks like if you're a video game character. How can you possibly stop that from happening to you? Oh, I guess you gotta go see Our it to find out. I'd really love to see but I don't care to, so... Let's... Uh, Rags, is it possible for someone with only their pointer finger and ring finger and no thumb to use a pistol if it was modified? If so, how? Point, pointer finger, middle finger, and ring finger? No, pointer finger and ring finger, no thumb. Pointer and ring finger. Would it be possible to use a gun? Some guns are um, mounted, and so they don't use, like, you don't have to actually hold the gun up. It's in place. If we're talking about small arms, then, yeah, you could come, you could essentially have a, um, a gun. I, I think they're called, I think they're called palm guns, but I'm not, I'm not exactly certain. But they're essentially, they, there's not, a, like, a grip that you hold on to. You, let me see if I can get a picture here. Like, early, like, concealable, uh... Let's see. Yes. Here, here, use it. You know, you hold it in your palm, and your fingers, your fingers can just sort of wrap around either side of the barrel there, and you can squeeze in order to shoot. Yeah, I guess that would uh, that would actually work for specifically for the um, only having your ring finger and pointer finger, isn't it? That uh, design, there, I mean. Probably, there's probably some other arrangements, but um, yeah, it's definitely not you know not ideal. But you can, I mean, this you can operate a trigger and uh, have one thing to stabilize it. Yes. But there there are options that you have. Um, can all of you please say, so do you know the difference? 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 Oh, do you want me to say it too? <laughs> Why the fuck not? Do it. <laughs> uh, so do you know the difference? There you go. Um, rapid fire question, off topic. What is each of your all time favorite movie and game? Oh man, we gotta oh, pick one. I feel one, like huh? we uh, answer this episode often. Uh, this episode often. <laughs> we answer this question every episode sometimes. Um, favorite game? Uh, I'll, I get, we do the one each thing that we yeah. normally do. Uh, one of my favorite movies is, um,. God, if I was gonna point one, I I really like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That's really cool. Yeah, uh, I like that movie. And uh, for game, gonna go with uh, go with old Soma. Oh, beautiful choices, Rex. Um, I guess I'll go next. Uh, for movie prestige, fucking love that movie. That's yeah, gorgeous. And I go for it a lot. I, it's, it's an old favorite. I'm gonna go with Metroid Prime. This is one of my favorite games of all time. And meme. Oh, what was the question? Sorry. Just uh, as quick as you can. A favorite movie of all time. Favorite game of all time. Uh, let's see. I um Highlander favorite movie. Uh, fucking um Kodor two favorite game. Um, there we go. All right, two left. Um. Uh, favorite, well, a favorite film, um, oh, mix it up, Steve Jobs, that's a really cool movie, like it a lot, um, I'll mix up the video game too, um, go for, uh, you know what, Double Dash, I really like that game a lot. Dude, it's so That's fucking coincidence right now. I'm playing Double Dash. I know, oh my I goodness know. gracious. I know. So nuts. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, okay. Uh, favorite favorite movie of all time. Uh, 
probably Pirates of the Caribbean. The Not bad. first one. Not bad. Um, ever since I was a kid, that, that was always my favorite movie. Favorite video game? Jeez. Uh, okay, it's probably a tie between Dark Souls and The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. They're both pretty nostalgic for me. Fair enough. And there you go. Ten different answers. Beautiful. Steve Jobs, your favorite? You gotta be kidding. Damn. Sorry I, for you. I didn't say it was my favorite. I said it's one of my favorites. And that's why... Probably, why? That's probably still unacceptable. I'm sorry for you. Why? Hey, look, I don't make the rules. <laughs> it's a really good movie. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize that was contentious at all. I thought, I thought yes, that is the Michael through. Fassbender one, not the Ashton Kutcher. Yes, one. not. Oh, in case that needed clarification, yeah. Yeah, you've been disqualified, Fringy. Sorry. Uh, hey Mola, if Blind Man is so good, then how did the kid get cigarettes? Oh, uh, Miles? I, since he's possessed by Peter, I don't think it's, he's gonna find a way, you know? And it could have been Peter's old cigarettes, too. I imagine he would have kept some in the mansion. Um, the problem with Batman killing is that it makes no sense as to why the Joker, Harley, or any of his villains are still alive in the DCEU. I think he'd just be competent villains. It's interesting to think about, Batman doesn't seem to kill everyone in the DCU, um, but it does make you wonder why he wouldn't execute the leaders of the crime peoples. Um, yeah. If he can't, if he can't ensure they're at least in super maximum prison. It does make you wonder. Makes you wonder. Maybe there's stories where he's just like, you know, I was gonna kill him, but I think, I think they'll be fine in Arkham or something, I don't know. Maybe he's like, that. I'll accept that if it means I don't, you know, that maybe that's just a well, if we, price to pay. If we go by what he said to Lex, it sounded like he considers it a pretty, you know, like 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 a form of revenge almost to put him into the particular prison. He gets him transferred to a worse one, right? He was he, he said mm -hmm. that in a way that was like, you know, fuck you, rather than a um, hopefully you get better. <laughs> it was more of a I hope you suffer. Yeah. Maybe he puts them in prison because he wants them to suffer worse than death. I don't know. Something else to think about with the whole killing thing is that a lot of Batman's methods are kind of designed to be non-lethal. So he becomes an expert at martial arts and uses a bunch of gadgets to kind of make sure he can take down people non-lethally. While if he yeah. isn't really that fussed about killing, you got to wonder why does he bother with the martial arts and the... Um, the, the gadgets and everything when he could just take out a gun and just mow them down and also why is the police okay with him doing this as well that's another thing I gotta wonder the implication I got from BVS thing, was the like the police do actually like the, the I think what they're going for in BVS is like the police are like fuck yeah fuck those criminals and it's like mm. hmm we're not allowed to do this officially but uh yeah that seems to be the attitude uh, hmm the impression I got was that it's just it's just has been happening for so long that they don't really like care anymore. Like the GCPD is already corrupt as heck. Like, is it, um, like there's a scene I think in the extended one where it's it's almost explicit that the the cops are kind of pro Batman doing what he's doing. Um. So yeah, it could be a, a f corruption has gotten deep and they're they're all tired of Gotham criminals and stuff. Possibly. Um, love all you guys' high standards for media. What would you all consider a 9 or 10? Would Whiplash or Hill House be up there? Whiplash, Whiplash would be... Whiplash is probably a 9. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, that is, that would have been They're another both, one on the list there. Yeah, both of those are damn good, but a 10 out of 10 is, that's quite the, uh, quite the accolade. It's a toughie. Gotta be careful with that one, yeah. Don't want to throw it around too liberally. Does our guest think that there are uh, some 10 out of 10s uh, in his mind? Any, uh, does he have any 10 out of 10s? Oh, man. That would be a bold statement. Don't worry, we um, won't ask you to, cl to have a debate on whatever you choose. We're just curious. I mean, we might. <laughs> For you, might. I'm trying to get through Super Chats. 
Okay, okay. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Really? Is a 10 out of 10. No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just think <laughs> it's so... Dude, so hard for yes, a second, he doesn't know. Like, like, they're, 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 there are people in our community who vaguely who who believe that film to be fantastic so we had no idea if he was serious or not yeah that was a, that was a sigh of relief right there <laughs> buttholes were clenched just yes. so you know so anyway <laughs> I don't know Whip Whiplash is pretty good I, I don't know maybe very solid choice Chinatown yeah that's fair if, if I had to Pick one. That might be my choice. I was expecting you to rattle off potential classics such as Blade Runner or The Shining or uh, maybe even Citizen Kane or perhaps Taxi Driver. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who knows? <laughs> Pulp I Fiction. Mean, yeah, why not? Pulp Fiction's I feel like cool. Citizen Kane, I would probably. Like, Citizen Kane is at least an eight. I was so impressed by that movie. <laughs> I saw it. It is very impressive to consider how old it is, but yeah. how yeah. much it holds up. And I, mean, I would go as far as saying it's like the Citizen Kane of movies. No, oh. you, you think so? I don't, know if I don't get that. <laughs> I don't get that vibe. <laughs> uh, last week I said Alien might be a ten out of ten, but also said out of floor. I was implying it's just a nitpick, but maybe that still makes it not a ten out of ten. Um, oh, I remember that. I remember that. Too, I remember sure. that too. I, that's the thing. I would probably have to. This is the thing about the hesitation of calling anything a 10 out of 10. I feel like I'd have to give a full inspection of, of Alien, you know, like stare at it while I watch it again and be like, is there anything? I can talk forever about mm -hmm. what I think is good about it, but is there anything in there that I think is flawed? It's hard to say. Full dissection. Yes. Uh, there was a kid in Brazil, I think, that caught up and beat up a pedophile dressed as Spider Man, and it was like the worldwide news. Oh, so he was dressed as Spider-Man, and he beat up a pedophile. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that would make the news, yeah. Good on you. Doesn't happen every day, no. <laughs> Imagine no, having it the... really doesn't. Imagine having the job of rubbing fake dirt on Henry Cavill's chesticles for a superhero movie. <laughs> I, I know plenty of people who would love that job. Yeah, I'd do it for free. <laughs> Come on, Henry, you gotta get this right. <laughs> It'd be a great opportunity to talk to him about Warhammer. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's something you're into. It would be a great networking experience. Shrugs. Tell me about that first time you played Witcher 3. I, I'd like to hear it again. I, no, seriously, I would. Just just explain it all in graphic detail. Uh, was his name Molestro? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I think this is the like, Green Lantern conversation. <laughs> no, but, well, it's, it's someone in chat right now. It's not a super chat. It's like the just the fucking. Oh. But yes, yeah, Sinestro Molestro. <laughs> oh. Spider Man has defeated <laughs> Molestro. <laughs> oh, that could be like Mysterio as well. Or... Yeah. Or Electro, actually. That's probably what they're going for. But it kind of turns into Sinestro. Yeah. Uh, this one just says, Shrug, it's a living. I don't know what that's referring to. All stands. All right. Do we did we talk about Flintstones today? I don't yes. think it was today. Uh, we talked good. about it. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Didn't was we? it today? Rag said something like, it's, well, maybe it was the other day on the catch up. Yeah. Okay. I we really don't remember. It, yeah. That's, that's so much I, I like, rem I time has melted yeah, so living. bad. Yeah, no, I remember that, but I don't, I was going to was that today? Time. Oh, uh, yeah, but I mean, I guess things can happen. <laughs> uh, there's a YouTube poop of Justice League called Justice League Justice is Gay, and I think you'll find it <laughs> quite hilarious uh, with the sentence mixing. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Colin, what do you think of Joss's take on the Justice League? You, you just mean the theatrical cut? Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Uh, it was bad. I mean, <laughs> it, it was short, so at least that was something. Yeah, you are right. But, you are right. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a pleasant hour. 
What do you think the biggest problem in the film was? Um... Poor characterization, probably. I think even with, like, the bad technical qualities, if it at least had, like, a coherent story or coherent characters, it would have been at least bearable. Who did you find the most incoherent? Oh, the Flash. <laughs> Interesting. Flash or Cyborg. Dude, you didn't like the Batcave joke? <laughs> I didn't. Oh. Oh no, you didn't oh, like it. Goodness. Don't worry, you're in good company for the most part. It's like, oh, he was, he, <laughs> Sorry I mean, to have shit taste still... in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I got that game. Uh, <sighs> would it be reasonable that a hero wouldn't kill an opponent who has surrendered and can no longer fight back? Uh, sure. sure. Yeah. Absolutely, it would be reasonable. Of course it would be reasonable. Yeah. Have you seen Pretty Film good. Courage? Good channel. I have no idea who that is. That sounds familiar. I'm gonna... I'm curious now. I've said it before and I'll say it again. With how DC Comics fans have reacted to Starro in TSS, you'd think they cast Patrick Starr to play him. Um... <laughs> I actually... I, I was looking at, um... Oh, fuck, was it... I think I think it was uh, the Suicide Squad EFAP movies. I was looking at one of um, one of the DC ones, and um, oh fuck! I really wish I could remember this. Like it, it was a really funny comment. But it was about it was like a badly done villain in. Um, oh yeah, okay. So I, I think it was Lex Luthor. I think they said I can't believe we're in a universe where um, Lex Luthor is less faithfully adapted than fucking Starro, and <laughs> something like that. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> this is a... The, the, I, like I said, man, I've seen the take that Starro is is poorly adapted in that he's nowhere near as strong and he's supposed to have much more of a character and stuff. So the, there's still debate on that for the comic people. But I've also seen people say that no, he was he was very well adapted, so... Hmm. Gets complicated in that way. I don't know anything about the Starro lore myself, so I, I couldn't quite say. See, I always thought you were kind of the Starro expert here, but... The expert you know, on yeah. Starro, yeah. Not kind of me. Shows what I know. Not me. No. Mr. Mola, I have a question that's been bugging me. How can you tell when you're being brainwashed by a piece of media, or by an opinion that you otherwise semi-agree with but can't understand why? Oh, that's a tough one. That's, that's gonna be on everyone's personal level, more than likely. Especially if you find yourself agreeing but you can't figure out why. That could mean a lot of things. Thing. It, you, gotta, you gotta ask yourself why. Why do I feel what I feel? And if you can't quite put it together, hmm. Think about biases it's... and stuff like that, so yeah. Was it the music? Was it the acting? You know? Was, was there it... something about it that connected with you personally? Yeah, it could be. It could be that. Yeah, like honestly, you can think about how, um,. Literally, what happened? The, the, what was happening the day you watched it? Uh, were you with someone in particular that maybe you love or hate? Um, what happened on that day, like related to job, friends, fucking sleep, food, anything, and, and all of it can affect your experience with something. And to the point where um, human beings do this all the time, but they will like recant a scene from a film. Much like they do memory of, of events in real life, where what they took from the event is what they're recanting, rather than the event itself. How the event made them feel, sort of thing. Like, if someone shouts at you, but says very polite things, or reasonable things, you might recant them as saying some horrible things, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, um... Isn't there a saying for this? Like, people... People will forget, I don't know, what you said, or what happened, but they won't forget how you made them feel. Yeah, I think that is a saying, It's a, and it's a good one. It's good to keep in mind about how uh, psychology works, I guess, Human to a degree. interaction works, yeah. yeah. Do, 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 do. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hi, Molesley. Hello. You guys should reach out and see if you can get Tusnakera on. You just finished a seven-hour total review of Yakuza 5. A oh long man. 
Yeah, good stuff. Maybe. Maybe. You never know. Um, I desire to keep the delayed super chats a meme. Boys, say something very insightful or revolutionary. Also, how are you doing, Rags? I'm doing pretty good. Oh, there you go. Uh, unfortunately, Mola, there are people that unironically think that you're a murderer if you use a gun in self-defense. I'm aware of that. Um, yeah, and that's where... people out there. You know how you can, like, judge a, a character's morality in a, a thing... Say you have something explicit, like the Black Widow stuff in the prison. It's like, it's easy, because everyone's going to agree with that. You'd be fucking nuts not to. But when you, when you get to stuff like self-defense, and, like, complicated scenarios, it's like, oh boy. Because this goes a little bit beyond now, because now we have to, like, have that argument in real life before we can talk about what happened in the fucking show. Or movie. It can be awkward. Um... Yay, Vlad, it's called the Government of California. I don't know what was, what, what, did anyone, does that sound like it was response to anything? I don't know. California. Don't know. Hmm. Don't rightly know. I don't know, are we talking about, uh, like, like forces of evil? <laughs> or... I do, I, I'm yeah, sure. I'm, I'm lost. I'm gonna keep playing the main track, though. I don't know what I haven't unlocked in this game, by the way. I'm just kind of playing it. I know I haven't unlocked certain characters. Oh, bad face. Hi, Rags. You have to. Hey! I went through the five stages of grief regarding your lack of uploads. Do the stages take resurrections into account? Also, play DDLC, <laughs> Dumbos. <laughs> I don't know if they do. I don't know. I don't want to do. play Armchair Psychologist. I'm not sure. Stage six, resurrection. Like, Stage huh. six, resurrection. DKR Batman isn't charged with murder until after the Joker's death, and GCPD is aware of this scene. Oh, is that an argument for why he wouldn't have killed the guy in the, uh... In that first shooting? Possibly, yeah. Mm. yeah. Wait, so is he charged with Joker's death? Uh, because they, or they basically find, because he doesn't kill Joker, but they do find him with the body, so they put two and two together. Allegedly. How are you supposed to interpret why Joker died? Uh, well, you explicitly see him, uh, cause, cause he, he, like, so he does, like, a very specific, you know how you can snap your neck, but you're not dead, because it's not completely shattered? So he kind of gets it to that point just to stop him, and then Joker finishes it off himself. Um, so that's... Okay. Um, so Joker's neck is snapped just enough for complete and total paralysis, but then he somehow has the strength to turn his neck enough to kill himself. I didn't say it was rock solid. I'm just. I was gonna say this. That is strange. I agree with you. Yeah. That's that's why I think that whole scene is is dubious to say the least. I think there's something else going on, but that's just me. Has um has the author Actually, ever spoken on that scene? I don't know. Uh, but Frank Miller is happy as it is, so he could be doing. I know. I, I'm not saying it means anything. I'm just curious. Oh um, I don't actually know. I haven't looked into it. Hmm. Um, in the first episode of Batman Beyond, he is resorted to pick up a gun to scare a criminal away as Batman is having a heart attack. Seems like a pretty justified use of a gun, if you ask me. I'm aware of that, and I, always, I was always impressed by it as a, as a way to explore Batman at a desperate time. And I think most people um, consider that enjoyable, right? Rather than a breach of his principles and stuff. Yeah, and he, I think he gives up being Batman after that, because it's like, well, if I have to resort to this, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, yeah. It's a very principled move. Um, um, the Batman who laughs kills a lot. Entire worlds. Yeah, he's edgy. Who's the, uh, the Batman who laughs? Uh, he's like a multiversal villain. It's like the Batman and Joker in one dark universe fucking fuse together and form the ultimate. Uh, he, he's he, he might be edgier than Steppenwolf. Um. Very well. Why does Maul suck so bad? I came first. I got the trophy. I'm gonna get it again just to just to spite such evil thoughts. Um, this one just says Among Us. There's the Batman that looks. Oh. He is very edgy. <laughs> looks like a fucking Cenobite. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Looks like the Joker. Maybe that's what they're going for, I don't know. Looks like 
what if Batman was the Joker? He would be a multiversal threat, apparently. Marvel's what if the Batman was the Joker? You're like, wait, what? The most obvious compromised Batman is the Injustice League stuff. They are literally evil totalitarian versions of the heroes. Um, is he talking about the crime syndicate or something else? I don't know. No. Or is he talking about Justice There's a few evil Justice Leagues out there. All right. okay. the, the Injustice League stuff, is that... Because that's usually... Because that's not Bat... Because Injustice League, is that, that's usually just a villain team. Um, but I know there's like the crime syndicate and the animated series had the Justice Lords. Um, mm. There's a few different. They just things. call it the call it the Bastard Brigade. I would Big join. Squad. <laughs> brigade, I would join uh, your Bastard Brigade ranks. Bastard Brigade. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry, everyone, but this October we are diverting all traffic through Dark Pictures House of Ashes. Oh yeah. The thing is, I, I checked it, oh. and it looks like it's only co-op online with two people, which I think was the problem with the last year one, because we thought it was with more. So the Frank only way... Frankie has to do it. I can't. Well, well I was going to say, story. like, we could just <laughs> not do it. It's terrible. <laughs> we could just not do it. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, we could just not do it. The other one was shit. Like, it barely constituted what makes a game... I want... Like, well, I was going to well, say, I... We... I don't Can mind. Are having fun making fun of it? I don't mind streaming it with I... metal with the online co op. That sounds like it would be amusing. But, I uh... would, I would, yeah, I, I would watch that with y'all and comment on it. And... Well, that's the thing. At that point, it's, it's that awkward position of like, well, if we're going to do that, then we may as well do it the way we did last year, right? And it's like, eh. Well, it's, well, here's the thing it's barely a game anyway. Yeah, but um, if we don't do it the way we did it, then you're just going to be on a delay all the time. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because I'll be in the call, but I won't see the actual... Well, yeah, I mean, we could try it, and we could fumble our way through it, and that's half the fun. Out of... I mean, I enjoyed... Mm. Like, I enjoyed our making fun of Little Hope. Yeah. You know? Oh, it was still... That game was a drag. That was a... Especially because... I mean, it's good for us to be able to do that, because we talk about stories and storytelling so much on EFAP. To be able to do that kind of as a live reaction to a game that is presenting the story as the big thing... Yeah. You know, that... Uh, I think that would be something that would be worthy of doing. I you just know, wish I it would... Because... It. It's like... I'm trying to think of how it could be done. It's like, oh, if I... Because it, it, it would be so much better if we could all just be on a couch, you know? Like, because it, it, yeah. we, we don't require... Like, hot seating it would be the only thing we need to do at that point. The game doesn't, like, have a good system for that, unfortunately. Only with... And you know what? I'm pretty sure the two-player co-op is actually crap because it um it splits the um the screens like you you both get different portions of bits of the story happening because i remember me and, me and mel tested out the other one we were like the fuck like i don't get to see the dialogue that he gets and he doesn't get to see the dialogue i get and i was like that's stupid the last thing i want to do is just update him about what my character is you know so i don't know um there's gotta be like you know that new alien game that's come out um yeah that sounds like a way better thing to do for Halloween, you know? Yes. And then me and Metal maybe can just fucking goof around on this retarded game in the co-op mode to the point where, like, I don't... <laughs> Calling it tradition, I guess you could say that. <laughs> like, I don't know. Tradition. You locked yourself in. There's no way out. They're gonna release more and more of them, from what I gather, because they're fucking cheap as hell to make, which is not a shock. Well, there's hardly any gameplay to there's soak up any of that anything budget. anything in it, yeah. And you know what? The, the fun is just trying to kill all the characters. How can we kill the characters as fast as we can? Because they're all unlikable assholes. Remember we had, we had the quick fire quick, bleh, um, QTE section, and like we failed all the QTEs and they wouldn't die. In or fact, like, Please. <laughs> I think one of the characters lived because we failed the QTE, like it, as if it was like some kind of I don't even know. Mechanism maybe? Because yeah. this isn't like. Those, this isn't a game for gamers games. It's a fucking, it's a piss take of what video games are. It, it's barely a game, yeah. So yeah, maybe. Apparently there's gonna be seven of them? What the fuck? Fuck. Uh, stop it. Give it up. <laughs> you, Ruin you're ruining it. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. 
Well, okay. yeah, maybe. Um, I would way rather set up the alien thing. When is that out, by the way, or is it already out? I think it's already out. I'll have a look into that. Put a big maybe on it. The last Aliens game we played was not That was so fire, great. dude. That was top notch. I can't wait to shoot aliens with rags and fringy and metal. It's gonna be great. It will be fun. I think it will be fun and enjoyable. Just like the Marines in the movie. Fun and enjoyable? Mm-hmm. Uh, yay, I can't wait for the Jurassic Park arc. It'll be my favorite arc after Tonald. I already know this. Hi, Rags, you beautiful doggo. Hello. That's the thing. The the DCU arc is nowhere near close to a close yet because there's so many films to still come out and there'll be more to come, but it's like... It does feel like the end of an era with the, the Snyder Cut EFAP movies having come out? Each one is sort of going a new phase of sorts. You have, yeah. Uh, you have Thor and Marvel, which is just, like, uh. not even... Uh, it's the whole house of cards has collapsed. And I just, I care so little. Yeah. All I have is just either hate or indifference. Mm-hmm. But at least with DCU, I'm like, all right, well, Suicide Squad was, like, yeah, I liked a lot of stuff in that. Maybe something will come of it. Like I said. Yeah, I might like Peacemaker. Um, that's and that's more than I can say. About that's true. Him. I will be checking that shit out. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Please. Um, on a serious note, some dude from Norway got sexually harassed through texting, and people made memes about him, and media didn't cover it. Uh, if he was a girl, dot dot dot. I uh, I have no idea what story that's about. But that sounds like it sucks. Uh, Mola's Eddie actor is named Richard Schiff. He was in Man of Steel. He was the science guy who put the key into the something thing to activate the black hole. That's correct. That is the same actor as the one who gets torn up in Lost World. And so once again, he's fucking... He's the one who activates the bomb, essentially, that saves the world. And he just gets sucked into the black hole and no one cares. The dude saves the world. He regularly saves everyone's lives to no appreciation. It's annoying. I will say this about Man of Steel. I, I, I like the general character. At the beginning, not quite as much, but at the end, definitely. definitely he he, quite he went out with a bang. He had a chat quite line. Chat. Oh, yeah. That was a bit of good setup and payoff there. Yeah, and there's oh, something the about... um. Something about man standing up to like a really overpowering alien force and actually doing damage. Like, you yeah. go, boy. And yeah, didn't he like. <laughs> when she's. When he, she, she like annihilates everybody and is, is immune to his uh, guns, he pulls out the knife anyway. I think I've had yeah, mixed feelings yeah. about that over time. It's like, what do you expect that to do? But then again, it's like, I don't know, fuck it, right? <laughs> it's like, Wait, what? Clearly not going to be able to get away from her. Like, this is... <laughs> Go he's, down swinging. He's a soldier through and through. Our favorite character in the DCEU. <laughs> Outside of the people in the Suicide Squad, I mean. You know, a rat is backed into a corner by a... By a, a rat is backed into a corner by a cat. You know, the rat will bite back. You know, there's something about that. Oh, no. Apparently the alien game only goes up to three-player co-op. Uh, what? That would be... Myself ringing rags at that point, I suppose. Darn. Darn indeed. I mean, we could do Pummel Party on that night. They have Halloween maps. It's all bloody and stuff. And also Gothic Phone. Ooh. I don't know. There's, there's options. We have options. Oh, yeah, options, yeah. You can go extra horrific in Gothic Phone. Just really ramp up that horrendousness. Oh, like we did on the Just fucking anniversary where everyone kept dying? Yeah, like even more than that, though. Even more, though. Everything needs to, we'll just say, all right, the only rule is that let's try to keep it Halloween themed, you know? Yeah, the little pumpkins, fun stuff like that. You don't need to have blood. No need for demons. But there, blood. there will we'll be just give blood. everyone cancer. That's Halloween-y, right? Oh, cancer's super halloween -y, yeah. Yeah. Draw cancer. <laughs> Draw cancer. Draw it like it's drawn in the Binding of Isaac. You'll be fine. <laughs> Um, where are we? 
Binding it's... of Isaac is the only game where you can say the sentence, Oh, I got cancer. Sweet. I've heard Metal say that several times. <laughs> and uh, the, my favorite one, I think, was when he, like, heartily announced, like, Yes, depression. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's time to show Rags puning a little appreciation. Ra hey, Rags, are you Hungarian? Then why don't you eat? So I won't be hungry. I'm just, I'm very lost by. Well, uh, oh, means, well, I, you know. if I eat, then I won't be hungry. No, I'm lost by the super chat. Oh. What do you mean lost by it? So I don't, I don't, why are they saying this? What is. Am I missing something? Context? If I'm means? Hungarian, right? Mm hmm. Which is Hungarian? Yeah. So if. Why don't you just eat so that so, I won't be. But again, why did they say that? Like, it's not really a good joke if you've said it. Like, like, what's the connection to you and Hungarian, like, like, to prompt such a weird play? You know what I mean? Because I am Hungarian. Are you? I don't remember you saying that, do you? I, I've mentioned it in the past. I have mentioned it in the past. It Very rarely. Ah. Very rarely. How many, how many sixths or halves, how many Hungarians are you? Um, I'm one Hungarian. Um, however, I, I come we I come from a long line of uh, Hungarian sheeps. Uh, we I were yep, given to the the the, the great. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna stop before people start. Uh, uh, before they come up with some crazy silly memes, I want to really give this some thought. Mm -hmm. The Russian czar is gifted this a, a, a family of. <laughs> Uh, Shiba Inu. Someone said Jesus, move on. It's like, this has been discussed for like less than 30 seconds. Jesus. Patience is a virtue check. Not right now, it isn't. You know what that's a reference to? Yeah, mummy. Hey. I haven't that's seen those in ages. That's always a line I've loved. Yeah. <laughs> Not right um, now, I look forward to watching the mummy again. That movie's fun. Fun on the fucking bun. Yeah, and then it only gets better from there, right? Yep, they get better every time. Everyone loves the third one the most. In fact, it started a huge franchise of mummy films. Tomb of the Dragon Emperor starring Shang-Chi. <laughs> and the Ten Ring. Ten Ring. The Ten Mummy Rings. Frankie. Uh... Hey, Rags. If you were Batman... What gun would you use to not kill bad guys? The FN 5.7 or the G20 Glock 10 millimeter? Hmm. Well, I thought I, I, to not kill enemies. I hmm. suppose then the question becomes like, what gun is the most useful when not being used to shoot? Which one's more intimidating to look at? Because that could be the utility of it, or are these guns being able to do something with someone else? Like, do they maybe there's I think not kill sort of thing. Hmm. If that's the case, I don't know. I feel like um, I probably wouldn't be at long distance that much. I mean, I, I imagine a subsonic 10 millimeter would be quieter, but I'm not certain. I'm, I'm legitimately not quite certain. Uh, I, I think either would work just fine, honestly. What, um... So, you, were you saying that they were non-lethal, or, uh... Both very lethal Oh. The 5, 7, so 10 millimeter is a little bit bigger than the standard 9 millimeter, as you probably guessed. 5, 7 is 5.7 by 28 millimeter. It's like a tiny little, super fast, it's what the P90 shoots. Uh-huh. Uh, like a, a, a tiny, quick-moving, uh, pointy bullet. That doesn't have really good range, but it's decent at penetrating body armor, which was uh, the reason for its development. Um, so it, honestly, I could see either working just fine. I think the 5.7 is more Batman-y, I guess you could say. Because mm -hmm. uh, you expect Batman's gadgets to be sort of commonplace. They seem to be more unique. So I don't think a Glock would sort of fit Batman and his, his, his visual style, you know? But I, I don't think it would really be that big of a difference uh, between the two. You'd use, use them just just, uh, just fine. 
Um, got me nice pan-fried steak in butter and crushed garlic, a half gallon of milk and some EFAP. All in all, a good lunch. Also, hi Rags, I see you're posting videos again. Are you okay? I am okay. Also, you drank a half gallon of milk for lunch. Um, I guess so. Can Maybe they, they're drinking it in a glass and the rest is used for cooking. Damn. I don't know. It's a, a lot of milk. You. Now, I'm a big milk. I love me some milk. I drink a lot of milk. But, uh, uh, uh hey guys. Hi. Hi. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna dip out. I got some work to get done. No problem. Sure, do you wanna, we before you go, do you wanna, do you wanna tell people about what you, what you're up to on your channel and where they can find you? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just my name, Colin Sanders. Uh, it's on YouTube or Demi, I'll probably just YouTube. It's fine. Um, I do video essays occasionally when I feel like it. Uh, that might change. I might be <laughs> more consistent later. Who knows? Um, mostly, I just try to put my original stuff on there. And if that's if either of those things sound interesting, then you know, awesome. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 me. Colin Zanders on YouTube does video essays about lots of different things, I presume. Also has short uh, films. One of them, did you say one of them won an award? Yes, one of them did win an award. Ah, prestige. Award? Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on, dude. It's been fun, and I appreciate how much you've, uh, you, you, well, how much of your time you've given, and, and of course, how cordial you've been. It's been fun to pick your brain about stuff. Yeah, thank you, thank you guys so much for letting me be a, a part of your episode. No problemo. Yeah, sure. All right, I will. I will see you guys. Yeah, yeah, bye, bye. Uh, obviously, links to his channel. A link to his channel should be at the top of the description. Um, but yes. So ends the arc of Colin Sanders and the Snyder verse. Maybe. I mean, we've got. Um, Army of the Dead is still something that we've got to cover on some EFAT movies, so... Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, did right, you still yeah. want to cover that Phil Mento video as well? Oh, fuck, which one? <laughs> the the Snyder cut one that we were going to cover, but then we couldn't cover because we did what <laughs> EFAT does best and went long. On right. Maybe we'll set something like that up for, in the future, I don't know. Well, maybe. Um... Oh gosh, there's so much to do. So many videos to cover. So um, little time. Oh, we got lots of time. We got lots of time. <laughs> we got lots of time. Well, alrighty then. Uh, in Jurassic Park 2, I always felt Eddie's death was the danger of Isla Sauna, and the heroes and villains don't have a free pass. Then again, hashtag justice for Eddie. This is the thing. I don't know that I would be critical of it outside of my own preferences for storytelling events, if you will. Like, um, I know we talked about this before, but you can make a lot of things happen that some people be like, why the fuck would you make that happen? Uh, for instance, you know, on his way up the steps in the throne room, Luke just slips on one of them, falls over and goes, ow, and then gets back up. We'd be like, okay, that was weird. Like, it's not, if someone was like, yeah, is that, it, does that mean it's shit? It's like, well, no, it's just weird. Like, why would you do that? And I yeah, wonder. Yeah, so we come across stuff like that where it's just bizarre choices. And I don't know why you would have had a character who is like the most heroic in the film put in all this effort and then you give him the most gruesome death in the film. It's like, why? And if the idea is yeah, like, well, oh, you know, do. bad things can happen to good people, I should be like, okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. I learned a valuable lesson today. <laughs> Justice for Eddie, indeed. And when we get around to watching that in EFAT movies, because we will get around to everything that ever existed, I promise you. We watch them faster than they get released. Trust me, 100% on that. That's that's true. That is what we do. Um, you will eventually talk about Eddie and what he deserved. Better is what he deserved. Yes, better. Mm -hmm. Um... Does getting a spot on EFAT require a YouTube channel? I'd love to be there for the Jurassic Park saga. There is no discernible way to get onto EFAP, because if there were, people would do everything they can to use it to their advantage. You have to buy a thousand plushies. Oh god. <laughs> Someone's gonna be that like, Rags, you serious? That's, you serious? That's not true, don't do it. 
but you could if you wanted to. Yeah, only but if you don't do really it. want to buy a thousand Only portions. if you really are a strange person. But no, no, it's just, there is no selection process, really. Nope. Do it if you want a bed of rags. A, be a whole bed, a of, bed rags, of rags, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um. Only watch Brawly if you get the gist of Dragon Ball. Or is it Broly? I think it's Broly. Um, alrighty then. Hey, Longman, Fringo, Meme, and High Rags. Hello. I want to plug Meme slash Rainbow Soap's new banger, Mr. Edge Guy. Great work. Uh, is Meme all the vocals? Tangerine. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you, uh, you do some impressive work on that. I'm obviously, I'm hoping to save my, um, my coverage of it for a meme fab. So, uh, we will, people will definitely see. But I did pin it to the, um, to the Snyder EFAP movies, I think. So, hopefully people yeah. are seeing it that way. It's unfortunate it couldn't get into the final video, honestly. Would have been a great little send-off in there. Yeah. But it still exists in all its glory. Yeah. Hey Rags, I'm the dumbass who bugged you about Doom Eternal and I'd like to apologize again. Please don't hate me, Senpai Rags. Oh, I don't hate you or anything. I mean, you don't have to apologize. Sweet. Um, how would you... How would redesign Wonder Woman's powers and weaknesses so they're not so tismy? Also, hi Rags. Hi. Um, I'd get rid of the super speed. I was yeah, absolutely. Really, just, I was really considering that. That was kind of the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. Um... What this does is it will it limits her ability to block bullets. Uh, she'll have to use like her shield for that, because you ain't I mean, gonna block if you. Shield in play, not those stupid gauntlets. I was about to say I don't want the gauntlets. I'm not even sure if I want the shield. I don't know. If, I don't know why we wouldn't just uh, we why not just make a bulletproof skin? I guess. Like, oh, what? I guess. I, I guess like the that's idea that she's not keeping it bulletproof. Yeah, I, I mean, there's value to doing both, skill. right? Like, we can make stories out of it, yeah. I guess, like how we decide on that. I like the idea that she is not bulletproof. Um, like more I, durable, just. Yeah, definitely yeah. more durable and okay. stronger than normal. But nothing, like, I, I guess I like when I, when I think of an, like, an, like the, the Amazon, right? The, a, a big, uh, you know, a, 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 a larger woman who is stronger than normal, who is, you know, quicker than normal. Kind of like a super soldier in a sense. You mm -hmm. know, like a, you know, like a super soldier. Um, I so like, like the idea equivalent. that she has... Yeah, in terms of power level, I, I'd probably start there. Okay. You know? Um, I would, where it's, it's definitely, like, super advantageous, but you can't just, like, get shot. Like, there's actually a level of danger. Um, uh, let me see... I want to incorporate a kind of acrobatics to what she does. Um, maybe that will kind of play off the femininity a little better, uh, where she is uh, really able to flip around and you know get up into high places and use her whip. I want I want to play up the whip a bit. She could tangle people up. She can use it to get into higher places. Can it still um, make people tell the truth? Hmm. I. I do want to keep that. I feel like that's a really important sort of aspect of the the tradition of Wonder Woman is the lasso of truth. Um, I want to. I, I definitely want to give her a moral code concerning it, right? Yeah. Um, but the and I, I as far as I know, this is. I actually I forget. I used to know, but I forgot. But I think the lasso should compel you to tell the truth as you believe it to be, mm -hmm. so that she can't obtain she. So she's not overpowered with information acquisition. Um, let me see. What are we gonna do with? I don't know if we're gonna give her a sword because a sword, <laughs> like, it's pretty gnarly if you have a sword and you're killing people with swords. It's not like a non-lethal option, really. Um. But a shield you can, and it will allow her to have some limited resilience to bullets and some attacks here and there. And she uses it primarily for defense and a little bit of bashing. Um, maybe it's like she has a... She's almost like a different kind of Captain America of a different flavor, in a way. Um, except I, I, I kind of... I like the idea that she's very passionate and emotional. Um, she's not super sagacious. 
she's very intelligent, um, but like you wouldn't say that she, like she's not she's not foolish, but you wouldn't say that wisdom is one of her great traits. She's very smart, very book smart, very learned, especially about history. She really likes history, um, but she's just very passionate and emotional, and she's just vibrant and really outgoing in a lot of ways. Um, she's not stoic. Uh, she likes to express herself. Um, smiles a lot. Huh? Oh, just uh, smiles a lot. Yeah, like she she smiles wow. a lot. Like you want to be around Wonder Woman. She Telling is... Telling women to smile. <laughs> oh, yeah, that thing. But, like, you want to be around her. She's fun to be around. She'll, uh, you know, she'll she'll mesh well with groups, and she's charismatic. Um, but she's 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 not overbearing with how, how smart she is. She's not, like, she doesn't... She knows she doesn't have to be the best one in the room. She, she doesn't feel the need to impress people. She wants to be with people and, like, kind of be on their level in a way and to cooperate. Um, Sounds like you're describing a waifu. Does it? <laughs> like, like it? Um, I don't know how, how. If we're still in crafting hero, you've just suddenly become like, gosh. No, like really, <laughs> I, I think that would go. I would think that would go really well with Wonder Woman because she's going to be in a team. Uh, so you want to have those characters who get along with each other. She's passionate enough to have things she cares about in terms of principles, and she will defend those things. Um, but yeah, I think that's a decent enough start. We're not doing the invisible plane. Fuck that shit. That's dumb. <laughs> um, what do you mean? What? It's so great. Uh, also, her ability to randomly remember she can make things invisible. What about that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna do the invisibility stuff. I don't want her. I don't want to give her the idea that she's like a super spy or that she's she she's big into subterfuge. Not too much. Um, I, I I want like the idea that she's like a front line panther kind of. Uh, thing, but um, yeah, I, I, that's probably what I do. I don't know. Um, uh, that's, that's just what comes to mind for me, I suppose. Mm -hmm. For for I guess a, a Wonder Woman. You got a great insight there, everyone, into what he feels was missing in the Wonder Woman films, because my God, that is missing. I would cast a good actress. What? No, you yeah. must cast hot person. Someone a bit more, a bit bigger. You know, I M still want to keep a, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, someone that you could more easily believe is like a big, strong Amazon kind of type. Uh, someone who's still very clearly feminine and is, you know, into that, but you know, so nothing too over the top. But not not someone skinny either. You know, I I, I want to be able to suspend my disbelief. I don't want no twig going around and beating the shit out of people and doing crazy acrobatics and stuff like that. You could make her tall. That would, like, sell the Amazon thing in a subtle yes, way. Yes, definitely tall. She's a tall one. Very well. Um, oh, are we talking high top again? I would like to think that... How did you get that? Oh, it's in an alternate thing. I'd like to think that retard singular brain cell is just pinging around in his head like a Windows screensaver while eating the buttons off his TV remote. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. <laughs> what an image. It's quite a visual. What is that? Um. Oh, the driving I just did. Rags, you'd be proud. Would I? Oh, yeah. Let me, uh... Oh, you fuck. I have, I have the chat up. I need to bring the stream up. Let me... Doop, 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 doop. I will watch this play up. So you're going around here. Oh, the, 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 uh, the, the Yoshi egg barely missed you. Yeah, and then I do some other... Misms. You went through the duck, around the duck, and got the the mushroom. I did. Nice. Very satisfying. Yeah, finally, a bit of good driving. Oh, you should you should have tried to hit him before he crossed the finish line. I um. Green shell. I don't know why, but I like defaulted into just fire whatever ends up in the roulette thing when I already had the shell, which would have been perfect. I don't know why I did that. Ah, uh, gotcha. I think the brain was just like, no, it'll be a shell as well. Trust me. And then I got a mushroom. It's like <laughs> fuck. King has ordained it. Mm-hmm. 
Hey everyone, let's agree if the Marvels starts out with an old man, the Don, serving Carol a lawsuit, you would love it. Uh... Old man, I, I, the Don. I, I, I guess because he was in the world. Oh, he'd be older. Yeah, he'd be a lot older. I guess so, yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, I would be, I would be on board with that, yeah. Um... You know so uh, I just want to draw attention to what the Wonder Woman's bracelets are called. Yeah, like, that's right. Did we oh, talk about that in our, our Wonder Woman thing where we went through her... I don't know if we... I don't think we ever we found talked out about that one. bracelets are I think we... bracelets of submission. Yeah, we that's news to me. We talked about that once a while ago. I don't remember that, but uh, I might have memory hold it. Bracelets of submission. Hmm. Uh, also, great what if episode would be if she accepted the Don's offer and had a son she abandoned to him. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Wait, is it because the Don's son would then become a superhero that has to avenge all of her wrongdoings? That would be funny. I would like that. Yeah, it's amusing. This one has message retracted. I'm afraid I do not know what it oh said. Oh my goodness. Thank you anyway. Damn. Yeah, thanks anyway. Theme isn't shown slash told directly, it has to be implied by character's plot and so on. I'm not against an explicit mention of what the theme is. I don't and I feel like there's there's no I don't think we have to do that. I would just prefer yeah, if it were. Yeah, especially especially if it's a character trying to tell other people uh, as like a cautionary tale. Um, that's what they do in Chernobyl. But the last episode, the theme is explicitly said. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, Valeri, he, he's very very clear about the theme of it but i would also i also praise that show for its uh, excellent execution of things uh but you could you could be uh, you can be explicit with it as long as you're like telling people in the sense that like essentially valeri is telling everyone yeah this chernobyl all this stuff happened yeah it's because of you know the thing and yeah. then everyone's like okay wow you know that's that's a big that's a big deal but when you have yoda telling luke hmm the failure of the best teacher is, and then you're just like, I, I, he should know this. Fuck you, this you little, <laughs> piece of shit. Like, what? like I, what? Where have you been? The greatest teacher failure is. <laughs> He's just like, Yoda, like, am I hallucinating or is this real? I. <laughs> Did you just hit me? What the fuck? <laughs> Yoda, why'd you let me get like this? <laughs> What are your thoughts so on? I've just King... seen a video. Oh, sorry. I've just seen a video of somebody doing calligraphy with a fork. Oh, that is uh, I never thought I'd see that, but man, that's uh, super impressive. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. This is really impressive. Wow. I'll, I'll post it in the chat. Wow. Uh, no, in the in our chat. Super super. Yeah, we can't have the the plebeians in normal chat see what we post in our private chat. If only yeah. they knew. Oh my goodness. Chat, there's so many penises in here, you have no idea. So many cocks. Terrifying penises everywhere. It's glorious. And you'll never see them. And they will it's never like, be It's like, uh... It's like, um, A Wrinkle in Time. Cocks of all sorts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are your that thoughts on the Kingdom bad. Hearts games? I have no thoughts on them. No I've thoughts. Never played them. No thoughts. No opinion. Oh. It's a nil right there. Sorry. Rags. Batman Forever is so bad that it's so bad that it's uh, so bad that it's uh, damn it. It's so bad that it's Golden Eye. It's a great Bond movie. Fuck. Batman Forever makes me laugh. Yes, I said it. I'm I'm eager to see it. Let's do I, it. I like the idea that you've not seen it before. This that movie is a is a bit of a roller coaster as well as like Batman Robin. Because I know we we were talking earlier about potentially, and this is all potential, right? Yeah. Going through all of the lesser known or not so faint, like the B-team superhero movies, the Electras and the Blades and the Catwomans and that sort of thing as an when arc. You, when you say B-team, you I'm assuming you're referring to like the unsuccessful the ones famous. from past time. Because yeah, I mean, the, Blade's pretty famous the, though. Yeah, it's he, he's not up in the, the top ranked ones like it, it's not a it's not like i'm saying oh he's shit or anything but i i guess i don't know what to call him like the the not 
the, the, you know because it's like you have superman batman spider-man the the big ones and then they're the ones underneath that that aren't as well known aren't as famous um, but, you, movie but i mean batman forever you know like there's a lot of films we'd miss out on if we excluded batman and even like i said captain america's got like a 90s film that's really bad but funny i think it's 90s maybe that I mean, that could possibly be its own thing. I was just saying, like, that would be an idea for an arc to to go through all of the older ones or um, the, the ones for the not super high up superheroes. Yeah. Because we could watch the like the other Batman and stuff, of course, and that it just wouldn't be part of that, I guess, journey. Mm hmm. Um, Hail Efap, countdown to October with a little devil face. Oh yes, October is on the way. Are you, are you gonna get a different avatar this year, guys? You're gonna go go dress yeah. up as the same. I've got a, I got, I got a couple ones. I got my really cool Wearsheeb one, and I got my pumpkin one, and I really like them. So I, we're not gonna see I'm, a new rags this year. Well, I know I didn't say that. Ah. I very well might. Still want to see Count Rags variant at some point. I wonder what you do with yours, man. I do like the the new PFP. Yeah. Schmeck. Thank you. I actually took this from the um, thumbnail for the mist for the standalone Mr. Edge guy video uh, that uh, Rigel made. It's quite neat, actually. I might I might get it up. Just put it in the chat. What species is your uh, are you if you are a purple man? Are you a, He's a um, Titan? Are you a Titan or Titan adjacent creature? Oh, I'm from planet Australia. Um, Australia, there's a little <laughs> corner Australia. in there. Australia, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, we're, no, I mean, where are you from, really? Because Australia is not real, so. Oh, that's true. I'm actually um, from the land of Zealander. So oh, it's an obscure what? little uh, place in the Orion Belt. Oh, I remember Orion's Belt from Men in Black. Yeah. Weird that someone put a belt on the solar system, but I guess you want to keep the trousers up. They didn't put a belt on a solar system. The belt is multiple so solar systems. Well, that is random. There is a peak. There is a bacon mass snoot. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, here it is. Wait. Yeah. Here, here, here. Oh, yeah. Wait, are you looking up your own lore? Oh, okay, I got you. I saw this image. Yeah. Damage. Oh, that man, that armor is. Ooh, that is. That's spiky. <laughs> I, I personally like Superman T pose, T posing in the background. I think it. I like it too. I like it because of how subtle it is. Yeah. It's um, it's Christ imagery. Yeah, I feel like the artist really nailed it. <laughs> Also, I meant to say, I completely forgot, um, Jay's messaged me specifically, angrily, that we would bring up Truth Seekers and not specifically mention that uh, Jay fucking despises that show. He wanted to make sure that oh, I, I said I, that. Oh, okay. yeah, that, that show is horrific, guys. I, it's one of the ones I forgot we watched. Jay almost started planning a video for it. He hated it that much. Oh, dude, I would watch the fuck out of a Jay video on it. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's terror. That that series is awful. We hate it. It, it upset us. And it shouldn't have been that bad. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, Malcolm oh, McDowell was the best thing about it. You're telling me it was really bad, like really unpleasant. We're talking like um, three out of ten, easy. Damn. Easy. Yeah, easy it's not the worst show I've seen, but that you know, I don't damn. know how much that means. <laughs> but it's still, yeah, like nothing works. None of the payoffs work. The it's all just it's all just shit. Damn. And it sucks because, yeah, it's like, the whole reason I fucking watched it was like, oh, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg are in it. Let's go. Wow. Wow. Turns out, it's not good. No. So. That's unfortunate. I would give it a yeah. not recommend. It got, it, uh, got cancelled. Oh, no. Not that. Oh. Man, they can join several pieces of garbage that got cancelled after one season, I guess. Not including yeah. Awake. 
that show. No, no. Give no, me that no. season that two. One, that one is uh, God, that that one is still kind of like I I am okay with how it ended, but it would have been nice if we got to explore that concept more. Dude, especially, especially if that writer on. wanted to juggle that much at the end. Yeah, and it seemed like, um, and a lot of the decisions seemed really purposeful in that show, which gives me a lot of confidence in... Yeah. I don't know that I would necessarily expect it to be better than the first season, but, like, if it was maintaining the quality of the first season, I would have been... That would have been cool. Wouldn't have been, like, the most amazing show ever, but it still would have been cool. I've seen the first two or three episodes, and I have liked what I've seen. I would, yeah, I would encourage you to, uh, to push through further. I know that, um... I was talking to Muller about this the other day. I'm interested in um, re-watching F is for Family, the Bill Burr show, because it's like an animated comedy that tries to do drama stuff as well, from what I remember about it. And I'm curious to see if that one holds up better than Bojack, and I expect that it will. Mm. Um, and that it will be funnier too. That's one I'd like to revisit. That's Bill Burr is a funny like. guy, so... Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing that works in its favor, right? If you like Bill Burr comedy, then you probably like that well, show. And I do like Bill Burr's comedy. Wasn't wasn't there a little bit of commentary from him in his Mandalorian season two episode that we were like this? We were like entertained yeah. by. Yeah. When oh, about yeah, the helmet yeah. and the coat of honor and yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's weird that that they, nothing ever happens from that. It's almost like it was accidental. It's almost like fucking. Or maybe he was just ad libbing. Yeah, I, uh, he, that's what I. Well, that's the reason why, because that show, I don't remember as well the later seasons, but I remember in the first season there was, like, actually meaningful commentary on, um, society at the time and, like, the the roles that people had, uh, in that, in that world and, like, being boxed in to certain expectations and then, you know, the effect that had on people, so. And, and he, he made that show, like, he was executive producer, significantly involved in it. Okay. He, uh, he is... And I think... Isn't there a podcast of him being, like, asked about what he thinks about Gina Carano having been fired and stuff, and he's just, like, awkwardly trying to avoid answering it, because it's just, like, it's a really uh, rare position for a guy who's very willing to be critical of all kinds of things, but also, like... But also, uh, he does work. It's, like, yeah. a job that he has. Yes, yeah, Don't upset the mouse, you know? So. Yeah. But I think it's it's telling that he didn't. It could have... It would have been really easy for him to just say, fuck her and throw her under the bus. I just, yeah, but, I mean, it's... Like I, I don't think that I don't think that he would think like that, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, I can see that, that he. Or that he, he would do the thing that would specifically advantage him. I don't. I don't feel like that would happen. So yeah. Uh, and plus, he probably likes her. I mean, he, if he worked with her on the show. Yeah, she might be really. Well, yeah, from to what work, I've heard, she really yeah. he's incredibly easy to get along with. Like. Mm -hmm. There's a good chance, yeah. Yeah. Um, currently working on an epilogue of my first draft. It's because of EFAP that I've gotten this far. Thanks, and high ranks. Oh, hello there. Excellent. Nice luck good on stuff. your draft work. Yes. Keep good working on, on you. <laughs> you got knocked off right at the beginning. That is Ringy, unfortunate. You gotta, you gotta look at it at the other side of the coin. I now get great items. That's, that's true. That's that true. Is a good they really items that I can drive myself off the edge with. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, stars can be a curse on Rainbow Road. Yes, uh, they spawn as, like, I, shooting stars on this as well. I remember that. I, rem I really remember liking this version of Rainbow Road with the yeah, city like at it. the bottom. I, I liked I liked a lot of the stuff with, like, the cities and the world building that it felt like the very light world building of Mario Kart. <laughs> um, I remember, I remember that, uh, Mario Kart 8, like, Rainbow Road, the, uh, the new one, it was kind of... It's like you tried something new and it kind of just didn't work as well as uh, as the, the the remake one that they did for 64 that was like really impressive. And Wario, you know, how far ahead new. are you? Wario. How am I supposed yeah, to catch up to you? Oh my god, I've fallen off this map oh. so many times now. I don't deserve to come first, okay? It's true. But, if I were able to. <laughs> I wouldn't but complain. if the opportunity presented itself, <laughs> I would happily accept. Um, Army of the Dead is an, is an insult to the concept of existence, bar none. <laughs> it well, is very bad. It is bad. You will not yeah. hear a disagreement from us. We definitely agree that it is. It is not good. It is not good. Uh, thumbs down. <laughs> thumbs down on that one. Yeah. 
Please, Gibstar. What's worse, Army of the Dead or Tomorrow War? Oh yeah, we did see that part. Oh yeah, I I don't know if I settled on an answer. I think I think that Tomorrow War is worse, but I'd rather watch it. And that's saying yeah. something because I hated rewatching that movie. Yeah, that's right. That was a <laughs> big... pain. Yeah, yeah I remember I that? That was painful. It. I do remember it. Hey. Uh, yeah, I'd rather rewatch Tomorrow War, even though it's worse. Army of the Dead is. Ugh, Army of the Dead is hideous. miserable. It's sh yeah. it's just hideous. I will say Tomorrow War probably has some actual redeeming qualities, like the cool monster design, some CGI stuff. But man, mm -hmm. Army of the Dead is just there's just it, it, it. And so, well, I guess I should be clear because people might hear me say that and then ask, so how can Tomorrow War be worse if Army of the Dead has no positives and there are at least some positives to draw? out of the Tomorrow War. And it's because of the way the Tomorrow War story functions in terms of time travel and all that sort of thing. It fucks with yeah, everything, yeah. Worthless, worthless. It yeah. makes it makes everybody in the universe a moron. Like that's the only way you can Yeah. It's serious damage. Now everyone in the universe is also a moron in Army of the Dead. Um, but true. it's just the it's just I guess the scale kind of bumps Tomorrow War up into that extra special area of, you know, hideous. Mm-hmm. But they're Ooh. they're both bad. Uh, Army of the Dead is just Dude, a different. Fucking look. driving right now. Oh my god, it's actually stressful. Oh wow, you're uh, nearly falling off there like four times. This is the reality of Rainbow Road. Yep, I'm still alive. That's what counts. You're on your last lap, and you ain't got long to. Last catch life. Up. <laughs> you're alive. Last lap. Lap. Hey, I heard lives too. Yeah. I don't know why. Stupid Australians with their weird words. Hey. Sorry, dude, it's just, yeah, I, one, I don't make the rules, like I said. One mechanic that I do like about um, Double Dash uh, is that if you have a stack of items and you hit a banana, you lose the, the extra stack. You only get to keep the base one. So it mm -hmm. gives bananas a little bit of, a little bit more uh, incentive to avoid them. Because by themselves, they're not that bad to hit but when but if you lose potentially you know a couple you know mushrooms or something you're like oh well that was that's kind of a big deal yes i decided to post weekly uncle ruckus quotes careful long man they'll have the n-word in them so here comes the first um removing an evil spirit from a um, a person is like removing a stank from a honk of shit <laughs> <laughs> okay Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> Snyder could potentially do Punisher well. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He would make. What would he do to Punisher? Holy fuck! He'd make him worship Satan. That's. Edgy. Oh, he would like. He would make him like frolic through the rainbows and like make him talk about peace and making you know loving thy enemy. You know, goes the extreme opposite with Punisher. It would be super How cute. How subversive. I don't know if I have unlocked everything in this. Pretty sure I haven't. Oh, oh well. No, you haven't. No, you, you haven't unlocked haven't. the last two characters. Who are the last yeah. two characters? They're the King Boo and the Piranha Plant. And yeah. there are special abilities that they have other people's special abilities. Oh, you're right, yeah. Uh, which faction in the Tomorrow War do you think is better? Humanity or the Vietnamese? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see. Oh, that's tough. It's, Why did it's he the say thing that? Of, Why did he say that? <laughs> he didn't know. He did because he didn't know what he was saying. Also, that's BRB. Why he said it. Um, well, I mean, humanity should questions. win, but they're so dumb. That's the thing. Like humanity should win. So maybe they're we just should just give it up to dumb. the aliens, you know? The fact that we yeah is uh, Vietnam. Um. So what are your top five, top ten worst movies of the last decade, then? Oh, hmm. It's a lot of bad movies. It's a lot of bad movies. But you know what? Film. You know, there are so many bad movies these days. Give us a couple years, we'll have a top ten, top five list. Yeah, I, that's one of those ones where I'd have to be aware of all of them, because I've forgotten a lot of what even came out, you know, timeline-wise. Yeah. But if we could maybe pick one, up. it's like... Army of the Dead and Tomorrow War are definitely up there. Those are two contenders. 
Oh yeah. Mm. I think my least favorite is Army of the Dead. I think it's mm -hmm. my most hated. I can understand that. What, what, what would you say that yours is? If you if you know off the top of your head, I'd be curious to know what your personal least favorite of all these new movies is. Oh, Army of the Dead, I, I do hate more than Tomorrow War, and at that point, I'm like, what else could beat Army of the Dead? It's a, um, hmm. Chat, remind me, what else is shit that came out this year? Endgame? Uh, there is more I like in Endgame by far than in Army of the oh, Dead. Oh, yeah. There's legit good stuff in Endgame, yeah. Yeah. A Wrinkle in Time. I didn't hate that. Like, yeah, it, was it was super stupid, but I didn't hate it. Was it was funny. That is a 1 out of 10, though, just so we're clear. Snyder Wrinkle in Time is... is fair choice as well. That was pretty miserable. Yeah. I got the ultra slow motion version of Snyder Cut, you know, the uh, three month version. Yep. It is Cruella. Um, I don't think, I think Army of the Dead is probably going to beat all of them, honestly. Yeah, um, I, I guess while it's on my mind, I, I do think that Wrinkle in Time is the most 1 out of 10, 1 out of 10 that we have. It's that nonsensical. And um, nothing, you're probably nothing right, yeah. means anything. Because at least with something like cause and effect. Tomorrow Will They Tell Us the State of Affairs, they're just not like but in Wrinkle of Time they're like, you have to You have to find a wrinkle and that it you shiver it and that you you travel through space and time. It's like, excuse me? <laughs> what, what what are you saying? Yeah, it's like you'll go through this beach and then now you're in a room and then now you can you know, there's a tornado coming and now it's like it's nonsense. So yeah, you're probably right about that, actually. Um, but way more enjoyable than Army of the Dead. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, let's just say Army of the Dead for now. It's going to be my least favorite movie in a long time. And it made no sense for it to be that. Because it's, it's so easy. I'm sorry. Like, I know it sounds pretty naive to say, but it is so easy to have a group of mercenaries fighting zombies in Vegas when you have that kind of budget and that kind of support as a, a team of people making it. You could just write one character. That's all you had to do. Yeah, um, and I think one of the things I that, that makes me extra hate Army of the Dead is that I worry that such a cool premise will not be explored again because he fouled it up so bad. You say that. We've got a Army of the Dead franchise on the way, Rex. Oh yeah, that's right. We live in nonsense crazy world. So yeah, we'll get loads more of this crap. It'll be great. Mm. Um, yeah, and you guys will be able to experience how we felt about Army of the Dead eventually. It shall come to your screens. Yep. Possibly next year. Who knows? <laughs> no promises. It's hard to say. Um, it pains me that movies like Army of the Dead and Tomorrow will get greenlit, but so many brilliant scripts will never even see the light of day. Oh, I can't imagine, dude. I imagine there's passionate yeah. fucking screenwriters out there who don't get their projects made that are just, oof, they're just waiting. Yeah, man. I, uh, I feel the pain. You know, just like, I don't need to know they exist. I just, like, statistically they exist, you know? There's got to be. Yeah, there's, there's, think of all the, the, the great ideas we've thrown out casually here on EFAP. And you think of all the smart people who are out there who could make this sort of thing. It just makes you sad. What would win? Grizzly bear or Siberian tiger? I feel like you we've mm. answered that, haven't we? I think Pretty we've discussed it once or twice. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, come up with weird ones. Like, who would win? Uh... I don't know, uh... A blue-ringed octopus or a barracuda? I feel like, um, mm. The, mm. The, the octopus would probably fuck them up. They're very smart, and they got a lot of limbs and suckers. And... Well, so the blue the more poisonous as well? The bl so that's the interesting part. It's small, but it's in highly venomous. Highly, highly, highly poisonous creature. Wait, venomous um, or poisonous? I'm, I think poisonous, not venomous. Okay. All right, all right. So, like, so if the the barracuda like ate it, because a barracuda's got a fierce mouth and can bite. Yeah. But I'm wondering yeah. if how difficult would it be for the barracuda to get the because 
octopi octopi they're slimy and they got a and lot of tentacles smart. and they can grab and yeah yeah they're so smart too. that's the big advantage that i think i my my question is more so could it successfully kill the octopus without being poisoned i um, guess if it knew not to like swallow well <laughs> but then at that point I, I i don't know that this is a contest of eating it's more a contest of killing it yeah um, but if you could if you could if you could use your mouth to kill it, then I assume that as long as you don't get too much of the poison like in you, in you, then right. you, you might just get sick, for instance, but it won't like outright kill you. Well, it's mutually assured destruction. As like if you don't... It might be mutually assured destruction. Like the octopus will kill the uh, the barracuda, even if it goes down as well. Yeah, it might. It definitely might. Um, I don't know. Maybe, um, I'd have to hmm. read more about them. Yeah, I that's... No. I've... Hmm. Now I'm thinking about other combos. What about... um? What about a, hmm. Um. Well, isn't it on the fucking super chatter to come up with these ones? You're giving them all the answers. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah cause, we got Cause we're trying to be creative here <laughs> with these, uh. I think, uh, what about a, uh, what would win in a fight? A, a cassowary or a hyena? Possibly. One hyena on its own, not with a group. One hyena? One hyena Ooh. versus one ostrich. I thought the ostrich, um, the ostrich would be fast. Or the ostrich? I think it, uh, oh, sorry. hyena was- Oh, sorry, cassowary. Yeah. sorry. Cassowary. Cassowaries. Might... Now, cassowaries are smaller than ostriches, but, uh, they pack quite a punt, a kick. Yeah. Um, um, they've got wing claws. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, cause a hyena, a hyena's bite, Number two. Very, I mean, it's, very, yeah. Number two in the it, world. Yeah, it's, uh, oof. Wait. So, yeah, so there's number two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, extremely powerful bite, sharp teeth. They're fairly hardy. Um, they are, you know, hyenas, they are underrated. They, they are really underrated are. animals. I really like hyenas. They're cool. They're always portrayed in like the villains and, and the, things. The, that's the normal take at this point. You reckon? Yeah, yeah, most people are aware as well that Lion King is partially responsible for the denigrated reputation of hyenas. Because when hyenas laugh, they are scared. They are not happy. Nervous and laughter. Also, that, yeah, kind of. And they're very social. They're very social creatures. Um, no, my... I mean, maybe that's an interesting one. A pack of hyenas versus a pack of wolves. Ooh, hyenas. Oh, hyenas. It, it's done. Hyenas? I'm going to go with hyenas, yeah. I th I'm going like, to go what with What if we have strongly. equal... Isn't it what worth if we have specifying the wolf? Or? Uh, grey wolf. I think the hyenas are just... They're just different. They're just built they're for built different. different. I mean, I know they're different. I, I know they're different, yeah, but I guess yeah. I'm asking if you had an equal matching of, like, five wolves versus five hyenas. I think the hyenas... I'm not... So the problem is, I don't know that I could say which one would win in that battle. Um, I guess it wouldn't shock me either way, but I'd put my money on the hyenas. I'm not sure that I... I don't know. I, I'm actually really torn on this one. This feels like a really 50-50 one. Um, jaw strength has been mentioned, but I mean, they both have very strong jaw strength. Like wolves and hyenas, super strong bites. I know that hyenas fight lions. I can appreciate that, but wolves fight like moose, and moose are pretty hardy. Meese. Um, <laughs> meese. That's right. You got me. Meese. <laughs> hmm. See, this is what I mean. In chat, it's like 50-50. Is this the perfect question? Like of of a of a really well matched pair of animals? Well, it doesn't. I mean, Rags isn't convinced so far. I'm I'm just listening. Well, that I guess the thing is, is I'm not I'm not sure that I know one way or another. Um, I think this is pretty close. I think it's very close. I think it's pretty close. Um, hmm. Damn. Because I think that, because in terms of size, they're going to be fairly similar. So I'm wondering if their stance, because um, hyenas, their their front is higher than their rear, right? They have yeah. high, higher shoulders. And I'm yeah. wondering if, yeah, I thinking about it and, because I'm thinking about what they both prey upon. Well, and... here's a question. If we, 
are our parameters that we put two packs in a big field, like on opposite sides of the field, and they have to hunt each other down? Because if that's the case, are wolves going to be better in that environment because they are better hunters? Are wolves better hunters? I believe wolves are better hunters because uh, hyenas are mostly sca uh, scavenger creatures. I think that's a misconception. I, I say um, I think that's well, one of those... I, say, I say mostly in that they will preferably get something that's already been killed. Like, hyenas <laughs> will often steal food from, from lions and stuff and, and will go for things that aren't... Whereas, whereas, like, wolves are very actively hunting creatures. Hyenas do hunt. Um, I don't think they do... <laughs> So Wait, what is this? like what Jay said. <laughs> human versus 140 wasps. <laughs> the human That's is allowed to use tools from the environment. <laughs> what about a gun? <laughs> like Jacob Kane? He's yes. gonna shoot the wasps with a shotgun. <laughs> Murder um, hornets versus killer bees. Well, I mean... <laughs> Jeez, murder hornets. I mean, do bees and wasps? I assume they do fight. Um, like, I think like, they fight, but aren't wasps just like more hardy than bees? I think oh, yeah, wasps like, are they just fuck like up bees. Yeah. Um, let me look at bees versus wasps. I think wasps are uh, stronger, aren't they? Like they're just and bigger. They dwarf them easily. Yeah. I, I think, like, I might be full of shit, but I think wasps might even destroy bee nests or take them over or something. I don't know. Um, I know Those that there are bastards. certain animals that do that, but I can't. I'm just remembering that, like, Sherlock Holmes film that had, um, um, uh, fucking blanking on the name, um, Ma um, Malcolm, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Uh, I trying to help you. Wasps will attack beehives. Okay. Uh, like an Ian McKellen, the, the the old Sherlock film, and there was like bees and wasps in that one. Right. I remember that. That's my story. All right. Here's one for you. Um, praying mantis versus a tarantula. Hmm. hmm. I think I'm gonna go with the tarantula. I think that this. Now, maybe I've made a mistake by picking a really big spider, but from what I understand, uh, praying mantises are not to be underestimated. So I, I think, think that, um, spider. I think that- Let's the, assume so it, it's a big mantis. Let's assume that it is a big mantis. And a big tarantula. You know what, let's, let's make them both big. I, I feel like a, a tarantula is more likely to go after larger prey than a praying mantis is. Well, um, I'm pretty sure praying mantises attack small lizards. Like, they will flat out go for small lizards and eat them, too. Yeah. I feel like a tarantula would do that, too. Alright, apparently they're much smaller than tarantulas. Um, and I feel like the fangs... A tarantula's got, like, gnarly actual fangs on it, and a praying mantis, its mouth, I guess it's smaller, the mandibles. So it would be that's harder for true. it to... But something that is worth remembering is that mantises, once they get you in their grip, it is very hard to get out. They have a Would, very strong grip. I wonder if that's almost to the detriment of the praying mantis to hold on to a tarantula like that. Right, like, should it be worried about... Well, but... D hmm, does, it, does a tarantula... Does a mantis have to worry about being beaten? Um, like, in terms of venom? I, I guess it would, right? I don't think tarantulas are... I don't think they're venomous. Um, oh. not, not the ones around here, at least. Um, uh, but they just threw... I mean, they might be. Uh, I'm not sure. They're, I don't think their venom is an issue for people. Oh, oh well, this is interesting, because there's a video here showing a praying mantis fighting a tarantula. Oh, my goodness. It's kind of freaky. Like, they kind of interstate. Looks like the tarantula is like... acting a lot more defensively. It seems and the like it's a tries stalemate. to get away a lot. Hmm. Oh, oh no, it's eating it. Never mind. Oh, is it? Oh, did it get it? Oh, well, it starts eating one of its limbs. I'm not yes, sure. Yes, that's right, because, uh, Matt Oh, but this is a juvenile, you... apparently. Oh, oh. Uh, that's not fair, then, for this contest. Um, yes. I was, I was thinking adult versus adult. I know that's a big thing that that praying, praying mantises are so ruthless, they'll just eat things while they're alive. They don't care. 
And I wonder if that gives it an advantage. Did they come across a praying mantis in Honey Shrunk? I Shrunk the Kids? Because sure. I, I, that would be horrifying. Yeah, praying mantises are um strangely terrifying. Um, Let's see if I can find an adult version. Oh my god, I found a three-way battle, apparently. Oh my god. Somebody Between else a... has asked this question before. So, Tarantula versus Praying Mantis versus Black Scorpion, this video was called. I'm not sure. Oh my you... god. <laughs> well, Jeez, I mean, who, I guess... who organizes these? Is this some, is this some this underground is, this is, bug this fighting This is kind of cruel, isn't it? This is, uh, this is not nice. <laughs> making no. these animals fight each other. Oh, and the recommended video is Top 10 Bug Fights, and it's See, and it, it seems to be <laughs> part of a series bug called fight. Monster Bug Fights. No, this is a channel called Monster Bug Fights. What the fuck? I actually, I actually don't like that. Um, that fe that feels not right. To put this animals like, into uh, a ring to fight each other just for us to figure it out. It seems that they just collect these photos taken from the wild, or I, I don't know. The the premise of this channel, I'm not clear on exactly. Um, more research is needed. Mm -hmm. Actually, I mean, this, I, I think I overestimated how big a praying mantis is. This tarantula is quite big. Um, hmm. Yeah, I Oh don't my know. god, it looks like it's fucking it. I like that. Hey, look, alright, insects don't have oh. souls. Nobody has souls, but... Yeah, no one has souls, like... so... <laughs> If you're saying they don't have consciousness, maybe. That's a complex. I mean, consciousness isn't a binary. I know. You have it or you don't. I, I, I agree. I totally agree. I don't. I think that it is. Uh, I think that it's more complicated than. Hey, look, you're you're self-aware. You're not. Hey, look, right, fight that, for the amusement that. of these giant apes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, like you've you've experienced different levels of consciousness in your life, but it's, you, like true. everyone has, you know. That's true. Yep. And um, different you've, people you've experience... experience different levels of consciousness as well, depending on the attitude that they have towards the world and the less and you know their spiritual practices and things like that can change the way that you engage with the world. I mean, like, just from day, like, uh, I mean, you can you can just you can totally. I mean, everyone is like totally detached from what they're doing and acted on autopilot, like. In, I imagine that that's how a lot of animals just act completely and like that's well, just how their brain is. I always like the, cause, cause I find this to be strangely comforting uh, as almost like, man, if only I could be more like that, where the life of a lot of animals is bliss. Everything's great. It's nice. I'm eating grass. Oh my God, a wolf, fuck. And then it runs away. <laughs> and then as soon as the wolf is gone, it's like, ah, this grass Man, is Man, life wonderful. is great, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just forget yeah. about the fact life that is they, just were, great. they nearly wow. died. They, they're only worried when they need to be worried. That feels yeah. like a, um, a a good way to live life that a lot of animals seem to have. Well, do you think it's possible for like a, a llama to have anxiety or something? I I wonder, would a llama like, I, I guess it would so, have anxiety yeah. if it's climbing a cliff? Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure animals just do have anxiety. Certain animals do have anxiety. I'm yeah, pretty sure animals, that's known. Yeah, like if animals dogs. are in a, if they're, yeah, absolutely dogs. Yeah, if they're in a situation or an environment where they are. No, just, I, mean, like, I mean, like specifically, an individual animal has an anxiety disorder. Oh. 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 I, uh, I think well, that be, would be much like, harder for us to tell because of anthropomorphizing animals when that like could a, just be behavior we don't understand, you know? Like yeah. a porcupine with OCD or something? Yeah, like a yeah, porcupine yeah, I mean, like, who's just nervous all the time. Well, here's the thing. Like, I, uh, I, I'm, it's my understanding like there's no species other than human beings that can develop autism, right? So um, I wonder actually, what, apparently I wonder dogs what, can get autism. I, I, thought, I heard that that's a myth, but I don't know. I don't have any sources, that's so... But um, hmm. the thing is, I wonder, like, what unique, like, things can happen to animal brains that we just don't know about. Right, like, what what is an elephant's, you know, does an elephant's, does he, when he's there eating a, a branch, is he like, I'm I'm so worried that they think I'm fat, looking at me yeah, while like, I'm like, eating you know, this what, branch. What kind of, I mean, like, what kind of neurodivergencies can, I mean, you know, because humans have got a, lo a load of, I mean, it strikes me as more likely than not that there are a load of Pretty much any complex animal species. Jay, why are you on a shitty microphone? 
Oh, I am? Your microphone is bright. You sound yeah. like 140 wasps. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you do sound like why are you, 140 Why are you waiting so long to tell me? Ah. I, I was, I I was eating food. Or something. I thought that they I could thought... take care of it, but they couldn't. Oh, I well, thought that you were just in a place where, like, you I, were yeah. away or on your phone or something. <laughs> That's what also, I thought. Also, give me a just one moment. Also, that dog looks pretty autistic, so I don't know. Better? Oh, right, yes, that's better. Okay. Um, you well, I mean, I, I think um, now I'm just thinking about that that whole thing of like, how would we as people be able to clearly identify if an animal has what would be considered by human standards to be some kind of like disorder? I'm. I don't know. I mean, I guess just just you know, ask it some questions. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess I, I wonder if I wonder if we would just necessarily rule out certain animals, like to fish. You know, do, are we are we going to consider whether fish get anxiety? Um, I mean, I assume. Or... I mean, I assume that there is stuff that can go like, I mean, just fundamentally different or fundamentally wrong with the I brains. I guess but that's like... yeah. I think the reason, because when I said fish, my immediate thing was, but people used to think that fish couldn't feel pain, and that's now come under question, like, whether whether that's true. I mean, um, you know, um, there's a fucking, there's a plague going around starfish that causes them to rip their own limbs off. Oh, I saw God. that! Oh my yeah. goodness, it was horrifying. It is, it's absolutely horrifying. Um, so that's, you know... I feel like if you see a if you see a behavior that's actively detrimental to the animal, you know that right. something's probably going wrong. Well, yeah, because um, usually, or, or it's in an environment like, that's not used to. I think that's probably a good way to do it because it just seems like we animals, things that are alive in general, want to stay alive, um, and so it's not you know common for for animals to adopt behavior which um, detriments them. Like, in a way that they would obviously know would be detrimental to their health. Um, again, I, hey. you know, I guess it's just a question of... We don't want to incorrectly anthropomorphize certain traits. Like, there are people who look at animals smiling. It's like, they're not happy, you know? Like, that, that animal... So, that specific animal is not happy oh, yeah. when it's smiling. One, uh, one human versus a beached salmon, but... The human God damn it! That's a joke Hassan. in my. That I'm upset. That's a joke in my end game script. God damn it! <laughs> that is a joke. So you there stole it from Jay? Relating... Damn. Wow. Let me let me double check. Is that beach salmon? I think I might have said beach tuna. What did I? What? Hold on. Let me see. Beach salmon joke? has it has a, um, it rolls off the tongue. Uh, I feel a little better. I don't, I don't know if I want to spoil the joke. Like, I was actually pretty happy with well, that joke. My, it took a while to joke, make. My I'm... joke was to say that what if a human fought a beach salmon? It's like obviously the human's gonna win, and then I say, ah, but the twist is the human is Hassan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's uh, that's okay. The joke, the joke was beached tuna, so it's okay. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to hold it against you. That's, that's very gracious of you, Frank. Yeah. What just happened there is he stole your joke, Jay, and he's trying to retroactively say, like, oh, I wrote this ages ago. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I, you know, it's, it's a compliment, if anything. Yeah, so, jokes are just so alike. Are we... Well, is so that, who do we think would win? Out of which, we've got it's over a few. Hassan, uh, the beach Hassan and a beach salmon. <laughs> beach salmon, um, no contest. I, I, hmm. But Sasan had his nuggies. I, well, here's the thing. The salmon will just die. So that's, <laughs> yeah, if but just if like Hassan can't, okay, so at <laughs> if Hassan doesn't have his nuggies or he can't put a video on, he's dead too. That's true. If Hassan's uh, on the beach, then he can't play uh, videos on his stream. So he'll die. Yep. <laughs> just melt. Like, so it's, it's just melt. a contest yeah. of the the which one will die faster? Endurance. Yep. Exactly, it's a matter of endurance. Will the tuna suffocate <laughs> before her side melts? <laughs> oh, not the tuna, the salmon. That's my... the, the salmon. <laughs> wow. Uh, hmm. Well, I mean, dude, I've watched a live stream with that beach salmon. He's just like, hey guys, I'm really struggling here, but let's, let's talk about uh, the federal budget for 2022. <laughs> Oh, they're increasing uh, military spending. That's something. Um, it's like, what do you think, Hassan? <laughs> he just looks over in the chair's empty. empty chair, yeah. Like, oh, I guess he's not Hassan here at the makes, moment. Um, Hassan makes glugging noises, like. 
I'm sure there's an impressive list of strange on amount of peels <laughs> that we can assign to. Do you song. see that? I just got nuked right I next did. to the finish line. I, I still won. I, <laughs> I was very worried for you. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Someone's gonna Dude, look at those fast. finish times. <laughs> oh, wow. Let me, let me scroll back and look at it. Beat oh them my by god, there you are. Oh my gosh, you're so close. Oh, because it got second. the first. Well, yeah, it got the person behind you, too. They got yes. hit by that blue shell as well. So if they were actually a little bit slower, they would have won. Yeah, right. If you go to the um, the uh, the finish time, because it's live, uh, the, you can see that I beat someone by, I guess, a fifth of a second, and then just over a fifth of a second. Yeah, that's, that's a... Um, skill right there. That's, that's a close that one. That's a close one. Sherbet Land seems like a very fun place where shy guys who are the best enemy I, I say enemy in quotations because as far as i'm concerned they're the heroes the best yeah for attacking you I, I i from that's from a certain point of view all right the shy guys are just they're shy they keep to themselves but then mario just has to stick his Goddamn nose damn italians just show up and jump on everybody wow, i'm seeing bigotry of many I, I, forms right now I, I mean, I, I suggested no such thing. Rags is allowed to hold whatever opinions he chooses. I'm just saying that the shy guys like to keep to themselves and Mario tends to interfere with their business. Well, how is that different than what I was saying? <laughs> oh, I'll, I mean, I'll let you figure that one out for yourself. But anyway, um, shy guys, they are, they're just, they're great. I, as someone in chat just said, I love them. It's like, I love them too, man. Shy guys, they are peak. Wow, you only agreed because that guy agreed with you. I yes, I agreed with his agreement with me. Yeah, that's that's, that's how that's, agreement tends to work. That's racism. That's what that is. I'm just think, saying, do you think I will not allow it on the stream. With your agreement oh, with them. Now that we've, I'm sure they do. And now that I'm thinking about shy guys, I'm gonna go on Amazon and see if they have shy guy figurines that I can buy. What the I fuck want are shy, shy guys? guys? Oh my god! So you're gonna blasphemy? Be blasphemy, sacrilege! I can't believe that you just said that. This is, Mario Brothers too. this is this Second is shy guy. This is this is shy guy, right? He is. Oh, he is, I know what that is. He is, he is wonderful. Shy guys oh, yeah, are I specifically don't know what it is, but I recognize it. Mm -hmm, they make those kinds of sounds. They're like going on having their little fun shy adventures. Yeah, they're and they're like, they they like murmur beneath the mask tile. because they're like yes, they demonic creatures that attack you and no, you can not near them. Demonic creatures. They're little <laughs> shy guys that are just tag it out. You're falling for their act fringy. They want you to think they're cute. You can get plushies on Amazon for twenty six seventy five. That's know, actually fringy, kind of it's just what they want you to do. Consumerism, yeah, I, my friends. Escape it before this. it escapes you. You watch this? How dare you? How dare I, you? know you? what? No, no, like, I'm, I'm, I'm probably grabbing me. What is this? this? <laughs> oh, what is this? What is this? Well, you're just going to have to watch it until that time code to find out. Okay, I will deafen and I'll be back in a minute and 24 seconds. Yes. I think I'm I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing one of these. <laughs> I'm getting this shy guy. <laughs> Don't worry, Fringy. Nobody's going to judge you for that. If you get the shy guy and not ours, I'm gonna be really upset. He will judge you for that. Sorry, <laughs> and I got yours. Remember, don't worry, I got them. They're they're they're, they're coming. They'll be coming to this. Be don't let the shy while. guy plushie kill my plushie. He'll do it. I don't <laughs> trust him. So Shifty eyes. Of... They don't. You can't see their eyes. Oh, Fring, if you look deep enough. <laughs> <laughs> if you look deep enough, it's like staring at the eyes of Sauron just behind every Shy Guy mask. You will close brown eyes and green eyes and Shy Guys. Nicely done. <laughs> oh my god! Speaking of which, I just saw this piece of art. It's called Shy Guy Unmasked. Look at that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I warned you. I like to believe that that's that they they uh, that's I like to think that canon. that's not the case at all. No, I, that is not canon. You're just making them shy. That you're making them. No shy wonder they're shy. Oh, God. <laughs> I would be shy if I looked like that. <laughs> yes. I'm confused. What you just sent me. See, that is the correct reaction to that. 
you know, that is the very correct reaction. Oh, I've not, so I've not missed something. I'm, I'm supposed to be confused. Oh, you can, you yeah. can get a print of that. You can buy a print of that particular yeah, illustration. I just, I just wanted you to be disgusted by what happened within the last ten, five to ten seconds of that uh, time code. I, I, I mean, wanted. To... I assume that that would taste nice. You see, you see, it might, but it would also make it like really, it wouldn't be a pancake texture, you see. It just wouldn't be a pancake. Do, do, has this been shown on stream? Does anyone have context for what we're talking about? No context no. whatsoever. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. No. okay. Because so I was me... assuming this was maybe a reference watch. to part of the stream I hadn't seen. So watch until no. 1 minute 24 seconds? Yeah. You can, it, yeah. you can sort of get away with just watching, I think, from like 1, like one minute to like 1 minute 24. To, okay. to really understand what's going on. You know, they're making pancakes. Yeah, it's like three levels, and they've got a retard in the amateur seat, is all, you know. All levels. Learn to count, meme. Yeah. Me. Mm. Mm. Um. So, anyway. Yeah, next super Half challenge. of a Let's cheesecake? <laughs> <laughs> And you just dunk that shit in the... I don't know what's happening. What's happening? I mean, like, I guess it might not taste bad. I, I personally, I really like cheesecake. One of my yeah, favorite, yeah, yeah. one of my favorite desserts. I love it. But with the batter and everything, and I guess like frying it all up, I don't know. I do not I know. I guess it's just the bizarreness of it. I They're like, fuck it, have the cheesecake. Uh, cheesecake is one of the most delicious desserts, but if you have it too regularly, it really ruins the magic. I feel yeah. Like, uh, you've got to have it. You've got to have sparing. You'll be sparing with you eating a cheesecake. I feel like Sticky Date is a really it's great that. dessert. It's, um, have you never heard of that? No, this is the, it's this is, uh, uh, capsicum, capsicum all over again. It's Sticky Date pudding. It's, it's like, um, it's, it's, I'm not sure Sticky how, it's very, it's, it's caramel, basically. It's like, it's a big explosion of caramel. Bree, there's, you, there's all these foods that you talk about that, like, we either just don't know the word or we've never heard of before. It's like... Well, I'm, I guess I'm I feel, not sure. I think he's okay, fucking so with us, like Australian stuff. So, it, it's just, it it's is, just like an okay, entirely different okay. menu that's not, that's so, in Australia. Mm -hmm. A different menu. Sticky, yeah. Yeah. It's known as sticky toffee pudding elsewhere. Ah. Oh. Sticky so toffee just, for, for like for, for your meal, you have like capsicum garfish. And garfish is not a made up. That's a garfish. Ah, uh, he, 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 he just admitted the other one's made up. He just admitted it. Ah, <laughs> 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 gotcha. Caught in 4K. <laughs> okay, whatever you say, buddy. <laughs> Trying to oh, walk I, it I, back. I'd never heard of garfish before. No, I, you guys hadn't heard of garfish. Garfish or the nasty. Of I've heard of Garfield, fish. and then the fish form of him I, might be called Garfish. Well, They're like fish alligators. Say, the fish version of Garfield. <laughs> <Can> you <laughs> I remember, I remember <laughs> the Garfield games. Garfield. Garfield. That's, um, that's when you were on stream and you got you, like someone phoned you. Yes. And you like thought I, you I, muted, I, but you uh, did not mute, and yeah, you were well, talking I, about I, buying Garfish. Yes, I I do remember the origins of that meme. That was it's just, you know that could have gone, that could have gone a lot worse. It could have gone much oh. worse. Yeah, so I'm really glad it was just garbage. Like oh, the tests were positive. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't tell <laughs> Rags and Muller. It's like what? I'll what? tell them. I feel like. Or he's like, oh, oh hey, it's my best friend, Movie Bob. Hey, hey, yeah, I'm still keeping up the charade. Yeah. Hey, look, I'm, I'm getting closer and closer. <laughs> their, I'm getting closer and closer to their I'm inner circle. Closer. They're gonna invite me to their homes one day, and at that yeah. point, I'll hatch the. I'll the plan will be hatched. <laughs> Imagine you just say, "Pretty sure they don't like TLJ." Actually, though, I don't think it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Man, once this plan is complete, right finally, the Dark Lord will reign once more. He died. I wasn't even going that fast. Out of a So anyway, yeah. That's my prompt. That's my prompt now. For is there anything else before I carry on? No, we we can proceed. Well. I'm probably gonna hop off for just a second and uh, grab a bite to eat real quick. Because uh, I'm getting quite hungry. I've been moving for a while. So. I will destroy you. Oh my goodness. I know, a bit of an overreaction, I know, but.
I'm just inspired by my favorite Greek god. That's right. Ares. 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 The god of fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Christmas chads rise up. Yeah, yep. no. Yeah, you, Jay, you're a Halloweeny, right? <laughs> I'm a Halloweeny. Halloweeny. Thank fuck. Halloweener. <laughs> Halloweeners versus Chris Massives. <laughs> I really like the uh, the Civil War poster that was made for that meme. I feel like there'll be some like some interesting debates there. Mm-hmm. Um, also high rags. Hello. Uh, but I I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat. I'll be back in just a mm -hmm. little bit. Halloween is older than Christmas. Automatic win. That's is it older than Christmas? Works. Um, I don't know which ones. Can you, you trace them both through like pagan holidays or whatever, right? Hitler that's, is older than you. That's the problem. <laughs> Automatic if win. We go, if we go through pagan stuff, yeah, makes it tough. Gosh darn pagans with your candy and your spooks. Hey, we should thank them. It's a neat, neat time of year. I like really, it. I, I had a lot of cool. Wow, I don't know if they were cool. I just know they were influential. Hitler was influential and not cool. Like the pagan. True. Gosh darn! Oh wait. You know, um, one of one of the main things I have to say about Hitler is he was just you know not not cool. Like, yes. Man, not not cool, Hitler. You get a little newspaper. Get him with it. Pop it. It's spray him with a little spray bottle. Yeah. That has sulfuric acid in it. Whoa. So, yeah. See you, buddy. Yeah, that'd be a painful way to go. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it would be a painful way to. Well, I think it's worthwhile to think about how much. Wait, no, it would actually. Be... I was about to say. I was you imagining a world in which you don't think that's painful. No, no, no. <laughs> I was thinking. Well, I was thinking like, if you spray somebody with sulfuric acid, how much would that be enough of it coming out to really hurt you, or would it be like a stinging sensation? You know, um, you know, in the same way that if I like sprayed spray. lava at you, spray like if I sprayed it, how much, is, how much of it is enough to, uh, to like to really, kill um, versus really hurt? Well, no. What I'm saying is, would it would it really hurt, or would it kind of hurt? Would it be like, oh, well, stop? The same way that like I don't like. First of all, don't cite me on this, but like I'm fairly sure that you can just like run your hand over liquid nitrogen, and the transfer of temperature isn't fast enough to actually hurt you. I don't know that that I'm would be applicable to lava, though. But in the same well, kind of in the same kind of vein, of like you assume it would really hurt you, but it just doesn't. So lava is is like it melts people. <laughs> it's it is it is incredibly. No, no, hot. it doesn't melt people. It it blows them up. Uh, the gases inside yeah. you expand real fast, and you. Oh blow right, up. okay. Oh. Well, that that's much better, isn't it? Really. That's way better. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, if like if you get if you just get some lava on you, does that mean like part of you blows <laughs> that sounds, up? That sounds like. It would be comedic yet accurate, as in, it's like a it's film awesome. where you're about to embark on an adventure in some like magma place, and someone slips, falls in lava, and explodes. <laughs> <All just like>. <laughs> 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 it's like the Tropic Thunder gag. Yeah, that does actually sound like that's that's really rich comedy. <laughs> I feel like that's um, I'm surprised it's not a video game almost exclusively just the floor is lava, but the game. I think there is I'm stuff sure like that, that exists. like indie games for sure. I guess it'd be interesting to think about a game where you sabotage, like, maybe you have to build your own things to try and survive and other people can sabotage them and you get to fight with each other. Try Dean, and knock them. store, the, the, the floor, floor lava. is lava. Yeah, uh, there's a game called The Floor is Lava here. Um, and it is the thing that you would expect it to be. Whoa. Anyway, uh, you know, supposed to be. Wait, sulfuric acid isn't that. Like Homer nearly drank it, and he was fine. That's true. Yeah, I think that's good enough evidence. I mean, it, it burnt through the wall, but that doesn't mean it would have burned through Homer. Exactly. I've seen what he ate. Yeah, he ate the super, super spicy pepper or whatever. That's true. He lived. That uh, that whole episode. I, I'm pretty sure there are people who don't like the Frank Grimes, Grimes episode. I love that episode. There are people who don't like it. It's one of the best episodes. I think that there are people who think that it's very mean spirited, and I disagree. I think that it says a lot about like just several topics. Okay. Um, I feel like you talked about that episode for 
like hours in terms of what you can pull from it about Homer and Grimes and, and broader society. Hard work versus like attitude, things like that. Just, yeah. I'm just enjoying the title of the Steam game. Like there's loads of games called like The Floor is Lava and then under all of them there's just one called Hot Floor. <laughs> I know, I like that. <laughs> I like, they ain't lying, I like you know? the minimalism there. It's like, it's like, I don't know. It's like there's just one. It's just like, it's like I don't know, like a child. You've got like loads of adult game developers going. You know, called the game The Floor is Lava. So, oh, what have you called your game? Uh, the Floor is Lava. And child. Hot Floor! Oh, like by that. the way, chat, I, you, I, I, I'm not needing to look up sulfuric acid burns. I know it's acid. <laughs> I know that it, it. I know that it's painful. Wait, Wait Tom Hanks was never Mr. Rogers. Rogers. Oh my god! No, he wasn't. It was um, what's his name? Robert Downey Jr. I think. <laughs> Mr. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Mr. Roger. Mr. Oh, sorry, Mr. Rogers Downey Jr. Yeah. There we go. Mr. Downey Robert Jr. Would Max Lord in Wonder Woman 84 be an example of a meta theme that the characters are reacting to? Max Lotz is supposed to be an allegory for Trump, right? The problem with that is I didn't see anything to do with Trump in him, really. And did no. I. Was, was that a thing that Trump did where he screamed about, what, hey, you want it, you got it, buddy? <laughs> Just screaming that and pointing at people. Life is good, but it could be better. I don't yeah. remember Trump saying that. Yeah, I feel like if it was a Trump allegory, it would be way more of a... Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you I know, don't know. I mean, if it's, it's, if it's I thought allegory. it was supposed to be a Trump allegory, is what but, I that's what, they, well, that's what they said. But yeah, I'm literally saying, like, like, I have no idea what people reference when they say that. I don't know. Like, I, I would, I, you know, I welcome I think, the idea of a subtle Trump, Trump allegory. That's okay, but how I, subtle I, are we going here? Could I just say that he's a Nixon allegory? You'd be like, oh. Uh, yes. No, okay. no, I don't know. I haven't seen this film more. Like, I, Damn I, you. I, I'm just saying that Damn I might be you. an allegory. I think the best. Trump allegory. The best you could do to try and connect it is see he's like a rich guy who sells stuff. It's like, oh. Doesn't he have like a, he's that, got that, a, there, is it down? A, has he got like a fake tan as well? Um, well, no, that's that's a tan. Yeah. It's just, it's, do you think that... Fringy, are you okay? I, you sound like you're about to glitch out. You know that people with non-white skin could still put no, on fake tan, right? I know that they can put on fake tan, but like, I'm pretty sure that Pedro Pascal looks the same as always in that film, right? Like, he doesn't I, look... I different. don't know. I've seen him looking uh, paler than that in different uh, content. Uh, hmm. I guess... Maybe he's I just better lit. Part, but Could that be. film has, that film has like, a color palette. It, uh, it, it does... Well, the so that's the other way. thing. Everyone has high blood yeah. pressure in that film. Well, it seems that way, because, yeah, everybody's a little more, like, just oranger. It's like the Transformers issue. You rewatch the Michael Bay Transformers films, everybody is orange. It's really weird. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, if he were, um, if if they gave him a fake tan or if they spruced up his colors to come across that way, then that like that's pretty pathetic in terms of references. If that's all I've got, you know. I feel like a more apt one would be that if you were pointing at. I mean, Trump was obviously around and doing stuff in the 80s, but it feels like you would be specifically highlighting, like, infomercial guys from the 80s that that, that was, you know, like, um... Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I'm not doing this to defend or attack Trump in any way. I do not get the connection at all. I don't get it. Like, is that specific? And, and I mean, in terms of commentary on... Because Max Law is like, oh, you know, I had nothing and now I, I'm getting everything. It's like, that doesn't seem like a Trump allegory. Trump was born into a wealth. <laughs> so am... it doesn't seem to line up in terms of like their history and how that would inform what they wanted, right? So like, there can be as many history. there can be as many differences as you want in an allegory. We just need to find the bits that are supposed to line up, and then of which there are none. <laughs> yeah, like that's the that's the bit we're struggling with. You can't like just point at like, each individual difference and be like, but like you just where is the similarity? Is the question? Yeah, that's basically it. Unless I mean, I still think it's said... it's worthwhile what he said. Like they aren't. There's just not, like, if you're gonna make it a Trump allegory, it's weird to have chosen all these different things, including the fact that we can't think of anything that connects him. Well, I just remember, I um, I remember someone, I, I was just getting flashbacks to a time talking to someone about the film The Platform, or is that even a film or is it a show? I don't remember. It was, it was a film on uh, Netflix. Yeah, um, so that was, like, 
pretty pretty clearly an allegory for different economic systems. Right. Like overtly. Uh, and someone said that it couldn't be because, like, in capitalism, you don't get put to sleep and, like, randomly assigned a new layer, a new, a new position in the system. Like, yeah, it doesn't have to be a want... That doesn't... It doesn't have to be one-to-one -one for it to be an allegory. You don't... I'm uh, just getting a flashback to that. I guess the thing is, is if you don't for allegory, there needs to be a substantive similar element that you're criticizing uh, oh yeah yeah not, not even necessarily criticizing it would be something that you're praising right but there needs to be something that is like a substantive fundamental element yeah, i was about to say that like they capitalize on their positions as given to them through the luck of the system which is allegorical to capitalism in terms of yeah, like your starting wealth, position um, yeah yeah the fact that it changes uh, every week or whatever like that's not i don't know that that's relevant to like, ah, you... I don't think that's relevant. No, I don't think it's relevant. Well, I mean, it's cha changing every month is essentially a... I mean, it's not part of the allegory. It's a, a device by which to, to deliver the allegory more, you know? Okay. So you get to see, So you get to see the system from different positions from the per point of view of the same characters. Duh. That's not capitalism? Yeah, it is. Like, if, you, if you're born better off, like, because of wealth that was accrued by people who came before you and then that gets passed through to you because they wanted it for you. That's capitalism. And or are you can, saying that the allegory start at the top of Well, and to order. better take advantage or, of or, your or, situation or, thanks to your starting point. Or is, or were you saying that, like, what was being described isn't capitalism because it doesn't need to be capitalism to be an allegory for it. Like, well, I, ah, it's complicated if you're starting to, like, actually be allegories for uh, real world systems. Because at that point, you need to mirror it. If you don't mirror it enough, then you've kind of turned it into something else. Like, well, yeah, because it would be like that, but it would it's be not, different enough. It's not exactly the same. You could argue they don't actually explore socialism or communism or whatever in, in their, the later portions of the strategies they have for right. delivering the food. It's just that, yeah, the film's just... It's, it's only going to make you think. And there's way more to pull out of it than there is for Max Lord being like Trump. I, I'm not talking about social status. I'm talking about like having more means available. Like if somebody's born and they inherit more money, that's just going to help them out. Probably they could still fuck it up, obviously, but it's like a useful head start. Yeah, an easy one is like once you have enough money, your money can just make money as long as you yeah, like do the obvious once things. You reach, well, exactly. Once you reach a certain point, like your assets just you know, unless you make a lot of mistakes, like it, it'd be very hard to go from rich to poor again. That's not status, though. That's specifically about memes and things like that. <laughs> so anyway. Is Chafe's GF... If, not Chafe. Chase's GF inflatable or a real deal? Also, hi, Rags. I mean, Rags isn't here, so someone else is going to have to say hi. What? All right, we did it. Um, I do not know. I do not know. You got move, visit, nuke. They're your three options. California, China, Australia. What were the what were the three options? And apparently nuke was censored. What the fuck YouTube? Fuck this platform. So move to, visit it, or nuke. And the three options are California, China, Australia. Nuke Australia. I mean, you're doing the least I mean, damage, I... right? Because it's imaginary and all that. Well, no, yeah. No, no. The thing is, I think there are probably parts of Australia that you can nuke and kill, like, three people. I don't think the same is true of well, China that... or uh, but, California. But we... There are parts of China that you could nuke where nobody lives. Like, the fucking Gobi Desert. Barely anybody lives there. No, um, that's true. And but... there's plenty of places in California that you could nuke where nobody... I mean, they've done nuclear tests in California. But actually, you know, um... I'm pretty sure that I the guess. question implies that you are wiping that particular region off the face of the earth completely. I think it's reasonable to assume that that's implied. Um, I mean, for me, it's pretty easy. I'm staying in Australia. I'll visit... <laughs> like, huh? I'm, I'm keeping Australia. That's, that's like, the easy one. Why? I like this country. I'm back. Okay. Is that it? <laughs> or do I need different parameters for it? Oh, I just thought the answer would be a little bit more interesting. I'm sorry. Would it be more interesting than I would like to stay in the country that I live in? Yeah, it could yeah. be way more interesting. 
Yeah, see? I guess Rice doesn't even know the question and he's then. on point. I guess it depends on if, if the logic is like, well, hey, you can move some new place and then, you know, get to learn all about that place, right? <laughs> what are you new king and what are you visiting? Um... I don't feel like this one is worth going into because it feels like it's gonna quickly divulge into politics. So... Well, I mean... Um, I think I'd be really what you've got here is you're life. weighing up the lives of like... A, what a well, billion people versus all. like a few well, million. If we're, if we're doing it that way, then surely you would have to go in ascending order from like most populous to least populous, right? Well, yeah, so um... So Australia would have to go in that analogy if that's the case. Because more people live in California than live in Australia. I guess so. Yeah, but think of all the good that would happen in the world if we just lost California. Well, I mean, think about all the economic value that you've lost by getting uh, rid of California. Gonna, well, you know, it'll be a price. I mean, it thing. counts for one fifth of your economy, but uh... California just sank into the ocean. <laughs> it's a, it'd just be a price worth paying. It's fine. It's We'll start making our own clothes, planning victory gardens, and what's the question? Um, you got instead of fuck Mary kill, it's move, visit, nuke, and you got California, Australia, and China. Uh. So it's move, nuke, and visit. Visit. I don't want to. Let's see. Here's the thing. I mean, but I don't want to nuke my own country. I don't think I want to nuke any of these places. To be perfectly yeah, honest with you. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know. Like, drop a nuke on a country. As if it's so I guess not specific. Easy, so. Right? But, so there's probably plenty of places in the middle of the desert in like Australia, right, where you could drop a nuke and not get too many consequences. Well, so, but the problem is, there's you. Could, well, I, I guess it's not a problem. I feel like in every single one of these places, there's a place you could drop it where it's not going to kill anyone. Should we find out the greatest ratio of that then? Because I imagine Australia's going to be a big just, contender. Well, we, we well, have I feel a lot like of China has more space. Yeah. To, China has to a lot handle. of space. Up Yes, they they got like a lot of desert, Gobi Desert, heaps. Of yeah, space so up. let's. Yeah, we we could toss a nuke somewhere in China, and no one would ever know. Um, let's let's. Well, I, I guess I'll keep keep. Was that that was the one? Keep California. No, move and, and visit. visit. California. Oh, move I'd move. Move to Australia. Basically. I'd move to California. I'd visit Australia. Right. I mean, I guess that's that makes because it's sense. Near, you know, I have the same answer, just the, the only flips will be just the safest place to nuke. That's pretty much the goal. Yeah, um, yeah, I feel like I could move to California, and I'd still be able to essentially do exactly what I do now. Um, and there, uh, California is a big, big place, so I'd find some lovely suburb somewhere in the desert, someplace nice, far away from the cities. Just, just a lovely, a lovely suburb. Let's be honest, Drax. Um, you move from... in, you'd complete the contract, and then you'd move out. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I mean, Arizona, my, my Arizona's pretty like, close. Uh, my question at this point is like, would I, as a trans person, be safe visiting China? I don't know. Didn't Fuck just, visit. Like, bad, I bought. Yeah. Boys on TV or some shit. So if I, if there... I can't, if I, if I, then I guess I'm dropping the nuke on an unpopulated part of China than Australia. Yeah. We... Well, that well, was. I mean. This is an interesting conversation because I'm pretty sure that there are rural Aboriginal communities in Australia that were like seriously had adverse health consequences because of the nuclear testing. So this place is big, but there are people who still live out there um, in the desert. It will nuke the Gobi Desert, okay? It's fine. No, well, it'll be fine. Okay, okay. I chose this the... random chatter. I'll visit China. <laughs> and... I don't know. We'll nuke the Chinaman. There's a lot of stuff to visit in Australia. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'd love to visit Australia. Australia. I'm, I'm sure like there's lots to visit in all of these places. Well, there's a lot to visit in China as well. Like, yeah. you want to get some of that ancient history. God damn. China seems like it was way cooler than it is now. What, a lot like, of places were cooler than they are now. Like, like Italy? Uh, what, you feel what like... Point? You, you, Cooler, well, uh, yeah, what, at one point in history. Like the Romans. 
Oh yeah, yeah, right. Of course. Roman Empire and the man, that was that shit. Oh, if I, I had a time machine, if I had a fucking time machine, man. But you know, is there it was a cool to be said about the fact that you can see the relics of that time now in modern Italy as well as modern Italian stuff and the history that came yeah, after. Yeah, that is true. There's a lot of Renaissance. I'm... You miss Renaissance if you don't like if you if you jump that far ahead. Well, here's the thing: if if I only get one opportunity to visit, then I'd have to seriously consider it further. Um, I'm gonna go right. visit Jesus. Yeah, maybe I could just go to go to the 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 lesser Galilee area around three eight, you know, about around thirty A.D. and just sorry thirty. I guess it would be three B.C. Uh, no, it would be. Would you not want to go later than that? Maybe like no, um... I I because what I, I'm trying to think in my head of the date when he's like thirty or so and he's doing all the uh, the miracles and everything. So that would be. BC, so that would be in AD. So, what's the period in between BC and AD? Zero. Oh, yeah, it would be AD. Yeah, AD. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. 30 AD. Yeah, 30 AD. For I, I had a brain tism there. Yeah, I'd go around 30 AD, and then I'd look around and I'd see uh, none of that happening, and I'd just put this to rest. And I'd bring a fucking camcorder. <laughs> I was gonna say, but then they'll say you faked it. Yeah, they'll say I faked it. Now yeah. I, I I don't know where I'd want to go. I'd let there's so think of all the cool things you could see Tenochtitlan, and like the the Rome at its peak. Dude, and the Arnison. aliens building the pyramids that'd be really cool to see. Yeah, I want to see the spaceships as they're lowering the blocks down. Um, yeah. It's um, really a shame how much of like Native American across the continent, like how much of that just got destroyed. That is like, that is so. This really sucks. Hot take is fringy. Yeah. I mean, is that a hot take? <laughs> like, that it sucks. No, that's the... That history? You did, you, did you a sarcasm, I think. Yes, I it's think just you like, did. I don't know. It's just kind of, you know, it's like, vibes. If you know what I hate, cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah, I hate cancer. Yeah. I, yeah, but I'm, I'm pro depression, though. I'm willing to say it here now. I hate cancer and AIDS. Not a fan of that one either. I'm half and half on AIDS. Yeah, it's, it's I think right. I feel like I could be convinced. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence. I could do without Alzheimer's. What's Alzheimer's? I forget. <laughs> Alzheimer's. It's very offensive. So anyway, EFAP movies: Batman: Mask of the Phantasm, greatest animated Batman movie, also Hyrax. Hello. Um, I guess they want us to check it out. Maybe we will. Who knows? Hmm, maybe. I like it. I know what Supes was thinking in the courtroom scene when the bomb goes off. Crap, they're gonna try and blame this on me as well. Yep. That's canon. Clark should never save people so people don't find out who he is. That would make him a true hero. I mean, mm. <sighs> like I said, man, it's so badly done. Sorry, it's just badly done. Uh, got second dose of Vax and I feel like a bus hit me. I feel terrible. This stream definitely making a day, making the day a bit better. Oh, yeah. I hope you. Uh, hope you're all right. Yeah, that one. I've been dealing with real fun. Well, hey, I mean, immunized. you're immunized now. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, you can't be abducted by aliens or whatever. You can lick loads of surfaces. Don't. Don't yeah, do you that. Can lick all the doorknobs at the mall and. Still be okay. The mall has doorknobs. I don't know. Maybe there's a doorknob emporium. Yeah, there could I be a doorknob like... shop. <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> door Come check out doorknobs. We got. I'm big sure there's little doorknobs. Yeah. Grass. Yeah. There's a. There's probably a guild or something. Yeah. The doorknob guild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the doorknob guild. They called knobbers. Hmm. <laughs> We're the knob shop, all right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Sell all kinds of knobs. Led with, by with their, the knobs. their leader was knighted. He has certain knobs a lot. <laughs> I didn't know knobs was knighted. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Everyone knows about famous or knobs a lot. Yeah, you know, I went on a stream with him once. Oh, yeah. It would have been such an honor to, to meet and greet Sir Knobs a lot. Oh, no. Door knob. Yeah. I was eaten. You got too You're close eaten? to the sun. I am Aww. in the desert. 
Yeah, but you got too close. I mean, it just seems unavoidable to me. I... That not Well, yeah, with that attitude. I don't know that the attitude would change it. I feel like you're underestimating the power of positive thinking. I evaded the hurricane. Do I get a point for that? It's Ooh. a tornado, but... No, because you, uh, you, you went straight into the fake little mystery box. I That's Nobody so saw Is that. A oh, did you, did you fall for that old trick? That's the I, oldest trick in the book. Yeah, I don't fall for the new tricks. Yeah. Only the you old tricks. You can only tricks. remember so many Ooh. tricks, so when you, remember a new, when you learn a new trick, you forget one of the old tricks. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm okay. You like a Pokemon? Um. Yeah, kind of. I guess so. Oh! This is so intense. I might just get third place. Yeah, exciting. I might just get second place. No, 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 no! Oh, you motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't wait to see whatever you're reacting to. Oh, yeah. you hit one of the things! I did hit one of the things. Horror. Oh. The fake box. Idiot! The fake great fool! How we does it feel? just scorning you for that. You fool! What have you done? Um, he laser eyed a genocide's worth of baby grapes. Just leaving this message from chat here. <laughs> laser eyed. Laser eyed. Genocide's worth of baby grapes. That's uh, a way to put it. Apparently that was from Ros Yan. Alright. Or oh, Yam? Hmm, Yan? Right. Yeah, Yan. Uh Yam? I like that genocide is now a unit of measurement. Yes. One genocide's worth of dead babies. Greetings, Darth Mauler, Meme Team 6, and Chicken Fringaloo. Have you ever hated a film so much you stopped it part way? Also hi, Ragga Lagga Ding Dong. Hello! No! Hey. I have not, but I have come close here and there. I don't think I've ever stopped a film outright. Hmm. Yeah, there's there. I get a sense of like committal to uh to films and love. Yeah, like we went like through. I'm thinking of ending it. things. Yeah, we that was probably the closest we've collectively got to not finish something. Yeah. I feel it was rough. Yeah. That shit sucked. Um. Oh, Muller, I meant to ask you, you were talking about the stream I did the other day. Did you see the Zack Snyder part? One with knobs a lot? <laughs> no, no, not that one. Okay, this is different. Okay. Uh, no, I've only gotten like 20 minutes in, so... In one of my tabs. The Zack Snyder part, that's, uh, that's what you want to get. Is this the one where you're reacting to people reacting to you? Yeah. Um, okay, someone... I haven't started that one yet. I need to, I need to go through that one. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> well, someone reacted to a, um... A video of mine about Zack Snyder, and that's that's my highlight from that stream. Very well. I look forward to it. Um, my hero is my grandpa. He's an American hero and instilled in me good values. He also taught me how to invest and a lot about business. Love you, pops. Hell yeah. And shout out. My mm -hmm. grandfather has also uh, encouraged me to start investing and getting into that sort of thing, so... That's one of my goals well, for the year, is to learn more about all of that and to put some money into investments and maybe some stocks and things. Shout out to based grandpas. Mm-hmm. But he was racist. Yeah, fuck Grandpas that are allowed guy. to be racist. That's, That's their true, right. actually. They've earned Wait. it. They've they put up with 70... <laughs> you know, they put up with 70 years of bullshit. They can, they can be racist, it's fine. If they you can't be racist, then who the fuck can? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um... Hi all. Hi Rags. Hello. Hello to you. Hello. For a thoughtful discussion on the deep need power... Deep need power thing, I would recommend Stalker by Tarkovsky Interesting Rat. Deep need power? Yeah, I'm not sure I recognize. Deep need power thing. I do not this know what those, that is referencing. This is one of those things where when you say the words together, it's like a slur. No, what I'm pretty sure this is an actual Deep recommendation, because I know Stalker exists. Deep need power thing? I don't know. Uh, it's nice to have a different opinion on EFAP. I say bring him into the fold and play Gothic Phone, lol. Also, thank you, Longman. Haven't missed one live EFAP. Aw. Ooh, wow. Wow. Hope, hope you're having I'm fun. I mean, yeah, maybe we'll have him back for for a gothic phone sometime. He can he can yeah. show us his art skills. Oh yeah, let's see how yeah, 
Fuck that video essay crap. We're gonna see if you can draw doodles in Gardic Phone. That's a real man's skill right there. Um, is he big? Is he big Ottman? I I don't know. No idea. No clue. Perhaps. This next one says, "Am I the only one who liked this Les Lu Lex Luthor? At least he was slightly interesting." Yes, you are the only person. You are the only person. Yeah, I think you might actually be the only person. If there were a convention of, hey, <laughs> who likes Lex Luthor from Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice? You'd be the only person there. It's yeah, worldwide. Not even Lex Luthor from Dawn of Justice would be there. Yeah, it's... you rented out the whole LA convention center, and it's just you in there, like, hey. I, I do like, like the Lex idea Luther. though that they paid Jesse Eisenberg to show up, and so it's just this huge <laughs> empty hall, and he's just there with a chair, like, hi. He's just on his like phone that... for four hours. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like hey, that's you want to get almost... McDonald's? It feels like that would be an opportunity, right? It's like, we can talk just about talk other things you've done. Eisenberg? Yeah, yeah, well, you we, just we get can talk to talk about the social him. network, you know. We can talk... Well, yeah. <laughs> we can talk about the things that he's good in, like social no. network. It's like, no, no, no. Maybe he's still talking about movies. Yeah, he's he has to, to talk about BVS. <laughs> well, we Dude. can talk about anything, just obligatorily add in at the end of every uh, sentence, just like in Batman or Superman. Yeah. So, you know, so, uh, so uh, you know, talk me through your process filming the, the social network and, like, you know, everything that you learned during that that must have affected your, uh, your, your <laughs> performance yeah. in BVS. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like, okay, how did it fine. Feel to embody, how did it feel to embody, you know, Mark Zuckerberg? Like, how, how does it, how do you sink yourself into a character like that? You know, kind of like how you suck yourself into a exactly. Luthor in Batman yeah, Superman. Yeah. yeah, you must have learned <laughs> it from something else. You can talk about that, and then I can understand BVS better. He's like, uh-huh. No, sorry, you can't <laughs> say BVS. You have to say the full name. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. That's, That's contractual. It, it, well. it should be That's Zack Snyder's. Contract. Zack Snyder's Batman vs. Superman, Donna, I guess. <laughs> Zack Snyder's DC's Warner Brothers. Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, Warner DC's Brothers, Zack DC's, Zack Snyder's, Zack Snyder's, yeah. Zack Snyder's Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, released in IMAX on, I don't know, like, fucking March 2016. <laughs> the date as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, have to, you have to be all the credits. Starring Ultimate by, Edition, yeah. By... Yeah, Dawn of Justice Ultimate Edition. Just, just read the whole article. fucking script at this point. <laughs> Starring uh, Ben Affleck, uh, Henry Cavill, uh, Amy Adams, Lawrence Fishburne, um, Gal Gadot, Jesse Eisenberg, and who else was in it? Would you say I mean... Jesse Eisenberg, or would you say you, since you're talking to him? Starring, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You. Starring you. Right. <laughs> you. You were in this. Uh, so I like the idea so though that he would breach his contract. He would start talking about anything else as soon as you're like, can you explain to me Lex's motivation? And he's like, okay, let's talk about a uh, social network. Yeah. So there's, but in order to enforce the, the contract, there need to be two bouncers there. Anytime he deviates from the conversation, they pin him down <laughs> and they hold a knife to his face. They're like, say, hey, Bergy boy, Superman. you're not allowed yeah. to do that. I like the idea that if you put um, out the entirety more of the stuff than visitors. More stuff. That would be uh that feels like man, imagine it, how depressing it would be like if you organized an event like that and there were more people catering than turned I'm sure up. that's happened. I'm sure that has happened and I feel very bad for those people cuz that I'll be sound eating like a nothing time. but tiny sandwiches and cheese on sticks for weeks now. Ugh. That sounds delicious. No. no. It sounds. It sounds. It sounds pleasant. Once, you know, you're like, all right, every day for like lunch. Yeah, every day for like lunch, and then you have an actual breakfast and an actual dinner. Then you know, it could be pleasant. I feel like it would be. It would get old at the event. You're just like, yeah, this is alright. But I've had like two little sandwich thingies and. Well, you know, then it sounds like you're just booking cubes. boring catering rags. Damn. No, you it's not my catering. No, you it's need not to my say catering. You I no, bought tickets you... to the Jesse Eisenberg, Zack Snyder's Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice. Oh, I, Warner I, 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 assumed that you were, I assumed that you were talking from the perspective of the person who organizing the event, who's like sad that no one showed up, but now at least, well, they have uh, all this food that no one's going to eat, so they're going to have to eat it themselves. I, that would I assumed that was what was going on. That would actually on. happen when I was working. Uh, when I, I was uh, for a while, I did banquet events, big banquet events, as a server there, and did a bunch of stuff like that. And that's what would happen is if there was too much catered food and stuff, they'd say, yeah, we just need to get rid of it. Y'all just take whatever you want. We got to It needs to go because we paid for it and the event's over and there's some left over. So sometimes you could get a smorgasbord of all kinds of goodies. 
What was the most delicious thing you got, Rags? Ooh, um... Or, or, so, or, or most unusual as well. I don't know about most unusual. A lot of... I, I'm, I'm going way back on memory, but the dinners themselves, they would often get too many, or uh, so that... The, because you have to have enough, so you want yeah. to err on the side of caution, and sometimes you get vegetarians and, you know, those people, so they can't eat the steaks, the, the delicious foods and things, and the meats and whatnot. So sometimes you'd get like a, a, an actual legit really nice steak dinner plate, and it was, it was it's got to go somewhere. So you'd have one and you'd chow down, and it was great. What this All event is sponsored good. by the Jolly Rancher Company. The Jolly Rancher Company. Oh, sponsored by Jolly Rancher. <laughs> that is, it was just fun to watch you like hear the joke in the alternate order it was said <laughs> to <laughs> connect the pieces. Yeah. I like the idea that when you enter the convention center, there's a man suggesting <laughs> Eisenberg has to put a jolly rancher in your mouth. That's your dude, when, when Jesse Eisenberg can't do it, they have to get an impersonator with a whole mask. <laughs> one by one. But, one but by one. he needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, you got some dude wearing a wig. Just put jolly rancher It's the authentic in experience. Yeah, he, he hands you the pamphlet and slides a jolly rancher right in your mouth and, uh... No. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't settle for some fucking second really the standard. I'd I want the, the, the only the only food and drink available are Jolly Ranches and piss. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, it's Granny's peach. I was gonna say they're all labeled Granny's peach tea, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, they're labeled yeah. Granny's <laughs> peach <laughs> tea, of course. But they all have to be just guys and girls, except no substitutes. <laughs> Fresh you from have the I like the idea that the Snyder fanboys are so excited by the reference they'll just drink it. <laughs> just like, I don't care. You can get frozen ones, you can have piss pops, and those will be really- Hey look, this is vision alright, this is a really I'm experiencing the vision. film, I'm a part of the film now. Grow our tangerine tea. I love so piss, John that's what they'd is, say. I have a jar of piss. Combrophulous oh pistol. Doesn't matter. I just love drinking piss. <laughs> oh. Oh boy, here I go drinking piss again. No, the one that Please set this all off. Please don't use those sound bites in a meme. Please. <laughs> the one that set this. Two, two brilliant sound bites to not use. So all we did was nuke China and drink piss. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But Jesse Eisenberg slid Jolly Ranchers into our mouths. This has been a weird day. You know, it's, Jesse and Eisenberg. it's Jesse Eisenberg gonna piss into our mouth as well. Oh no, Jesse, stop oh, it! <laughs> Jesse's like, I don't have much more. This is contractually oh, obligated. I've got so much. <laughs> um, but that person who said all that off, they they said at the end, I just love you guys. Also, high rags. Oh hello. I hope. I hope that what you just heard was everything you were looking for, Super Chatter. There you go. Um, I just want to say I'm not affiliated with Zack Snyder. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah, I'm not affiliated with, uh, with Zack Snyder either. EFAP is not affiliated. I want to make sure everyone knows so that there's no controversy. I'm his best friend. No! Stop it. Zack Snyder? Zack Snyder. Yeah. Zack Snyder, will you marry me? Who would be the better Rambo? Wally, Winnie the Pooh, or Wallace? Um, Wallace. Wallace would have Wallace the inventions. Has... Yeah. Yeah, that's how it's going. Yeah, he's has got the, the gadgets. gadgets. He could create a pair of trousers that would just kick the shit out of you. Yeah. I'd watch like, yeah. a, a Wallace action movie. Yeah, <laughs> well, put him on like an alien Wallace planet, and he has to. That's the movie. I think no, I think I Jay's looking for action more action. Movie. Yeah, no, I, 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 I want yeah. aliens, colonial Wallace. Plus, Rambo would be able to take care of the it's rabbit colonial problem. Colonial Wallace. Really <laughs> it would be great. You know, I, I, I would like to see like a a Wallace and Gromit spy thriller with lots yeah. of uh, where, where he has to save the world from like someone with a, a nuke. Tension carrots. Is it like that? Um, what, what's that? The the. The Rowan Atkins spy one? Johnny English. Johnny English. Yeah, I, I saw that there was one uh, part of one of the movies I saw where he had like the VR goggles on and he was going around town and I just, I, I, I laughed my ass off. There was just something about it. And 
I thought it was one of the funniest things I'd ever seen. No, no, I'm, I, this film has a bad reputation because of all the fucking sequels, but, uh, like, the original I don't think is that bad. I'm thinking more the, the, the vibe of Despicable Me. Of I like a, uh, Despicable Me. Yeah, I, I like Despicable Me. It was good. Um, that kind it's of It's all the goddamn with, minions. Oh, yeah. they got yeah. minion shit. Just that, that and with, the... um, that kind of thing, but with Wallace and Gromit. Um, I would watch that. We're going to steal the moon, Gromit. <laughs> Cute. Well, they go to the moon. One, they've been to the moon before. Hey, exactly. Wallace, isn't, Wallace yeah. isn't a villain. Wallace isn't a villain. You know, you know, you know he's do all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and you yeah, can't just fucking of, uh, do not assassinate his character for fuck's sake. Yeah, we're not going to assassinate Wallace's character here. Double O. We're just sort of uh, we're going for a similar. Double O W. Rather similar plot, you know. Below same. Google. It's a threat where he has to stop a big villain and loads of like spy stuff. Mm-hmm. I'd watch. That it. sounds good to me. I'd like that. I'm I'd sure. I'm sure Black Widow was bad, but I read that while the first draft was written in 11 days, there were rewrites after that. Um, the thing that I read said that they changed very little and that the first draft was done in 11 days. But, um, you know what? It depends on the source, I suppose. Frongy! Was Shang-Chi a triumph? Um, I mean, it was triumph in that it is the best of Phase 4, yeah. I guess that's Sweet. triumph of percent. Uh, do you think they have the balls oh, to make the She-Hulk yeah. show just a Leia show? Oh, uh, just a what show? A Leia show? A Leia sh a lawyer show. Just a lawyer show. Oh, yeah, she's supposed to be a lawyer, Jennifer right? Walters is a lawyer. Oh, so. okay, then... I'm pretty sure that the, the premise just... of the show is that it's meant to be, like, based around doing cases about hmm. superheroes. Oh, that which could be interesting. Feels like that, could be, that could be really interesting if it's handled well. So we're gonna get just like a Harvey Birdman show? Um, I could, I would imagine that that's probably the. I, I feel like that could work. Like if you had a thing where she just has to help superheroes deal with their shit, you know. But in course, super easy to fuck up. Um. Yes. It does sound, it, it does sound like it could be really. Easy. Right. They're this really good like at an fucking things up. Level plot. Yeah. This is a. This uh, is an the head writer wrote Pick Rick, so. I don't know what Ooh. that's worth though, because I don't know what it's worth anything. It's very well. It's a very yeah. different. Well, the guy who wrote uh, Loki wrote for Rick and Morty too, and the guy who is writing Ant Man wrote for Rick and Morty too. <sighs> uh, not well, which uh, which episodes? Which episodes? Uh, the guy who wrote Loki wrote the toilet one in season four. The you remember the one where it's like Rick was getting into an argument over a guy using his private toilet. Yeah, it's, that was. And yeah, the head writer for She Hulk wrote Pickle Rick. So, um, working on a Wonder Woman parody based on your concept that a German airman would get to Damascara first. Please check it out on YouTube. Wonder Frau 1917. Frau <laughs> 1917. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I mean, yeah, she could fucking annihilate all of like the British high command or whatever. It just, it just would be fucking hilarious. Uh, she's like, wait, I didn't kill Ares, and Ares just laughing. He's like, no. You're bull. insane. And then he dies and then the war ends. He's like, oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> In chat, somebody has mentioned, did everybody forget about Matt Murdock? Don't worry, I'm pretty sure I've talked on streams about what I think would be a really cool idea for a Daredevil game where in the day you're working on like actual cases and then at night you do activities that relate to those cases. Like an LA Noir type structure. The day you're doing court stuff and interrogating witnesses and based on the evidence that you collect in the night before, you know, between fighting people. That sounds like similar that. to my Superman game concept where you're doing Clark Kent reporter Journalism. work sometimes. Right. Yeah. It feels like a good idea. And it's funny because Spider-Man kind of tried to do that where it's like, oh, you're working on little, you're working on little puzzles here to figure out all the science stuff. It's like, let's actually just make it a core gameplay loop of daytime activities. Yeah. Right. A lot, a lot, you got to be real careful with this, because a lot of games that have these sort of segments that take you away from the main sort of appeal that you're there for. I mean, I personally find that really annoying in a lot of well, games. No, I'm it. saying... Do you remember... Do you I'm saying game like, well, I, I'm saying in this instance we want a fully developed court system where 
you, you, like you imagine it being broken up into big chapters where they are comprised of multiple day and night sequences so the day is all about trying to i guess the problem is this would be incredibly ambitious because the idea that i like of being really cool would be that there were multiple endings depending for each case depending on how much evidence you managed to gather and whether you choose the right questions to ask people um how thorough you are is rewarded um uh, so yeah it would be so in chat someone said half ace attorney half spider-man the reason why i wouldn't say half ace attorney is because ace attorney is incredibly linear i do love those games but um i'm talking like i prefer more of an la noir system here where you can actually screw it up um in meaningful ways is the game gonna have accessibility options um yeah i mean of course right what about for the blind? Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, uh... of course, yeah. And to get the meme out of the way, no, it's not just a black screen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you got it. I I think you could do something really cool with visually with uh with the radar sense. I think you could present it as a really cool looking game. Um, hi, Muller and Co. Mola, was the most frustrated you've ever been on EFAP? Your Game of Thrones debate with Yazin? Um, Rags, do you know what most frustrated I was on EFAP ever? What, what comes to mind for you? Because, yeah, Yazin was, like, the only person we've had on that would just fucking interrupt me, like, and ignore the fact that I was, like, talking at all, like, I don't even exist. And I was just like, okay. Um, Perfect twin. Um, it was, it was. I think that was more Rags' frustration than mine. Twin Perfect. Twin Perfect fascinated me because he would just like ignore every, like avoid every fucking possibility of answering a question. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Maybe the um. The, you know, the right opinion one. The, I was about to say the Jack Saint one probably annoyed me more than that. Yeah. Yeah, because it was just like lie after lie after lie. Yeah, that's yeah, probably it. Uh, I don't know. It's tough for me to say. I don't often really get frustrated. Uh, frustrated. Uh, if I sound that way, it's generally just exasperation. But yeah, that might. That's one of them. It's definitely up there. The Yesen thing was frustrating. The Twin Perfect might be the most frustrated I got. Also, fuck, marry, kill, Aragorn, Boromir, Legolas. Um, Got to be honest with you, probably. I mean, Legolas, I ain't gonna marry. I know that. The problem is, I'm wondering if I want to marry Boromir or kill him. Wow. <laughs> the reason why I wonder, <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know, it's crazy, right? But I wonder, it's like, Boromir, I assume you're killing Legolas. The so the uh, Legolas is uh, Aragon is he 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 is uh, Aragon, <laughs> I'm say, oh. Aragon is totally safe uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I guess um, it's about what you know. I want to I want to push Boromir. You know, like Boromir will betray you. This upsets me. No, well, no, I, it's not that Boromir. I, I want to get him more stable, and I think that is why I'm tempted to marry him for that reason. Is like, man, or stable. You know. What do you mean? Well, I, I just mean, I just mean like, uh, you know, help him out, help him resolve his uh, issues, and get him, get him happy. You know, like, because that would be so. The way to get him happy would be to essentially protect Gondor, because he's very big on, you know, keeping Gondor all right and safe. I guess that's what um, I'm saying is, I feel like... He wants a good relationship. He, he wants a really good relationship with his brother. And he isn't all that... He's like, he's not keen on the idea that his father is just kind of a dick to Faramir. Yep. So... I, I would probably... Oh, man. I'd kill Legolas... And I would mm, 
Yes, I did really say that I can change him. That's right. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> I'm not looking I'm to change him. him. I think I he's a legend. I don't want to change him. I love him for what he is. Well, no, he's I don't insane. mean change him. I just want to help him, you know, be be the best I think with he can be. the ring's been destroyed, I think he'll be A-OK. -okay. Oh, oh, yeah. I... Oh, all right, if that's a parameter, then yeah, marry well, the, definitely. Well, that's oh, yeah, that's that's Boromir. I, I guess um, I was wondering if we were taking it from the perspective of like whilst they are in the story. Um, if we hmm. assume that, yeah, well, assume part of this is time. But if we take the ring out of the equation, uh, because the ring well, is just you know, is so. Do we assume? But if we're talking about Aragon, are we we talking before or after? I assume after, because I was actually going to argue, I'm going to let Aragorn do king things. I'm going to marry Boromir, and probably fuck Aragorn, maybe, but uh, probably going to kill Legolas. He just seems so dull sometimes. Yeah, I think I would I kill Legolas, yeah. yeah I don't just like Legolas. He's yeah, he's, just, he's cool. He's not much there. Yeah, Legolas is cool and all, but he's just, he's not there really, he's not really a big character. And I really, uh, really like Aragorn, and I really like Boromir. The, uh... The parameter for him, for the time frame, to clarify, would be, let's assume that there is no ring and we're in the post-date and Boromir is alive. Like, or, or, or do we oh, yeah, want to go... It's almost like, if the ring is gone, he's dead. So, I don't think we are in this universe, and I think the question is just plucking them. And, uh, we get yeah. to, you know, do whatever. At any specific point in time. Um, yeah, I think marry Boromir, uh, fuck Aragorn and kill Legolas. Yeah. But, Jay, you must uh, have an opinion I, on this. I like, um, I, I like the bit when, like, he throws the knife. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, at the walk, cool. and then it hits yeah. him. Yeah. 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 I thought that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, Boromir was a cool guy. What about, what about you, Meme? Um, let me think. I haven't watched them in a while, so I've got to just go off memory. Um, so, let's see. <laughs> Legolas will outlive you, not if I kill him. Not if he's dead. <laughs> Ooh, this is... Um... Let's see, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna... Uh, fuck Boromir, because I want that sweet Sean Bean in my ear. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna... Marry... But if you marry Aragorn. him, he can be in your ear, like, every night. Yeah, but you know... You know, I'm going... I, I, okay, I don't yeah, alright. It's alright, yeah, 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 it's fine. Uh, it's yeah, okay. so, uh, Aragorn, I'm gonna I'm gonna marry him for his kingliness, and then I'm killing uh, the guy. Ah, I see. It's all Just about him for money. yeah. It's all about the prestige, the label, you know. I want to be a exactly. princess. Yeah, could have just been honest, memes. meme. Princess honest. meme repository, yeah. Duchess of meme. Duchess of Minas Tirith. Dondora meme. Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith. Uh, if you were if you were a queen, would you be a queen? Yes. Oh, by the um, sorry, there was an extra bit to this. It said my scenario involves that the one you decide to kill fights back, so I lose to all three of these. Oh yeah, God. that's the thing. I lose I all of them. I lose. I lose to all of them. <laughs> I can't beat any of them. Like we caught it. Like as much as Legolas is great and everything, but like Aragorn and Barbie are fucking great warriors as well. So Rex, I, I you have like, um, Rex, you have a gun. Yeah, well, oh, hang on, what is this from... scenario now? Like, are we... Yeah, what, is, okay, because, what are we doing? Because now it's just pointless, doing? like, yeah, okay, I'll just shoot all three of them then. What, why are we... <laughs> <laughs> like, I good thing like, they um, I feel like if you, to, to get Legolas, you need to make sure that you get him up close when you reject him and just immediately stab him in the neck. And it's like, there it's we like, go. What now did you I decide? And you're like, <laughs> Legolas, of course I chose you, buddy, because... <laughs> <laughs> <just> like, ah. <laughs> bring it, bring it in. <laughs> you stop stabbing him I did back. not know you harbored such feelings for me, especially <laughs> after Gimli wanted to be my fiance. Oh. Well, I mean, what if you marry one of them first, and then they what, probably kill fight with sleep. you? No, what? No, you marry one of them first, and you know, you, you, you're like your husband now is probably gonna fight with you if you're fighting to the death with one of these guys. Oh, so like if I have Boromir fighting by my side to kill our, um, yeah. Legolas. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, yeah, someone asked, does your Merry pick help you I kill the kill? I feel like if it's just a fair fight, Legolas is killing both Aragorn and Boromir. Yeah, which makes you wonder, it's like, oh, uh-oh, does that mean I'm in trouble? We can't kill Legolas anymore. <laughs> They're not letting us. Damn it. Uh... 
Like, it's fine. We had Rags' gun in every scenario, so we, we took care of it. <laughs> we had Rags' gun. <laughs> That's just called Rags' gun. That's all it is. Has Fringy watched the sassy justice stuff that Matt and Trey did? The Michael Caine stuff that was great? And that was great? Um, I don't think I have. I don't recognize that at all. Matt Sassy and Trey, they're talking about South Park then. Sassy justice. Well, I... I mean, I've seen a lot of South Park. I assume it's outside of South Park? Oh, well, there's something called Sassy Justice that is a... Th like, it's a channel. Um... Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Neither have I. Is it just me, or have the DC films been trying to emulate the dynamic of the Marvel films' dynamic? At least, that is the impression I got from Justice League film, i.e. taking a more humorous tone rather than a serious one. It's just been the... The normal take, I think, from a lot of people is that each of the movies can be traced back. If you go back a couple years and then look at what Marvel was doing, you'll see the DNA of the film they're currently doing. Um, you know, maybe DC will do something eventually with something. You, you never know. Maybe. Um, her eye, Rags. Hi! Lord Longbone of Mutualington Abbey. No Kong Fap. Oh, I've been commanded to not do a Kong Fab now. What do I do? Don't listen to that man. Don't listen to him. Buy some uh, fucking chicken nuggets, lads. Oh. Okay. We absolutely will. I, I, I will make it contractual. You all have to get chicken nuggets at some point. No, I'm trying to lose weight. You can't make me. Gain nuggy weight. It's it's warm and comfy. You can't force me to. All right, my body, my choice. I can choose whether I want to have nuggies or not. I'll inject nuggies into you. No! Or you sleep. Well, just turn you imagine nuggies having nuggets? Could you imagine having nuggets? Could you imagine having nuggets injected? Liquid nuggets right into the veins. <laughs> I, right I don't think it's possible to imagine the sensation of having nuggets injected. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone has a frame of reference close enough and to then, imagine when that. When you mean diabetes, when you take in the stuff, it's like an extra <laughs> two. Too much nuggy in your blood. <laughs> too, too much nuggies, nuggies in your blood. <laughs> Form into large nuggets that are like boulders that he uses to crash through the Does facility. Does he ride on the nuggy like the Silver Surfer? I think so. <laughs> the, the Silver Duggy. The idea Rise of, of the blending and mixing up and turning chicken nuggets into a fine enough liquid that it can be put in a syringe and so then injected just injected into the veins. <laughs> and then just, you tie a belt around your arm or however the fuck you do yeah. it and you just squeeze it in and you just go, Oh. oh. No. My <laughs> The joy of nuggy. Noogie. Pure, unadulterated, not marred by taste buds, <laughs> nor digestion, straight into the bloodstream, <laughs> like Wait, God intended. Meme, you need to let the boys watch... You need to let the boys watch all five Transformers movies, and possibly the 86 movie and Bumblebee, so they can share my pain. We could do a Transformers arc. I am not against this. I like Bumblebee. We got a lot of movies to watch. That's yeah. like six movies. So, yeah. so many arcs to do, so little time. Yeah, we could call it the All Spark. Nice. Hey. <laughs> uh, play 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. It's a game with an incredibly convoluted plot that comes together in the end amazingly well. Would love for someone with a more critical eye to rip it to shreds and tell me why it sucks. Um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> if any of you guys are interested in playing that, let them know. I, I have no idea what, what it is. What's the name of the game? 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Okay. Aegis. A E G I S, I assume? Yeah. Hmm. I will consider it. Let's have a look at some images of this game. Oh. Look at its nudes. It looks like. Giant... Oh, yeah. Oh, look it's at it. Weeby. It oh, never <laughs> mind. No, oh, Rex is out. <laughs> I don't play indie weeb garbage. Indweeb. Indweeb. 
You guys talking about making comics as a kid and getting more serious makes me think of Fujimoto's Look Bad One-Shot. I think you would like it, Froing. Hmm. Hmm. So, back it out at some point. Froing, you know what I'm else I think you would like? Oh, yeah? Uh, based on all of the discussion of, like, interesting exploration of, like, superpowers that you guys were having when I was in the chat just listening along, I think you would be interested in Misfits. I think you've recommended that to me a couple of times. Why well, I'm very Jay just wants people to see misfits. Okay. If I watch up to season two, and that's enough. That is definitely enough. Right. You don't, you don't need to have your you don't need to have your show you have that show tainted. By yeah, no, that's past season two. Fair enough. There's too many shows to watch. Too little time. Speaking of too little time, I am out of time. <laughs> um, I I'm, mm. I'm, I'm mm. on. Does that mean are you, do we do we still do you want to keep going or finish um, it off? Um, I guess uh, I can. We're, we're not too far myself, away. So to you. Yeah, we're not too we can... far away from the end, so I could. Well, the options are I can grab them and save them for because we'll do a catch up on Wednesday, and we are. Well, at... I don't want to stop you. Um, but oh, but we have been gone for nine hours. I was gonna say we're at nine <laughs> oh, hours, shit, so I don't yeah. I don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah. It has, and so many fun discussions have been had. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I don't mind. Um, I can grab these up and put them on to the beginning of our catch-ups. We can knock out this episode straight away and then get on with everything else on on a Wednesday. Oh, I mean, okay, I mean if we're wrapping up, then we can then I can stay until we wrap it up. Very well, uh, Jay. Thank you so much for joining us for this full episode, talking to us about all kinds of things Snyderverse. Um, you know, I, I appreciate that you came on to to provide the argument Snyder makes great art, but I think that you're wrong. I expect my payment for my parents in untraceable cash. I will give it to you in Ethereum. That's acceptable. Very well. Um, but for, for seriously, that Colin Sanders lad, what a good lad! What a fun time! Yeah, mm -hmm. he was a he was a good good one. He was a good one. I appreciate that he was he was defending a position that he thoroughly believes in that is so unpopular with the panel here that there is only so much you can try to say and try to argue, so I think that he was perfectly reasonable and I, I, I enjoyed chatting with him. Um, and then, yeah. you know, who knows what arcs he will go on in the future. Maybe he'll even think the Snyder Cut is shit at some point, because he thought he was like, meh or whatever. You know, that's progress. That was weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's strange to get a really big, you know, like, BS kind of Man of Steel defender who doesn't like, you know, the Justice League, the Zack Snyder Justice League. That's strange. Yeah. yeah. But welcome. Not something you expect. Welcome. Um, yeah, it is. It was a fun, a fun dude. It was it was a nice chill EFAP having loads of little discussions about all kinds of things. I I had a good time. Thank you, of course, as well, Meme, for for uh, for coming on. Um, oh, no, no worry. I suppose we should. You know, what do you want to do? You want to tell people? I mean, Meme, you've been here so many times now. It's starting to be like, you know, is it worth plugging? I guess so. Tell them what you're doing up to where you are. I think I need to put you in the description because. Uh, you were a later yeah. edition, you see. Okay. I I was like, oh my goodness, we should probably have someone who knows something about DC Comics. That would be a good mm. idea. Um, that turned out to be quite useful knowledge. Yes. <laughs> it was yes. a good call. I, I wish I'd brushed up on Dark Knight Returns, but that's about it. Um, I, was, I felt it was yeah pretty good. Ugh. Oh yeah, I made a music video. You sh people should watch it. The standalone version uh, premiered yesterday. Uh, so you should go watch that. It, uh, people seem to like it. So you should go watch that. And I've got other projects in the works right now. Go watch those eventually. Um, yay. Yay. Guys, go watch it. We cameo in it, technically speaking, obviously. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's really good work. And we will showcase it on the next meme fab that we'll probably try and get recorded at some point undisclosed time I will put a link to that video now in the the near the top of the description eh video that meme done did make there you go save okay um yeah is there anything anything we need to, we need to announce or talk about I feel like everything's everything's just normal times now Trucking folks along. honestly yeah I'm kind of feeling like limited it's normal time, time for the plushies oh my Don't god forget. that's true they're In almost the done you got of time yeah got like what three days or so I think it's even less than that now right 
You got, um... So don't forget to grab your limited edition plushie, because next time around, they're probably not going to be the same ones, but there'll be new they ones. Definitely new not exciting be the same ones. ones. Two hours and 20 days left, folks. Again, me and Rags will not be able to remind you again, if you, in case you, you were looking for these or you were hoping to mm -hmm. last out until mm -hmm. a bit later. It's the last time that you'll hear from these little plushies on uh, the EFAB episodes, because uh, it'll by the time we stream on Wednesday, it will be done, though. Um, check them out if you want to grab them. So cute. And of course, if you buy them both, you get a discount, um, which is handy because the, there's a shipping price as well, of course. Um, and that's about that. Uh, I just, well, I, I, well, like, we'll yeah. be back on Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh my God, you're having, you're slurring your speech. You're, you've been going for too long. You're running out of steam. I'm gonna you have need to more juice. Get more nuggies <laughs> injected. <laughs> get them in their veins. All right. Yeah. Good for you. Don't. Uh, no. Don't do that. Um. <laughs> no. Don't do that. Ugh. Thank you all so much for joining us, for donating, and for, well, just chilling out, talking about Batman, Superman, and Snyderman. Um, we shall catch you next week with the EFAP Podcast, of course, and probably an EFAP Mini on Wednesday. Until then, good night and goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.